some have not seen, you can go back and see, from chapter 300 chapter 322. Starting today, the chapter will be updated normally. After solving Chu Zhou, it was already afternoon for Chu Muyu to come to Wei Lao's villa. In order to prevent Mr. Wei and the others from waiting for a long time, Chu Muyu made a special call to tell them not to wait. When the elder saw Chu Muyu's arrival, he was slightly relieved, with a bright smile on his face, Mu Yu, you are finally here. Sister, you are finally here. Great. My brother missed you. Yu and Ning threw over excitedly, yelling at Chu Muyu. Listening to these words, Chu Muyu couldn't help but three black lines fell on her forehead, what made her brother miss her. Yu and Xia rolled over in a wheelchair and looked at Chu Muyu, Miss Chu. To be honest, when receiving a call from Chu Muyu, the elder was really worried that Chu Muyu would not come. Looking at Yu and Xiao in the wheelchair, Chu Muyu knew that she had missed the appointment and quickly apologized to the elder, I'm really sorry, there are some things to deal with at home. I will go back to Yu and Xiao immediately. With that said, Chu Muyu had already sat next to Yu and Xiao, opened her consultation box, and took out the pulse pillow. Yuan Xiao put his hand on the my pillow and looked up at Chu Muyu, need help. Chu Muyu was taken aback, raised her eyes, and smiled at Shang Yuan Xiao and shook her head, no, thank you. Suddenly hearing these words by Yuan Xiao made Chu Muyu a little surprised, but soon she knew what Yuan Xiao meant. Yuan Xiao must have investigated some of her information in the past three days. Naturally, he knew what happened to the Chu family a few days ago and thought he was dealing with the Chu family's affairs. Therefore, only then will I ask if he wants his help. If you need it, you can tell me, I can help you. Yuan Xiao was silent for a moment and said. The data of these three days of investigation shocked Yuan Xiao's heart. Not only was Chu Muyu's family situation not good, but there were also relatives who made him want to get angry. He really didn't know how Chu Muyu could still stay in the Chu family. Those scumbag relatives did something like that and made him want to send them directly to hell. Unconsciously, Yuan Xiao felt a little distressed for Chu Muyu. He is an orphan without his parents, but he has a younger sister and a grandfather, but Chu Muyu has no relatives. When it comes to relatives, there is only the father who adopted him, Chu's Haiming, which is at least a comfort. Xiao Junyan, who stood on the side watching, faintly exuded a cold air, his eyes were dark and cold and swept towards Yuan Xiao, and he said coldly, no need. Suddenly hearing Xiao Junyan speak, Yuan Xiao turned his head and met his dark eyes, with a confident smile on the corners of his mouth, and said provocatively, who would think there are too few people to help, brother Xiao, don't you? Listening to the conversation between Xiao Junyan and Yuan Xiao, Chu Muyu, who was monitoring Yuan Xiao's pulse, couldn't help but mutter in her heart, what are these two men doing? Perhaps it was because Xiao Junyan was already in her heart, and everything she was doing now was just a play test on him, so she could not discover the slight change in Yuan Xiao's attitude from the first meeting to the second meeting now. Yuan Xiao was far more lonely and indifferent than the first time I met, and now he is a little more familiar with it. No need. Xiao Junyan still only returned the three words Yu and Xiao. Faced with Xiao Junyan's decisiveness, and it seemed that he was still answering these words for Chu Muyu, Yu and Xiao only felt a little funny. Instead of looking at Xiao Junyan, he looked at Chu Muyu, I don't know, Miss Chu agrees. What am I saying? Originally, Chu Muyu heard Xiao Junyan replied that he didn't need it again, and wanted to laugh, but when he heard Yu and Xiao's question, she couldn't laugh. However, she didn't know Yuan Xiao very well, even if she refused, it didn't matter. Naturally, she wanted to give Xiao Junyan face. Although that's what I said, but I can handle these things and don't need help. Chu Muyu said with a smile on the corner of her mouth. Yuan Xiao didn't feel any dissatisfaction with Chu Muyu's refusal. The corners of his mouth rose slightly but instead he showed a light smile of appreciation. I really appreciate Chu Muyu's sober-minded rejection of his help and the lack of this favor. 
it's hard to say that things like human feelings are not paid off, but at least, now that Chum Wei refuses, it means that she is very clear about things like human feelings. However, Yuan Xiao, who had never been rejected by others, still felt a little shocked in his heart. It's okay, if you need it in the future, you can come to me. Yuan Xiao's mouth raised slightly and said softly. Chum Wei smiled and nodded, then thanked him, thank you. And the elder who sat and watched his grandson and Chum Wei all the time, Listening to Yuan Xiao's words, especially seeing his grandson, who had always been withdrawn and indifferent, showed a sincere smile and shocked his face. Look. What's more unexpected is that his grandson would take the initiative to help others. Seeing Yuan Xiao's change, the elder was a little happy unconsciously. As he spoke, Chu Wu ended his pulse for Yuan Xiao, and a smile appeared on the corner of his mouth, and said, the toxins in your body have been almost eliminated, but because these poisons have been in your body for some years, it is not so fast. Give you acupuncture and moxibustion to expel the remaining toxins. In this way, your body will no longer be eroded by toxins. Okay. Yuan Xiao nodded, a flash of light flashed in his eyes. Last time Chum Wei's treatment, Yuan Xiao had a deep experience. After washing away the black toxins from the outside of his body, his whole body was refreshed, refreshing and comfortable like never before. He believed that he would be able to stand up again. Yuan Xia raised his head and looked at Chum Wu, thank you. I took your money and gave you treatment, it should be. Chum Wu's mouth raised slightly, revealing a smile. When Yuan Xia heard Chum Wu's words, the smile on her face froze, and her heart felt lost. It turned out that she was because of the money. Uncontrollably, Yuan Xiao regretted giving Chum Wei the money. Xiao Junyan heard Chum Wei's words and looked at Yuan Xiao's stiff smile, his mouth raised. He won this battle. The room is ready. The veteran stood up impatiently and said with a smile to Chum Wei, let's go to the treatment first. A group of people hurriedly entered the room and asked Chum Wei to administer the needle to Yuan Xiao. This time the injection was not as excited and expected as the first time, and I felt much more stable. There was the first injection, Chum Wei also used a little internal strength this time. After the internal strength was exhausted last time, with the help of Xiao Junyan, the internal strength in the body increased a lot. This also made Chum Wei's injection this time easy to complete. This time, Yuan Xiao didn't get a lot of toxins discharged from his body, but there were also dots of black stains on his body. The windows of the room had been open all the time, and finally there was no feeling of vomiting. Yuan Xiao was sitting in a wheelchair and moved his upper body. Looking at Yuan Xiao's Yuan Ning with big cute eyes, he asked excitedly, Brother, are you all right? Yuan Xiao put down his hands, raised the corners of his mouth slightly, reached out and touched Yuan Ning's head, and said indulgently, Well, it still takes time. Yet. Yuan Ning nodded, tilting her little head and looking at Yuan Xiao, My brother is getting more and more handsome. My sister is really amazing, Xiao Ning is right, as long as my brother marries her sister home and becomes a young man. Ning's sister-in-law. Her elder brother will become more and more handsome, his body will be great, and he will be able to play with Xiao Ning everywhere. In the hearts of children, there is always only play. Every time I play with excitement, my elder brother can only accompany him, so Yuan Ning wants my elder brother to be able to play like her. Now that Chum Wei gave her a chance, Yuan Ning naturally wanted her to help her brother. Child, don't talk nonsense. Yuan Xiao touched Yuan Ning's head, raised her head, and looked at Chum Wei, with a strange and complicated expression in her eyes. Chum Wei gave him a different feeling from those other girls. Obviously he was only 14 or 5 years old, but it gave him a mature and restrained, and a fresh and indifferent feeling, which made him unable to remove his eyes. The old man squinted his face, looked at Yuan Xiao, and then at Chum Wei, touching his beard. His face also showed an inexplicable smile, how he felt like a match. Old people, after all, 
always care about their grandchildren. Seeing Yuan Xiao's subtle changes now, how could he be unhappy, and the person who caused him to change was Chu Muyu, so naturally he would think farther. Miu Yu, you've been treating Xiao for so long, and you are quite tired. Let's sit down and rest first. By the way, stay for dinner at night. The elder said to Chu Muyu with a smile. The elder thought secretly in his heart, let Chu Muyu stay and talk with you and Xiao more, and the two would deepen and deepen their relationship. At this time, Chu Muyu did not speak, but Xiao Junyan spoke instead, rejecting the veteran's invitation, no, we have to go back. When the elder heard this, he was a little disappointed. He glanced at Xiao Junyan, but then turned to look at Chu Muyu, Miu Yu, what do you want to do when you go back? We haven't repaid you for staying for dinner. Chu Muyu smiled slightly and said, it has been repaid. The ten million you gave me is already a lot of medical expenses for me. Everything I do is what I should do. Since I have received this I have to be responsible for the money. Ms. Chu's medical ethics, I still believe it. The elder smiled and nodded, I, leaving Miss Chu, I just want to ask, how do you plan to treat Yuan Xiao's legs next? Chu Muihu thought for a while, and said, Yuan Xiao's body has been detoxified, and his legs must wait for you to find all the medicine in the prescription I gave you before he can be treated. You can be yourself in the middle. You don't need to come to me anymore. We will find them as soon as possible. The senator nodded thoughtfully. Okay, time is almost here, I have other things to deal with, so I won't stay here any longer. Chu Muihu smiled and said to everyone. Xiao Junyan picked up Chu Muihu's consultation box, prepared to leave, don't stop them. Yuan Xiao took out a piece of paper and handed it to Chu Muihu, this is my mobile phone number. Xiao Junyan, who was standing behind Chu Muihu's side, narrowed his eyes slightly, and there was a cold light flashing in his eyes. Chu Muihu took the paper Yuan Xiao handed to him, and smiled slightly, okay. As for Yuan Xiao knowing that he has a mobile phone, he can naturally guess that it must be Wei Qingqing and the others who told him. However, as to why Wei Qingqing's number was not added directly from Wei Qingqing's side, it is unclear. If you have anything, you can call me and I can help you. Yuan Xiao's tone was a little flat, but it seemed to be a little more friendly and gentle than before. If you have a chance, you will. Chu Muihu put away the note and said goodbye to Yuan Xiao and the others, then I will take it away. The crowd escorted Chu Muihu and Xiao Junyan away from the villa, watching their cars gradually disappear from sight. Yuan Xiao was sitting in a wheelchair, looking at the direction where the car disappeared, his eyes dark, as if thinking about something. Xiao Junyan drove the car and remained silent until he left the villa area, then turned his head to look at Chu Muihu, and said, don't call him. Chu Muihu turned her head with a smile, looked at Xiao Junyan, and said indifferently, this is normal communication. Xiao Junyan was silent for a moment and said, from now on, don't fight. Puff. Chu Muihu couldn't help but snorted and nodded, it's nothing, naturally we won't fight. We are just a doctor-patient relationship. Yet. Xiao Junyan nodded in satisfaction. However, senior brother Xiao, don't always let go of your air conditioning, can you? Chu Muihu frowned as she looked at Xiao Junyan's handsome face, frowning. Xiao Junyan's thin lips pressed tightly, nodding lightly, okay. Chu Muihu didn't think this guy would do what he said, although you confessed to me, I haven't really agreed yet. Therefore, you are still my brother, and we are just the relationship between the brothers and sisters. Xiao Junyan stopped the car quickly, turned his head to look at Chu Muihu, his voice was low and hoarse, but his tone was so firm, not brothers and sisters, be my woman. Chu Muihu was a little stunned by Xiao Junyan's domineering behavior, but this kind of performance made Xiao Junyan a little anxious, worried that she would hate her. You said, I'll change it. Be my girlfriend. Xiao Junyan's tone was a little anxious, but also a little worried. Chu Muihu raised her eyes, looked at Xiao Junyan, and grinned, 
so, to be assessed, you should learn how to be a boyfriend first. Anyway, you have plenty of time. You have several years before I graduate from university. Well, the test will test your persistence. When Xiao Junyan heard this, it was his turn to twist his beautiful brows together, feeling that the time that Chu Mu said was too long and too long. Not willing. Chu Mu raised her eyebrows. Xiao Junyan was silent for a moment before saying another sentence, okay. Chu Mu rolled her eyes madly, and a sly flash flashed under her eyes, moreover, I want you to chase me. As for how to chase me, you can figure it out for yourself. Xiao Junyan nodded, but his expression was still a little tangled, okay. Also, I also want to have friends of the opposite sex. If you don't want me to talk to other boys, you just let the air conditioner indiscriminately. If you let the air conditioner indiscriminately in the future, then there is no chance at all. Have you heard clearly? Xiao Junyan glared fiercely, and said threateningly. It seems that training Xiao Junyan well is also a very good achievement. Xiao Junyan's thin, knife-like lips pressed into a straight line, and he was silent for a moment, okay. Chu Muyu nodded in satisfaction, left Xiao Junyan's embrace, ran up a few steps quickly, turned and waved, well, from now on, accept my test and try to chase me. Dear friends have always said that the content is repeated, but in fact there is no repetition. It is just part of the chapter later and part of the plot interspersed. Respond to the comments of the relatives and at the request of the editor, advance the mail match, interspersed in the plot of abuse of scum cousin. In the middle, the plot of abuse in the hospital and the police station was deleted once, and then the mail match plot content was added. Some have not seen, you can go back and see, from chapter 300 chapter 322. Starting today, the chapter will be updated normally. Chu Muyu didn't care what would happen to Chu Zhou and Ding Chun Hong. She only studied with Dong Fang Sheng on the mountain, and when she had time, she would try her skills against Xiao Junyan. A week passed in a blink of an eye. On Sunday, Chu's Haiming came to the mountain early in the morning. Dad. Chu Muyu, who was fighting Xiao Junyan in the yard, saw Chu's Haiming with a bright smile on his face, and stopped his movements. Xiao Junyan followed Chu Muyu to the front of Chu's Haiming, and yelled respectfully, Uncle Chu. Chu's Haiming nodded, and stretched out his hand to wipe the sweat on Chu Muyu's cheek, I sweat so much early in the morning. Chu Muyu wiped the sweat from his forehead, and said indifferently, Master said that I was too weak before and I need to practice more. Anyway, Brother Xiao wants to do morning exercises, so I'll join him. Chu's Haiming looked up and gratefully said to Xiao Junyan, Xiao Xiao, thank you. This is what I should. Xiao Junyan nodded gently. Dad, aren't you going to work today? Chu Muyu asked Chu's Haiming concerned, why don't you rest at home? Oh. Chu's Haiming sighed helplessly, and asked with concern, Mu Yu. You tell me the truth, did Chu Zhou bully you again? Bullying me again? Chu Muyu suddenly showed a puzzled look. Chu's Haiming nodded and said, In the past few days, your uncle came to the house, and he told me, that Chu Zhou found a few punks to destroy your name, and now Chu Zhou is locked in the police station. Thinking of Chu's Heishan's family coming to make trouble at home when Chu Muyu was not at home, Chu's Haiming was glad that Chu Muyu was not there at that time. In order not to worry Chu Muyu, Chu's Haiming didn't say much about what happened to those people who came from the Chu family. Chu Muyu nodded and looked at Chu's Haiming and said, Well, there is such a thing. After you left, Dad that day, Brother Xiao and I were going to go up the mountain, but I didn't expect these little to come, by the way. Yet Yen Ming came over and grabbed them at the police station. When Chu's Haiming heard the words, his face showed an angry look, how dare that do such a thing? Dad, then you. Chu Muyu frowned and looked at Chu's Haiming worriedly. She was still worried that Chu's Haiming thought she had done it too much because of her scruples about brotherhood, and asked her to release Chu Zhou. If Chu's Haiming really wanted her to do this, 
she would naturally give her father this face and let Chu Jo go. However, fortunately, Chu's Haiming is a sensible person, and patted Chu Muyu on the shoulder, it's okay, let that suffer more and learn to behave in the police station. Dad, do you think it's bad for me to do this? Chu Muyu looked at Chu's Haiming a little nervously and asked. Chu Muyu didn't want to disappoint him in the past life that Chu's Haiming gave to her selfless life. Chu's Haiming laughed and comforted Chu Muyu, if you do a good job, you will be punished for what you do wrong. You don't care about this matter. You will study with your master on the mountain. In the future, Dad will come up the mountain to see you when he is free and bring you something. Thank you Dad. Chu Muyu said gratefully with a relaxed smile at the corner of her mouth. Chu Muyu was very happy to receive Chu's Haiming's support. However, Chu Muyu also knew that this time his father came to the mountain, it should be for Chu Zhou's affairs. Because he didn't know what happened, Chu's Haiming went up the mountain to ask her specifically. If it weren't for Chu's Haiming to go up the mountain to ask about Chu Zhou, Chu Muyu would almost forget them. After all, during this week, Chu Muyu spent all his thoughts on learning, either learning the lessons in the school, or learning the five techniques of mountain medicine, life divination from Dong Fang Sheng, and practicing against Xiao Junyan. From morning to night, the homework is full. This was not arranged by Dong Fang Sheng for her, but by Chu Muyu herself, which made Han Tao more and more satisfied. Chu's Haiming was sent away. Chu Muyu sat at the table, opened the book, and then turned to look at Xiao Junyan who helped her pour a glass of water on the table, and asked curiously, Brother Xiao, do you know the situation of Chu Zhou and Ding Chun Hong? Can you ask Ye Tian Ming for me? I know it all. Xiao Junyan said lightly, sitting beside Chu Muyu. When Chu Muyu heard this, her hands were superimposed on the table, and she looked at Xiao Junyan excitedly, then tell me about their situation. Xiao Junyan was silent for a moment, seeming to organize more language and Chu Muyu to report Chu Zhou and Ding Chunyang's situation. Ding Chunyang's sentence has come out and he has been sentenced for ten years, and it has been in the newspaper. Originally, Ding Chunhong was sentenced to only about five years for the crime of abduction, but he did not expect to be sentenced to ten years. Chu Muyu looked at Xiao Junyan and knew very clearly that he and Ye Tian Ming might have done something for her secretly. Yet, Chu Muyu nodded lightly, and she was even more sure in her heart that the Chu Suiang family must have had a bad time this week. The reporter also went to Chu Suiang's house. Xiao Junyan said again, the evening news is broadcast in Xingxi. When Chu Muyu heard it, she was immediately happy, it is estimated that Chu Suiang has no face to meet people. People who know her are probably scolding her. She knew that this should be the relationship that Xiao Junyan and Ye Tian Ming were looking for, and the trouble for journalists to find. Indeed, just as Chu Muyu expected, after the news was broadcast, everyone who knew Chu Suiang yelled at them, especially those classmates, who were friends with Chu Muyu before. I hate her. Relatives and friends treat them as scourges and avoid seeing them. In the end, even Chu's Hickson was fired from the company. This is all on TV, can it not cause people's attention? Moreover, in the company, there are many people who worship the high and the low, and if they directly poke the matter to the top, Chu's Hickson's ending is very tragic. Now Chu's Hickson's family can be said to be living in the heat of water, and they dare not step out of the house. The corner of Chu Muyu's mouth rose slightly, her mood was very happy, and she asked Xiao Junyan curiously and expectantly, what about Chu's Hu? A cold shock flashed in Xiao Junyan's eyes, and a faint chill radiated from his body, and said, Chu Zhou instructed others to deliberately rape, sell shaking head pills, gather people to fight, and other charges, and was sentenced to thirty years. When Chu Muyu heard the words, she raised her eyebrows. She didn't expect that Chu Zhou was really bad, deserve it. It can only be said that it is not that the time has not been reported. Do you need additional ingredients? Xiao Junyan's thin lips lifted lightly, and the words he uttered made people feel a little bit cold all over. Chu Muyu was taken aback, 
and shook her head quickly, don't commit crimes for me. No problem. Xiao Junyan's eyes became very soft in an instant, staring at Chun Wu, her thin thin lips also gently raised a shallow arc. He knew that Chun Wu did this for him, but he was willing to give everything for her. On the first day of the third year of junior high, Chun Wu came to the school. There were a lot of people in the school. The whole class was noisy. They were talking about the summer vacation and the tragic fate of going to school. Yo! Our number one champion is here. Chum Wu is here. As Chum Wu entered the classroom, the class started shouting again. In the final exam last semester, Chum Wu's score surpassed Wu Hung Jun, which boosted the morale of the entire class. In the past, Chum Wu, because of her family and life experience, was almost heir in this class, and few people paid attention to her. However, after being reborn once, Chum Wu's strength not only allowed Hong Yoshi and the others to enter the police station, but also took the first place in the exam, and the entire class paid attention to her. Chum Wu raised her eyes, glanced at the classmates in the entire classroom, and walked to her seat with a flat expression. Everyone is so leisurely, is the teacher here or not? Chum Wu asked, sitting in her seat. The classmate next to him shook his head and said, I don't know. It's already here, I saw it, but I heard that our class will have a new classmate today, so the old class will take care of it. Another classmate said to Chum Wu. Chum Wu frowned and asked inexplicably, New classmate? This is the third year of junior high school and I have to transfer. Who knows? However, I heard that the person who came is a very rich man. Cut, if you don't have money, can you transfer in at any time in the third grade? Because of Chum Wu's words, everyone's attention instantly shifted to the new classmate who was about to be transferred to the class, guessing whether this classmate was a male or female, and whether he was rich or not. For boys, I hope to be beautiful while girls hope to be a handsome guy. In response to their conversation, Chum Wu could only helplessly shook her head, and took out all her summer vacation. At this time, Zhang Yi ran over and asked concerned, By the way, Chum Wu, half a month ago, I saw Chu Swaying in the TV news. It seems that her mother was involved in the kidnapping and trafficking of children. She's still her niece, Chu Swaying's mother is your aunt, isn't it you? When the people around heard Zhang Yi's words, their attention was suddenly diverted again. Yes, yes, I saw it too. When I saw the news, my parents asked me if there is any classmate in our class. If there is, I will have to transfer to another school or class. Me too, my parents are okay, they just told me not to approach her. I didn't expect this Chu Swaying's mother to be so abhorrent. Abducting children. A group of classmates came around curiously. Not because of anything else, but because the TV news described Ding Chun Hong as a heinous crime. It was not someone else but her own niece who abducted and sold her. Therefore, when Zhang Yi asked such a question, everyone thought of the relationship between Chum Wu and them. Chum Wu coughed, with an indifferent smile on her face, and said, I was the one who was trafficked but fortunately the police came in time and failed to make her plan successful. What? Hearing Chum Wu's words, the whole class was fried. Chum Wu, are you okay? Are you afraid of being trafficked? A group of classmates asked Chum Wu with concern. Chum Wu touched her nose and felt warm in her heart when she heard the caring and inquiring voices of her classmates. Don't worry. Ding Chunyang's plan didn't succeed and you see that I'm here now safe and sound, it means it's okay. Chum Wu smiled at everyone and said comfortingly. When everyone saw that Chum Wu was okay, they were also relieved, as if they had lingering fears. Fortunately, Chu Swaying is not in our class. Yet, yeah, yet. Yeah. Chu Swaying's mother is so disgusting, she can even do such a thing. Humph, instead of selling my own daughter, but selling my own niece, I really did it. It's too cold-blooded and ruthless. 
I really don't know if Chu Suiang will come to school, if I come to school, I will go to their class and scold her. Hey, I guess their class will rebel. A group of classmates yelled outrageously. A sly light flashed in Chu Muihu's eyes. Chu Suiang used to bully her. Now, she doesn't need to bully her personally. Now someone will do it for her. Everyone, don't disturb other classes, this is not good. Chu Muihu still pretended to be embarrassed and said, Moreover, the person who sold me was Chu Suiang's mother, not her. When Zhang Yi heard this, he immediately slapped the table and said angrily, If there is a mother, there must be a daughter, Mu Yu, you don't know. At that time, you were arrested to the police station because of Hong Yushi, that Chu Suiang I didn't say anything bad about you. That's it. I think Chu Suiang is about the same. Such people are not qualified to be classmates with us at all. That's right, don't let me see him. I see him. I. A classmate yelled angrily, but when he turned his head, he saw Chu Suiang cautiously walking through the corridor in order not to attract attention. Screamed, Chu Suiang. Hearing this classmate's cry, everyone subconsciously looked in the direction of the sound, and then saw this classmate pointing their finger at Chu Suiang in the corridor. When Chu Suiang heard someone call her name, her body shuddered, and she subconsciously turned her head to look in the direction of the sound. After all, in order not to let people discover that she was going to school, she deliberately slowed down and was cautious, but she didn't expect to be seen by others. When Chu Muyu heard the call, she turned her head and looked at the corridor outside the classroom, and she saw Chu Suiang as expected. When Chu Suiang saw Chu Muyu, the expression on her face kept changing, her eyes were fierce, and she gritted her teeth, Chu Muyu. Damn, this still has the face to go to school. The classmate who had just as suddenly yelled. You're a bitch. Chu Suiang couldn't hold back when someone called herself a bitch. It was the person who was pointing at the talking angrily and yelling. Hey, you're so arrogant. Come here, come. Come and see, let's see the daughters of criminals on the recent evening news. The daughter of a real criminal, the daughter of a child abducting criminal. When the male classmates saw that Chu Suiang was still so arrogant, they ran to the corridor and kept yelling. Wow! Hearing these screams, the students in the other classes all ran out one by one, or stuck their heads out of the window, all to join in the fun. When Chu Suiang heard this cry and saw a group of students pouring out of the classroom, her small face suddenly became pale. The daughter of a child trafficking criminal. Ding Chunyang's abduction of children was the most concerned thing in Xingxi's summer vacation. They are very afraid that their children have a good relationship with this Chu Suiang, or they know each other, and they would be fooled by her a little carelessly, and then they would be sold. Thinking that their children did not die but were sold to suffering places to suffer, how can these parents bear the heart? Especially after reading the trail news in those newspapers, saying that Chu Suiang is a student of experimental middle school as long as the parents studying in this school keep reminding their children not to contact a person named Chu Suiang and stay away from her. Far. Then even students who haven't read the news already know Chu Suiang. She is Chu Suiang. My parents reminded me not to get rid of a guy named Chu Suiang in the school. That's right. My parents also reminded me, let me see that Chu Suiang turn his head and leave, don't talk to her. Tsk tsk tsk, I really didn't expect our school to have such a classmate. Fortunately, it is not in our class. Originally, this happened during the summer vacation. When students listened to their parents, the left ear went in and the right ear went out, and they had long forgotten. However, now that Chu Muihu's classmates yelled like this, everyone remembered, and began to criticize Chu Suiang. Chu Suiang stood in the corridor her face pale, her body trembling. For more than half a month, she has been in her own home, and she hasn't even stepped out of the door of the room, just because she is afraid of meeting people, she points to her. If it weren't for going to school, she really didn't want to come to school. 
Chu's Hickson wanted her to study well, not like Chu Nan was useless, so she hoped that she could go to a good university, find a good job, and repay him later, so she forced her out of the room. Chu Suiang had no choice but to come to school obediently. Unexpectedly, the school was discovered this time, and it was all because of Chu Muyu. Chu Muyu walked out of the classroom, looked at Chu Suiang's pale and frightened face, a smile appeared at the corner of her mouth, and waved her hands to everyone, well, everyone should go back to the classroom first, don't surround it. Seeing Chu Muyu's posture, Chu Suiang immediately burst into anger, and she screamed, Chu Muyu, I will kill you. On the side of Chu Muyu's body, avoiding Chu Suiang's attack, Chu Suiang immediately rushed into the air. I don't know if Chu Suiang stepped on the wind she went out. There was a wall behind Chu Muyu, and Chu Suiang slammed into the wall. Chu Suiang suddenly got dizzy and turned to stare at Chu Muyu angrily, Chu Muyu, you bitch, it's you, if it wasn't you, my mother wouldn't be arrested. An icy look flashed through Chu Muyu's eyes, but the corners of her mouth were raised, revealing a light smile, Chu Suiang, do you want to deny the fact that your mother wants to sell me? What's wrong with my mother? Just rely on you, a wild species of unknown origin, what qualifications to stay in our Chu family? Chu Suiang suddenly pointed at Chu Muyu arrogantly and yelled. Our Chu family raised you and wasted so much money. In the end, it was only sold for 1,000 yuan, which was of no use. I think my mother should sell you before you grow up. So, I don't know where my mother is from. Snapped. A burst of clear applause echoed throughout the corridor. Everyone looked at Chu Muyu's hands gathered in the air in shock, and then turned to look at Chu Suiang, whose face was red and swollen. Good fight. Everyone did not expect that Chu Muyu would make a move, but this shot made everyone feel comfortable for a while. Chu Muyu's dark eyes flashed with an icy expression, Chu Suiang, you used to bully me and I have tolerated it but you regarded my tolerance as weakness and thought I was a good bully. I'm still here now. Slander the parents who gave birth to me. Chu Suiang was a little dumbfounded by Chu Muyu's slap, turning her head stiffly to look at her, her eyes seemed to be poisoned. Bitch, I killed you. Chu Suiang screamed angrily, and attacked Chu Muyu. Chu Muyu swept her eyes coldly, and directly raised her hand to grab Chu Suiang's straight arm, and then slammed her over the shoulder and threw her out. With a touch, Chu Suiang fell firmly to the ground, a miserable cry in her mouth, and tears continued to fall, and she couldn't get up anymore. Seeing Chu Suiang fell to the ground, no one wanted to step forward to help her. Chu Muyu lowered her head and looked down at Chu Suiang, who was rolling on the ground in pain, Chu Suiang, after reading so many books, you should understand that there are evils for evil, and it's not that the time has not come. You have done so much before. If you bully me, you should know that there will be such a day. Chu Suiang stopped rolling in pain, her eyes staring at Chu Muyu as if she was breathing fire. She only felt that Chu Muyu in front of her was like a new person. Deserve it. Everyone around was looking at Chu Suiang on the ground with mocking and contempt. At this moment, the crowd in the corridor was throbbing. Then there was a cry, here is the teacher. Hearing this sound, many timid people rushed into their classrooms, only showing their heads and looking outside. Chu Suiang turned to look in the direction where the teacher was coming, with an excited smile on her face, teacher. Chu Muyu hit someone. Cut. That's what you deserve. That's right, you are going to fight Chu Muyu yourself and Chu Muyu fights back. We can all testify, a large group of people can testify to Chu Muyu, you were the first to hurt people. Unexpectedly, Chu Suiang just filed a complaint. Before Chu Muyu could explain, the surrounding students yelled first, and suddenly Chu Suiang's face changed constantly, and her chest only felt blocked by a stone. A middle-aged man in his forties and fifties pushed his glasses on his face and asked coldly, what happened? Teacher Dong. When Chu Suiang saw that it was her head teacher, 
she showed a smile on her face and quickly explained to herself, Teacher Dong, Chum Wu hit me, and she slapped the slap on my face. Zhang Yi's heart was raging, and he immediately walked out of the crowd, with his hands on his hips, and he crackled directly out of Chu Suiang's charge, that's what you should fight, who would let you insult Chum Wu first and also insult Chum Wu. Chum Wu's parents, besides, your mother will sell Chum Wu for a thousand yuan, everyone in Xingxi knows. Yes, everyone can testify, obviously you asked for it. It was you who wanted to beat Chum Wu, and Chum Wu fought back. Cut. A criminal's daughter, you can't believe what she said. Yes, teacher, this guy was shown on TV news recently, kidnapping the daughter of a child criminal. This middle-aged man, Dong Zhen, the head teacher of the 8th class, looked very ugly after listening to everyone's words. Isn't it ugly? He also knew about this. Must know. The TV news didn't mention Chu Suiang's identity, but the gossip newspaper stated that she was in experimental middle school. Everyone who knew he was teaching in the experimental middle school came to ask him. Then, by coincidence, he happened to teach Chu Suiang. But even if he knew that Chu Suiang was among the students he taught, he didn't tell anyone, and they didn't know. Under the current situation, Dong Zhen only felt ashamed and angry when he encountered Chu Suiang. Dong Zhen looked at Chu Suiang. There were TV news events that made him feel disgusted by how he looked at it, and coldly accused, Chu Suiang, I really didn't expect that among the students I taught, there would be someone like you. Bad students, do not learn well, and lie, so many students can prove that you did it, but you still wronged others. When Chu Suiang heard Dong Zhen's questioning, she was startled, her mouth was slightly opened, her expression unbelievable. There is only one thought in her mind, and that is that the average teacher will teach to her students. After all, if such a thing spreads out, it will hit the teacher in the face. But now Dong Zhen blamed her directly and mercilessly, almost ignoring his own face. I, I don't. Chu Suiang shook her head subconsciously, defending herself. Dong Zhen was amused. He pointed to the students in the hallway and asked, Why are there no more? So many students can testify. The corner of Chu Wu's mouth rose slightly, and she glanced at Chu Suiang with a mocking look, and then at Dong Zhen who was speaking for herself with admiration. This incident is really expected. Dong Zhen was originally an old teacher and the students unavoidably told the news about some old ideas. How could this teacher continue to face Chu Suiang? Turning to Chu Suiang, the other teachers were more to watch his jokes, and his face was even more embarrassed. Chu Suiang didn't know if her mind hadn't turned around, or she had thought that way in her heart, and she said directly, they are all fascinated by the vixen Chu Mu, and they will speak for her only when they are bewitched. I wipe it. Damn, shameless one. Said Xiao was fascinated by Chum Wu, and there is a vixen here. It's too mysterious. When all the boys heard what Chu Suiang said, they shouted in anger, as if they were ready to fight. Quiet. Dong Zhen raised his head and suddenly yelled, and all the students were quiet for a moment. Dong Zhen looked at Chum Wu with a sneer, he naturally knew Chum Wu, but that surpassed Wu Hung Jun who had always been ranked number one in his class. Is such a good student the kind of person? Dong Zhen really couldn't link the two together. Hee <laughs> hee, saying that they are fascinated by Chum Wu, then I'm going to ask you, what happened in the TV news is true and false. Is your mother going to sell Chum Wu? This matter can it be fake? Dong Zhen suppressed angrily and questioned Chu Suiang. I... Chu Suiang's face suddenly turned pale, and her lips trembled. When the teacher said so with fanfare, she only felt a blank in her mind, and the world in front of her seemed to collapse. Chu Muyu didn't know what happened to Chu Suiang afterwards. At this time, her mood was completely as if she was rushed by countless heads. The handsome figure on the stage made the muscles around her eyes tremble. From now on, Xiliang will be everyone's classmate. 
let's get along well. Wang Mian, the head teacher, introduced the young man beside him to everyone on stage. This young man was no one else. It was the second generation official Xi Liang that Chu Muo met when he went to participate in the Olympic Games during the summer vacation. Chu Muo really did not expect that this Xi Liang would appear in his school, and he would still be in his own class. In my heart, I unconsciously doubted whether he came for her. However, this idea was quickly rejected again. It was the third year of junior high. How could a parent keep his child so close and let his child change school at such a critical juncture? Standing on the podium, Xi Liang glanced at everyone in the classroom and saw Chu Muo who was sitting in his seat looking at him, with a bright smile on his mouth. This kid! Chu Muo touched her nose, muttering in her heart, but it was determined by the guess in her heart, he was probably here for her. This is not her narcissism but Xi Liang's actions are too obvious. As Chu Muo expected, the reason why Xi Liang appeared in the experimental middle school now was because he fell in love with her. Xi Liang looked at Chu Muo's pretty face, and there were countless small flames in his heart. He has seen a lot of beauties, but he has never seen Chu Muo give people a very refreshing and refreshing feeling, as if they were ancient beauties. However, Chu Muo didn't give him face at all, and was indifferent to his kindness. In order to get Chu Muo, Xi Liang asked his family to help him transfer to experimental middle school. Xi Liang walked to the edge of Chu Muo's seat with a big grin, with a bright smile on his face, saying hello, Chu Muo, we meet again. When all the students in the class heard Xi Liang's words, they suddenly showed a curious and surprised look. They too knew each other? Chu Muo quickly glanced at the expressions of all the classmates in the class, and replied faintly, Yes, I've met in the Summer Olympics during the summer vacation, but I didn't expect you to transfer to our school. In one sentence, it explained the relationship between her and Xi Liang, which caused many people to cut off the illusions that had been prepared in their minds. It turned out that I just met in the Math Olympiad. Xi Liang smiled softly and said, Yes. I transferred to this school, and I also came to this class specially for you. Wow! When this word fell, it immediately caused a noise in the entire class. He never expected that Xi Liang would say such a thing in the presence of the teacher. Everyone was still wondering how Xi Liang and Chu Muo met. They just explained it, and it broke the news that this person actually came to their class for her. The head teacher Wang Mian, who was standing on the podium, was also taken aback, looking at Xi Liang in shock. Chu Muo murmured in her heart for a while, as expected. It's just that Chu Muo didn't expect this guy to be so courageous. The teacher was still here, so she could say such things. Sorry, we are not familiar. Finally, Chu Muo replied in a flat tone, without mercy at all. When Xi Liang heard Chu Muo's words, he was stunned. Generally speaking, girls will be very excited and happy to hear that boys transfer schools for themselves and transfer to their own classes. Then, in order to express his touch and gratitude, he threw directly into his arms and hugged his neck for a while. When Xi Liang said those words, there was such a scene in his mind, but the fact was that he slapped a resounding slap. Not only did Chu Muo not react to any actions, but also said that he was not familiar with him and he did not even feel moved or thanked, completely different from what he had imagined. What, what? Xi Liang subconsciously thought that his ears had hallucinations. Chu Muo raised her head and glanced indifferently, with an unbelievable look of Xi Liang, a sneer in her heart, speaking well, more mercilessly than before, I said I am not familiar with you, I want to study, don't be here. Call to disrupt the classroom. Xi Liang stared at Chu Muo, only feeling that something was blocking his chest and back, which was very uncomfortable. He seemed to hear the pop applause in his ears, which made him feel extremely embarrassed. He Xi Liang said such things in front of so many people, but he was so mercilessly rejected by Chu Muo. This is not a face slap, what is it? Handsome. When the boys heard Chu Muo's words, 
they shouted hello in their hearts, and then looked at Xiliang with mocking eyes. Many of the girls didn't believe it, and many of them couldn't eat grapes and stared at Chumwia with sour grapes. Do you know what you are talking about? Xiliang glared at Chumwia with an angry look on his face. Chumwia glanced at Xiliang faintly, and said, Naturally no, but please don't bother me here anymore, everyone will have class. You. Xiliang pointed at Chumwia, his face flushed with anger. As soon as the head teacher saw this posture, he hurriedly stood up and pulled Xiliang over, Student Xiliang, class is about to start, you should go back to your seat first. Xiliang turned his head and glared fiercely at Wang Mian, snorted, then turned his head and glared at Chumwia with a warning look, Okay, very good, Chumwia. You are the first to dare to show good to this young master. So turning a blind eye. Chumwia didn't even look at Xiliang, but looked down at the book in front of him. Isn't it just a rich second generation? It's not that he is rich. If this family is really inherited by this person in the future, it may not be bankrupt. Wang Mian glanced at Xiliang, then at Chumwu, and he could only helplessly shook his head. What is this? No way, who can make Xiliang's family rich? He can't help being a teacher. When Xiliang was about to enter their class, he thought about why, and now he finally understands it. But, I didn't expect this to happen to this point. Okay, everyone is quiet. Today is mainly about handing in homework and publishing new books. The first day of class will begin tomorrow. Everyone is the third year of the semester. The third year is the most critical year of the entire junior high school. Put all your thoughts on studying and strive for a good grade in the entrance examination. Wang Mian returned to the podium, speaking to all the students, and deliberately glanced at Xi Liang feeling that this semester would not be very smoothly, a few male classmates will go down and move books. The whole morning is spent in the time of handing in and sending out homework. With the teacher's shout out of school, all the students cheered. Chum Wu also put some books in the drawer, only took the textbooks and put them in the bag, ready to go home. Xi Liang, who was surrounded by many girls, saw that Chum Wu was about to leave and immediately pushed those girls away and quickly followed. Chum Wu, stop. Xi Liang called to Chum Wu from behind. Chum Wu didn't respond at all, still moving forward. Xi Liang suddenly felt angry raging in his heart, and his eyes seemed to burst into flames. He didn't expect that Chum Wu would not give him face so much. Whether in the classroom or telling her to stop now, she didn't listen. Xi Liang only felt that Chum Wu's face would be lost by Chum Wu. No way, Xi Liang could only speed up his pace and ran ahead of her. Chum Wu seemed to be aware of Xi Liang's actions, so she sped up a bit and walked towards some relatively hidden corners. Xi Liang finally caught up with Chum Wu, his body swayed in front of her, the look on his face was very ugly, and he stared at her. Chum Wu, didn't you hear my young master calling you? Xi Liang questioned Chum Wu angrily. Chum Wu raised her head, her eyes flashed with mocking contempt, You called you, I'm leaving me, why should I listen to you? Who are you? You. Hearing Chum Wu's words, Xi Liang's face flushed even more with anger. Chum Wu glanced at Xi Liang faintly, and said in a cold tone, Get out of the way if nothing happens. With a fierce look on Xi Liang's face, he said arrogantly, Chum Wu, this young master orders you, you will be my woman from today. A cold light flashed in Chum Wu's eyes, her jet black beautiful eyes were slightly narrowed, and she looked at Xi Liang in front of her, are you sure? My young master asked you to be my woman, that is worthy of you. Xi Liang exclaimed angrily, do you dare to agree, my young master will let you know the consequences of violating this young master. Chum Wu raised her hand and slapped Xi Liang's face with a pop, and immediately slapped him to the side. Xi Liang was stunned by Chum Wu's beating. He didn't expect that someone would dare to beat him so boldly and still slap him. Even his parents had never done so. You, you dare to hit me. 
Xiliang gritted his teeth with shocked expressions in his eyes. Chum Wu's mouth raised slightly, and a bright smile appeared on her pretty little face, and said, I'll hit you, what can you do to me? You, little bitch! I'll kill you! When Xiliang heard Chum Wu's words, he immediately raised his hand in anger, and slapped Chum Wu's face as well. Chum Wu sneered, grabbing the slap that Xiliang was about to slap, and directly holding Xiliang's hand backhand, slapped his own face. With a pop, another crisp applause sounded. The other half of Xiliang's face suddenly became flushed with a clear palm print. This slap again slapped Xiliang. How could this be, how could this become his own slap in the face? After slapped, Chum Wu let go of her hand and pushed her hand along the way. Xiliang's body retreated subconsciously, not standing firmly under her feet, and fell to the ground with a thud. Chum Wu and Wu Hung Jun left the school together and walked on the street. Why did you suddenly appear? Chum Wu turned her head and asked Wu Hung Jun curiously. Wu Hung Jun touched his nose, and said embarrassingly, I wanted to find you, but I saw you walking there, so I chased after him. Unexpectedly, I saw something like that. Chum Wu nodded lightly, Are you coming for me? Is there something wrong? A little bit. Wu Hung Jun glanced at Chum Wu secretly, and said, It was my dad who told me about your affairs, about your family's affairs, I heard about it, are you, okay? Originally, Wu Hung Jun wanted to find Chum Wu, but when he arrived at Chum Wu's house, no matter how he knocked on the door, no one responded. Later, I asked some neighbors around me to find out that Chum Wu seemed to be away from home during the summer vacation, so she could only wait until she was in school to find Chum Wu. Chum Wu nodded when she heard Wu Hung Jun's questioning, I have nothing to do, thank you for your concern. We are friends, it should be. Wu Hung Jun said, looking at Chum Wu, a little uneasy. For a long time, Wu Hung Jun felt that Chum Wu's attitude towards him was neither lukewarm nor cold, and it was not clear how she thought of him. Now saying the word friend made Wu Hung Jun a little worried about her rebuttal. Well, we are friends. Chum Wu smiled and nodded, in the future, you can find me if you have anything. As I said with Xiao Junyan before, she also needs some friends of the opposite sex, not all women. Wu Hung Jun is very satisfied with her, whether she is studying or her character, and she is a friend worth making. Hearing what Chum Wu said, Wu Hung Jun breathed a sigh of relief in his heart, okay. The two were walking on the road, talking very happily, but at this moment, there was a cry, Mu Yu. Chum Wu subconsciously raised her head and looked in the direction of the sound, and saw a slender figure standing by the side of the road listening to an off-road vehicle. Senior Brother Xiao Chum Wu was a little surprised that Xiao Junyan appeared in front of her. Wu Hung Jun frowned slightly when he saw Xiao Junyan. This man was seen after the Olympic Games, and Chum Wu said at the time that it was just one of her elder brothers. But, now suddenly heard Chum Wu call him senior brother Xiao, which shocked him. Chum Wu walked a few steps quickly, stood in front of Xiao Junyan, slapped up her small face, very puzzled, why are you here? Pick you home. Xiao Junyan's eyes moved with Chum Wu, and he lowered his head and said. Chum Wu sighed helplessly, and said, didn't the master tell me to let me go home alone? No one in your house, invite you to dinner. Xiao Junyan pursed his lips, and his dark eyes looked directly at Chum Wu. Today only has half a day of class. Chu's Haiming needs to go to work and there is no one at home, so Chum Wu's lunch needs to be settled outside at noon. Xiao Junyan knew that he came to pick Chum Wu for lunch. Chum Wu heard this, although her heart was warm but she was a little helpless. Wu Hung Jun came over and glanced at Xiao Junyan, who was so enchanting that humans and gods were angry, and asked curiously, Mu Yu, didn't you say that he is one of your brothers? How do you call him a senior? Although it is not in the 21st century, the term elder brother is still a bit curious and incomprehensible in modern society. 
Chu Muihu smiled and introduced, You should also know that I have studied some Chinese medicine. I have learned from this doctor of Chinese medicine. He is the apprentice of my old friend of the master, so I will call him brother. It turned out to be like this. Hearing Chu Muihu's explanation, Wu Hung Jun suddenly realized, No wonder. Xiao Junyan looked at Wu Hung Jun's dark eyes, and a cold light flashed, but thinking of Chu Muihu's instructions, he nodded politely, Hello, my name is Xiao Junyan. The last time I hardly said anything, I just introduced my name. Hearing Xiao Junyan's words, Chu Muihu was taken aback and turned to take a look. Seemingly noticing Chu Muihu's eyes, Xiao Junyan turned his head, his eyes were dark, his eyes seemed to say, I listen to you. Chu Muihu touched her nose, and she understood Xiao Junyan's eyes, and couldn't help but feel a little happy. Wu Hung Jun politely nodded to Xiao Junyan and said hello, my name is Wu Hung Jun. Where are we going to eat? Xiao Junyan turned his head and asked Chu Muihu. Wu Hung Jun opened his mouth. In fact, he also wanted to ask Chu Muihu to eat together, but he didn't expect Xiao Junyan to speak first. Moreover, it was the two of them who went together, and he always felt that he was not suitable for intervening between the two. I can do whatever you want. Chu Muihu smiled faintly, and said indifferently. Wu Hung Jun strayed from Xiao Junyan and Chu Muihu, and said, Are you going to have lunch? Originally I wanted to invite Miu Yu to dinner, Miu Yu, how about it, do you want to go? However, I don't have much money, just I can ask you to go to a normal restaurant. Chu Muihu smiled slightly and turned to look at Xiao Junyan and said, No, someone pays, let him pay. Xiao Junyan fixed his gaze on Chu Muihu's body and nodded, Go together. A gleam of light flashed in Chu Muihu's dark eyes. This guy actually did it. It's not bad. Before she warned Xiao Junyan, if Wu Hung Jun were to follow, he would have to release his chills. Okay. Chu Muihu nodded and asked Wu Hung Jun, Do you have any good places to introduce? Wu Hung Jun secretly breathed a sigh of relief in his heart, and said quickly, Yes, it's quite close to here, we can also walk over. No, go by car. Xiao Junyan turned around and helped Chu Muihu drive. Chu Muihu got in the co-pilot, Xiao Junyan fastened her seat belt very carefully, then turned to Wu Hung Jun and said, Get in the car. Wu Hung Jun nodded and glanced at Xiao Junyan, always feeling a strong pressure. Where? Xiao Junyan got in the car and turned to ask Wu Hung Jun. Move forward. So, after Wu Hung Jun's appointment, Xiao Junyan and Chu Muihu came to an old street, and the car stopped outside a shop called Laoju Restaurant. Is it here? Chu Muihu looked at some old restaurants curiously, but it looked very clean and tidy from the outside, which felt incompatible with the shops in the whole old street. Well, this is the shop. This shop is not only clean, but the food in it is also good. My dad often takes me to eat and I like it better, so I introduced it to you. Wu Hung Jun nodded and explained. Chu Muihu looked at the lively dining table inside the glass and nodded in agreement, well, it's really good. There are other foods on this old street, but there is still a big gap with this restaurant, which gives people a very comfortable feeling. The three of Chu Muihu entered the hotel, and a young man in his twenties or thirties sitting on the counter saw Chu Muihu's arrival, and his face suddenly smiled. Wu Xiao, why are you here today? The young man recognized Wu Hung Jun at a glance and asked with a smile. Chu Muihu turned his head and looked at the handsome young man, who was about 25 or 16 years old, and his eyes were shrewd and energetic. Brother Ling, this is my classmate Chu Muihu, I specially introduced you to eat here today. Wu Hung Jun nodded, and then introduced to Chu Muihu, Miu Yu, this is the owner of this restaurant, Ling Hung. Chu Muihu nodded lightly, Boss Ling, hello. Ling Hong smiled enthusiastically, hello, you are introduced by Wu Xiao, and you will not be disappointed. Please come inside. Are you in the box or in the lobby? If there is a box, just box. 
Chu Muyo glanced at Xiao Junyan's outstanding face, and said faintly. Okay, please inside. Ling Hong quickly led Chu Muyu toward the box. Walking on the way to the box, Chu Muyu said admiringly, The boss is really talented. Your restaurant on this old street is unique. Looking at the exterior decoration of Ling Hong Hotel, it has been a few years, but so many of them have been able to keep it clean and pay attention to appearance. Chu Muyu still thinks that Ling Hong is very business minded. Ling Hong smiled and said confidently, my major in university is hotel management, but my old man can't let go of this old store, so I can manage it. Since I manage it, I can't operate it like before. Chum Wu nodded and said with a thumbs up, Nowadays, few people pay attention to hygiene. Even some big restaurants don't pay much attention to it. I think Director Wu often comes to your store for this reason. When Ling Hong listened to Chum Wu's words, his eyes lit up and he said admiringly, Wu Xiao's classmates are really amazing. Director Wu was also introduced by a friend. The first sentence praised my restaurant for paying attention to hygiene and food after it tastes good, I will visit it often. Wu Hung Jun couldn't help but gave Chu Mu a thumbs up and said, Mu Yu, you are right at all. The two main reasons why my dad came here are good hygiene and delicious food. Chu Mu smiled slightly. This was completely related to her rebirth. Ling Hong is indeed an individual talent, and it is really not easy to notice this in this age. In the 21st century, everyone pays more attention to hygiene and likes clean places, so they will naturally feel more comfortable. Moreover, Chu Mu is still a Chinese medicine practitioner, so he pays more attention to hygiene. Several people entered the box and sat down and said to Ling Hong, Brother Ling, you can get us some signature dishes. Well, you wait first, I'll prepare for you right away. Ling Hong nodded quickly. As Ling Hong left, the waiter quickly came in, holding the kettle in his hand and putting it on the table. Xiao Junyan got up, helped Chu Muyo pour a cup of tea, and put it in front of her. Chu Muyo planned to reach out to grab a teacup and take a sip, but Xiao Junyan stopped him, hot. Wu Hung Jun turned his head to look at Xiao Junyan, a dark color flashed under his eyes. Xiao Junyan's careful care gave him a deep alert. In Wu Hung Jun's heart, he unconsciously became interested in Chu Muyu. Whether it was Chu Muyu's magical medical techniques or her noble temperament, Chu Muyu couldn't move his eyes away. Wu Hung Jun knew very well that this kind of feeling might just be liking, so he wanted to pursue Chu Muyu. But he Chu Muyu treated him a little coldly, and could only plan to slowly get closer to her, but the current situation was a bit dangerous. Ling Hong walked in with the steaming and fragrant dishes and put them on the table. Chu Muyu sniffed deeply and nodded appreciatively. This thing seemed to be really good. Wu Xiao, Miss Chu, the dishes are here, you eat first, there are two more. Ling Hong smiled and said to Chu Muyu and the others. Okay. Wu Hung Jun nodded and said to Chu Muyu, Mu Yu, you can taste it, how does it taste? Satisfied or not? Chu Muyu had already picked up the chopsticks and clamped it, and said with a smile, It smells very fragrant, if you don't say I have to taste it. I casually clamped a piece of spare ribs and stuffed it into my mouth, nodding in appreciation, the taste is pretty good. No wonder so many people come here to eat. As long as you like to eat. Wu Hung Jun heard Chu Muyu's appreciation, and was slightly relieved. Originally, he was still very worried that Chu Muyu would be dissatisfied. At this moment, a chopsticks put something in Chu Muyu's bowl, and then he stretched out the chopsticks to clamp a shrimp, put it in the bowl in front of him, and peeled it with his hand. Wu Hung Jun looked down the chopsticks and saw Xiao Junyan's behavior. Another shrimp was peeled and then he put it into Chu Muyu's bowl. However, Chu Muyu did not evade the shrimp in the bowl directly, stuffed it into her mouth, and turned her head to Xiao Junyan with a tacit smile. Suddenly, Wu Hung Jun seemed to be able to see the space between Chu Muyu and Xiao Junyan, as if they were separated by nature. There were only two of them in that space, and no one wanted to intervene. 
Wu Hung Jun only felt that the food he ate in his mouth was a bit bitter and astringent, especially unpalatable. And Chum Wu also added a piece of fat to Xiao Junyan, put it into his bowl, smiled and said, Eat a piece of fat, you can grow more meat. Xiao Junyan looked at the fat in his bowl, then looked up at the sly smile on Chum Wu's face, lowered his head, picked up the fat, and put it into his mouth. Chum Wu asked with a playful smile, how does it taste? It's delicious without you. Xiao Junyan swallowed the fat, his dark eyes fell on Chum Wu's body, and said. After speaking, Xiao Junyan glanced at Wu Hung Jun inadvertently. But Wu Hung Jun kept looking at Xiao Junyan and the others, and noticed Xiao Junyan's provocative look, and his heart suddenly became flustered. Is there? Chum Wu blinked, still feeling a little sweet in her heart. Xiao Junyan peeled the shrimp shells, and said, You make the best. A smug smile flashed under Chum Wu's eyes. The answer was very satisfactory, and she joked, I'll make something unpalatable for you next time. Without any hesitation, Xiao Junyan nodded gently, OK. Wu Hung Jun smashed his mouth, only felt bitter in his mouth, and sighed inwardly. Is this the feeling of being broken in love? However, Wu Hung Jun looked at Xiao Junyan again, with a look of unwillingness in his eyes. Xiao Junyan is now in his twenties. It can be said that he is an old man. This is what he can't compare to him. Miu Yu, this sauerkraut fish is delicious, it has no bones, eat it. Wu Hung Jun sandwiched a piece of fish for Chum Wu and said softly. This move completely provoked Xiao Junyan. Xiao Junyan raised his head, and his dark and deep eyes swept towards Wu Hung Jun. These eyes were very pale, but they were full of oppressive coercion. Wu Hung Jun stared back without fear, his eyes were full of provocation, he would not give up. Chum Wu looked at the sauerkraut fish fillets in her bowl, feeling a little embarrassed, turned her head and glanced at Xiao Junyan beside her. She could faintly feel the chill radiating from Xiao Junyan's body, but compared to before, she controlled it a lot. Xiao Junyan lowered his head and looked at the sauerkraut fish in Chum Wu's bowl. A light flashed in his jet black eyes. He picked up his chopsticks and picked up the sauerkraut fish fillet in Chum Wu's bowl. When Wu Hung Jun saw Xiao Junyan's behavior, his eyes burst into flames. Before Wu Hung Jun could speak, Xiao Junyan said, There really is no bone, Miu Yu, come. With that, he picked a piece of sauerkraut fish fillet for Chum Wu and put it into Chum Wu's bowl. What Xiao Junyan said and his actions really showed that he did this to determine whether what Wu Hung Jun said was true, and to determine whether there were bones in the fish fillet. In an instant, it made Wu Hung Jun who was about to yell at Xiao Junyan as if he had eaten a dead fly. A look of surprise flashed across Chum Wu's face, who was initially a little embarrassed and she was still hesitating whether to eat the fish fillets that Wu Hung Jun gave her. However, he didn't expect Xiao Junyan to solve this embarrassment so easily, and he was still so confident. Chum Wu turned his head and glanced at Xiao Junyan's eyes that were as dark as black jewels, and fixed his gaze on the pickled fish fillets in her bowl, with some expectation in her eyes. At this moment, Chum Wu unconsciously raised a suspicion from the bottom of her heart. She didn't expect this cold temperament Xiao Junyan to have such a dark belly. In the eyes of Xiao Junyan's expectation, Chum Wu could only pick up the pickled cabbage fish first, put it in his mouth, and nodded and said, Well, it's tender, and it's very spicy, very good. Wu Hung Jun, who was frustrated in his heart, let out a sigh, a smile appeared on his face, and said, As long as you like to eat. It can only be said that this time he lost completely. However, Wu Hung Jun still won't give up, whether it is his own life experience or his own abilities, he believes that he will definitely be able to get Chum Wu. At this moment, Ling Hong walked in from outside, brought up the rest of the dishes, and said, Wu Xiao, Miss Chu, your dishes are all ready. Okay, thanks a lot. Chum Wu nodded gently, and said admiringly, Boss Ling, your cooking is very good, no wonder the business is so good. Ling Hong smiled, 
with a bit of pride in his tone, then I will accept Miss Chu's auspicious words, you can say that you are the first person in our hotel who has such a high valuation and can speak out. Because of what Chum Wu said, Ling Hong treated Chum Wu better than Wu Hung Jun, as if he had met a friend. Then I would like to wish Boss Ling a big business. I will come here often in the future. Chum Wu had a light smile on her face, and a gleam of light flashed in her dark eyes. Now she has 65 million on hand. She doesn't have enough money to start a company and can't do big things. However, Chum Wu felt that she could open a restaurant just like Ling Hong's, but she didn't have the resources. This made Chum Wu couldn't help but sigh in her heart. It was because she was too young. Thank you, then, Miss Chu will come, and I will give you a discount. Ling Hong said with a warm smile, You eat slowly, I'll go ahead. After lunch, Chum Wu and Wu Hung Jun got into Xiao Junyan's off road vehicle again. Xiao Junyan sent Wu Hung Jun home first before sending Chum Wu home. Only Chum Wu and Xiao Junyan were left on the road. Xiao Junyan stared straight ahead with his eyes, his thin lips like a knife pressed tightly and there was silence in the car until he reached Chum Wu's house. Although Chum Wu had already been sent home, Xiao Junyan did not leave. Chum Wu closed the door, took off his shoes and said, Senior brother Xiao, you sit down first, and I will pour you a cup of tea. However, Xiao Junyan did not sit on the sofa, but reached out and grabbed Chum Wu. Chum Wu was taken aback, turned her head, Xiao Junyan pursed her lips, and said, Wu Hung Jun, I like you. Puff. Chum Wu couldn't help laughing when he heard the words, and turned slightly to face Xiao Junyan, her eyes crooked, but I don't like him. I just treat him as a friend. Xiao Junyan nodded, and set the relationship between Chum Wu and Wu Hung Jun in a very domineering tone, it's just friends of the opposite sex. First friends of the opposite sex, maybe they can develop. Chum Wu's eyes flashed slyly, raising her pretty face with big hands, and looking at Xiao Junyan. Before he finished speaking, Xiao Junyan released a chill, his arms wrapped around Chum Wu's slender waist, his dark eyes fixed on Chum Wu's body, I have changed. Chum Wu raised her head to look directly at Xiao Junyan, facing someone's handsome face with a paralyzed face, but her eyes were pitiful, biting her lip, wanting to laugh. Well, I saw it. Chum Wu nodded gently. Xiao Junyan said decisively and domineeringly, So, you are mine. Puff. Chum Wu couldn't hold back again, and she snorted. The cold and dark bellied Xiao Junyan was so cute. In the past, Xiao Junyan was like an iceberg that hasn't changed for thousands of years, and he was very domineering, but now he is a little bit more black and really cute. However, Xiao Junyan was puzzled by Chum Wu's sudden laugh. There was a bit of confusion on the cold face of the face, but in Chum Wu's eyes, it was so cute, and she couldn't help but want to tease him. Chum Wu stretched out her small hand, squeezed Xiao Junyan's smooth skin, and exclaimed, Obviously a soldier, but why does your face feel so easy to touch? I really don't know how you trained before. Born. Xiao Junyan answered vaguely. I really envy nature. Chum Wu sighed. In fact, her skin is also born, which should be inherited from her parents, but her skin in the previous life was very boring, and she had no nutrition since she was a child. In this life, she has worked hard to restore her skin, which can be considered to have been restored. Xiao Junyan grasped Chum Wu's slender waist with both hands, fixed his eyes, and said, you are the most beautiful. Chum Wu raised her mouth slightly, retracted her hand, and dispatched Xiao Junyan's big hand, and said angrily, okay, stop making trouble, what do you plan to do today? Be with you. Xiao Junyan did not hesitate, and never looked away from Chum Wu. Okay. Chum Wu nodded gently, the corners of her mouth raised slightly, showing a smile, teach me English. Your foreign language is very good. Although my grades in my previous life were not bad, I rarely encountered English after graduation, and I almost forgot about it. 
it hasn't reached the 21st century, so the English at school is too simple. Although Chu Mu studied Chinese medicine, Dong Feng Sheng asked her to combine Chinese and Western medicine. Western medicine inevitably has a lot of English books, and she must improve her English. It is good. The first afternoon of the third day of class was spent in the time when Chu Mu and Xiao Junyan were learning English. Chu Mu arrived at the school early the next morning, but didn't see Kui Liang coming until the class. Why hasn't Kui Liang come yet? Really, rich people are different. Come if you want, don't come if you don't want to. Hey, I heard that it is the young owner of the Kishin group. With so much money in the family, it is useless to study. Everyone was talking about it. Chu Mu knew why Xi Liang didn't come today, and a smile appeared on the corner of her mouth. Yesterday, Xi Liang was not only slapped twice by her, but also kicked a few times by Wu Hung Jun. In a few days, she didn't even think about coming to school. If Xi Liang came to the school with a slap print on his face, he would definitely be overwhelmed with laughter. To his second-generation ancestor, the rich second generation, it would be a shame. Therefore, Xi Liang did not come today, Chu Mu is a little bit there was no surprise. Chu Mu only felt comfortable, and she was energized in her studies. However, before this good day had passed, a girl approached her at noon. Are you Chu Mu? The girl stood in front of Chu Mu, looked up and down her eyes filled with contempt and sarcasm. Chu Mu glanced at the girl and didn't know him, but she nodded her head, I am, classmate, what do you want? I'm Xiaomoya from class 8. Xiaomoya said, holding his chin high, looking down at Chu Mu with a downward look. Chu Mu nodded, still feeling suspicious, she didn't know her, what did she want to do with herself? Student Xia, just tell me if you have anything. Xiaomoya was indifferent and extremely angry towards Chu Mu, her pretty face flushed red, her eyes filled with anger and jealousy, did you hurt Xi Liang yesterday? As soon as he heard Xiaomoya's words, Chu Mu understood that it was originally for Xi Liang, and it seemed that this female classmate admired Xi Liang. So it's like this. Chu Mu nodded, a mocking look flashed in his eyes, and said, are you a female fan of Xi Liang? Yes, I played Xi Liang yesterday, so what? For these brain dead female fans, Chu Mu really didn't want to give them a little face. Xiaomoyu had no idea that Chu Mu would directly admit it, and his attitude was still so arrogant. Originally prepared a lot of curse words, but they were useless, and for a while, Xiaomoyu didn't even know what to say. Seeing Xiaomoyu, Chu Mu frowned slightly, blocked the way but did not speak, feeling very unhappy, and walked sideways through Xiaomoyu. Xiaomoyu saw Chu Mu leave in front of her, and quickly turned around and went up to stop her. He cursed angrily, Chu Mu, you bitch, you are not allowed to go. A cold light flashed in Chu Mu's eyes, and she said coldly, Xiaomoyu, don't block my way. Xiaomoyu's heart was raging and after hitting Xi Liang, not only did he not admit his mistake, he even dared to talk to her so arrogantly. Chu Mu, don't think you know Wu Hung Jun, I can't do anything to you, Xi Liang is the heir of the Kishin group. Xiaomoyu pointed at Chu Mu angrily, yelling and threatening fiercely, you I dared to be so arrogant after hitting him, I will teach you a lesson for Xi Liang today. Thank you for your reward. Groups that can add Bing Bing. 12271977, Stepping Stone, either the female lead or the male lead can be named. Don't forget OU. Other answers are not allowed to enter. Xiaomoyu raised his hand and slapped Chu Mu's face fiercely. For women, the way to teach others is almost by slap, even Xiaomoyu is no exception. This slap is not only convenient, but it is also the best slap on the face. This face cannot be blocked. If there is a slap mark, you will know it. Therefore, almost many people like to teach people with the slap. However, how could Chu Mu let Xiaomoya do as she wished, raising her hand to easily block her hand, grabbing her wrist, 
and not letting her palm fall. Xiaomuyu subconsciously wanted to pull out his hand, but found that Chumuyu's hand was like iron tongs and couldn't be pulled out. You, you let me go. Xiaomuyu exclaimed angrily. The corner of Chumuyu's mouth raised slightly, and she looked at Xiaomuyu with a mocking smile, let go, you can, but you better not trouble me. Xiaomuyu's face was constantly changing with anger and stared at Chumuyu. Chumuyu, I order you, let me go, let me go. Okay. Chumuyu raised her eyebrows slightly, chuckles in her nose, loosened her hands, and added a little strength by the way. Xiaomuyu originally had her body backward, but she didn't expect that Chumuyu would actually let go, and gave her a little bit of strength. Therefore, her whole body slammed and fell to the ground with a ruthless ass. Sat on the ground. Chumuyu lowered her eyes and saw a small sharp stone beside her feet. Her mouth rose slightly, revealing a sly smile, and she kicked gently with her toes. The stone rolled grunting on the ground where Xiaomuyu was sitting on her buttocks. Xiaomuyu didn't see it at all. After sitting down, she uttered a scream and hurriedly rolled on the ground to avoid it. Chumuyu looked at Xiaomuyu's embarrassed appearance, and a smile appeared on the corner of her mouth which really cannot be blamed on her. Xiaomuyu turned his head to see what was going on. He saw a small sharp stone, his eyes were flushed, and tears rolled in his eyes. She didn't expect that there would be such a small stone under this butt, and her was so painful that her legs were cramping. Fortunately, Xiaomuyu didn't know at all, Chumuyu kicked the stone over. If he knew it, he would be crazy to kill her. Chumuyu you should hit me. Xiaomuyu was annoyed, because Chumuyu questioned her angrily. Chumuyu's mouth showed a mocking smile, and said, I hit you? Are you going to hit me? You let me let you go, I let you go, you fell to the ground by yourself, I see, did you deliberately touch the porcelain yourself? You fell yourself and trouble me. You. Xiaomuyu pointed at Chumuyu angrily gritted her teeth with anger. Chumuyu glanced at Xiaomuyu faintly, then turned and said, If there is nothing wrong, I will leave first. Chumuyu, you slut, you can't go. Xiaomuyu got up from the ground, but the pain on her buttocks made her stand up crooked, her hands still covering her butt. Chumuyu walked forward, naturally unaware of Xiaomuyu's embarrassed and painful appearance. Xiaomuyu clutched her butt, stomped her feet fiercely on the ground, her eyes flashed with a vicious expression, as if she was spitting poison, gritted her teeth, Chumuyu, you bitch. I'm not I will let you go. Chumuyu didn't care about Xiaomuyu's troubles, and did whatever he wanted. But, I don't know, Xiaomuyu hated Chumuyu even more, and when he returned home after school, the whole face was stretched out. A young man sitting in the hall, wearing non-mainstream clothes, put his hands on the sofa, put his feet on the coffee table, and still had a cigarette in his mouth, watching TV with joy. Seeing Xiaomuyu's face full of grievance and anger, the young man chuckled, who bullied our little princess. Xiaomuyu saw the young man with an angry look on his face, brother, there is a at school not only bullying Xia Yang, but also bullying and hitting me. The young man is no one else but Xiaomuyu's brother Xia Dong. When Xia Dong heard this, his face suddenly showed an unpleasant look, what's the matter, doesn't she know who you are? I know, and I also know the identity of Xi Liang. Xiaomuyu gritted his teeth angrily, that didn't dare to be so arrogant to me after climbing on Wu Hung Jun's thigh because of his own beauty. Wu Hung Jun? That police chief Wu Ming's son. Xia Dong touched his chin and asked curiously. Xiaomuyu nodded heavily, it's him, I really don't know how that seduce Wu Hung Jun. A gleam of light flashed in Xia Dong's eyes, and he looked at Xiaomuyu with bright eyes, you just said that the person who bullied you is very beautiful. A sullen expression flashed in Xiaomuyu's eyes, and gritted his teeth and said, what's wrong with the beauty? It's not a wild species that nobody wants, a slut. In the past, she also knew about Chumuyu because of Hong Yoshi and Chu Suiang. However, after all, 
she was not infatuated with Wu Hung Jun, but Xi Liang, which caused Xi Liang to lose face because of Chu Muyu's affairs, and was even more jealous of Xi Liang's attention and wanted to avenge her. Xia Dong touched his chin, a greedy light flashed in his eyes, sat next to Xia Moyu, patted her shoulder, and said comfortingly, OK, don't cry, brother will help you out tomorrow morning. Brother sent you to school. By the way, how about helping you teach that who bullied you? When Xia Moyu heard his brother Xia Dong's words, his face suddenly showed a bright smile, and he grabbed his arm with both hands, his face was full of excitement, Brother, what are you saying is true? Are you really revenge for me? Xia Dong's face turned straight, touched Xia Moyu's head, patted his chest and said, You are my sister, you have been bullied. As a brother, I naturally want to avenge you. Xia Moyu burst into tears and smiled instantly, with a triumphant smile on his face, Brother, you are so kind, you must avenge me and ravage that so hard that she can never appear in Xi Liang's. In front of me, I want her to kneel in front of me and beg me. A stern light flashed in Xia Dong's eyes and said, It's not easy. A woman cares about her own name most. Brother ruined her name for you, and then took a picture and gave it to all look. By that time, this woman will probably want to die. Listening to Xia Dong's plan, Xia Moyu wiped the tears from his face, nodded heavily, and his eyes seemed to spit poison, and said fiercely, I'm going to let her reputation be thrown in, no matter what. Xi Liang or Wu Hung Jun both hate her and scold her to relieve my anger. Subconsciously, Xia Moyu couldn't help but fantasize about Chu Muyu's miserable and embarrassing appearance. After some tricks in the evening, Xia Dong sent Xia Moyu to school early in the morning. For Chu Muyu's information, Xia Dong has already investigated, and this is very fast. This speed is entirely due to the fact that Chu Muyu's troubles were a bit big last semester, and she became the number one in the final exam, and she has almost become well known in the school. Xia Dong drove the car and stopped on the road where Wei Lao had specially waited for Chu Muyu. This road was a bit old, and in the morning, there were few people, so Xia Dong could bully Chu Muyu. With Chu Muyu's photo, Xia Dong was infatuated the first time he saw it. He didn't expect that Chu Muyu and Xia Moyu's mouth was so beautiful, no wonder Wu Hung Jun would like Chu Muyu, and even Xi Liang liked her. Xia Dong was holding Chu Muyu's photo, and when he looked up, he saw Chu Muyu walking over from the side of the street, with the corners of his mouth slightly raised, showing a smug smile. Putting away the photo in his hand, Xia Dong started the car, drove in the direction of Chu Muyu. Xia Dong drove a convertible, coupled with his handsome clothes, how he looked like a rich man. The convertible parked next to Chu Muyu, Xia Dong smiled brightly and greeted Chu Muyu, Hi, little girl, what are you going to do? Chu Muyu paused, turned her head to look at Xia Dong who was driving the car, glanced faintly and then turned her head to continue walking her own way without saying anything. Xia Dong was taken aback by Chu Muyu's actions, feeling extremely surprised and puzzled, and subconsciously looked at what he was wearing and the surrounding environment. The clothes on his body are expensive. No matter how unseen people, when they see the car he drives, they know that he is rich. However, Chu Muyu, the little girl, didn't even bother him. She only stayed on him for a second or two, then calmly averted her gaze and walked her own way. Xia Dong was stunned for five or six seconds before he came back to his senses. He drove his car back and stopped again by Chu Muyu's side. Little beauty, if you are free, go to have breakfast with your brother. Brother treat. Take you to eat delicious food. Xia Dong said to Chu Muyu still with a bright smile. Chu Muyu didn't even look at Xia Dong this time, and walked straight forward, only thinking that the man was too noisy. Xia Dong didn't expect that Chu Muyu would not give him face so much, and even ignored him. In the past, as long as he drove the car and issued such an invitation, no woman would refuse, no woman would resist such temptation. However, today's Chu Muyu didn't even put this in his eyes. In such a situation, 
it was like a slap in the face, and it didn't give him Xiaodong's face so much. Now, Xiaodong not only wanted to avenge his sister, but also let Chum Wu know how good he was, and even dared to ignore him so much. Xiaodong stopped the car, opened the door, strode in front of Chum Wu, his face was very ugly. Chum Wu stopped, raising her eyes with a cold expression in her eyes, looking at Xiaodong in front of him, get out of the way. Xiaodong showed an angry look, staring at Chum Wu, threatening with a fierce look on his face, do you know who this young master is? You dare to talk to this young master like this, and let this young master get away. After leaving Xiaodong on the side of the road, Chum Wu returned to the classroom. As for whether this guy would listen to her obediently, I don't know. However, Chum Wu felt that such a person would probably not give up. After a day's class, Chum Wu realized that Xiam Wu hadn't come to trouble him, and he was slightly relieved. It seems that today is fine. After school, Chum Wu walked on the road alone, thinking that Xiaodong would not come to make trouble today, but he did not expect that he was still on the road and saw Xiaodong's car again. And around that car, there were a dozen young people standing around, all topless, tattooed on their bodies, and they weren't good people at first sight. As soon as Xiaodong saw Chum Wu's arrival, he immediately got out of the car and closed the car door with a hateful bump, as if fire could be emitted from both eyes. Seeing Xiaodong's behavior, Chum Wu could only shrug her shoulders helplessly. Since someone wants to die and suffers more, then she can't blame her. Xiaodong looked at Chum Wu in front of him, with a sullen expression in his eyes, pointed her finger at her, and commanded everyone around her, catch this bitch. A smile appeared at the corner of Chum Wu's mouth, glanced at the punks, and hummed softly in her nose. When the gangsters heard Xiaodong's order, they all stood in rows and walked towards Chum Wu. It seems that you don't learn your lesson. Chum Wu's tone was very plain, without any fear. A sullen expression flashed in Xiaodong's eyes, and he said angrily, Bitch, if you don't give face to this young master in the morning, this young master will let you know that if you dare to beat this young master, you will have to pay tragically. Cost. Really. Chum Wu still had the mocking look on his face, and his gaze quickly turned on these little gangsters in front of him, since you are helping him to abuse him, I can't blame me. Chum Wu didn't wait for those little gangsters to make a move, she already made a move, took a step forward, lifted her foot, and moved towards the nearest youth gangster. The feet kicked towards the young bastard's chest fiercely, and the who was kicked flew upside down and landed on the road seven or eight meters away. The gangsters who had come forward suddenly had a meal, and looked at the scene that suddenly happened before them in surprise. Xiaodong, who had a triumphant smile, froze. He didn't expect that Chum Wu was so good that he would kick people up again with one kick. However, at least he has the experience he has just now, and angrily commanded the gangsters, what are you guys doing in a daze? Let's go together. Let's take control of this together. Hearing Xiaodong's order, these gangsters all rushed towards Chum Wu. Chum Wu sneered, and threw out the troublesome school bag on his shoulders, and threw it at one of the punks, smashing him in the face fiercely, knocking him into a daze. There are a few books in the school bag, at least a few kilograms, as a weapon to attack, it is definitely appropriate. In previous TV dramas, it was said that the most convenient weapon was a stool, but how did she feel that it was her school bag? This was just a thought flashing in her mind, Chum Wu's figure flashed, holding fists in both hands, and attacking the young people who rushed over. The fists fell on the faces and chests of those youths, and there was almost no mercy to the flesh. It took only ten seconds for these young gangsters to bruise their faces with Chum Wu's fists, and there were screams in their mouths. Chum Wu didn't wait for these to retreat and admit defeat, and finally gave each of them a fist or a kick to knock them out. In less than a minute, Chum Wu knocked down the gangsters in front of her, and fell to the ground one by one, with her hands covering her chest or her face, and there was a burst of painful groans in her mouth. Xiaodong, who was standing in front of his convertible, 
was shocked by Chu Muyu's ability and his eyes widened, with an expression of disbelief on his face. He didn't expect that Chu Muyu was so capable, was this still a human? Chu Muyu lowered her head and glanced at the who fell on the ground, her mouth slightly raised. Compared to before the summer vacation, her skill had improved a lot, and this was all under the guidance of Xiao Junyan. The time is still a little longer, and it should be shortened next time. Chu Muyu muttered to herself for a while. At this moment, a sound of touching came into Chu Muyu's ears. Chu Muyu looked up and saw Xia Dong sitting on the front cover of his convertible, with a look of horror on his face. Had. Chu Muyu chuckled lightly, her eyes full of sarcasm and contempt, and she walked slowly towards Xia Dong. Seeing Chu Muyu walking towards him, Xia Dong subconsciously wanted to retreat but only then did he realize that behind him was his car, and there was no way for him to retreat. Chu Muyu looked at Xia Dong sympathetically and mockingly, and said, I have given you a chance, but you don't give up or learn your lesson. Xia Dong moved his body and backed down along the edge of the car. The sweat on his forehead fell down his cheeks. I don't know if it was because of the temperature of the weather or because of fear. Chu, Chu Muyu, you... Don't come over. Xia Dong spoke uncomfortably this time, very stuttered, and his tone was full of panic. This body trembling appearance, the attitude of speech, how do you look like a wife who has been robbed? Now Xia Dong really knew that this Chum Wei was not so easy to provoke, and he felt extremely regretful in his heart. However, he couldn't understand why such a little girl with thin arms and legs could be so powerful. Chu Muyu raised her eyebrows and looked at Xia Dong, raised her fisted hand, and said with a smirk at the corner of her mouth, Aren't you very arrogant? You asked for this, obediently, let me beat you up. With a few punches, you can leave. Some people still have to punch a few more punches, and they have a mark on their body, so that they can remember, thinking, it must be too light to start in the morning, so they didn't remember it and they came to find trouble after school. As soon as Xia Dong heard what Chu Muyu said, his body suddenly trembled. At this moment, he had retreated to the driver's seat, turned his head to look, and hurriedly wanted to open the door. But suddenly Chu Muyu's figure flashed, and a fist hit his chest, knocking him out directly. With a puff, Xia Dong was once again tragically beaten and flew out a few meters, and then hit the ground heavily breaking his bones. How? Chu Muyu walked slowly towards Xia Dong, with a light smile on the corner of her mouth, and asked playfully. Painful Xia Dong glared his eyes, his face was unbelievable, and his heart was chilling. This woman was really terrifying, her subconscious body was lying half on the ground, her body moved backwards. Chu Muyu's pressure was really too great. Every time she saw Chu Muyu take a step towards him, it was as if someone had hammered his heart with a hammer, making people tremble. Xia Dong really couldn't bear this kind of psychological pressure, and immediately begged for mercy, Chu, Miss Chu, you, let me go, I won't dare any more. I won't dare to trouble you again. I will turn around when I see you later. I also warned you in the morning, but you didn't listen. I think it would be better to give you a little memory. Chu Muyu said in a calm tone but mockingly. Xia Dong quickly shook his head and waved his hand, No, 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 Miss Chu, I was wrong, I really admitted my mistake, I will never dare any more, I really dare not, please. Hey! Chu Muyu snorted coldly, knowing that sometimes she can't do too much, she also thinks that more is worse than less and her tone is full of threats, it's best to do what you say. This time, I won't be so merciful. Yes, yes. Xia Dong nodded quickly, feeling relieved, and quickly ran away from Chu Muyu's claws, drove his own car, and ran away. Looking at Xia Dong who was leaving, Chu Muyu could only helplessly shook her head, turned around and went back to retrieve her school bag. The little gangsters who were originally lying on the ground saw Chu Muyu walking towards them, and at this moment, they could not manage the pain in their body. They screamed, and quickly got up from the ground with a huff, 
and ran away quickly. Chumwia was taken aback, touched her nose, feeling a little embarrassed, do I look so scared? She didn't know that her skill and skill just now gave these little gangsters a deep memory, for fear that she was making a move, naturally she was going to escape. In the end, she shrugged her shoulders helplessly, picked up her school bag, and prepared to go home. However, before walking a few steps, Chum Wu's mobile phone vibrated, took it out and opened it to see that it was Xiao Junyan's phone. Seeing Xiao Junyan, Chum Wu's mouth raised slightly, Hey, brother Xiao. Hey, little sister. It's me. Ye Tianming's ruffian voice came through the phone. Hearing Ye Tianming's voice, Chum Wu breathed a sigh of relief, So it's you, what's the matter? Hey? Little junior sister, why did you seem to be relieved to hear that I called you? Did you do something to apologize to my boss? Ye Tianming suddenly teased. Chum Wu rolled her eyes angrily, and said in dissatisfaction, If you have something to say, let it go. Little junior sister, why are you so fierce? Be careful that the boss doesn't want you. Eh, boss, what are you doing, I haven't wailed. Yet Yen Ming said halfway through, the phone seemed to be robbed, and then he sent it out there was a screaming howl. Immediately afterwards, Xiao Junyan's voice came over, Miu Yu, did he say anything? No. Chum Wu smiled slightly, it seems that Yet Yen Ming was making a call with his mobile phone while Xiao Junyan was away. Okay, then I will invite you to dinner at noon tomorrow. Uh, um. Good. Chum Wu nodded in a daze, Xiao Junyan seemed a little anxious and had already died. Say okay with Xiao Junyan and have lunch with him. However, when Chum Wu got into Xiao Junyan's off-road vehicle, she found that a certain gangster was also inside. Yet Yen Ming was lying on the back seat and whistling towards Chum Wu, little junior sister. How are you? Seeing the bruise on Ye Tianming's face, Chum Wu couldn't help but think of the screams made by Ye Tianming after calling her yesterday. Obviously, the wound on Ye Tianming's face should be Xiao Junyan's masterpiece. She even dared to tease her, Chum Wu snorted in her heart, a sly smile appeared on the corner of her mouth, and said, I'm fine, but you don't seem to be very good, you seem to be disfigured. When Ye Tianming heard what Chum Wu said, he almost didn't fall off his seat. He was extremely depressed. Would you like to be so cruel? He ridiculed Chum Wu yesterday, and was severely taught by Xiao Junyan. The bruises on his face have not yet subsided. Now Chum Wu also retaliated back, and ridiculed him. Chum Wu turned her head and smiled and asked Xiao Junyan, where to eat? That old street. Xiao Junyan turned his head and asked Chum Wu, do you like it? Well, the dishes cooked in that restaurant are pretty good, let's eat again. Chum Wu smiled and nodded. It seemed that Chum Wu liked the food in that restaurant, so Xiao Junyan took Chum Wu with him. Otherwise, because this shop was introduced by Wu Hung Jun, Xiao Junyan might not like to take Chum Wu there. Yet Yen Ming sat behind trying to reduce his sense of existence, so as not to be ridiculed and revenged by Chum Wu. The three people came to the restaurant soon. Yet Yen Ming lay down at the window, looking at the restaurant that looked completely different from other stores on the street, this store is really peculiar. There is no one in it, and it's messy, why come here to eat? What's the mess? Chum Wu got out of the car and asked suspiciously when she heard Ye Tian Ming's words. Yet Yen Ming curled his lips and pointed to the situation inside the hotel's transparent glass. Chum Wu turned her head to look at the situation inside the hotel, and her brows were suddenly frowned together, something happened. Xiao Junyan closed the car door and walked to Chum Wu's side, something went wrong. Let's go in. Chum Wu quickly said to Xiao Junyan and Yet Yen Ming. However, what Chum Wu didn't know was that on one side of the street, listening to a convertible car, if she saw it, she would definitely recognize the owner of that car. Chum Wu walked into the restaurant, and the constant screaming and beating noises came into the ears of Chum Wu's trio. 
It seems that the smashing on the outside has ended, and it has already affected the inside. Yet Yenming glanced at the messy restaurant, and the floor was full of food residues. It seems that someone is coming for trouble. Yet Yenming said with a wicked smile at the corner of his mouth. Chu Muihu saw it too, and a flash of anger flashed in her dark and clear eyes, let's go in and take a look. The three of them entered together and walked towards the inside of the hotel. They saw a lot of people standing outside a box, and there were waves of beatings and scolding. Chu Muihu's eyes narrowed slightly, her eyes fell on the young man surrounded by a few gangsters, her expression became very cold. Before Chu Muihu could do anything, Xiao Junyan and Ye Tianming had already rushed out from behind Chu Muihu and attacked the young people. Xiao Junyan and Ye Tianming took action, and the gangsters who had beaten the young man were beaten out, and fell to the ground half dead one by one. Chu Muihu stepped forward quickly and helped the young man who fell on the ground up, Boss Ling, are you okay? The young man surrounded by gangsters is not someone else, but the owner of this restaurant, Ling Hong. Ling Hong wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and looked at Chu Muihu standing in front of him. With a look of surprise on his face, because of the wound, he couldn't help but breathe in, Chu, hiss, Chu. Miss. Chu Muihu frowned and asked, What's the matter? Hey. Ling Hong sighed helplessly, and the blood on his forehead fell down his cheeks. What's the matter? What's the matter? It seemed that after hearing the sound of fighting, the people in the other boxes also ran out. Ah! Followed by a harsh scream from a woman. Chu Muihu looked at the person who appeared in front of her, a smile appeared on her lips, and she saw an acquaintance again. Unexpectedly, we met again. Chu Muihu looked at the young man standing in the crowd. Chu Chu, Chu Muihu. Seeing Chu Muihu appear in front of him. The youth was shocked and then panicked. Chu Muihu sneered, Xia Dong, it seems that you still don't learn your lesson. Xia Dong's body shuddered suddenly, and his subconscious body took a step backward. Xia Junyan kicked a small bastard, walked to Chu Muihu's side, looked at Xia Dong, his sword brows were slightly frowned, and his voice was a little low, acknowledge. Well. I just taught me a meal yesterday. No. It's two meals. Chu Muihu nodded and said with a smile on his mouth. Yet Yenming kicked a little bastard, jumped to Chu Muihu's side, and laughed, I was taught twice by you. What is going on? This guy is really unlucky. Xia Dong saw the dozen gangsters he had brought, and they were knocked down to the ground almost in the blink of an eye. They fell to the ground one by one, wailing in pain. <laughs> The other punks who were standing behind Xia Dong saw that their partners were knocked down to the ground. The tragic appearance scared them into the box and opened the window of the box directly. Opened the window and jumped out. In the blink of an eye again, Xia Dong no longer stood by a small bastard, only a very beautiful woman in an exposed dress. It's just that when the woman saw the punks who fell on the ground, her face was pale with fright, and her lips were trembling. There was a thin layer of sweat on Xia Dong's forehead, and he kept cursing those in his heart. Not only was it useless, but he was so unethical, and he was thrown here. And the most in his heart was panic and constant curses, how could this be here? Chu Muihu glanced at Xia Dong coldly, then turned to look at Ling Hong next to him, and asked, What the is going on? Ling Hong glanced at Chu Muihu, wiped the blood from his forehead, a sad look flashed in his eyes, opened his mouth and said, because of her. Those hurt and painful eyes fell on the woman beside Xia Dong. It's just that because Chu Muihu's eyes fell on Xia Dong's body just now, she didn't even notice her. Now when Ling Hong pointed him, he saw the woman with her belly button exposed and her light yellow hair leaning against the wall, her body trembling slightly. Who is she? Chu Muihu frowned with a puzzled look on her face. It's my former girlfriend. Ling Hong looked at the woman and sighed deeply. My hands became fists and my fingers were embedded in the palms. Chu Mui raised her eyebrows, glanced at Ling Hong, Xia Dong and the woman, and a playful smile appeared at the corner of her mouth. 
it should be that Ling Hong's girlfriend was in the heat, admiring vanity, and was snatched by Xia Dong. But, I didn't expect this woman to be so stupid that she came to Ling Hong's trouble. Chu Muihu turned his head and looked at Xia Dong coldly, Xia Dong, you really don't know the lesson at all. I don't count as molesting, but you also grab someone else's girlfriend. I rely on me, rely on me. Yet Yen Ming let out a loud yell, this guy is so courageous, even the younger sister dare to molest. At this moment, Yet Yen Ming looked at Xia Dong's eyes, it was simply looking at the dead. Xiao Junyan's dark and deep eyes flashed with a cold chill, and his eyes were firmly locked on Xia Dong's body. The next moment, Xia Dong felt a cold wind on his back, causing him to shiver. The cold sweat on his back burst out, and the plackets of his back were soaked. Up. Chu Muihu turned her head and looked at this vain woman coldly, with a mocking look in her eyes. Such a woman is simply not worth it. Boss Ling, what do you plan to do? Chu Muihu turned to look at Ling Hong and asked. Ling Hong looked at Xia Dong, and then at the woman, who was his girlfriend. The woman seemed to know the situation at this time, looked at Ling Hong, crying with tears all over her face, and threw herself in front of him, Ling Hong, I was wrong, I was wrong. Ling Hong avoided the woman, his eyes were very cold, he clenched his fists in both hands, took a deep breath, and said coldly, Fei Wu, in the future, you are you and I am me. You go. In any case, this woman was his girlfriend and she still couldn't bear it, but after this time, the two of them can only be strange passers-by. Ling Hong, I was wrong. Wu Fei shook her head with tears and a pitiful look. I will never be harsh to you anymore. I will be obedient, don't drive me. Go. Chu Mui raised her eyebrows, listened to Wu Fei's words, her eyes narrowed slightly, and she sneered in her heart. Such a woman is simply not qualified to be loved. Ling Hong leaned against the wall, raised his hand and knocked off the hand where Fei Wu was holding his arm, with an angry look on his face, because his face was injured, he looked very vicious, get out. Wu Fei was shocked by Ling Hong's move, her eyes looked at him in horror, and she turned around and ran away in fright. Seeing Wu Fei leaving behind, Ling Hong closed his eyes and exhaled deeply. Chu Muihu turned her head and folded her hands, looking at Xia Dong in front of him, you are the only one left now. Xia Dong was about to kneel down, begging with all his face, Chu, Chu Muihu, I was wrong, I. I will never dare any more. You let me go. I will never come to Ling Hong again. I'm in trouble. This is all that bitch, it has nothing to do with me. Cut, a useless man. Yet Yen Ming said with scorn in his eyes. Do you think that's fine? Just apologize and it's all right. Chu Muihu looked at Xia Dong coldly, glanced at the entire messy restaurant, his tone was full of mockery. Xia Dong quickly took out a card from his pocket and put it in both hands, I. I only have more than a thousand in my hand, no more. Chu Muihu looked at the bank card Xia Dong handed over, then turned to look at Ling Hong, what do you think? Ling Hong looked at Chu Muihu with a grateful expression in his eyes, and said, Miss Chu, thanks to you this time, you can do whatever you want, I will listen to you. Chu Muihu pursed her lips and groaned glanced at Xia Dong, took the bank card, and said faintly, don't show up here in the future and hear it clearly. Yes, yes. Xia Dong nodded quickly, feeling that if he was amnesty, he quickly reported the password of the bank card, thank you, thank you Miss Chu. A sly smile appeared at the corner of Chu Muihu's mouth, smiling like a little fox all the time, and looked up at Yet Yen Ming, Yet Yen Ming, have you played enough? Yet Yen Ming, who was suddenly named, was taken aback, blinked, and looked at Chu Muihu's sly smile like a little fox. He was very puzzled. What does it mean to fight enough? No. Before Yet Yen Ming could answer, Xiao Junyan answered for him. Three question marks appeared on Yet Yen Ming's forehead. What does this mean? Why did he feel that he didn't understand how the boss and the younger sister could speak? 
Chu Muyu nodded, and said to Yet Yen Ming, Then leave it to you, send this guy out. Yet Yen Ming was taken aback, as if only then understood the meaning of Chu Muyu's words, wasn't it just for him to beat Xia Dong? Thinking of this, Yet Yen Ming couldn't help but roll his eyes and talk straight. Why are you so obscure? Yet Yen Ming understood this, but Xia Dong didn't understand it. Thank you, thank you. Xia Dong nodded gratefully when he heard that he could let himself go. Yet Yen Ming looked at Xia Dong with a joking smile in his eyes. He suddenly felt a strong gaze. Turning his head, seeing Xia Junyan's cold eyes, his body suddenly trembled. It seems, it seems, that the look in the boss's eyes is to let himself teach this guy severely. That's right, who made this idiot dare to molest the younger sister? Thinking of this, the corners of Ye Tian Ming's mouth were also evil and evil, and he walked towards Xia Dong, directly raised his hand to lead his back collar, and dragged him directly out of the hotel. Xia Dong was stunned, and when he recovered, he quickly yelled, trying to remove Ye Tian Ming's hand, but he couldn't break his hand, and he screamed, No! Let me go! Let me go! Chu Muyu looked at Ye Tian Ming's leaving back, and the look of Xia Dong being dragged out in embarrassment, with a smile on her mouth. Ling Hong watched Xia Dong being dragged out, turned his head and looked at Chu Muyu again, bowed deeply to her, Thank you Miss Chu for your life-saving grace. Chu Muyu waved her hand and said, What kind of life-saving grace, don't say it's so serious. Ling Hong shook his head and looked at Chu Muyu firmly and gratefully. If it hadn't been for her arrival, he would have been beaten to death by those punks. If it weren't for you, I would have been beaten to death by those a long time ago. If it weren't for you, Xia Dong and that would not leave. Ling Hong sighed deeply, with a painful look in his eyes. Let him pass the past. What you should think about now is to deal with the situation in front of you. Chu Muihu smiled slightly, comforted Ling Hong, and glanced at the hotel's situation. Ling Hong nodded. After helping Ling Hong's injuries, Chu Muihu sat back on the chair and said, Yes, I have 65 million here, but it's useless. I don't know if you can help. I do things. Damn. Hearing the amount of money reported by Chu Muihu, Yet Yen Ming was the first to call out, So much money, little sister, where did your money come from? Chu Muihu raised her eyebrows, looked at Yet Yen Ming, and said, did you forget that I know medical skills? Brother Xiao gave me 50 million medical expenses first. When he heard Chu Muihu's words, Yet Yen Ming had nothing to say for a moment, and turned to look at Xiao Junyan, Boss, you gave me so much. Chu Muihu touched her chin, looked at Yet Yen Ming with a smile, a wicked smile appeared at the corner of her mouth, it seems that you didn't pay me medical expenses, right? Yet Yen Ming suddenly stiffened with a somewhat awkward smile on his face, touched his nose, and said, This, it seems, as if it was not given. However, it was your master who treated me. It shouldn't be given to you. Who said that? Didn't you get your follow-up treatment? Is it all free for me? Chu Mui raised her eyebrows and asked coldly. Yet Yen Ming immediately lost his smile, rubbing his hands, and said affectionately, Hey, junior sister, I have such a good relationship with you, there is no need to pay, right? Chu Muihu sneered and raised her eyebrows towards Xiao Junyan, as far as the relationship is concerned, brother Xiao has a better relationship with me. He gave it to me. Do you think you can make an exception? When Yet Yen Ming heard the words, the corners of his mouth twitched fiercely, and he touched his pockets with both hands. Let's talk about it, how much do you think you have to pay for the medical expenses? Chu Muihu raised her eyebrows and said lightly. Xiao Junyan glanced at Yet Yen Ming and said, 20 million. I rely on. Yet Yen Ming heard this amount, and immediately yelled, Boss, you don't bring this, 20 million, how can you have so much money? I don't have any money. I won't give you money for future tasks. Xiao Junyan glanced at Yet Yen Ming coldly, with a threatening look in his eyes. 
Yet Yen Ming is really going to kneel, the boss wants to be like this, he's bullying his honest person so much, he is absolutely valuing color and dereliction of friends. He also knew that Chu Muyo must be opening a restaurant, and then Xiao Junyan was worried that she had no money, so she deliberately cheated him. I've got a pitfall on my brother, can I still be a good brother? I give it. How can I not give it? Yet Yen Ming removed a far-fetched smile on his face and said, But ah, uh, I'll give the younger sister fifty million. The voice fell, and I don't know why, yet Yen Ming felt that his back was chilly, feeling something was wrong, and turned his head to look at his boss in a puzzled way. Yet Yen Ming saw his boss's dark handsome face faintly exploding, and quickly explained, Old, boss, why are you looking at me? Isn't fifty million enough? Chu Muyo laughed when she heard it. The Yuan family gave her ten million, and Xiao Junyan was not happy, so how could Ye Tian Ming's money exceed him? It can't be more than him. Chu Muyo kindly reminded Ye Tian Ming, lest he offend Xiao Junyan, this mean. Ye Tian Ming heard the end of Chu Muyo, and instantly three black lines fell on his forehead. How does he feel that his outlook on life has been wrong since his boss had a younger sister? Even this kind of thing is jealous. P.S., it's added, the author has to work hard, you have to work hard. If you don't have a collection, you must come to a collection. Moi. Everyone has a recommendation ticket to vote for a recommendation vote, and some money is a reward. Cough cough cough. Yet Yen Ming quickly explained to Xiao Junyan, I invested in the remaining 30 million. Boss, what do you think? This girl really doesn't know how to serve his boss. Sure enough, Xiao Junyan's expression improved a lot when he heard the explanation, and he nodded gently, yes. Chu Muyu didn't expect that Ye Tian Ming would also want to buy shares. She said that she hasn't thought about letting other people buy shares. Ling Hong was listening to Xiao Junyan and the others, only feeling that his head was a little big, how he listened to them, it seemed that he didn't treat money as money. Thousands of them are free, and they still let him, a poor man with no money, live. Chu, Miss Chu, what are you going to do? You don't need so much to open a restaurant, right? Ling Hong still couldn't help but reminded. Knowing that he opened this restaurant, plus the tables, chairs and benches, it was only a few hundred thousand. They actually said that they would have tens of millions at hand. Is this going to open a hotel? Although Chu Muyo gave him an unusual feeling, Chu Muyo was still very young after all, and she was really afraid that she was just playing with it. But thinking that there are two adults like Ye Tian Ming, shouldn't they? Chu Muyo smiled slightly and said, As you know, I am a Chinese medicine doctor. Therefore, I plan to open a Chinese medicinal restaurant. The special feature in it is to make some medicated diets. These medicinal diets can regulate people's physical conditions. But, it doesn't take tens of millions, right? Ling Hong said remindingly. Yes, even if it is a medicinal restaurant, it doesn't cost so much money, right? At most, it's about a million. Chu Muyo lowered her eyes, tapped her fingers on the table lightly, a smile appeared at the corner of her mouth, and said, We have a different restaurant a different medicinal restaurant. Why is it different from others? Yet Yen Ming was excited and asked Chu Muyo curiously. The corner of Chu Muyo's mouth rose slightly, and she glanced at Yet Yen Ming and Xiao Junyan and said, You should also have some membership cards, right? Of course. Yet Yen Ming nodded, propped his chin with one hand, just getting a membership card, it's not new. Divided into membership levels. Chu Muyu said with bright light in her eyes, divided into ordinary membership cards, silver cards, gold cards, and platinum cards. Level. Ling Hong was taken aback, lowered his head and muttered, as if he was thinking about whether the suggestion that Chu Muyu said was feasible. Chu Muyu nodded gently, we choose a new address, a place with a beautiful environment. When Ye Tian Ming heard this, he suddenly pouted. There are many places like Xingxi, but almost all of them are remote places, and no one wants to go. 
He understood Chum Wu's plan, but someone had to go there. Chum Wu raised her eyebrows and looked at Yet Yanming and said with a smile, Who said I'm going to drive over there now? Um, what do you mean by this? Yet Yanming blinked his eyes suddenly, looking at Chum Wu. Chum Wu turned to Ling Hong and said, Boss Ling. Don't call me Boss Ling, you will be my boss from now on. Ling Hong said bitterly when he heard this name. Chum Wu nodded gently, and said, Then I will call you Big Brother Ling. Can. Big Brother Ling, you can open this store first and treat it as your own store. Withdraw 200,000 from the money I gave you. It should be enough. After all, this is the store your father left for you. Chu Mu Yu touched her chin and said. Chu Mu's words made Ling Hong's heart hot, but she didn't expect that she would even think of this, which made him a little touched, thank you. After all, I can't manage it. From now on, the whole medicinal restaurant will need you to do it alone. Chu Mu smiled and said, it's just going to be very tired. Ling Hong's eyes gleamed with excitement, and he shook his head and said, I'm not tired. If I can, I would like to open a bigger restaurant too, but the money is limited. After all, she's still a student now, so Chu Muyo can only give some general operations, and Ling Hong has to do the rest. Your store is open first, and you are building another restaurant, preferably in the city center. A restaurant that is not too small, but not a big one. Chu Muyo thought for a while and said, Yet Yanming frowned and said puzzledly, since you want to open it, you should open it up, why do you make it so small? Chum Wu smiled and said, don't you know how rare things are expensive? Um, is there any difference? Yet Yanming certainly knows that things are rare, but what does it have to do with this? Chum Wu's fingers were still tapping the tabletop rhythmically, and said, as long as the medicinal food we make is good it will also have an effect on the human body. It will definitely arouse the attention of many people, and many people will come. However, if our restaurant is so big that we can welcome everyone to eat every time, and we can let them eat every day. Do you think anyone will come in the future? That's right. Yet Yanming nodded and said, but, you can't drive that small. Chum Wu smiled lightly and said, didn't I say that we still want to find a place with a beautiful environment? As long as a large medicated food restaurant is built there, those people will definitely not stay there again in order to eat medicated food afterwards. A small place to eat. Yet Yanming touched his chin and listened to Chum Wu's narration, his eyes getting brighter, and then he gave Chum Wu a thumbs up and said complimentingly, That's right, junior sister, you're really it's so clever. Chum Wu shrugged and said, Actually, if you want to catch those diners, the most important thing is the chef's craftsmanship and the effect of the medicated food. Otherwise, even if I have money, I can't make it. Naturally, Chum Wu knew about those medicated diets, but Dong Fang Sheng gave her a lot of medicated diets. After all, Chum Wu fell off the cliff at the beginning. To recover his body as soon as possible, he should not only drink medicine, cultivate her internal strength, but also use diet therapy to restore her body. So Dong Feng Sheng gave Chum Wu almost all of his medicated diet, so she could learn more, and she could make it by herself in the future. As long as Chum Wu took out a small part of it and passed it to the chefs, it would surely be popular in Xingxi. Yet Yan Ming nodded approvingly, smashed it, smashed his mouth, and said with a grin, I have tasted the craftsmanship of the little junior sister. It is really good. Those are all medicinal foods. Every time I eat, I can feel me. Your body is better than before. A confident smile appeared at the corner of Chum Wu's mouth. She was born again. People in the 21st century, with their living standards improved, will pay more attention to their physical health and spiritual liberation. Otherwise, why do so many people like to travel during the holidays in the future, and go out to play when there is nothing to do, go to the farm and other places to play? Although Ling Hong did not speak on the side, he kept listening to Chum Wu's words. Because he has opened a restaurant, 
he knows how important eating is to people. If it weren't for the dishes in his restaurant that tasted good, even if the decoration was clean, there would be no way to keep those diners. Every time the old customers say the most things, isn't it because the dishes here taste good and the prices are fair? Unexpectedly, Chum Wu, a little girl of only 14 or 5 years old, could already see these things so clearly. Miss Chu, please tell me, what you want to do, I will listen to you. A light of excitement flashed in Ling Hong's eyes. To be honest, Ling Hong was already a little impatient to do it. In the past, he wanted to open such a restaurant, but his ability was limited, and the loan money was also limited, not tens of millions or tens of millions of loans. Now Chum Wu has invested more than 60 million yuan, can this hotel be small? Ling Hong, who had just walked out of the university door, was still full of youthful blood in his heart, and wanted to go out for a break. Chum Wu touched her chin, and was about to speak, yet Yen Ming said, since the junior sister has invested 65 million, then I will also add in my medical expenses of 20 million and a share of 30 million. It should be possible to open a nice restaurant. Hearing Ye Tian Ming's words, Ling Hong almost didn't fall off the stool. Nima's, he also said that he opened a good restaurant, that's more than 100 million dollars. Can open a five-star hotel, all right. Xiao Junyan pondered for a moment, then he also spoke, his eyes fixed on Chum Wu's body all the time, I also invested 50 million yuan, 5% of the shares. Yet Yen Ming heard his boss's words, he immediately smashed his lips. How did he feel that he was sold by the boss? The boss invests 50 million, and only 5% of the equity is invested. He invests only 30 million, which is less than the boss. Will he dare to report more shares than the boss? Thinking of this, Yet Yen Ming really wanted to run away in tears. In order to make more money for the younger junior sisters, he even directly lowered their shares. Boss, don't take you so cheating. Chum Wu also didn't expect Xiao Junyan to speak suddenly, and what she said shocked her even more. This, isn't it? Chum Wu frowned and said. According to their investment ratio, Xiao Junyan and Ye Tian Ming can get 20% to 30% of the share of shares no matter what, but now it is directly pulled to 5%, which is too small. It's okay. Xiao Junyan's eyes flashed softly, turning his head to look at Ye Tian Ming, but his eyes instantly became sharp. Ye Tian Ming's body trembled suddenly, this is the brother, and it is for selling at this time. Yes, right, right, it's only 5%, then, then I only need 3%. Ye Tian Ming only wanted to run away with tears in his heart. His money was also earned by himself but the boss would cheat others. Chum Wu looked at Ye Tian Ming and Xiao Junyan, how could she not understand Xiao Junyan's purpose, she could only sigh helplessly in her heart. Okay. Chum Wu could only nod her head and agreed, then looked at Ye Tian Ming and said, however, brother Xiao and you, Ye Tian Ming are both 5%. I don't care. Ye Tian Ming grinned, thinking that the little junior sister is the best. Chum Wu turned to look at Ling Hong, thought for a while, and said, Big Brother Ling, you have no funds now, but you will need to run around for the next thing. You will be more tired. I will give you 100%. 20. Hearing the number of shares that Chum Wu gave him, Ling Hong bit his tongue, shook his head and said, No, no. No, I, I don't need that much. It is necessary. After all, I will focus on my studies next time. I will only give you a general development direction. You will need to deal with the future things alone. Chum Wu shook his head and explained. Ling Hong immediately waved his hand and said, No, no, even though Miss Chu, you said you let me deal with the hotel business, but this is too much. After all, I didn't pay a penny. 20% is too much. Give me 1% I am already very happy. The investment of the entire hotel, Chum Wu alone is more than 80 million, while Xiao Junyan and Ye Tian Ming are respectively 50 million and 30 million, 
even they are only 5%, he did not even give a penny. Take 20%, he will definitely be soft when he takes it. Yet Yen Ming looked at Ling Hong's appearance, and the corner of his mouth twitched, revealing a wicked smile, and said jokingly, Little junior sister, you see that some people are scared. 20% is indeed a little too much. Give 10%. When Ling Hong heard it, his face was still full of grief, 10% is still too much, so there are 16 million. Chum Wihu thought for a while, then turned her eyes and said seriously to Ling Hong, Big Brother Ling, since you don't want 20%, then 10%. If you don't want to, I can only find someone else to cooperate. Up. Ling Hong's expression suddenly changed, his hands were tightly clenched, and he was silent for ten minutes before he took your head heavily, and looked at Chum Wu, okay, then ten percent. Upon hearing Ling Hong's answer, Chum Wu's mouth showed a smile, and she knew that Ling Hong would definitely agree. Ling Hong is a maxima, without bowl, there is no way to show his talents. Chum Wu stretched out her hand to Ling Hong and said with a smile, then I wish us a happy cooperation. Happy cooperation. Ling Hong stretched out his hand and clasped Chum Wu's hands tightly. No one would have thought that in this messy and narrow box, a shocking decision was made in the future. Ha! Huh. Okay, the most important thing for us now is to choose a new small medicinal food restaurant. Yet Yen Ming laughed and reminded everyone, in a large scale one, we can go everywhere and see a good environment. Chum Wu nodded lightly, and said to Ling Hong, Big Brother Ling, first go and deal with your hotel, take care of your hotel, and then go find the new address of the medicinal restaurant. Ling Hong nodded and said with a smile, This restaurant, I can give him to my dad first, anyway, my dad has always come here to help from time to time. I'll find an address suitable for opening a medicinal restaurant. In addition to the address, you also recruit some highly skilled chefs. I will teach them how to cook medicated diet. However, they must sign a contract and cannot disclose the medicinal diet. If they are disclosed, they will be legally liable. Chu Mu Yu's eyes were shining brightly, and she exhorted. Ling Hong nodded solemnly, knowing the importance of the medicated diet, I know this. After all this kind of stuff spreads out, they don't even want to open a medicinal restaurant. Yet Yen Ming was very curious and asked Chum Wu, Mother Wu, then you plan to open your medicinal restaurant at home? Where are the small and large ones? Chum Wu touched her chin and said, The big one, I have already chosen it. Damn! Yet Yen Ming yelled, He can only say that Chum Wu's speed is too fast, this girl has already been optimistic about the place, waiting for the time to come. He really didn't expect that Chum Wu would be so patient. Chum Wu turned her head and glanced at Yet Yen Ming, the corners of her mouth raised slightly, which was not what she had already expected. However, although Xingxi is about to develop, it has not really developed Xingxi after all. War is gradually going on in many places, but not yet in some suburbs. Chum Wu headed for these outskirts of scenery, where the price of the land was not only low, but also the environment was beautiful, which was suitable for her requirements. Then where are you going? Yet Yen Ming blinked and asked Chum Wu curiously. Chum Wu glanced at Yet Yen Ming, you've also been to that place, the place that Jin Temple can't reach. There are still one or two rows of mountains in front of Jin Temple. Although the mountains are not high, they are not low. There are natural lakes under the mountains, which is just right. Moreover, the situation there will also develop tourism in the future, but it will be ten years later. The most important thing is that Chum Wu wanted to stay closer to where she was studying, so that if there was anything she could do at that time, she could also check it after she went back when it was being built. Yet Yen Ming has been there, naturally knowing the situation there, and nodded, there are mountains and rivers over there, it is indeed an excellent treasure. Chin Temple where is it? Ling Hong asked Chum Wu and the others in a puzzled way. This can't be blamed on Ling Hong not knowing, this Jin temple was originally in the mountain ditch, 
and even the place chosen by Chumwu is still some way away from Chin Temple. It takes 10 minutes to drive around the foot of the mountain by car. 2. Let him take you to see next time, and choose the address over there. Chum Wu raised her eyebrows and glanced at Yet Yen Ming, and said to Ling Hong, Don't worry about the address over there. Brother Ling, you open the medicinal restaurant in the city center first. As long as you have a reputation, you can open a chain to choose an address, and it will be easier. Yet Yen Ming raised his chin arrogantly and looked at Chum Wu, little junior sister, just leave it to me, nothing is easy. Chum Wu held his forehead helplessly, and glanced at Yet Yen Ming angrily, no, and we are not in a hurry. First, let's see the response from the medicinal restaurant before deciding the size of the building. Moreover, I also hope that rely on your own ability to get the land over there, if they make trouble, you will find them again. Yet Yen Ming curled his lips, only feeling a little troublesome, but since it was the request of the junior sister, he could only nod his head, okay. It's up to you. Furthermore, this is my test for Brother Ling. Chum Wu turned her head and smiled at Ling Hong and said, in the future, there will be a lot of trouble. You can't find someone else every time you have trouble. I hope Brother Ling, you can do everything well. Experience is the most important thing. Ling Hong was taken aback, then showed a confident smile and nodded solemnly. Maybe it would be convenient to have Ye Tian Ming's help now. However, you can't ask for help every time you encounter trouble, so what else does Chum Wu need him to do? As Chum Wu said, it was a test for him, and he also had to prove his strength, he could. Here, Chum Wu was discussing the opening of the medicinal restaurant, while on the other side, Zai Liang was in a feasting room with a gloomy expression on her face. Xiao Zai, what's the matter with you? Zai Liang, the girl with one arm around, saw his face, with a bright smile on her face, her fingers gently circled his chest, greasy and greasy. Asked. If Chum Wu were here she would definitely recognize the identity of this girl at a glance. This girl turned out to be a Hong Yushi. The company at home closed down, and Hong Yushi, who owed a lot of money, didn't know what happened, and was sold to such a place. Under the threat of those people, the Hong Yu poems that were still unwilling at the beginning can only be done obediently. However, Hong Yushi was also lucky, because she was young and she was still a virgin. For some people with evil tastes, she still liked it very much, but she made a lot of money. After experiencing the pleasure of getting money, Hong Yushi became more proficient and neat, and showed even more proficiency. Hearing the whispering words of Hong Yushi, Xi Liang raised his hand and pinched her chin. There was fire in his eyes, and Sen asked in a cold tone, Do you think this young master is handsome? Hong Yushi was taken aback and a far-fetched smile appeared at the corner of his mouth, yes, yes. Xiao Zai is the most handsome. She didn't know why, today Zai Liang would show this appearance. Zai Liang snorted coldly, a triumphant look flashed in his eyes, but then an angry fire flashed again, then do you like this young master? Of course I like it, does Xiao Zai still need to ask? Hong Yushi said with a smile. Hearing Hong Yushi's words, Zai Liang immediately threw her away angrily, kicked her on the coffee table in front of him, his eyes seemed to be poisoned, and his face was fierce. Xiao Zai, what's the matter with you? At this moment, the door of the box was opened, and a middle-aged man walked in with his arms around two beautifully dressed women. Seeing the incoming person, Hong Yushi's face was slightly aside, and he lowered his head quickly not daring to look at the person. Zai Liang looked up and saw the middle-aged man who walked in. He snorted and sat on the sofa again, Brother Pao, how come you have time to come here today? This is a shop opened by Lao Tzu, of course I have to come and see it. This middle-aged man is no one else, but the owner of this bar, Brother Pao, who is quite famous in this small area. However, Xiao Zai even if you are angry, you can't vent your anger with what I have here. Do you think it's broken, but you have to pay compensation? 
Xiliang's face was very ugly. He was originally angry because of Chu Muyu's affairs. He became even more angry when he heard Brother Pao's words, this young master does not lack this money. Yes, who is Xiaozai? Your father's Kishan Group is the most famous hotel group company in Xingxi. Brother Pao said with a smile on his mouth. Humph! Xiliang snorted coldly, but his tone was full of pride and pride. However, Xiaozai, why are you so angry? Who dares to make you so angry? Brother Pao looked at Xiliang curiously, then asked with a smile, before turning his head to ask in a cold voice. Hong Yushi, Hong Yushi, don't you serve us poorly, Xiaozai? When Hong Yushi heard Brother Pao's words, her body shuddered and he shook his head quickly, with tears in his eyes, No, no, Brother Pao, when Xiaozai came today, he came with anger. It has nothing to do with me. P.S. Suddenly I felt that the ending of Hong Yushi was not miserable enough, so I pulled her out and gave her a miserable ending. Xiliang looked at Brother Pao coldly, Brother Pao, do you care too much? Brother Pao didn't have any anger at Xiliang's speaking attitude, with an arrogant smile on his face, it's not too much care, but boredom recently, so if Xiaozai has anything to help, you can find me, we are friends, don't you think? Hearing Brother Pao's words, Xiliang was taken aback, then the anger on his face disappeared, turning into a smug smile. Okay, Brother Pao, you really need your help. Xiliang smiled, leaning against the back of the sofa, and said. Brother Pao waved his hand and said boldly, let's talk. Xiliang tapped his finger lightly on his knee and said, I recently saw a woman, but this woman is a little troublesome. When Brother Pao heard this, he looked at Xiliang curiously, and a playful smile appeared on the corner of his mouth, oh. There are women who don't give Xiaozai face so much. I don't know which eldest lady is. Xiliang snorted coldly, his tone was full of disdain, the fart eldest lady is just a wild species who doesn't even know who his parents are. Regarding Chu Muyu's information, Xiliang naturally investigated, so the more he thought about it, the more useless he became, and the more he thought about it, the more angry he became. This didn't give him face so much, and even dared to beat him, so that he would have no face to go to school, so he could only stay at home to heal his injuries. If someone sees the wound on his face, then he won't be ashamed. Ha, huh, then how could Xiaozai be so angry? Just come hard. Xiaozai, you haven't done anything like this before. Brother Pao said with a disapproving smile. Xiliang's eyes flashed with a cold light, and said, It seems that it is really going to be hard. Do you really think I can play Xiliang casually? Ha <laughs> ha, the woman who can make us Xiaozai care so much must be very beautiful, right? Brother Pao looked at Xiliang and said jokingly. Brother Pao's words made Xiliang's eyes show a lustful light. It is indeed a good-looking girl. It is the most beautiful girl I have ever seen, and it is also very powerful, especially her indifferent. With a cold and arrogant temperament, I just want to press her under me. However, immediately, Xiliang's face showed an angry look again, but, that bitch, so shamelessly for my young master, my young master deliberately transferred to the experimental middle school for him, and also deliberately transferred to her class. I really think how noble I am, I am not messing with the boys in their school. Thinking of the rumored relationship between Chu Muyu and Wu Hongjun in the school, Xiliang was extremely angry. While listening to the Hong Yu poems, when he heard what Xiliang said, a flash of surprise flashed in his eyes. For nothing else, it was because he heard Xiliang said that he had transferred to the experimental middle school specially. She was also a student in the experimental middle school before, and they were all Chumwu, and it was Chumwu, a who harmed her. Thinking of this, Hong Yushi's hatred for Chumwu rose again in his heart. Originally, her life had caused her to press Chumwu's hatred in her heart, thinking that she would find a chance to avenge Chumwu in the future. However, it seems that there is a chance to avenge her. However, 
I don't know who the girl Xi Liang likes in the end is. If it's not Chum Wu, she must ask Xi Liang to find Chum Wu. Thinking of the hatred towards Chum Wu, Hong Yuxi forgot that brother Pao was beside him, with a smile on his face, and asked Xi Liang, Young Master Xi, I don't know who the child you are talking about is. Your face. Xi Liang snorted coldly, gritted his teeth and said a name, Chum Wu. Hearing the three words Chum Wu, Hong Yuxi's body was shocked. Hong Yuxi didn't expect that Xi Liang actually went there for Chum Wu. Chum Wu. Hong Yuxi almost cried out in shock. When Xi Liang heard Hong Yuxi's call, he turned to look at her with a look of incomprehension in his eyes, and asked, What's the matter with you? A look of anger and hatred appeared on Hong Yuxi's face, and said, Xi Xiao, maybe you don't know. I know this Chum Wu. Oh. Xi Liang raised her eyebrows when she heard Hong Yuxi's words. She didn't expect that she would know Chum Wu. Hong Yuxi gritted his teeth bitterly, Last semester, I was originally a student in the experimental middle school, and I was a companion of Chum Wu. Listening to the words of Hong Yuxi, Pao laughed and said, I remembered that it was because of that Chum Wu that you ended up like this. Xi Liang was immediately curious, and turned to look at Brother Pao, Brother Pao, you know. I know a little bit, but it was also because his father and I borrowed money, I couldn't get the debt, so I let this little girl come to me to sell. Brother Pao glanced at Hong Yuxi and said. Because of this relationship, Brother Pao also sent someone to inquire about it but he didn't expect that Chum Wu's incident would have such a big chain reaction that even Hong Yuxi's father would kill her mother. Then he was sentenced to death. Listening to Brother Pao's narration, Hong Yuxi's expression kept changing, and the anger in his heart continued to surge. Yes, if it weren't for Chum Wu, she wouldn't end up like this, she was still the eldest lady of the Hong family, enjoying the radiance. Although a lot of money can be made here, how can it be more comfortable than taking money from home? Xi Liang's eyes narrowed slightly, it seems that this Chum Wu is really extraordinary. Originally, I planned to let a few punks tie Chum Wu, but when he heard what Hong Yuxi said, it seemed that Chum Wu had a good skill, and a few punks couldn't help her. It's no wonder that he had trouble with Chum Wu before, and wanted to beat her, she escaped so easily, and finally hurt herself. How much do you know about Chum Wu? Xi Liang stretched out his fingers, pinched Hong Yuxi's chin, and asked her arrogantly. Facing Xi Liang's action, Hong Yuxi felt a little shame in her heart unconsciously, but in order to be able to take revenge, she had to bear it, and she was finally able to take revenge. I almost understand it. Hong Yuxi gritted his teeth in his eyes. In fact, Hong Yuxi really didn't understand at all but under this circumstance, she would not say even if she knew she didn't understand Chum Wu. Who is Xi Liang? That is the young master of the Kishin group. How could the little Chum Wu be able to handle it casually? Thinking of Xi Liang's help this time, Hong Yuxi was so excited and excited that she could finally get revenge again, and it was not in vain for her miserable life over the past few months. If you want to find Chum Wu, you will definitely not be able to subdue her from the front, you can only arrest someone to threaten her. Hong Yuxi said viciously with a cold light flashing in his eyes. P.S., by the way, if the author changes the cover, will everyone get used to it? If you're not used to it, don't change it. In order to deal with Chum Wu, Hong Yuxi naturally took the previous snake brother with his subordinates to trouble Chum Wu but instead told Brother Pao and Xi Liang about the fact that his subordinates were beaten. If they just took their own hands to find Chum Wu this time, they would probably fail again, so they had to arrest someone to threaten Chum Wu. Unexpectedly, that slut's skill is so good. Xi Liang's eyes flashed with coldness. Brother Pao leaned on the back of the sofa. He knew far more than Hong Yuxi. The time he knew Brother Snake, many people died but I don't know why these people died. Chum Wu still it's okay. Thinking of this, Brother Pao said faintly, I think it's useless to arrest people, let's think of another way. 
Brother Pao had already flinched in his heart, but only from the things that Hong Yushi said, he felt that Chumwio was unusual, and he had to go back and check the matter of Brother Snake. For people like him who are in the underworld, it is very clear to investigate this, and the impact of this matter is still somewhat large. When Xi Liang heard Brother Pao's words, his brows frowned tightly, and his expression was a little unhappy, Brother Pao, didn't you say you want to help? Why? Are you scared? Brother Gun raised his feet, took out a cigar, placed it in his mouth, lit with a lighter, took a deep breath, and exhaled a puff of smoke, Hong Yushi said, that woman, with great skill, I don't want my brothers to die, so I can't help this time, you can think of other ways. Hong Yushi didn't expect that Brother Pao would retreat, with immense resentment in his heart, and even spit in his heart. What kind of boss is even so timid? Xi Liang looked at Brother Pao coldly, Brother Pao, I can give you money. Brother Pao just got up, lowered his head and said to Xi Liang, those are my subordinates, even if they are injured, they will be very troublesome. When dealing with women, they don't have to be beaten. They can destroy a woman's reputation. What I said, you understand. Originally, Xi Liang was extremely angry when he heard that Brother Pao was unwilling to help him, but when he heard the following words, a flash of light flashed in his mind, and a sinister smile appeared on the corner of his mouth, okay. Brother Pao waved his hand, left the box, walked towards his room, and found a subordinate on the way, go and investigate the last thing Brother Snake did. Especially the things inside the factory building. Yes. Hearing Brother Pao's order, his subordinates quickly turned to investigate. Chum Wihu didn't know how Xi Liang and Hong Yuxi would retaliate against themselves. At this time, they were discussing the medicated restaurant with Xiao Junyan, Ye Tian Ming, and Ling Hong. Big Brother Ling, you should recruit chefs now. You need some highly skilled chefs to train them. I will take the time to check it out every few days as much as possible. Chum Wihu said to Ling Hong. Ling Hong nodded, well... Chef I still know some people, you can rest assured. There are 65 million in it, you can hold it first. Chum Wu handed her bank card to Ling Hong and said. Ling Hong was taken aback and looked at Chum Wu in surprise, you, are you not afraid that I will run away with the money? Chum Wu raised her mouth slightly, and said confidently, I don't doubt whether you are using people, you don't need to be. I believe in the man of Ling. Ling Hong only felt a warm current flowing in his heart, and looked at Chum Wia with emotion, Miss Chu, don't worry, I will not let you down. Opening a restaurant cannot be done in a day or two, so Chum Wia didn't pay attention either, and after discussing what to do with Ling Hong, she went back. It was another Monday, and Chum Wia didn't care about Xi Liang, let alone whether he came to school or not. On Monday, Xi Liang came to school. The injury on his face has recovered. Even if he comes to school, he will not be seen. Besides, he has a plan today. How can he not come? Thinking of his plan today, Xi Liang looked at Chum Wia with sullen and proud eyes, as if he could already see Chum Wia kneeling in front of him and apologizing to herself. Chum Wia looked down at the book, feeling a strong gaze towards him, and frowned slightly. However, she didn't look back, she was able to guess who was looking at herself, but she didn't look at it either, let him, and she didn't come to trouble her anyway. The day passed so smoothly. Originally thought that Xi Liang had given up, but when Chum Wia walked out of school carrying a school bag after school, she discovered that this matter was just the beginning. Chum Wia and a few classmates walked out of the school gate, but a young man with colorful hair and weird clothes ran towards him and he roared loudly, Chum Wu. Everyone heard this call, it was a meal, and they looked in the direction of the sound curiously, even Chum Wu was no exception. Chum Wu frowned slightly, someone was calling herself, and when she looked up, she saw a young gangster walking towards her. Chum Wu, you slut, you think that the poor love the rich. The little rushed to Chum Wu's front, clenched his right hand, raised his fist and hit Chum Wu's face. 
A cold chill flashed in Chu Muyu's eyes. She raised her hand and grabbed the little bastard's wrist. With a strong hand, with a flick, he directly threw the little three or four meters away and fell to the ground. The little fell to the ground, never expected that he would be thrown out by a girl so easily. Xi Liang, who followed immediately, saw this situation and this scene, and finally understood that what Hong Yuxi said is that you are true. Unexpectedly, Chu Muyu's skills were so good, this little still weighed 120 to 30 kilograms, but it was so easy to throw him away. The little fell on the ground and let out a painful wailing sound, and yelled, Chu Muyu, you bitch, you don't care if you are too poor and love the rich, and now you dare to beat me. Chu Muyu's pretty face was full of cold expressions, her eyes were full of chill, and she took a step forward, who are you? Chu Muyu was very displeased with what this little gangster said, saying that she disliked the poor and loved the rich. Who she despises poor and whose rich does she love? You still want to pretend not to know me. I am A Biao. When you followed me, you used to call me by brother Biao, but now you say that you don't know me. The little fell on the ground and was angry. Yelled, aren't you just disgusting that I am a gangster with no money? But, don't forget, you are already my woman, what qualifications do you have to sleep with other men? The more I listened, the colder the expression on Chu Muyu's face became. The parents who came to pick up their children home all looked at Chu Muyu with disgust and disgust. Tisk tusk, I didn't expect this girl to be such a beautiful person. Yet, yeah, yet. Yeah. It's such a terrible person. What the is going on in this school? How can it even accept such students? I think I should change the school for my children. This girl doesn't know whose family she belongs to. Not only is she messing around outside, she also dislikes the poor and loves the rich. If it were my daughter, I would definitely kill her directly. The surrounding discussion and ridicule came into the ears of Chu Muyu, Xi Liang, and the gangster A Biao. Xi Liang glanced triumphantly at the parents who insulted Chu Muyu around him, and sneered in his heart. For a girl, fame is the most important thing. Since you don't give this young master so much face, then this young master will let you lose all the face. Chu Muyu's eyes kept flashing with icy cold colors, and her brain was already turning quickly. She didn't know this little bastard, but now that she said something like that, someone must be bothering her. Zhang Yi, who was on the side, heard the gangster's words, and immediately yelled angrily, Asshole! Where did you come from? You are here to frame Chu Muyu. What do you think of the poor and the rich, don't frame people? Du Jingwen also nodded heavily and stood beside Chu Muyu, we are often together but we have never seen you before. You had better not frame people, we can call the police. A Biao got up from the ground. This time he had learned how to behave. He didn't step forward. He was three to four meters away from Chu Muyu, for fear of being thrown away by her again. Facing the accusations of Zhang Yi and Du Jingwen, A Biao did not have any guilty conscience. Instead, he leaned on his chin and said righteously, I said nothing wrong. Chu Muyu is just a poor lover. Rich, you don't know her at all. She is a bitch. She has been with me for a long time. I used to give her money often. Now she is raised by a rich man and doesn't need me anymore, so she kicked me. The little bastard's words made all the parents around who watched the theater show a look of disgust. Pooh. This girl is really hopeless, if it were me, I would kill her. There was constant scolding around, all accusing Chu Muyu. Chu Muyu raised her eyes, glanced coldly at the parents who were watching the show, and suddenly smiled. Everyone was stunned when they saw the smile on Chu Muyu's face. They didn't understand, how could she still laugh at this time? Is it crazy? Chu Muyu stood in the center of the crowd like this. Her petite body stood so casually, but her body exuded a noble temperament. You're all so grown UPS, you can't even understand right and wrong. I don't know what others say, I don't know, you have lived for so many years, have you lived for nothing? 
Yes, Chumwia was mocking the people around her who were scolding her, and she believed this little bastard's words so easily. When the parents heard Chumwia's words, their faces suddenly turned red, and they didn't know what to say. The little suddenly became anxious and shouted, Chumwia, do you want to deny it? If it's not true, why should I come to you? Chumwia smiled and looked at them mockingly. The smile on the corner of her mouth was full of ridicule, say that I have something to do with you and have an affair with you, what evidence do you have? Before you frame others, you must show evidence. When Du Jingwen heard Chum Wu's words, she smiled on her face, laughed a few times, and pointed to the little A Biao, yes, you said it has something to do with Chum Wu. You can show evidence. What evidence do you have to prove that you are related to Chum Wu? When A Biao heard Du Jingwen's words, he snorted coldly, took out a photo from his pocket, and shook it in front of everyone, this photo is proof. Take a look and see if this is true. Chum Wu. Chum Wu looked at the photo A Biao was holding, her eyes narrowed slightly. All the people watching the theater around were looking at the photos A Biao was holding, and they were suddenly angry. When Chum Wu said about them just now, they were righteous and they couldn't refute it. Yes, they did believe A Biao's words without listening to what Chum Wu said, and they thought Chum Wu was that kind of woman so they scolded her, which was a bit wrong. However, now that A Biao took out the photo, Chum Wu had no way to refute it. Nonsense! I just said so righteously. Now that people have evidence, it proves that what he said is true. I thought I really misunderstood, Nemas, this is really a little bitch. Sure enough, it's a bitch. No wonder this person who looks like a is so angry. It doesn't matter if you are too poor and love the rich. I've been so cheap at a young age. I really haven't seen it before. No, I must call the arrogant school to expel this student, otherwise, what should I do if my child is damaged? Yes, right, right, now my son is in the third year of junior high. If he is ruined by this bitch, whoever I will judge. The people around started screaming again and now Chum Wu became even more disgusted. Xiliang stood in the crowd, the corners of his mouth raised slightly, and a triumphant smile appeared on his face. He didn't go out, he knew that he was not suitable to go out now, he just had to look at Chum Wu ashamed. I don't know if class 8 is also over, and Sophie and Xiamoyu also walked out of the school. Seeing what was happening outside, there was a light of excitement in their eyes. They all hope that Chum Wu has an accident more than anyone else, and they all hope that her reputation will be destroyed, and then Wu Hung Jun and Xi Liang are theirs, let them know how much Chum Wu is not worthy of them. Sophie stood out from the crowd, pointed angrily at Chum Wu, and yelled, Chum Wu, you bitch, I really misunderstood you. I didn't expect you to be such a shameless girl. It's also rare for Xiao Moyu to stand on the same front with Sophie and the two women called Chum Wu together, Chum Wu, you slut, it doesn't count as if you seduce Xi Liang, you're still messing around with men outside. I really dislike the poor and love the rich. Seeing that Xi Liang has money in his family, you can send it to the door yourself. Nonsense. You guys. Miu Yu is not such a person. I can testify. Du Jingwen pointed at them angrily, her eyes red. She believes that Chum Wu is not such a person, because she has always known that Chum Wu always goes out to make money every day, and she always sees her. However, these people actually framed her so much, Du Jingwen was anxious and angry. Chum Wu turned his head and looked at the two of Sophie and Xiaomoyu who stood up. There was a suspicion in her heart. Could it be that they made this little bastard? After all, she didn't have many enemies in the school. It seems that by now there are three people, Sophie, Xiaomoyu, and Xi Liang, and they are all suspects. Hey! Testify! Du Jingwen, what qualifications do you have to testify? You and Chum Wu are good friends, and it's useless for you to testify. Sophie snorted and said mockingly. Xiaomoyu nodded in agreement, 
and said arrogantly, That's right, people even took out the physical evidence, what else do you have to refute? Chum Wu, you'd better admit it obediently. Sophie raised her chin and looked at Chum Wu triumphantly. Chum Wu looked at the photo above and smiled again. Now the photosynthesis technology is really not good at all. Do you think that you can prove it by holding a synthesized photo? Chum Wu sneered. When the voice fell, everyone was stunned, and the people who originally wanted to scream again stopped. How? Photosynthesis? What do you mean? It is no wonder that it is only the end of the 20th century. For these people, photos and CDs have never been heard before, let alone that they can be synthesized. If it weren't for Chum Wu who was reborn from the future, maybe she would have been framed by the gangster, and she would be speechless. Hearing what Chum Wu said, Xi Liang among the crowd was slightly taken aback, his face was a little ugly, and he never expected that Chum Wu knew the photo was synthesized. After all, this kind of photosynthesis is very clear to some upper-class people, especially some people who work in the media. For ordinary people, this idiom has never been heard before, so I don't know, and I am a little at a loss at what Chum Wu said. And that little bastard's face suddenly became a little ugly, and the hand holding the photo was a little trembling. He naturally knew that the photo was fake. After all, he knew the most about whether he had anything to do with Chum Wu. You, what nonsense, what nonsense, this is true, it's not a synthesis. The little immediately yelled in panic. Chum Wu sneered, looking at the panic on the face, with a ridiculous smile on her face, nonsense? Since I'm nonsense, why are you so panicked? You are stammering? If this thing is true, you should be righteous. At this time, the parents who watched the theater around felt that their heads were missing, and they felt that they couldn't keep up with Chum Wu's thinking. They don't even know what the composite photo is, and now they see the punks again, it seems that it's really not the same thing. Seeing the passers-by watching the theater around, the gangster suddenly scratched his neck. Hearing Chum Wu's words, he knew that he was a little panicked just now. He quickly said righteously, who said I was panicked? I was angry just now. I don't know what photo is being synthesized. This photo was taken when we were together. It seems that you still don't give up. Chum Wu turned to Zhang Yi and the others, I remember that when we were out in spring last year, I was wearing this dress. With this posture and smile, I was in harmony at that time. For the photos taken by Du Jingwen, there should be a photo archive on the teacher's side. Also, Jingwen, you should have the photo we took last year, right? After Chum Wu's reminder, Du Jingwen naturally remembered, and patted her head, Yes, I remembered, the background and clothes were like this when we took the photo. It's just the people inside, why do I become this bastard? There were some passers-by who couldn't turn their heads. Hearing Du Jingwen's words, they felt that their brains were not enough. The corners of Chum Wu's mouth raised, and she looked at the little mockingly, I heard it. The little still yelled very arrogantly, Ah uh, yeah, since you have this picture, take it out now. If you can't take it out, it means that my relationship with you is real. Take it out now? The knew very well that Chum Wu couldn't get it out, so he dared to be so arrogant. Why are you such a rascal, holding on to Mu Yu, I said I have that picture. You are still slandering Mu Yu here. Du Jingwen angrily questioned the bastard. The gangster didn't speak, but Sophie spoke, and said with a sneer, Who knows if what you are saying is true? Maybe you are giving Chum Wu a false testimony. Yes, you have such a good relationship with Chum Wu, you must give her a false testimony. Xiao snorted coldly, and said with scorn. You. When Du Jingwen heard Sophie and Xiao words, her face flushed with anger, her body was trembling, her eyes flushed. Chum Wu was calm, patted Du Jingwen's shoulder lightly, and said comfortingly, What's your anger? But if they slander you so much, aren't you angry? Du Jingwen looked at Chum Wu aggrievedly and distressedly, repaying her for the injustice. 
yet, they have hatred with you and deliberately framed you. Zhang Yi also spoke separately for Chum Wu. Chum Wu smiled softly, I'm not afraid of the shadow leaning. He is purely looking for trouble. We can call the police. When the time comes, let Jingwen take out the photo. Doesn't it prove me? But now. Du Jingwen unwillingly glanced at the passers-by around him, with a look of disbelief, and said aggrieved. I did this not to prove to them, but to prove that I was innocent. It doesn't matter what other people think of it. As long as I have evidence, the police can prove it. Next time, they will do it for today. It's a matter of fact, a person of this size doesn't even understand right from wrong. In the future, this kind of thing will fall on his children, and I don't know how they will be wronged. Chum Wu said very lightly. Deliberately said to the passers-by who still looked at her with disbelief. Sure enough, when those passers-by heard Chum Wu's words, their complexions suddenly became very ugly. A few thin-skinned people immediately ridiculed, who knows if what you said is true or false. Yes, it sounds so nice. Who knows if you can take out the photos. Even if there is evidence to prove it, but if someone finds you in trouble, it also proves that you are not a good student. If I have a daughter like you, I might as well just choke to death. You don't know, this Chum Wu seduce men everywhere in the school, now it is the school grass, and now seduce a rich second generation. Xiaomoyu deliberately said loudly and coldly. Zhang Yi took a step forward, pointing at Xiaomoyu with his hands on his hips in anger and cursed, Fart, what seduce the rich second generation, it is that Xi Liang has nothing to do with him, the teacher is still there, and he wants to molest Chum Wu. As a testimony, Chum Wu has nothing to do with him at all. Nonsense. When Xiaomoyu heard Zhang Yi's words, his face was very ugly, Xi Liang has such a rich family, who would like Chum Wu this little bitch? Hey, Chum Wu has this ability, how about it? Don't you like Xi Liang? But, you are not pretty, not as pretty as Chum Wu, so Xi Liang doesn't like you, only Chum Wu. Zhang Yi put his hands in his waist, and his body swayed from side to side for a while, his tone of voice was called deceit, as if he was speaking of himself. How can they not know that Xiaomoyu likes Xi Liang? Since Xi Liang came to the experimental middle school, Xiaomoyu has come often. When Xi Liang asked for leave, she even came to ask him if he had come to school. Today, Xi Liang came, and Xiaomoyu came early in the morning. He also came to deliver breakfast. Everyone knew her purpose. When Du Jingwen heard this, she couldn't help but laughed, and stared at Sophie. Yes, there is your Sophie. It's not because the school grass doesn't make friends with you, but Chum Wu instead. You are jealous, so step on here to slander her. Sophie and Xiaomoyu heard Du Jingwen and Zhang Yi's words, their pretty faces changed colors constantly. Standing in the crowd, Xi Liang's expression on his face was very ugly when he saw the situation developing to this point. He didn't expect that Chum Wu would be so peaceful in this situation. Xiaomoyu glared at Zhang Yi and Du Jingwen angrily, threatening Chum Wu fiercely, Now, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about Chum Wu. Everyone has evidence, so don't try to deny it and make such a thing, Chum Wu, just wait to be expelled from school. That is, Chum Wu, you look down on me, and I want to make you unable to study any more and I want to lose your reputation. The little also yelled, threatening Chum Wu. Originally, his purpose of coming here was for this, so that Chum Wu was condemned by others. Then, when the school wanted to expel her, Xi Liang would stand up again and threaten her with this matter, or lure her. In this way, Chum Wu would obediently obey her. If you meet other girls, and there is no power in the family, they will definitely agree to Xi Liang's things directly. Chum Wu sneered at the gangster and turned to Zhang Yi and said, Zhang Yi, call the police, if that's the case, let the police handle it. When the gangster heard the police call, it was as if the mouse saw the cat, and his body retreated subconsciously, Chum Wu, 
you are going to kill you all. I used to do so many bad things for you, now you won't let the police arrest me, you are going to ruin me, I will not let you go. A cold light flashed in Chum Wu's eyes, and she snorted coldly when she saw the gangster about to run away, want to run? You framed me, and you want to run away like this. When the voice fell, Chum Wu turned into an afterimage, and his figure had appeared in front of the little bastard, his palm turned into a claw, and it was grasped on his shoulder. With a crack, Chum Wu's shoulder bones were crushed by the little bastard, and the little let out a screaming scream. Before the gangster resisted, he recovered, his body was light, his feet were off the ground, his body flew upside down, and it hit the ground rushingly. Wow! Everyone looked at Chum Wu in surprise, and then at the gangster, and couldn't help but breathe in air conditioning. Xiliang's eyes narrowed slightly. Sure enough, Hong Yuxi was right. Chum Wu's skill is very good and he really can't find a group of people to trap Chum Wu. Chum Wu stepped on the gangster's chest, her eyes flashed with cold light, what are you doing so fast? The police haven't come yet, and haven't given me justice. Wasn't it arrogant just now? Constantly slandering me fame, you ran away, who do I call for theory? The just feels that he can't breathe anymore. He didn't expect that such a little girl could be so powerful. This still makes people not live. Why didn't Zai Xiao tell him when he came before that this little would be so powerful? Let's talk about it, who made you come? Chum Wuya faintly exuded a cold air, and asked the little below him coldly. The little opened his mouth wide, feeling that the ribs in his chest were about to be trampled off, I, I, I. Do you think I'm a fool? I have no grievances with you, you suddenly came out to trouble me. You were not instigated, what is it? Chum Wu sneered and said threateningly. You better tell the truth. Who on earth caused you to trouble me? The little gangster met Chum Wu's dark and clear eyes, as if looking into the ancient lake that could not be seen to the end. It was clear that the weather was so hot, but he felt cold all over his body. He couldn't help but shudder, and a thin layer of sweat came out of his back. Yes, yes. Zai. The little couldn't withstand the strong pressure that Chum Wuo put on him, and wanted to speak, when a shout came from the crowd. Chum Wuo, what are you doing, how can you beat people here? Chum Wuo raised her head and looked in the direction of the voice. She saw Zai Liang squeeze out of the crowd, his expression serious and angry. He looked at the little under his feet, and the moment the little saw Zai Liang, his face was delighted as if he had seen a savior. Now, without asking, Chum Wu knew that Zai Liang had found this little bastard. Zai Liang came to this little because he came to trouble her. It seems that the last time did not teach him a lesson. Zai Liang Xiao Moyu saw Zai Liang with a happy smile on his face, and ran to him, Zai Liang, you are here, you have also seen it, Chum Wu, a bitch, is under the public hit someone casually, and the person who was beaten still had a leg with her. Now that Zai Liang is here, Xiaomoyu has mercilessly belittled Chum Wu in front of him, speaking ill of her. In Xiaomoyu's heart, as long as Zai Liang realized Chum Wu's shortcomings, he would know that such a wild would not be worthy of him. This young man is Chum Wu's former man. Now she dislikes the poor and loves the rich, and has abandoned this man. Now they are looking for the door. Xiaomoyu said coldly. Zai Liang's immature and handsome face was a bit angry, Chum Wu, what is going on? Chum Wu twitched the corner of her mouth and smiled, what the is going on? Shouldn't Zai Xiao know? This guy seems to know you. When Zai Liang heard Chum Wu's words, his face suddenly changed, but he soon recovered. Before Zai Liang could question, Xiaomoyu spoke directly and questioned her angrily, Chum Wu, what do you mean by this? This is also because Xiaomoyu didn't know that Zai Liang did this thing, and only felt that Chum Wu's attitude and tone of speech were not good. Chum Wu raised her eyebrows and looked at Zai Liang with a smile, Zai Xiao should know what I mean, right? 
Xiliang snorted and said arrogantly, What is the clearest thing, I saw you beating people here as soon as I got here. Under such circumstances, he would never admit it. Even if Chum Wei knew, he couldn't. Anyway, as long as Chum Wei was embarrassed, he could have a chance to make a move. Really? Chum Wei sneered. Xiaomoyu only felt that she was being treated as heir, and she didn't spare any effort to belittle her, otherwise, what else, Chum Wei, don't think you look a little bit pretty, and you are confused with a few male classmates. Relationship, you can be so arrogant. Chum Wei turned her head and glanced at Xiaomoyu coldly, a cold light flashed in her eyes, she turned her head and did not talk to Xiliang and the others, and looked down at the gangster on the ground. Now she doesn't need to say anything, she already knows that this little is Xiliang making trouble for her. She really didn't expect that this Xiliang would do such a thing, but she didn't know what his purpose was. Is it really just embarrassing her and being dropped out of school? Du Jingwen walked to Chu Muyu and asked with a worried expression, Miu Yu, what should I do? The corner of Chu Muyu's mouth rose slightly, and she patted Du Jingwen's shoulder comfortingly. It's okay, anyway, the police will come soon. Du Jingwen nodded, her eyes flashed with angry fire, I must take out my photo to prove your innocence. Chu Muyu's eyes flashed, and she approached Du Jingwen's ear, Keep this photo well, don't give it to others, even if the police come, you don't let them take it away, you can only let them see it. Du Jingwen was taken aback when she heard Chu Muyu's words, and looked at her puzzledly, why? Forget it, you'd better give me that picture tomorrow. Chu Muyu shook her head and said softly in her ear. The photo in Du Jingwen's hands is the only one that can prove her innocence. It cannot be lost or damaged. At that time, the photo was taken at a high price, so she didn't buy it. Only Du Jingwen bought it, but she didn't know where Xiliang got the photos. However, Thinking of Xiliang's family and financial resources, I can only smile. How can I not find such a picture if money can make ghosts go around? After all, it is impossible to get a photo and background of her that match her well, you have to take it out to make people look real. Okay, I'll listen to you. Du Jingwen nodded and stayed with Chum Wu, waiting for the police to come. This time the report was made to the nearby police station. It was not like the last time. Wu Hung Jun called his father directly. These police officers came to take a look at the situation and hurriedly dispersed the passers-by around to understand the situation. Now that the police station has started this matter, the parents of these passers-by naturally stopped staying any longer, and hurriedly left, for fear that something would happen if they stayed here, or they might be arrested as accomplices. Moreover, it was so hot this day. Even though it was already evening, it still made people feel very uncomfortable and sweated all over. In less than a minute or two, everyone walked in a rush, and Chum Wu and others were left. I don't know if everyone is gone, and the line of sight becomes wide in an instant. A surprised cry came from the school gate, Chum Wu. Wu Hung Jun is dressed casual, carrying a school bag on one shoulder, and walking with one hand in his belt, handsomely. As soon as Sophie saw Wu Hung Jun, a bright smile appeared on her face, and she greeted her quickly, Wu Hung Jun. Wu Hung Jun just glanced at Sophie, but did not answer, and walked straight to Chum Wu's front, You haven't left yet. In the face of Wu Hung Jun's indifference and ignorance, Sophie didn't mention how angry she was, and she was treated as heir. Now when I heard Wu Hung Jun asking Chum Wu, so Fei's face immediately showed a triumphant smile, and she walked up and said, How can she go? Someone loves the poor and loves the rich and gives the old man to abandoned, now people come to the door and take revenge. Sophie's words made Wu Hung Jun very displeased. She just walked out, not knowing what happened, and frowned tightly. Zhang Yi snorted coldly, and said, In fact, there is nothing wrong but some people don't know if their brains are broken, and they say that they have retired with Chum Wu, saying that Chum Wu abandoned him. Tsk, but this man did it. There is really no one at this point. 
it's a shame that a big man can be abandoned by a woman. Sophie suddenly choked, Zhang Yi, you have to speak with your conscience. Chu Muihu did it out by herself. I don't know how many men I've slept with. Now people come to the door, just to get it back for me. Just a fair, what's wrong? Fart. Du Jingwen couldn't hold back at once, bursting out vulgar words, what fairness, Mu Yu has never done this thing, don't frame people. Hey, who knows, you and her are sisters, and you will definitely help her to speak. Sophie rolled her eyes and said mockingly and disdainfully. Wu Hung Jun glanced at the crowd, then turned to look at Zhang Yi, what happened, tell me about it. Zhang Yi glared at Sophie fiercely, and immediately explained to Wu Hung Jun, telling the story just now. Wu Hung Jun bowed his head, squatted down and picked up the photo from the ground next to the gangster, and looked at it. It was a picture of Chum Wu and the gangster. It's just that the current photosynthesis technology is not so good, so under Wu Hung Jun's careful inspection, he found some clues, and some things were wrong. Hearing what Zhang Yi said about the photosynthesis, they immediately joined together, frowning together. Like Chum Wu, Wu Hung Jun grasped some important points in an instant. This was the trouble that someone was looking for Chum Wu, and the person who troubled her was not an ordinary person. Do you need my help? Wu Hung Jun asked, looking up at Chum Wu. When Sophie heard Wu Hung Jun's words, she immediately yelled angrily, Wu Hung Jun, I think you are fascinated by Chum Wu's appearance, and she believes that Chum Wu is innocent. Wu Hung Jun turned his head and glanced at Sophie coldly, I and I can be normal, I'll discuss the matter, this photo was originally synthesized, there is a big problem. Sophie suddenly stomped her feet with anger, we grew up together, and you believed them and didn't believe me. Sorry, we are just classmates. Wu Hung Jun replied coldly to Sophie, then turned to ask Chum Wu, I can have someone help you fix this photo. Chum Wu raised her eyebrows, a smile appeared at the corner of her mouth, and asked Wu Hung Jun, Do you believe this photo is not real? Wu Hung Jun smiled and said confidently, If I can't even see this kind of thing, what am I eligible to be an opponent? To get the first place, it's not just about studying. Chum Wu admired Wu Hung Jun's wisdom very much, at least he was not deceived by the superficial phenomenon and refused to listen to other people's words. It seems that if I want to get the first place next time, it will be really difficult. Chum Wu raised her mouth and said jokingly. Wu Hung Jun smiled and said, We all have our ability. Yes. Chum Wu nodded in agreement, and looked at the photo in Wu Hung Jun's hand, Anyway, the police have already arrived, just leave it to them. Okay. Wu Hung Jun nodded and handed the photo to the police at the police station. Comrade police, I hope you can deal with it impartially. I will also let my father Wu Ming pay attention to this matter. Wu Hung Jun knew that he would have a lot of financial resources to be able to use synthetic photos, so he would also have a little power. However, his father is the director of the Public Security Bureau after all, no matter how powerful he is, he can't be better than his father, just a word is enough. The police at the police station had a somewhat ugly look. After all, Wu Hung Jun and Chum Wu were so ignorant of their presence around the police, talking and laughing happily. However, when I heard Wu Hung Jun's identity, I suddenly became stunned. Yes, rest assured, our police station will definitely not disappoint Bureau Wu. The police hurriedly saluted Wu Hung Jun. Wu Hung Jun nodded and said, If nothing happens, we will leave first. Yes. The policeman nodded quickly. When Sophie and Siamoyu heard this, they suddenly became unwilling. Uncle Police, how can you let Chum Wu go? She is a criminal. Not only did she wound this person, she also stepped on two boats. A woman like this shameless, wouldn't you arrest the police station? Xia Mou pointed at Chum Wu and questioned the police angrily. Upon hearing this, the police frowned slightly and looked at Xia Mou, this classmate, are you suspicious of our attitude in handling matters? Isn't it? 
Not only do you not arrest this bitch, but also let her go. Xiaomoyu was spoiled, so naturally he would not save any face to these policemen and directly questioned. Moreover, in Xiaomoyu's heart, these policemen are no match for her. Yes, Wu Hung Jun, you can't just show her up just because Chu Muyu is your friend. Sophie also gritted her teeth at Chu Muyu and questioned Wu Hung Jun. Wu Hung Jun immediately laughed, Students Xia, Su, arresting people is for evidence, and the current evidence is simply not enough. Why do you arrest Chu Muyu and go to the police station, and you keep insulting Chu Muyu and frame her? People, should I let the police comrades arrest you for insults and frame up crimes? You. Xiaomoyu's chest was constantly rising and falling with anger. Sophie stared at Wu Hung Jun in disbelief. Wu Hung Jun, do you really want the police to arrest me for Chu Muyu? Chu Muyu is my friend. Someone insulted her and framed her. Since I understand the law, I will naturally seek justice for her. Wu Hung Jun said righteously. You, you. Sophie was really irritated by Wu Hung Jun. Her eyes widened. Chu Muyu glanced at Sophie mockingly, which is called not to die or not to die. Wu Hung Jun has clearly helped her, and is still clamoring here. Isn't this just making Wu Hung Jun hate her? Let's go. Chu Muyu smiled slightly and said to Wu Hung Jun. Good. Wu Hung Jun and others nodded. Both Sophie and Xiaomoyu stared fiercely at Chu Muyu's leaving back and secretly vowed in their hearts that this matter would not be over. On the way back, Zhang Yi and Du Jingwen comforted her and told her not to worry about this matter. However, Wu Hung Jun asked Chu Muyu, this matter is not easy. Yet. I know, someone is targeting me. Chu Muyu said with a playful smile. What? Zhang Yi and Du Jingwen screamed when they heard this. Wu Hung Jun frowned when he heard the words, and asked, then do you know who it is? Chu Muyu shrugged her shoulders and said, who else can make this kind of composite photo? If you want to get that photo, you can't have less money or influence. And, don't forget, I was the last week. After beating Xi Liang, can he not retaliate? It's him. A look of anger flashed in Wu Hung Jun's eyes. I really didn't expect that he would be able to do such things that slander your reputation. Zhang Yi nodded, also showing anger, Yes, this Xi Liang is such a bastard, I will trouble Chu Muyu on the first day in school. There are also Sophie and Xiaomoyu who are also bad, they even helped Xi Liang and framed and slandered Mu Yu. Du Jingwen also said angrily. Chu Muyu patted them on the shoulder and said comfortingly, Don't worry. This kind of thing doesn't affect me yet, I'll just wait for his next move, what exactly will he do? Xi Liang was just a student. With him, Chu Muyu didn't take it seriously, as long as the soldiers came to cover the water and earth. It's fine if you are fine. Wu Hung Jun heard Chu Muyu's words, and was slightly relieved, for fear that she would have a knot in her heart. Don't worry. Chu Muyu waved to them. I want to go home too, so do you guys. Zhang Yi and the others were worried about Chu Muyu, but after hearing her say so, they could only wave goodbye to her. On the other hand, after Chu Muyu and others left, the policeman from the police station also left with the gangster. Xi Liang turned his head to look at the bastard, as if making some hints to him, then turned and left, leaving only Xiaomoyu and Sophie. Xi Liang Xiaomoyu hurriedly cried out when he saw Xi Liang about to leave. However, where could Xi Liang hear Xiaomoyu's words, he got into his car and left. Sophie also stomped her feet with anger. She didn't expect that Wu Hung Jun would not give her face so much, and she helped Chu Muyu so much. She was really bewildered. Chu Muyu, I won't just let it go. Sophie gritted her teeth bitterly, and said viciously. Xiaomoyu turned her head and looked at Sophie, her eyes flashed, and she took her arm and said, Sophie, we have to work together in this matter to be able to beat Chu Muyu down. Sophie looked at Xiaomoyu, still with an angry look on her face. This anger was not directed at Xiaomoyu, but Chu Muyu. 
you said, what are we going to do? Sophie asked through gritted teeth. Xiaomoyu sneered, this matter is already known to everyone. We can go back, find our parents, and ask them to call Principal Lu, because Chumwiu's incident has affected our studies, and it will even affect our studies. Let the school expel her on the grounds of taking the high school entrance examination. When Sophie heard it, her eyes lit up and she said excitedly, Yes. Excuse her. Doesn't she really want to read? Then let her not read. After being expelled from school, she will dare not arrogant after seeing her. P.S. I took a day's wedding photos on Sunday. I was so tired that I couldn't code words for my backache. I was finally in a hurry to update. But it's still a little late, dear friends, forgive me. Dear friends, I said that the requirement for a reward of 5,000 book coins plus one chapter is too high. Now, as long as the recommended vote ranking can enter the top 100, you can add at least five chapters. This is no money. Just move your fingers and vote to add more. Alas, the author also wants to add more, but my dears are not awesome. As Chum Wiyu said, she didn't care about the things in the school at all, nor did it affect her. However, when I was reading the endorsement at night, the phone vibrated. Who is calling? Chum Wiyu was taken aback, and quickly turned on the phone. When she saw that it was Xiao Junyan's phone, a flash of surprise flashed in her eyes. Xiao Junyan knew that she valued study very much, and hoped that she would have 48 hours a day, so she would never call her if she had nothing to do. Now that he received Xiao Junyan's call, Chum Wiyu was naturally surprised. Hey, brother Xiao, how do you call me? So Chum Wiyu answered the phone and asked directly. Xiao Junyan on the other side of the phone was silent for a moment, and said, Someone troubles you today. When Chum Wiyu heard Xiao Junyan's words, she was taken aback, and then there was a look of surprise and discomfort on her face, always feeling like she was being followed and monitored. Although, she also knew that Xiao Junyan did it for her good, but she didn't want him to know everything. Well, there is such a thing. Chum Wiyu nodded, her eyes narrowed slightly, are you monitoring me? No. Hearing Chum Wiyu's suspicion, Xiao Junyan quickly vetoed, I, I just want to help you. Speaking of the end, Xiao Junyan's confidence is also a lot less, but it is also for fear that Chum Wiyu will be angry. Chum Wiyu touched the table with his fingers lightly, and a thought-provoking smile appeared at the corner of his mouth, Senior Brother Xiao, do you know what my mood is like now? Xiao Junyan on the other side of the phone, sitting on the bed, the look on the handsome face of the evildoer was a little nervous, I didn't want to monitor you, I just want to protect you. If you don't want to, I won't do this again. Although she didn't face Chum Wiyu face to face, Xiao Junyan seemed to be able to see her standing in front of her with an angry look in her tone and attitude. Xiao Junyan, who had never angered Chum Wiyu much before, was very guilty and anxious, just thinking she could forgive her. At this moment, Xiao Junyan was very fortunate that when he was in the Chu family in the countryside, he didn't let Chum Wiyu know that he had been looking at her. How do you monitor me? Chum Wiyu asked dully. Xiao Junyan naturally said without saying a word, I bought a security guard from the school. Chum Wiyu was happy when she heard that, this guy could still do such a thing. This is as long as she knows what happened in school. This sent people to monitor and buy security are completely two concepts. One is that there is almost no privacy, and the other is that any difficulties or troubles she has will be passed to Xiao Junyan's ears, so that he will know immediately when she is in difficulties and can help her. After Xiao Junyan finished speaking, he never heard Chum Wiyu speak, and became anxious, You, I was wrong. Don't be angry. I just want to help you. The word you heard a warm current flowing through Chum Wiyu's heart, but she didn't feel that this title was offensive at all. The faint anger in her heart was also poured out, and she snorted coldly, forget it this time. Let's not take this as an example. Xiao Junyan exhaled clearly and nodded, okay. Not in the future. 
Chumwiu still said viciously, Better, you still annoyed me this time. I listen to you, not in the future. Xiao Junyan almost swore an ancestral curse. However, I still want to punish you. When Chum Wu said to punish herself, Xiao Junyan's tone became a little more disturbed, how to punish? When Chum Wu heard it, she was very happy. If there is a man who becomes very flustered when he hears your words, then this man means that he really loves you. Involuntarily, Chum Wu didn't punish him anymore, but he knew that it was a bit unfair when he thought of himself. Humph. Chum Wu couldn't help but want to have some princesses Tsundara, a girl in love, always want her significant other to cooperate with her own coquetry and arrogant, don't show up in front of me for half a month how? Well, half a month should be almost there. Xiao Junyan on the other side of the phone was silent when he heard Chum Wu's punishment. Letting him not see Chum Wu for half a month was really torturing. He didn't let the girl he missed before, but now he has it. He only feels that only going to see Chum Wu every week is a kind of torture. Therefore, sometimes he would go to the school gate to squat in the dark from time to time, and every time he looked at Chum Wu's smile at school, he felt relieved for a while. Even yet Yan Ming didn't know about this. Chum Wu, who was waiting for Xiao Junyan to recover, never heard a sound, frowned, and yelled softly, Senior Brother Xiao. Xiao Junyan's voice was a little low and dull, okay. Really? Chum Wu raised her eyebrows when she heard it, and asked interestingly, always feeling that something was wrong. Listen to you. Xiao Junyan nodded, but there was a shrewd and cunning light in his dark eyes. Chum Wu only said that she couldn't appear in front of her for half a month. As long as he is the same as before, watching her silently from the side, it's fine. She doesn't know it. Thinking of this, the aura on Xiao Junyan's body was not so low. Chum Wu touched her nose, the corners of her mouth raised, revealing a sweet smile, and a sly smile flashed in her eyes. Okay, see you again in half a month. Well, Xiao Junyan is so obedient and obedient. After half a month, she has to make up for it so as not to chill someone's heart. After all, Someone did it for her good and caring for her. Then, things about school. Xiao Junyan asked in silence for a moment. A glint flashed in Chum Wu's eyes, and she said coldly, It's okay, I can handle it myself. Xiao Junyan lowered his head, glanced at a CD ROM in his hand, and said, I have surveillance data, here you are. Monitoring data. Chum Wu was taken aback, smash it. Smash it, it should be the things she thought. How do you feel that Xiao Junyan's speed is a bit too fast? It hasn't been five hours since it happened at the school gate, and surveillance evidence has been found. Well, Xi Liang and Hong Yuxi conspired to make you lose face. Hearing a familiar name, Chum Wu was shocked, Hong Yuxi. Yet. Yeah. I'll give you the information, you can check it out. Xiao Junyan said. Chum Wu touched her chin. He didn't expect that this incident would involve Hong Yuxi. Xiao Qiang, who was really unbeatable, nodded, OK. I'll go to you tomorrow. Hearing Chum Wu's words, a sly light flashed in Xiao Junyan's star black eyes. Xiao Junyan still said calmly, without telling the story of someone jumping into the pit by himself, OK, I'll pick you up. In the morning. Chum Wu went downstairs as usual, preparing to go to school. Only when I walked downstairs unexpectedly, I saw Xiao Junyan's particularly conspicuous off-road vehicle, and he was taken aback. Xiao Junyan also saw Chum Wu, opened the car door, and walked down from above. Chum Wu raised her eyebrows, only remembering what she had punished Xiao Junyan yesterday. She stepped forward, pretending to be a bit angry and before Xiao Junyan could speak, she asked, I didn't mean to punish you. Is it in front of you? Xiao Junyan lowered his head, took out a compact disc from his pocket, and handed it to Chum Wu, you asked me to come, give this to you. Chum Wu was taken aback for a moment, and the muscles at the corners of her mouth twitched fiercely. This turned out to be her fault. 
A smile flashed across Xiao Junyan's eyes when he saw a woman's embarrassing and depressed expressions. Sure enough, Chum Wu hadn't discovered the loopholes in yesterday's words at this time. Originally, he could pick up Chum Wu from school in the afternoon, but Xiao Junyan was afraid that a long time would make Chum Wu find something was wrong, so he came early in the morning. Cough, cough, cough. Chum Wu's pretty face turned red for an instant. Some of them did not dare to look up at Xiao Junyan's eyes, and quickly took the CD that Xiao Junyan handed over, oh, good. Xiao Junyan looked at Chum Wu's embarrassed and tangled blushing little appearance, just thought it was cute. Once again, Chum Wu jumped into the pit he dug again. At first, when they met at the foot of the mountain for the second time, Chum Wu was also buried by the pit she dug. Otherwise, he really doesn't know when he will be able to find this girl. I'll send you to school. Xiao Junyan said softly. Chum Wu touched her nose and felt like she wanted to escape. She just felt that she was feeling a little guilty when facing Xiao Junyan. No, I can go alone. Chum Wu kept her head down, speaking with a low momentum. Thinking of the stupid things she did, Chum Wu really wanted to slap herself and kill him. Xiao Junyan watched Chum Wu lowered her head, and the corners of her mouth rose slightly. Naturally, she knew that this girl felt that the things just now made her feel ashamed to face him. Do you have anything to watch the CD? Xiao Junyan asked with a gleam in his eyes. Chum Wu's attention was instantly shifted and raised her head, with a sad expression on her face, no. Yes, this CD needs something to open, even if Xiao Junyan gives it to her now there is no way to read it. I'll pick you up tonight. Xiao Junyan said again. Chum Wu bit her lip fiercely, only feeling that she was pitted again, staring at Xiao Junyan, no need, I'm looking for Yet Yen Ming. Yet Yen Ming. As soon as Xiao Junyan heard the name, his eyes became darker and darker. Yes, he's a policeman. Chum Wu's mouth instantly revealed a bright smile, her eyes curled up he can definitely help me. Xiao Junyan couldn't help swearing his ability, I can too. Chum Wu chuckled and said, didn't I say, I want to punish you for not appearing in front of me for half a month? Starting today. Hearing that, Xiao Junyan's enchanting handsome face was completely dark. Okay. Chum Wu raised her little hand and patted him on the shoulder, so, don't come to me at night. Just let Ye Tian Ming come to pick me up. Xiao Junyan's face was tangled, and he could only nod his head, okay. Sure enough, Xiao Junyan didn't insist on sending Chum Wu to school by herself. When Chum Wu came to school, she ran into Xi Liang who had been waiting for her. A glint flashed in Chum Wu's eyes, she reached into her pocket, took out her mobile phone, and switched to the recording function. As soon as Xi Liang saw Chum Wu, he greeted her and blocked her way. Looking at the person in front of her, Chum Wu still looked cold, and shouted in a somewhat commanding tone, Get out of the way. Chum Wu, why should you be so unfeeling? Xi Liang chuckled lightly, looked at Chum Wu and said, I'm here to help you. Chum Wu showed a sneer at the corner of her mouth and looked at Xi Liang, Don't think I don't know, you called that little bastard. Xi Liang smiled triumphantly, since you know, then you should know what it is to offend this young master. Last time this young master gave you face, you dare to beat this young master if you didn't give it. This is the end. Ha ha ha, you two rich generations, do you really think that by doing so, you can make me compromise? Chum Wu sneered and asked mockingly. Couldn't it? Xi Liang looked at Chum Wu arrogantly. What happened yesterday is just the beginning. As long as I speak to the principal and ask him to expel you on the grounds of this matter, you still have to leave obediently. School. Don't think I don't know how much you value academic performance, otherwise, you won't get the first place. Xi Liang knew that Chum Wu studied so hard in order to be admitted to university, find a good job, and make more money. Because, for a poor girl like Chum Wu, Reading is a way out. You are really mean, you did this kind of thing just because of yesterday's thing. 
Chu Mui ridiculed coldly. Wrong. Xiliang laughed, looking at Chu Mui excitedly, it's not just because of yesterday's affairs, do you think that this young master did so many useless things just to revenge yesterday's revenge? A sly light flashed under Chu Mui's eyes, and she asked coldly, otherwise, what else are you doing? Of course I want you to be my young master's woman and go to bed with my young master. Xiliang triumphantly looked at Chu Mui's body with a wicked look, the more he looked, the more he couldn't move his eyes away. It's really rare for a 14-year-old girl like Chu Mui to look so beautiful and to be so good. This is also because in the past few months, Chu Mui has not only improved his diet, but also learned the metaphysical techniques, his body has also become better and better, and his body has naturally developed in a good way, which should be concave and convex, and convex. You know, the way to get money is not just reading books. As long as you become the young master's woman, your young master's money is your money. Xiliang arrogantly tempted Chu Mui. Your stinky money is not rare for me. Chu Mui's tone was very disgusting, and she gently touched the phone in her belt with her finger, and she sneered in her heart. You. After listening to Chu Mui's words, Xiliang felt that someone slapped his face fiercely. If there is nothing wrong, I will leave first. Chu Mui glanced at Xiliang and said. Xiliang suddenly laughed wildly, his eyes fierce, Chu Mui, you have to know, if you leave now, it means you will leave school, do you really want to leave? As long as you leave, I will call. Tell the principal of the school to fire you. In the morning, Chu Mui followed behind the head teacher, walked out of the classroom, and walked downstairs. Wang Mian slowed down a bit, turned his head and comforted Chu Mui, don't worry, I'll talk to you on the arrogant side, I will never believe this. Although Wang Mian didn't know Chu Mui very well, he still liked it very much. Who got the first place in the final exam? Class 7 and Class 8 are both experimental classes, but Wu Hung Jun, who is always the first class in Class 8, is naturally the most proud of Dong Zhen as the head teacher. This caused Dong Zhen to always be in front of Wang Mian, making Wang Mian feel very aggrieved. In this final exam, Chu Mui's score surpassed Wu Hung Jun and became the first place, which made Wang Mian seduced. At that time, as soon as I knew the results, I went to Dong Zhen with the results, and was stunned in front of him. Ever since, Wang Mian's heart was very close to Chu Mui, and he didn't believe it. However, now that President Liu wants to call Chu Mui over, it is for this reason, as the head teacher, naturally, he will not sit back and watch. Teacher, don't worry, you are fair and comfortable, don't be afraid of ghosts knocking on the door, I have nothing to fear. Chu Mui smiled slightly, comforting Wang Mian. Wang Mian smiled and nodded in satisfaction, and brought Chu Mui to President Liu's office. Principal, Chu Mui is here. Wang Mian said to Principal Liu who was sitting behind the desk. Principal Liu put down the documents in his hand, looked up at Wang Mian, then at Chu Mui, and pushed his glasses, sit down. Wang Mian and Chu Mui sat opposite Principal Liu. Wang Mian couldn't bear to explain to Chu Mui first. President Liu, I believe that Chu Mui has never done anything like this before. Her previous results and the results of this final exam all mean that she is a good boy. President Liu waved his hand to Wang Mian, and said to Chu Mui, Chu Mui, do you have anything to say about this matter? After this incident happened yesterday, he received a call from Sophie and Xiaomoyu's parents, and then this morning, he received a call from Xi Liang which meant that Chu Mui was to be fired. Originally, this matter was very simple, but when I think of the last Hong Yuxi incident, it seems that Chu Mui and Wu Hung Jun have an unusual relationship. Who is Wu Hung Jun? His father is Wu Ming, the director of the Public Security Bureau. Moreover, the policeman who came to the school with the Hong Yuxi case last time revealed in his tone that Wu Ming was very good to Chu Mui. This made Principal Liu very entangled, so now I have to ask about the situation of Chu Mui's affairs. Whether it is Xiliang and Wu Hung Jun, 
Principal Lu must consider it carefully, so that as long as he handles it fairly, no one can speak. Chu Muyu smiled at Principal Lu and said, Principal, what I said about this matter may not represent everything. The photo in the hands of that little was once a photo taken by the school during the spring outing of our school. This photo should be archived in the school, right? Principal Lu heard Chu Muyu's words and nodded in agreement, yes, every time our school keeps photos for archives. I'll get it. When Wang Mian heard it, he stood up quickly, I was Mu Yu's class teacher last year, but things have passed too long, and I can't remember the clothes she was wearing. Wang Mian went to get the photo. Principal Lu looked at Chu Mu Yu and looked at her calm attitude, and he exclaimed in his heart. I thought to myself, it's no wonder that Wu Ming would treat Chu Mu Yu differently and let Wu Hung Jun get close to her. Such a temperamental girl is really rare. The office seemed silent until Wang Mian hurried in from outside. Principal, it's okay. Wang Mian ran in with a notebook, his face full of horror. Seeing Wang Mian's appearance, President Liu frowned in dissatisfaction, what happened, so panic. Wang Mian put the photo album in his hand on the table, quickly turned a few pages, and said to Principal Liu, Principal, the photo of the spring outing last year and the photo of Chu Muyu are gone. What? Upon hearing this, Principal Lu suddenly showed a look of shock on his face, and stood up from the chair he was sitting on. When Chu Muyu heard Wang Mian's words, she was not surprised, but only a glimmer of light flashed in her eyes. Principal Lu and Wang Mian saw two blank spaces in this album, and the group photo disappeared. There is also a photo of Chu Muyu and Du Jingwen. Which thief will steal photos, only steal these two photos? As the principal, Principal Lu quickly thought about this matter, it is really possible that someone would frame Chu Muyu. He had long heard people say that Chu Muyu said at the school gate about photosynthesis, so naturally he knew something about it. Thinking of this, Principal Liu's brows were frowned together. I don't know who it was who spent so much effort to deal with Chum Wu. Chum Wu lifted up slightly, showing a sneer, and looked up to Principal Lu and said, Principal Lu, it seems that this photo has been stolen. The school has no way to prove that what I said is true. However, my classmate Du Jingwen has won. The photo was taken to my home after school yesterday. If the police want to compare, they can ask them to come to me. I will naturally prove my innocence. Principal Lu nodded and waved to Chu Muyu, Okay, I know, I will ask about the situation at the police station, if necessary, I will tell you, you go to class first. The third year of junior high is the most important time for you, study hard. Thank you Principal. Chu Muyu stood up and nodded gently to Principal Lu. Wang Mian also left the office, but still showed a puzzled look. Which thief is this, stealing only those two photos? Chu Muyu smiled slightly, and explained to Wang Mian, who hadn't turned around for a while, the clothes I wore in that photo was the clothes in the photo of Du Jingwen and I teacher Wang, you said, why did that person steal take these two photos? When Wang Mian heard the words, he was taken aback for a moment, and then he suddenly realized that he immediately scolded angrily, I understand these are really nasty, and such a thing would happen. Teacher, since everything is like this, there is nothing to say. If there is a photo for evidence, tell me when the time comes and I will come with the photo. Chu Muyu smiled slightly and said to Wang Mian. Wang Mian nodded lightly, comforting Chu Muyu, Chu Muyu, don't worry about this matter, the teacher will pay attention to it for you. Thank you teacher. Chu Muyu nodded gently and said to Wang Mian gratefully. Chu Mui returned to the classroom and continued the class if nothing had happened, which made Xi Liang very angry and dissatisfied. He didn't understand why Chu Mui was still sitting in the classroom so peacefully at this time. Shouldn't he be expelled from the school? It didn't take long for the bell to ring after the get out of class, and the teacher put away the handouts, get out of class. Hearing what the teacher said, Everyone was relieved, and the whole person collapsed on the table, looking very weak. 
Du Jingwen turned her head to look at Chu Muyu, and asked concerned, Miu Yu, what did you go out for just now? Chu Muyu smiled and said, what happened yesterday, but nothing happened, it should have been resolved. Oh, that's good. Du Jingwen listened and nodded. She was originally worried, but now that Chu Muyu said it was resolved, it would be best. Xiliang glared fiercely at Chu Muyu, then stood up from his seat. Chu Muyu felt a strong gaze, turned her head, and met Xiliang's angry eyes, the corner of her mouth twitched slightly, revealing a provocative smile. The smile seemed to say that your plan did not go as you wished. Xiliang was really angry in his heart, he let out a cold snort in his nose, and walked out of the classroom. However, I didn't know if it was good luck or bad luck, so I walked out of the classroom door and hit Xiaomoyu who was going to the bathroom. As soon as Xiaomoyu saw Xiliang, his eyes lit up, and he walked a few steps excitedly, Xiliang. You are over again. Xiliang glanced at Xiaomoyu very uncomfortably, as if saying she was an idiot and asking such an idiot question. However, Xiaomoyu didn't care about Xiliang's attitude at all, with a bright smile on his face, Xiliang, let me tell you the good news. Yesterday I asked my mother to call the principal and let him fire Chu Mu Yu, I believe that Chu Mu Yu will be fired soon. Hearing Xiaomoyu's words, Xiliang showed a sneer on his face, turned to look at Xiaomoyu, and then to Chu Mu Yu in the classroom, expelled. Look inside. Xiliang's words caused Xiaomoyu to be stunned for a moment. He turned to look inside the classroom, only to see Chu Mu Yu reading the book leisurely. This. Xiaomoyu saw Chu Muyu still in the classroom, with a shocked expression on his face, why is she still here? In Xiaomoyu's heart, yesterday she asked her mother to call the principal. The principal must have expelled Chu Muyu after arriving at the school. It was almost noon, and Chu Muyu hadn't been expelled, so Xiaomoyu was not surprised. Xiliang sneered, turned and left the classroom door. Xiaomoyu looked at Xiliang and then at Chu Muyu in the classroom, with an angry expression on her small face and walked towards the classroom. Walking to the classroom, standing in front of Chu Muyu, Chu Muyu, you bitch, why are you still here? Chu Muyu supported her chin with one hand and looked at Xiaomoyu, I am a student, why can't I be here? You have done such a shameful thing, what qualifications do you have in this school? I have asked the school to expel you. Xiaomoyu said angrily. Chu Muyu suddenly laughed, Is this school opened by you? You will be expelled when you say you are expelled. The principal is also a person with a brain. You won't be like you, just believing other people's words. However, Chu Muyu really did not expect that Xiaomoyu was among the people who had Principal Lu expelled her. You. Xiaomoyu pointed at Chu Muyu angrily, his eyes seemed to burst into flames. Chu Muyu didn't know anything about the principal's office, and it was a stable afternoon. Knowing that the school bell rang, the fact that Chu Muyu was expelled from school still did not come out, and no one came to Chu Muyu to ask him to leave the school directly. Xiliang became more angry as he thought about it, but felt that the principal of the school didn't give himself face at all. Seeing Chu Muyu leave the classroom safe and sound, Xiliang's face became darker and darker. Damn it! Xiliang kicked the table in front of him fiercely, without even taking his school bag, and left the classroom directly. Du Jingwen and Chu Muyu traveled together. Wu Hung Jun, who had already finished school, was carrying a school bag on one shoulder. He saw Chu Muyu with a smile on his mouth. He walked up and asked concerned, how is today? Did the school trouble you? Chu Muyu smiled slightly, and said in a very flat tone, no, after all, this matter is fake. The school has no evidence. It's okay. Wu Hung Jun nodded and said, if there is anything that needs help, just say, I can ask my dad to help prove it. No, this is just a small matter. Chu Muyu shook her head and the three of them walked outside together. Only when I walked to the door, I saw a group of students surrounded by the school gate and did not leave. 
Suddenly, all three of Chu Muyo showed doubts. What happened? Du Jingwen showed a puzzled look on her face, and jumped up to see what happened. In the center of the crowd, a black car was seen parked. Being blocked by someone, Wu Hung Jun could only shout at the student in front of him, Let me give in. Chu Muyu and Du Jingwen followed behind Wu Hung Jun, walked through the crowd and walked into the center of the crowd. What's going on here? Why are you all stuck here? Du Jingwen asked everyone in confusion. What else can I do? Of course it's looking at handsome guys. Yeah, yeah. A handsome guy appeared in this car just now, so handsome. Wu Hung Jun is completely at the same level as the school grass. Just sitting in the car, I haven't been out until now. When Du Jingwen listened, she frowned and she didn't believe it, it's really fake. At this moment, a young man in a suit walked out of the driver's seat and opened the door of the co-pilot. The co-pilot door opened. As soon as Chu Muyo opened it, she saw the person sitting inside. A look of surprise flashed across her face, and she murmured, Why did he come? Wu Hung Jun, who was standing next to Chu Muyo, heard some vague words and turned to look at her, What? Nothing. Chu Muyo immediately shook his head. While talking, the person sitting in the co-pilot came out in a wheelchair. Seeing Chu Muyu in the crowd, the teenager showed a wistful smile at the corner of his mouth. He rolled the wheelchair and came to her, Miss Chu. Everyone looked at the young man in surprise and curiously, and then at Chu Muyu. Both Du Jingwen and Wu Hongjun looked at Chu Muyu in surprise. They didn't expect Chu Muyu to know this person. Wu Hongjun frowned and looked at this handsome young boy. Although he was sitting in a wheelchair, he felt the strong aura that seemed to emanate from him all the time. Yuan Xiao, why are you here? Chu Muyu asked in a puzzled manner. The boy who came was no one else, but Yuan Xiao. Yuan Xiao touched his legs and said, I'm here to say goodbye to you. Regarding his investigation of Chu Muyu, he didn't say anything, just came to say goodbye to her. Farewell? Are you leaving? Chu Muyo was taken aback and asked in surprise. Yuan Xiao nodded gently, raised his head to look at Chu Muyo's dark and clear eyes, a dark smile appeared at the corner of his mouth, and said, Could it be that you are reluctant to leave me? Chu Muyo touched her nose awkwardly, and said, It's nothing, just surprised. When we met before, you didn't say anything. There are some things at home that I want to deal with, I must go back. Yuan Xiao's eyes drooped, and a touch of unwillingness and strong fighting spirit flashed through his eyes. Thinking of Xiao Junyan, Yuan Xiao felt as if a mountain was pressing on his shoulders, making him breathless. This is that he has never met a powerful man. Well, but, although your body has recovered a lot, you still need to work less. You still need to find your medicine. Next time we meet, I should be able to treat your legs. Chu Muyu smiled, laughed and said. Next, there is nothing to do. It doesn't matter if Yuan Xiao is in Xingxi or not, because he can only be treated if he finds all the medicinal materials. Yuan Xiao nodded gently, I will let people find it as soon as possible. Find it sooner, and your legs will be able to recover. Chu Muyu and Yuan Xiao talked casually under everyone's attention. Du Jingwen at the side stared wide-eyed, watching the attitude of Chu Muyu and Yuan Xiao talking, only scratching his head, why the nearest Chu Muyu, the people around him were all handsome guys. I'm going back tonight, I want to invite you to dinner, can you agree to my invitation? Yuan Xiao was silent for a moment and asked Chu Muyu. Chu Muyu shook her head, and said apologetically, No, I have to go home for dinner, there is nothing I can do. I will have a chance to go out to eat again in the future. Yuan Xiao was still shocked by Chu Muyu's refusal. He didn't expect that she would reject herself. In this world, the person who rejected him should be Chu Muyu alone, right? When Wu Hong Jun heard Chu Muyu's rejection of Yuan Xiao, a smile appeared on his face, unconsciously feeling very comfortable. Although I don't know what the relationship between Chu Muyu and Yuan Xiao is, 
I just don't want them to have a good relationship. Yuan Xiao nodded and said to Chum Wu, Well, I should have said yes to you yesterday, otherwise, I won't miss it today. Yet. Chum Wu nodded, and said in a somewhat unnatural tone, In the future, anyway, you will come to Xingxi again in the future, and we can go to dinner together. Thinking about it, Yuan Xiao could also go to the restaurant he opened for dinner. This summer vacation is about to pass, Yuan Xiao and the others haven't found those medicinal materials yet, and they probably didn't find them so soon. Her medicated food restaurant has been opened, and it is estimated that Yuan Xiao hasn't found it yet. In the future, he can go to the medicated food restaurant he opened to eat, and he can also heal his body more. When the time comes, the medicinal restaurant can also carry out the membership level. As long as it is a member, she can also give a meal plan after checking everyone's body, which is all money. No one saw it. Behind the crowd, Xi Liang pushed the person in front of him and squeezed in. Chu Muyu's refusal made Yuan Xiao feel a little uncomfortable, but she also said that she can invite her to dinner next time she meets again, as long as she discusses it early. It was also his sudden arrival this time, and she didn't discuss it well with Chu Muyu, it's no wonder she. Yuan Xiao smiled lightly and nodded, Okay, next time I will make an appointment with you in advance, then you can't refuse me anymore. No, don't worry. Chu Muyu smiled and comforted Yuan Xiao, When the time comes, I will invite you to let you taste the good things you have never eaten. Okay. A gleam of light flashed in Yuan Xiao's eyes, and he agreed without any hesitation. With Chu Muyu's treat, he can treat him in the future and the relationship is slowly getting closer in this way. However, Yuan Xiao looked at Chum Wu under the sun, and her pretty face was tanned with a pink haze to make her even more pretty. Wu Hung Jun looked at Chum Wu and Yuan Xiao with his right hand clenched into a fist. Who is this young man? Why is the relationship with Chum Wu so good? Not only Wu Hung Jun looked at them, but Xi Liang, who was squeezed into the crowd, was also a teenager who looked at Chum Wu and talked happily. He had never seen Yuan Xiao, nor had he seen what happened just now, his eyes were filled with confusion and curiosity. Who is he? Xi Liang asked a student next to him. The student shook his head and said, I am not very clear, but it seems that the relationship with Chum Wu is very good. As soon as Xi Liang heard this student's words, a powerful anger rose in his heart. Why? It's all because I heard this student say that he has a very good relationship with Chum Wu. I think he hasn't changed Chum Wu's attitude towards him, whether it is threatening or temptation. Now that he sees other people being so close to Chum Wu, how can he not be angry or jealous? Yuan Xiao lowered his eyes, condensed the complex expression in his eyes, then raised his head, glanced over the surrounding students, and said meaningfully, Miss Chu. If you have any problems or troubles, you can contact me and I will definitely help you. Do it. Thank you, but it's okay, so I don't need it anymore. Chu Muyu smiled and declined politely. Miss Chu is my savior, I should help you. Yuan Xiao smiled gently and looked at Chu Muyu, Miss Chu, if you have time, you can come to me in Linchi. Let's have a chance. Chu Muyu politely refused. Now she is very busy, not only has to take the entrance examination, but also learns with Dong Fangshen. There is really no time to play. Miss Chu should also go home now, I'll take you back. Yuan Xiao fixedly looked at Chu Muyu, seeing how she wanted to refuse, and said, Don't refuse, you have refused me to invite you to dinner. Up. After investigating, Yuan Xiao also knew that Chu Muyu, Chu Muyu opened her mouth and nodded helplessly, Well, by the way, before you leave, I will check your body again. Thank you, then. Yuan Xiao turned his wheelchair with satisfaction. I'll leave first, and you can go back by yourself. Chu Muyu turned to Du Jingwen and the others. Du Jingwen blinked at Chu Muyu, with a questioning look in her eyes, Who is he? Standing on the side, Wu Hung Jun also had a questioning look on his face, 
wanting to understand the relationship between the two of them from Chum Wu's mouth. His name is Yuan Xiao. He has injured his legs and needs me to treat him. Chum Wu briefly explained. Chum Wu's explanation, Wu Hung Jun naturally believed, and understood her medical skills. After all, he also experienced Chum Wu's medical skills really well. Puff. Lantern Festival. Du Jingwen couldn't help but laughed, but soon covered her mouth. Chum Wu understood Du Jingwen's smile very well. After Chum Wu had a way to heal Yuan Xiao's legs, and when he was in a good mood, he explained the reason for Yuan Xiao's name. Yuan Xiao was born on the Lantern Festival, and within a few days the little baby was round and round, much like the glutinous rice on the Lantern Festival. His parents soon gave him the nickname Glutinous Rice Balls, and his name was Yuan Xiao. In order to prevent Du Jingwen from misunderstanding, Chum Wu explained it kindly, the sky that goes straight to the sky is not the night of the Lantern Festival. Du Jingwen's face flushed, but she was still holding back her smile, feeling very embarrassed and blushing. Feeling embarrassed, she quickly changed the subject, since someone specially came to say goodbye to you, then you can send it off. Well. See you tomorrow. Chum Wu and Du Jingwen waved, and said goodbye to Wu Hung Jun. Wu Hung Jun opened his mouth and could only say goodbye to Chum Wu. At this moment, no one saw it. An off-road vehicle squeaked and stopped on the road outside the school gate. A young man in an old camouflage uniform walked out of the passenger seat. Xi Liang looked at Chum Wu sullenly, and saw the bodyguard standing beside Yuan Xiao in the car that was even more upscale than the private car that came to pick him up from school. He was extremely angry and jealous. This bitch, if he doesn't give face to himself, then he doesn't give her face either. He could never expect a woman Xi Liang could not get. Sneer. Xi Liang sneered, and walked out with his hands in his pockets, with a mocking look on his face, Chum Wu you really can seduce men. Although he had troubled Chum Wu in the morning and told her that he did the things of the little gangster, but who knows about this matter? Who can have evidence? Therefore, Xi Liang stood up so arrogantly at this moment. Upon hearing Xi Liang's words, both Chum Wu, Du Jingwen, Wu Hung Jun, and Yuan Xiao frowned. Yuan Xiao turned his head, his indifferent and handsome face was full of icy coldness. Seeing Xi Liang's face, he was already clear in his heart. This person is Xi Liang. Before coming, he also investigated Xi Liang's identity and looked at his photos. Naturally, he recognized him as Xi Liang at a glance. However, Yuan Xiao would not say anything about the investigation, a cold smile appeared at the corner of his mouth, and he looked at Xi Liang mockingly. However, Xi Liang didn't know at all that he was a clown who had taken off his clothes. Hello, brother, my name is Xi Liang, and my dad is the chairman of Kishin Group. Xi Liang showed a modest smile. That gesture really shows the performance of a successful and rich second generation. Chum Wu stood on the side, raised her eyebrows at Xi Liang, her eyes filled with joking smiles. A mocking look flashed through Yuan Xiao's eyes and his tone was very indifferent, I thought you would say that Kishin Group belongs to you. After the voice fell for a moment, puff. A burst of laughter came from the crowd. When Xi Liang heard the laughter of the people, his proud face suddenly stiffened, and a look of anger flashed in his eyes. This waist in a wheelchair is laughing at him. If he didn't want to slander Chum Wu, he would definitely hit this waist in a wheelchair on the ground. He didn't think what Yuan Xiao could do to him. After all, in Xingxi, there was no strong family surnamed Yuan, and he was the young owner of the Kishin group. Although the car Yuan Xiao was sitting in was not bad, he thought that it was because of his health that he had built such a car. Xi Liang suppressed the anger in his heart, with a far-fetched smile on his face, Haha, brother, you can really be joking, after all, I'm still young. Yuan Xiao smiled indifferently, noncommittal. I think my brother just met Chum Wu. I don't know. She is a girl who dislikes the poor and loves the rich. Only yesterday, 
a big brother came to the school gate to find Chum Wu to settle the accounts, saying that he had always abandoned him and was on the list. If you are a rich young master, don't let him be a poor ghost. Xiliang's eyes swept over Chum Wu and Yuan Xiao from time to time, and glanced at the surrounding classmates and parents. Chum Wu dared not give him face, he was about to let this ashamed again in front of so many people, so that the rich young master would no longer look at her. Those who didn't know what happened yesterday, all looked at Chum Wu with mocking eyes, and those who knew were all gloating. The corner of Yuan Xiao's mouth rose slowly, and a cold light flashed in his pitch black eyes, really? But I don't believe you. Chum Wu stood aside, and when she heard Yuan Xiao's answer, a flash of surprise flashed in her eyes. After all, she didn't know that Yuan Xiao had already investigated her, and she didn't know that his arrival was because of what happened yesterday. And Wu Hung Jun's handsome face also showed a look of surprise. He did not expect that this young man would be so wise, or because of other reasons, he would not believe Xi Liang's words. However, this has already made Wu Hung Jun look at Yuan Xiao highly. As for the distrusted Xi Liang's instant smile, he froze on the spot, staring at his own eyes, What, you, what did you say? He didn't expect Xi Liang to answer him like this. I said, I don't believe what you said. Yuan Xiao's tone was very flat and indifferent, and he didn't even give Xi Liang a look, as if Xi Liang was like on the roadside in his eyes. After receiving an affirmative answer from Yuan Xiao, Xi Liang's entire face was gloomy, with a sullen light gleaming in his eyes, staring at Yuan Xiao. Puff! Du Jingwen couldn't help but snorted. I was very angry when I heard Xi Liang slander and insult Chum Wu, and wanted to stand up and speak. However, after hearing Yuan Xiao's answer, Du Jingwen was also stunned. Now that he heard Yuan Xiao not giving Xi Liang face again, how could he be in a bad mood? Have you finished talking? After you have finished talking, you can go. Yuan Xiao turned the wheelchair indifferently, his voice cold. You. Xi Liang was so angry that his nose was crooked. This waste really didn't show him any face. He gritted his teeth and said mockingly, No wonder you are sitting in a wheelchair. I can't stop your legs from being broken. Even your eyes are blind. Anyone dare to ask for it? Yuan Xiao sneered sarcastically, My legs are useless, but my eyes are not blind. With Ms. Chu's personality and ability, you can actually handle such at will. I really think that you can sully the girl's reputation. Are everyone in the world as stupid as you? You rubbish, you dare to scold me. Looking for death. Being laughed at by a crippled rubbish, Xi Liang felt anger raging in his heart, raising his fist was going towards Yuan Xiao. Xi Liang. What are you doing? Stop. Oh, it's so lively here. Is there any gang fight? Who fights? I'm the police. An unharmonious voice came into everyone's ears. Hearing this discordant sound, everyone looked in the direction of the sound, and saw a young man in camouflage uniform who was almost washed out of old and walked in through the gap in the crowd. When Chum Wu saw the incoming person, a policeman's expression flashed across her face, Yet Yen Ming. The person here is not someone else, but Yet Yen Ming. When Yet Yen Ming saw Chum Wu's scornful smile, he put his hands in his belts, walked over in a haughty manner, and glanced at the crowd around him, why are there so many people? Is it really going to be there? Assault at school. When some parents around heard what Yet Yen Ming said, they all subconsciously took two steps back, indicating that they had nothing to do with this matter. And when Xi Liang heard Yet Yen Ming's cry, he subconsciously stopped his hands. When he saw his poor man's dress, his face showed a deep contempt and mockery. Go away. Xi Liang waved arrogantly and ordered Yet Yen Ming. Yet Yen Ming looked up and down at Xi Liang, chuckled, and nodded Xi Liang, Boy, what are you talking about, how dare you talk to me like this? Hearing this, the parents watching the theater around couldn't help but curl their lips, muttering in their hearts, Didn't this guy say that he was a policeman? 
How do you think this guy is even more rascal than a rascal? Seeing Ye Tianming's arrival, Chu Muyu also stood aside and prepared to watch the show. Yuan Xiao frowned and looked at Ye Tianming. In his mind, he remembered that Ye Tianming was with Xiao Junyan in the information of investigating Chu Muyu. The identity of this Ye Tianming is very mysterious, no matter how much he investigates, he can't find out. This is also natural, Ye Tianming is the deputy captain of the Blue Sword Brigade, and the files are all with an S grade, how could it be so easy to investigate? Therefore, Yuan Xiao did not speak any more, knowing who Ye Tianming would help, so he watched how Ye Tianming taught Xi Liang. Xi Liang was poked his forehead with Ye Tianming's finger, his body did not stand firmly, and he took a step backwards. Such insulting actions and such arrogant threatening words caused Xi Liang's hatred to shift, and the anger in his heart was released towards Ye Tianming. There was a howl in his mouth, dare to poke my head and look for death. Angrily, he threw a fist towards Ye Tianming. Ye Tianming raised his hand and easily grasped Xi Liang's fist that was squeezed toward him. On one side of his body, his arm was hard, and Xi Liang's 80 or 90 kilograms of body was thrown away. With a touch, Xi Liang landed on his back and hit the ground fiercely. The pain made him let out a miserable cry that did not resemble a human. When everyone saw Xi Liang's miserable appearance, they couldn't help grinning, but they all felt painful, let alone the person involved. Du Jingwen waved her fist in excitement, with a gloating smile on her face, and shouted, Good fight! Chu Muyo glanced at Du Jingwen, shook her head helplessly, and looked at Ye Tianming again. This guy was really arrogant. However, this guy is qualified to be arrogant regardless of his family background or his own strength. Ye Tianming chuckled and looked down at Xi Liang on the ground, Hey, you guy dare to attack the police, that's illegal. Xi Liang was lying on the ground, only feeling that his internal organs had been severely smashed and his bones seemed to be shattered. Listening to Ye Tianming's words, his heart was extremely angry, and he looked up to the sky for a long time, Fang Ching. Fang Ching. When everyone heard Xi Liang's yelling, they all showed a look of confusion and curiosity, what Fang Ching. However, Chu Muyu and others still knew that this was calling a person's name. Sure enough, within a few seconds, the crowd was agitated, and a young man in his thirties squeezed in from the crowd. When the young man who squeezed in saw Xi Liang lying on the ground, he exclaimed, Master! This young man is not someone else, but Fang Ching, who was shouting in Xi Liang's mouth, not only the driver who picked up Xi Liang, but also his bodyguard and thug. Fang Ching hurried to Xi Liang's side and helped him from the ground, Master, what's wrong with you? Xi Liang sat on the ground, looked up angrily at Ye Tianming, pointed his finger at him, kill me this poor ghost. As soon as Fang Qing heard Xi Liang's order, he raised his head and looked at Ye Tianming, with a cold light in his eyes. However, just before Ye Tianming looked at each other, Fang Qing's sturdy body was shivering. Who is Ye Tianming? That is the one who often goes to the battlefield, really crawling out of the sea of blood in the corpse mountain. How can Fang Qing be like a punished thug? At Ye Tianming's eyes that were as cold as cheetahs, a chill suddenly rushed from the solace of his feet to the top of his head, and his whole body was cold. Bodyguard Ye Tianming's mouth turned evilly, his tone was very flat, but Fang Qing's ears were extremely cold. Xi Liang didn't know what Fang Qing was feeling at the moment, his heart was filled with angry flames, and pointed at Ye Tianming. What are you still doing? I will be responsible for killing this if something goes wrong. It seemed that he didn't regard Ye Tianming's life as human life at all, and didn't care at all. Kill me. Ye Tianming pointed to his nose and smiled. There are so many special forces abroad who didn't kill Lao Tzu. It's up to you. Regardless of the current phenomenon of world peace, in fact, in the dark place, there are countless soldiers who have blood and sweat to defend their homes and the country. No one can understand the contributions of the soldiers. And yet Tianming's Blue Sword Special Brigade was the sharp edge of Huaxia Kingdom living in the dark, 
and those who dared to offend Huaxia were the moments when they were dispatched. It is estimated that more people died in his hands than Xiliang had seen. Xiao Junyan, who got out of the driver's seat, stood among the crowd, hiding himself with the help of the crowd, and Sen Han's eyes fell on Fang Qing and Xiliang. The words of Ye Tianming's chuckle and Xiao Junyan's cold eyes in the dark caused Fang Qing to unconsciously see a thin layer of cold sweat on his forehead, and his back was soaked with sweat, not because of the heat. But because of feeling cold all over, cold sweat. Fang Qing didn't do anything, which made Xi Liang even more angry. He scolded and ordered, Fang Qing, did you hear my order and kill this immediately? Fang Qing heard the command again, a drop of sweat fell on his forehead, gritted his teeth, and could only stand up from the ground. As Xi Liang's thug, he naturally wants his master to take revenge. Even if this person is not an opponent, he must also act, otherwise, his job will be lost. Yet Yen Ming saw that Fang Qing even dared to attack him, a wicked smile appeared at the corner of his mouth, and he muttered to himself, it seems that some people are really not afraid of death. Before meeting Yet Yen Ming, but seeing the playful smile on his face again, Fang Qing broke out with cold sweat on his forehead, and his whole body was cold. Finally, in order to embolden himself, he yelled, kicked his feet on the ground, and raised his right foot to buckle Ye Tian Ming fiercely. Chu Muil looked at Fang Qing, who was about to attack Ye Tian Ming, with a sympathetic expression in her eyes. Just as Chu Muil thought, this Fang Qing was basically a worm shaking the tree. Ye Tian Ming easily grabbed Fang Qing's calf again, and threw it towards the ground beside him like a sack. With a touch, Fang Qing was far more miserable than Xi Liang. Not only did he hit the ground hard, he also slid on the ground for two or three meters before stopping. Suddenly, the students and their parents who were surrounded by them were so scared that they backed away from the fighting area. Except for Yuan Xiao, Chu Muyu, and Wu Hung Jun, everyone looked at Ye Tian Ming with shocked expressions, then looked at the man who fell to the ground, holding his right leg, and wailed in pain. Everyone saw that Fang Qing's calf was bent to one side strangely, and it was painful to look at it. Sitting on the ground, Xi Liang's fierce and angry look stiffened on the spot, staring at Fang Qing's miserable appearance at this time. He was thrown out by Ye Tian Ming just now, and he immediately called Fang Qing out, which meant that his skill was good. Moreover, if Kishan Group can hire him to protect his safety and become his bodyguard, how can he be an ordinary person? In the past, Xi Liang had also seen Fang Qing's shots, and it was absolutely unambiguous, but today he was so useless against Shang Ye Tian Ming, and immediately felt a chill rushing from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. It seemed that at this time, Xi Liang realized that Ye Tian Ming was not something he could provoke, and his unconscious body trembled slightly. Ye Tian Ming sighed deeply, and looked at Fang Qing on the ground with helpless sympathy, to blame. Blame yourself and your master, I am a legitimate defense. Xi Liang looked up at Ye Tian Ming, his eyes filled with terror, and his body moved back unconsciously. Ye Tian Ming turned his head and smiled at Xi Liang, Master, you seem to kill me just now. Xi Liang's heart squatted, and the fear on his face became stronger, and he was very afraid that Ye Tian Ming would attack him, You, you can't hurt me, my dad is the chairman of Kishan Group. You hurt me, you are offended. Kais Hung Group. Kishan Group. Do you think that a mere Kishan Group can threaten me? Ye Tian Ming's eyes narrowed slightly, and a cold killing intent radiated from his body. Chu Muyu, who had been standing by and watching the play, frowned slightly. To be honest, if you let Ye Tian Ming or Xiao Junyan take action to destroy the Kishan Group, it could be a hundred. However, she was unwilling to let them take action for this kind of thing, especially Xiao Junyan. What she wants is to stand shoulder to shoulder with her and be qualified to stand with him. It is still very troublesome to let others pull this matter out and talk about it. Although she wasn't afraid, she was terrible, and she didn't want her to be a stain on Xiao Junyan's life. She must do it, otherwise, how could she let Xi Liang always trouble her? 
Xiliang's body couldn't help trembling, and he almost knelt on the ground. Yet Yen Ming. Chum Wei raised her head and called Yet Yen Ming. Yet Yen Ming was taken aback and looked at Chum Wei puzzledly, Little Junior Sister, what's the matter? This is the school. Chum Wei only said five words indifferently. She knew that Yet Yen Ming understood what she meant. Yet Yen Ming lowered his head and touched his nose and turned his head slightly to look at the figure in the crowd. Xiao Junyan received Ye Tianming's questioning eyes, nodded gently, then turned around and disappeared into the crowd. Well, that's right, after all, this is a school, pay attention to the impact. Ye Tianming nodded and said in agreement. Ye Tianming's words made Xi Liang breathe a sigh of relief, and a drop of sweat fell on his forehead, sliding down his cheek. Although Chu Muyu spoke, Xi Liang didn't have any gratitude for her, instead, she turned her head and gave a ferocious stare. In Xi Liang's heart, if it were not for this slut, how could he be threatened by Ye Tianming and lose such a big face? Now, Xi Liang didn't want her because he liked Chu Muyu, but he wanted her to get revenge on her. As long as he gets Chu Muyu, he can retaliate and ravage her fiercely. Get out! Ye Tianming yelled coldly and glared at Xi Liang. Xi Liang gritted his teeth, got up from the ground resentfully, and ran out of the crowd embarrassedly. He didn't even dare to turn his head back, and directly dropped Fang Qing, who fell on the ground holding his calf and screamed. Ye Tianming saw Xi Liang running away in embarrassment, chuckled, walked in front of Chum Wu, and blinked at her, little junior sister, how about it? Chum Wei rolled her eyes at Ye Tianming angrily, and asked puzzledly, Why are you here? The boss informed me that he told me to come to you. Ye Tianming explained with a smile. Only then did Chum Wei remember. In the morning, she said that she would punish Xiao Junyan and could not show up in front of her for half a month. She also said that Ye Tianming should be asked for the CD. Unexpectedly, Xiao Junyan listened to her so much and called Ye Tianming directly for her. Thinking of someone's careful care, Chu Muyu's mouth faintly evoked an arc of happiness. This move, in the eyes of Wu Hengjun and Yuan Xiao, made their brows frown unconsciously. Well, I know. But something is happening today. Chu Muyu glanced at Ye Tianming somewhat apologetically, then turned to look at Yuan Xiao. She didn't expect to find Ye Tianming so soon, and she met Yuan Xiao who was leaving after school. Ye Tianming smiled, glanced at Yuan Xiao, and said defiantly, It's okay, the boss said, as long as there is something, even order me, as a younger brother, I will definitely do it perfectly. You have something to do now. Do it, our business, take your time, don't rush. Yuan Xiao lowered his eyes and gently stroked the armrest of the wheelchair with his fingers. He knew who the boss in Ye Tianming's mouth was, and that was Xiao Junyan. But Wu Hengjun didn't know that Ye Tianming and Xiao Junyan knew each other, so at this time his heart was full of doubts and puzzles. He only knew that Ye Tianming was a police officer under his father, but he didn't know who the boss was in his mouth, and he didn't seem to be from the police station. Chu Muyu nodded turned to Yuan Xiao and said, Yuan Xiao, let's get in the car first. Okay. Yuan Xiao nodded and asked his bodyguard to get him into the car. Chu Muyu, Wu Hengjun, Ye Tianming and others waved their hands, and then got into the car under the gaze of countless pairs of eyes. Everyone seemed to have watched a wonderful drama that they couldn't understand. Every adult parent only felt a little confused in his head, especially the parents who saw the drama yesterday. Although their parents are easily brought by the limelight, and others believe what they say, but seeing the situation today, they are doubtful, and wonder if the words that Chum Wu said are really stupid. Didn't it mean that Chum Wu used her beauty to show her rich second generation? How do you look at this posture, it is the second generation of the rich who courtesy Chum Wu. Is this kind of care? The plot is very exciting, but not understanding what it means is also worrying. Although it was said that Chum Wu sent Yuan Xiao, that is, he checked his physical condition in the car, and then Yuan Xiao asked the car to take her home. 
the car parked at the gate of Chumwiu's community, which was requested by Chumwiu. Just here, I'll go down first. After you go back, you still have to take good care of your body, massage your legs more, exercise your muscles, and recover faster in the future. Chumwiu grabbed the door handle with one hand. While exhorting. Okay. Yuan Xiao nodded lightly, watching Chumwiu's eyes flashed with reluctant thoughts, but still said, be careful along the way. Chumwiu smiled slightly, opened the door of the car, walked out, and waved to Yuan Xiao who was sitting in the car. The driver drove the car and left with Yuan Xiao, but Chumwiu did not leave the place. Within a few seconds, the off-road vehicle parked on the side of the road tens of meters away drove over and stopped in front of Chumwiu little junior sister. Come on. Chum Wiyo glanced at Yet Yen Ming with a hippie smile, opened the door and entered the car, and said, Senior brother Xiao should have told you something, right? Of course, I will take you to see the contents of the CD right away. Yet Yen Ming smiled, quickly turned the steering wheel, and drove away. Thinking that Xiao Junyan ordered Yet Yen Ming to help her, Chum Wiyo couldn't help but inquired about his situation with concern, where is senior brother Xiao? On the mountain. Yet Yen Ming glanced at Chum Wiyo and said lightly. The corner of Chum Wiyo's mouth slightly raised, and nodded in satisfaction, yet. Yet Yen Ming smiled and said, however, for this matter, you can find senior brother Xiao, why would you find me? Let the boss find me. To be honest, he was really surprised. Yet Yen Ming was puzzled, because Xiao Junyan didn't tell him that Chum Wiyo punished him for not letting him appear in front of her for half a month, so he let him pass. Xiao Junyan didn't say anything, Chum Wiyo was very clear in her heart and didn't explain, she smiled and said, You are a policeman, didn't it happen that you made the move just now? Yet Yen Ming curled his lips with a look of disbelief. The boss cared about Chum Wiyo's degree, and even he was a little admired. He had never seen Xiao Junyan caring about a person so much, and he was still a girl. As long as Chum Wiyo was not under his sight, Xiao Junyan was worried about something, it was as if he fell in the palm of his hand, and was frightened in his mouth. The boss is really nice to you. Yet Yen Ming still said a fair word, thinking, while the boss is still in the country, he should deepen his feelings with the younger sister. Chum Wiyo was taken aback for a moment, nodded slightly, the corners of her mouth raised, revealing a light smile, she naturally knew that Xiao Junyan was very good to her. Maybe she really likes him too. It's just that she is still very young, and she is not suitable for falling in love. Whatever, she has to be an adult too. Therefore, now only other methods can be used to delay Xiao Junyan. Xiao Junyan was able to wait for her even if it was entrusted for life, it was her blessing. If Xiao Junyan knew what Chum Wiyo was thinking, he would be very happy. I'm still young, and there are some things that I have to wait for when I grow up. Chum Wiyo leaned against the car window with a single finger on his chin, looked outside, and pointedly reminded Yet Yen Ming. She couldn't talk to Xiao Junyan directly, so let Yet Yen Ming mention it to him. Yet Yen Ming did not take Chum Wiyo to the villa where Lao Wei was located, but a house in the city. Chum Wiyo was not surprised that Yet Yen Ming had so many houses, and didn't ask too much. After all, people can take out 50 million at will. Yet Yen Ming led Chum Wiyo into the study, turned on a computer on the table, and hooked his finger at Chum Wiyo, CD. Chum Wiyo quickly took out the CD-ROM from his school bag and handed it to Yet Yen. Watching him fiddle with the computer, he opened the CD-ROM. When the CD was opened, the sound inside came out. Although the picture was not high definition, it was still possible to see the human face clearly. The contents of the CD turned out to be Xi Liang and Hong Yoshi in the bar box discussing revenge against her. Seeing Hong Yoshi sitting naked next to Xi Liang, Chum Wiyu's eyes flashed a cold light, the corners of her mouth raised, and a mocking smile, I didn't expect that she would be here. Chum Wiyu didn't know the final ending of Hong Yu's poems, but she never thought that she would go to such a place. Yet Yen Ming leaned back in his chair, 
smiled softly, and said, I heard something about her before, but after a long time, I didn't pay attention. Chum Wu nodded gently, leaning on the table, looking at the contents of the computer sideways, with the corners of her mouth slightly raised, and said to Yet Yen Ming, You copy a few copies, oh, yes, and copy this in two. After speaking, he took out his mobile phone again, rummaged through the contents of the recording, and handed it to Yet Yen Ming. Yet Yen Ming opened the recording, listened to the content, smiled hey, and looked up at Chum Wu, little junior sister, you are so black and cunning. I guess Xi Liang didn't know that he was causing you trouble. Instead, you left evidence. When the content inside is released, it is estimated that this guy will go crazy. Chum Wu chuckled, and a cold light flashed in her eyes, if I want to open a medicinal restaurant, I have to match up with the Xi family. Before opening the medicinal restaurant, Chum Wu also had some understanding of the hotel industry in Xingxi, especially those that might become competitors. Half of what Xi Liang's kitchen group manages are hotels, especially in Xingxi. Almost the large restaurants belong to the Xi family. Chum Wu knew that if she opened a medicated diet shop, the business would be as she expected, and she would definitely take away a lot of traffic, and she would definitely meet Kishin Group at that time. Kishin Group is not so glamorous. To build such a large restaurant group, it uses a lot of dirty methods. If they dare to do this, she doesn't mind using this thing to add a fire, sometimes a small flame can start a prairie fire. Yet. Yeah. Yet Yen Ming showed a sly smile at the corner of his mouth. He looked at Chum Wu with a chuckle, a gloating look flashed in his eyes, and said, Snake and fight seven inches, you are directly giving the Xi family to down, so that no one will support Xi Liang, and he won't be able to trouble you. This little junior girl is so cruel, not only to make Xi Liang fall into hell, but also to make the entire Xi family behind him fall into the 18th with him. Chum Wu chuckled lightly, a look of contempt flashed in her eyes, now let him jump over there for a while. After all, looking for Xi Liang's revenge now is not small, and she will also have a lot of worries. Hong Yuxi has always been waiting for Xi Liang to avenge him. However, she waited for a few days without receiving any news, and she was very anxious, trying to figure out what happened to Chum Wu. You know, with her current abilities, if you want money but no money, you want power and no power, and you have no skills, there is definitely no way to avenge, so you can only rely on other people's hands. After the closure of the family company and the death of his parents, Hong Yushi grew up a lot and was not as stupid as he was in school. However, in order to take revenge, Hong Yushi has lost her rationality and only wants revenge. After all, this is her only chance now. After staring for nearly a week, on Friday, Hong Yoshi put on his hat and hid in the corner of the roadside of the school, watching the situation inside the school. After school was over, Chum Wu and Du Jingwen walked out the gate of the school talking and laughing, with Wu Hung Jun beside them. Seeing Wu Hung Jun also joking with Chum Wu, his heart was full of anger, and his eyes seemed to be burning with hatred. She didn't expect Chum Wu to lead such a good life and she did. You know, in her current life, although she can get money from some wealthy people every day, she can only get so much money when she sells it. It is simply a life that is not as good as a pig and a dog, and is the life she has most spurned before. Chum Wu. Hong Yuxi gritted her teeth, clutching the wall between her hands. She grabbed the white powder from the wall and fell to the ground, and her feet were covered with white powder. Chum Wu, who was talking to Wu Hung Jun, paused and frowned, feeling that someone had been looking at her, turning her head to look in the direction of her line of sight. However, when Chum Wu turned his head, Hong Yuxi had disappeared in the original place. What's the matter? Wu Hung Jun asked concerned about Chum Wu's behavior. Chum Wu gently shook her head, nothing. Wu Hung Jun smiled and said, I didn't expect that Xi Liang would not come today. I don't know if he was scared. Well, yeah, I should have been scared. Chum Wu also smiled, 
mocking Ziliang's softness and fear of hardship. However, now that Ziliang didn't bother her, she wouldn't ask him for trouble by herself. Squeak! At this moment, an off-road vehicle stopped in front of Chumwu, yet Yenming stretched out his head from inside and waved at her, little junior sister. It had already been negotiated that she would come to pick up Chumwu on Friday, and take her to see the medicinal restaurant. Come on! Chumwu smiled and waved at Wu Hungjun and the others, I have something to do, so I'll leave. Wu Hungjun and the others watched Chumwu get into Ye Tianming's car, their eyes all flashed with surprise. After going back that day, Wu Hungjun asked Wu Ming who exactly was Ye Tianming, and always felt that his identity was unusual. Sure enough, Wu Ming told him that when he saw Ye Tianming, he could only make a warning that he could never be an enemy. Even if he could not be a friend, he could never be an enemy. I guessed from Wu Ming's words alone that Ye Tianming's identity was unusual, but he still didn't understand how Chum Wu's relationship with Ye Tianming seemed to be very good. Let's go. Ye Tianming glanced at Wu Hongjun, a wicked smile appeared on the corner of his mouth, and when he stepped on the accelerator, he left with Chum Wu directly. In the dark, Hong Yuxi walked out slowly, his eyes gleaming with hatred and anger, staring at the rear of the off-road vehicle where Chum Wu was sitting. Chum Wu and Ye Tianming came to the new address of the medicinal restaurant. Although the medicinal restaurant is not really located in the city center, it is also around the city center. After all, there are very few places to open stores in the center. Since it is a medicinal restaurant, the appearance of the entire hotel is somewhat antique. Ling Hong deliberately added an antique door plaque outside the gate to give people a taste of Chinese ancient times. The restaurant is still being renovated, and it still smells of gasoline. When I walked into the hotel, I saw Ling Hong directing inside. When Ling Hong turned around, he saw Ye Tianming and Chu Muya walking in from outside. Miss Chu. Ling Hong showed an excited smile on his face, and hurried to Chu Muya's face, Miss Chu, why are you here today? Chu Muya looked around and said with a smile, of course I came to see how the decoration is going. I didn't expect you to be so fast. Ling Hong scratched his head, blushing and said, when I was idle, I would walk out to see where the store is more suitable for opening a restaurant, but the funds have been limited and I cannot afford to buy. The day after I gave me the money, I bought it here. Chum Wheel laughed when she heard it, and the opportunity was reserved for those who were prepared. Sometimes, it is difficult for a clever woman to cook without rice, and what Ling Hong lacks is funds. Ling Hong can go to work in those restaurants, but he is not as free as he is now. He decides almost everything. Chum Wu is in a state of decentralization, which is the best for Ling Hong. That's really the best, but you have to pay more attention to this decoration project. The decoration must not be sloppy. Chum Wu exhorted. I understand this. Ling Hong nodded and said sideways, want to go to the second floor to have a look, I bought three floors, and the second and third floors are all boxes. Chum Wu nodded gently, and said with a chuckle, the second floor can be opened to the outside world, and the third floor is open to members. Are you opening a member so soon? Ling Hong was taken aback and asked in surprise. Since there is a third floor, open a member, um, there is another elevator on the third floor. Chum Wu thought for a while and asked Ling Hong, can we add it now? Ling Hong thought for a while, nodded and said, this, it should be possible. There is a side door that leads directly to the parking lot. Chum Wu nodded and smiled appreciatively, well, just like that, you have to prepare an elevator to go to the third floor, but the second floor. The stairs can also go up to the third floor, but you need a membership card to go to the third floor. It is estimated that she is the only hotel in Xingxi. Other people's restaurants may have members, but they are not completely hierarchical distinctions and treatments. Ling Hong nodded, well, I have already written it down, it's too late for today, and I will go to see the elevator tomorrow. The decoration of the third floor should be more luxurious than the second floor. 
Chu Muya frowned while looking at the messy corridor, reminding her. Ling Hong nodded, but his eyes flashed with excitement, got it. Ling Hong thought he was already very intelligent, but compared with Chu Muya, he was still far behind. However, this is also because Ling Hong didn't know that Chu Muya came from the future, and he was very clear about the perfection of membership levels in later generations. Ling Hong was amazed at the membership settings that Chu Muya had mentioned, and only felt that he had found a good boss. Ling Hong took out a piece of paper and wrote down what Chu Muya had said, only to feel that these could be implemented well. Miss Chu, I really didn't expect you to have such a good business mind. Ling Hong said admiringly. Chu Muya smiled. This was just because she had learned from the membership level setting of later generations, and it could only be regarded as taking advantage of her rebirth. Service and meals are the most important, you have to check these two points. Chu Muya reminded Ling Hong. Ling Hong nodded, I know this, I will definitely pay attention. Also, you must sign a contract with those chefs. Even if you leave our medicated restaurant, you must not let them cook our dishes. Chu Muya reminded Ling Hong again. Don't worry, I have signed a contract with them, and the consequences are clearly stated on it. They are definitely not something they can afford. Ling Hong said with a confident light in his eyes. Chu Muya nodded, and this was satisfied, I came here to take a look at the environment and the decoration first. It's still pretty good now. Then I will bother you to take care of Brother Ling. Don't worry, leave it to me, I will never let you down. Ling Hong said confidently, patting his chest. Chu Muyo looked at the decoration of the third floor, and it was all very fast, when will it be possible to open it? Ling Hong said excitedly, I've been running some departments recently, and coupled with the renovation event, if soon, the trial operation should be possible on National Day. Well, I'll come back in a while and take a look at the skills of those chefs. You let those chefs have more control over the quantity of herbs. Chu Muyu nodded and said remindingly. It is good. It's almost time, I'm going back. Chu Muyu looked at his watch and said. Ling Hong said with a bit of dismay, leave so soon? Don't look at it more. Although Chu Muyu's age was much younger than him, her business acumen was beyond his reach, so he wanted to learn more from Chu Muyu. I have a chance in the future, my important task now is to learn. Chu Muyu said with a smile. Well, Miss Chu, be careful all the way. Ling Hong sent Chu Muyu to the gate. Yet Yen Ming ran out of the hotel first, and drove the car over first. Ling Hong watched Chu Muyu get into the car and concentrated on doing his own things. Chu Muya fastened his seat belt, with a smile at the corner of his mouth, let's go to the mountain. It's really a shame not to let the boss send you off. Yet Yen Ming said as he stepped on the accelerator. Chu Muya touched her nose helplessly, and asked, is senior brother Xiao on the mountain? Thinking of punishing Xiao Junyan, it seems that he can't meet on the mountain, right? Don't know where he is now? Not there. Yet Yen Ming curled his lips, his tone was full of deep complaints, in my villa, I will occupy my room and not leave. I thought that Xiao Junyan came to his villa a few days ago and said that he would stay with him for half a month. Up to now, he has not understood what happened between Chu Muyu and Xiao Junyan. As a result, he seems to live in a cold arctic place every day, and he can't sleep well. Really? Chu Muya felt a little depressed when she heard that Xiao Junyan was not on the mountain. It seems that she has become accustomed to the presence of someone by her side. Yet Yen Ming accompanied Chu Muya to the mountain, while Han Tao and Dong Fang Sheng were drinking tea and playing chess in the small pavilion. Hey, the girl is back. Han Tao saw Chu Muya come back, with a bright smile on his old face, but only to see Yet Yen Ming but not Xiao Junyan. He was taken aback and asked in a puzzled way, Xiao Junyan what about that brat? Why isn't this brat picking you up from school? Chu Muyu touched her nose and said, Brother Xiao should have something to do. Hey! Han Tao snorted, his face was full of dissatisfaction, this stinky boy, 
what can be more important than chasing a girl? When these words fell, Chu Muyu and Ye Tianming were both staggered under their feet, and they almost didn't fall to the ground. Ye Tianming smiled and said, Master Han, the boss is in my villa now, should I let him over? A sly flicker flashed in Chu Muyu's eyes, without speaking, she turned and said, I'm going to make dinner first. She said that she should punish Xiao Junyan for not appearing in front of her for half a month, but she doesn't know, will he really obediently obey her punishment? Call, you have to call, this stinky boy, take my words as farting, right? I haven't chased my apprentice and daughter-in-law home yet. Han Tao said with an angry expression on his old face, dissatisfied. When Dong Fang Sheng heard Han Tao's words, he choked on the tea he had drunk. Old guy, what do you mean? Old Han Tao suddenly showed a triumphant smile on his face, and said, Of course I am chasing Mu Yu to be my apprentice and daughter-in-law. Bump! Dong Fang Sheng slapped the table and exclaimed in dissatisfaction, On the basis of your Bing Shan apprentice, how do you match my well-behaved and sensible girl? Han Tao snorted coldly and looked at Dong Fang Sheng, Why don't you deserve it? That stinky boy is a bit colder, but he hurts people, he wants money and money. He wants looks and looks. He wants skills and skills. She's still infatuated with the girl, an absolute model of a wife and slave. Standing on the side, you listened to Ye Tian Ming, who was arguing with Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao. Hearing that someone's master commented on him, three black lines fell on his forehead. Wife slave. His boss is a wife slave. He really couldn't imagine how Xiao Junyan would behave if he heard this name. Dong Fang Sheng snorted, Don't forget, if you want to marry a girl, you have to get permission from me as a master. You stubborn old man, why don't you think so, what's wrong with my apprentice? Han Tao immediately questioned Dong Fang Sheng with dissatisfaction. Seeing you are upset, what's the matter? Dong Fang Sheng raised his eyebrows and said provocatively at Han Tao. Han Tao's old face sank, and he got up from the stone bench awkwardly, Okay, old man Dong Fang, let's go out for a fight. Who is afraid of whom? Dong Fang Sheng also rolled up his sleeves, preparing to fight Han Tao. For these masters of them, it is definitely reaching the point where they are rare opponents. The two of them are evenly matched and come here every day to feel comfortable. But you have to find excuses for the battle. Today, I finally found an excuse. In the past, the chess game did not admit defeat to the point of direct action. Yet Yen Ming looked at the backs of Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao leaving quickly, and couldn't help but wipe the cold sweat from his forehead. These two old people were really noisy. Hee <laughs> hee, call the boss. Yet Yen Ming smiled and quickly walked aside and took out his cell phone, called Xiao Junyan's phone number, and asked him to come over. Chu Muyo made dinner, and Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao came back as if it was good time. Master, Uncle Han, you can eat. Chu Muyo walked in with a large bowl of rice in both hands and said with a smile. Yet Yen Ming put down the teacup in his hand, sat at the table, and said with a smile, I can finally eat, I'm hungry. Han Tao glanced at Ye Tian Ming, and asked dissatisfiedly, What about Xiao Junyan, that stinky boy? Uh, the boss said he's not coming. Ye Tian Ming touched his nose awkwardly, and said with a neck curled. Fuck boy. Han Tao was so angry that his nostrils were gasping. The girl deliberately made such a table of good dishes, but she didn't dare to come, not to give her face, it's really a beating. Yes, yes. It's just a beating. Yet Yen Ming nodded quickly, his face gloating. Chu Muyo lowered her head, feeling guilty in her heart, it seemed that she was the result of it. Master Han, don't blame senior brother Xiao, I told senior brother Xiao not to come. Chu Muyo had no choice but to explain. Han Tao was taken aback, looked at Chu Muyo puzzledly, don't like that stinky boy. When Dong Fang Sheng heard it, he was immediately happy, what's so good about that kid being cold? Besides, the girl is still such a small girl, 
what love is going on. Why can't we fall in love? At that time, we could marry at the age of 14. Han Tao glared and said confidently. Dong Fang Sheng frowned dissatisfied and retorted, That is the old society, now is the new century. Chu Muyu shook her head helplessly when she heard what the two old men who were 200 years old in total said. Master, Uncle Han, it's dinner, it will be cold if you don't eat it. Chu Muyu kindly reminded him. Dong Fang Sheng smiled triumphantly, It's still a well behaved female apprentice. I've had dinner. Han Tao's eyes were staring, it was absolutely envy, jealousy, and hatred in his eyes. He had long regretted how he had accepted Xiao Junyan, the iceberg apprentice, as if facing an ice block. The four people were sitting around the table and eating dinner, but they didn't know that on the top of another hill, there was a slender figure sitting on the trunk of a big tree with a telescope in hand. Looking at the situation here, Chu Muyu's frown and smile were all over her eyes. Although Chu Muyu had dinner with everyone, she was still a little worried about whether Xiao Junyan was eating well at home alone. After everyone had dinner, Chu Muyu grabbed Ye Tianming and went to the kitchen directly, Are you going back? Ye Tianming nodded, Of course I have to go back. I have to go to work tomorrow. Well, you can help me bring the things inside to Brother Xiao. Chu Muyu took out an iron box from the cauldron, put it in a bag, and handed it to Ye Tianming. Ye Tianming was taken aback for a moment, and blinked in confusion, this is. Chu Muyu blushed and said worriedly, let brother Xiao eat something I made. You go back quickly, so it won't get cold. Eating alone. It's great. Ye Tianming couldn't help but curl his lips and asked puzzledly, since you are worried that the boss did not eat dinner, why don't you call him? Chu Muyu couldn't explain, she just pushed Ye Tianming, hurry up, don't waste time here. I want to ask senior brother Xiao, if it gets cold, I will ask you to settle the account. Ye Tianming suddenly dropped three black lines on his forehead, and it took nearly an hour from here to the villa. It's strange that it's not cold. Chu Muyu spent the two weekends studying in the mountains, and did not go home until Sunday afternoon, preparing to cook dinner for his father. Sitting on Ye Tianming's off-road vehicle, he bought some vegetables and went back to the door of his community. Just go to the door, you go to work first. Chu Muyu directly asked Ye Tianming to stop at the door and walk in by himself. If it was Xiao Junyan, Chu Muyu directly invited him to eat at home but this person is Ye Tianming, so forget it. This is the difference between a prospective boyfriend and other friends of the opposite sex. Okay, be careful all the way. Ye Tianming nodded and waved at Chu Muyu. A small squatting on the side of the road and smoking a cigarette, turned his head, and saw Chu Muyu standing at the gate of the community, waving at the people in a car, talking with a smile, and was taken aback. The young bully stood up quickly, took out a photo from his pocket, and compared it to Chu Muyu, his eyes lit up. Chu Muyu's appearance is outstanding. Although this little has never seen her, he is attracted by her appearance and naturally recognizes it at a glance. Finally it's time to wait. The little was relieved and walked up quickly. Chu Muyu happened to be that Ye Tianming waved goodbye and was about to enter the community when the gangster walked in front of her. Are you Chu Muyu? The little bunny looked up and down Chu Muyu, the more he looked, the brighter the lustful light in his eyes. Ye Tianming, who was sitting in the car, originally planned to leave, but when he heard the bully's words, he immediately stepped on the brakes again, and slightly lowered his head to look at the bully outside. A hint of doubt flashed in Chu Muyu's eyes, and she frowned and said, Yes, I am Chu Muyu, what's the matter with you? The little couldn't help it, and stretched out towards Chu Muyu's cheek, her mother, she looks really good, it's difficult. With a pop, before the little stretched out his hand in front of Chu Muyu, he was slapped away. The little who was opened with his hand showed a look of surprise on his face, turning his head and glaring at Chu Muyu, little girl, you dare to resist. Chu Muyu snorted coldly, and looked at the little coldly, You'd better tell the purpose of your coming to me, otherwise, 
I don't mind moving your muscles and bones. The threatened little suddenly showed an arrogant and angry look, and only felt that a 14-year-old little girl could have any power to fight him. Bah! I dared to beat Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu! The little uttered foul language, stared at him, and wanted to do something to Chum Wu. Chum Wu directly looked up at the sky, lifted her foot, and kicked directly at the crotch of the little bastard. Wow! The little let out a roar that didn't look like a human being. He covered his hips with his hands and slowly knelt on the ground, both eyes staring out. Yet Yen Ming grinned when he saw this move of a certain woman, and couldn't help rolling his eyes. This girl is so cruel. The corners of Chum Wu's mouth rose slightly, and she walked to the little bastard, her eyes filled with joking smiles, how is it? Who taught whom? The gangster stared at Chum Wu with fierce and painful hatred. If his eyes could kill people, Chum Wu's body would have been riddled with holes. Let's talk about it, what are you looking for? Chum Wu asked the little coldly. The look in the little bastard's eyes was even more fierce and arrogant, it seemed that there was something that made him very happy. Seeing the gangster's reaction, Chum Wu sneered, her eyes moved down, and the corners of her mouth rose slightly. It seems that you don't want your baby anymore. As a man, the most precious thing is that stuff. Hearing Chum Wu's words, the little bastard's body trembled, and the arrogant and fierce look on his face immediately disappeared. Yes, our boss asked me to come, he, he asked you to. The little said his purpose, because the pain below made me stammer. Chum Wu sneered, let me go, I will go. A vicious look flashed in the little bastard's eyes, with a look of fear, he he he, our boss your friend, that chick, looks okay, if you don't go, she will. Before the gangster could finish speaking, the gangster flew upside down and hit the ground heavily. Chum Wu's expression was cold, and if she could be regarded as her friend or a woman, it would be Du Jingwen, and a cold light flashed in her unconsciously eyes. Thinking that it might be Du Jingwen, Chum Wu quickly got through Du Jingwen's home phone. After a while, the phone was connected, and a middle-aged woman's voice came over, Hey! Hey, Aunt Du, this is Mu Yu, is Jingwen there? Chum Wu suppressed the worry in his heart and asked softly, Jingwen? Not here, she said some classmates told her to go out, but she hasn't come back yet. When Chum Wu heard what Du's mother said, her heart suddenly shook, as expected. Oh, okay, thank you Aunt Du. Chum Wu smiled, still saying goodbye to Aunt Du in a calm tone. Pop! Chum Wu closed the phone, a cold light flashed in his eyes. Yet Yen Ming got out of the car and asked, What's the matter? Chum Wu said in a cold voice, Someone kidnapped Du Jingwen in order to deal with me. What? Yet Yen Ming was taken aback, an angry look appeared in his eyes, who is it? If you ask, you'll know. Chum Wu chuckled, turned to look at the little who was kicked out by herself, walked in front of him, and stepped on his chest, say, who is it? Did you do this? The little felt that his bones were about to break, and grinned for a while, yes, it's Xia Dong and Xia Moyu. Ha! Chum Wu smiled and a shocking spirit surged from her shy body, very well, since you are looking for death, don't blame me. A cold light flashed in Ye Tian Ming's eyes, and he knew Xia Dong and Xia Moyu, and sneered, should I come? Chum Wu turned around and said, send me over there. When you get there, you will call the police again. Capture them. Understood. Ye Tian Ming raised his mouth, got into the car quickly and took Chum Wu to the place where the little bunny said. Now when I think of the last time he taught Xia Dong, this guy didn't even remember the lesson, this time he must remember it to his bones. At the same time, in a somewhat old warehouse, more than a dozen punks guarded the surroundings. Du Jingwen was tied to a chair, her face was full of fear and anger, and her body was still twisting restlessly, trying to get free. Xia Dong came over to take a look at nothing else. When he saw Du Jingwen in a chair, his eyes flashed with licentious light, 
and he walked in front of her and tried to lay hands on her, although she is not beautiful, she can still pass the test. Du Jingwen only felt that her heart was raging, and she slobbed angrily at Xia Dong, go away. Xia Dong seemed to be used to the stubbornness of some girls, and soon he drew away from Du Jingwen's saliva, with an arrogant smile on the corner of his mouth, staring at him, so stubborn, I am not afraid that my brother will be angry. Du Jingwen snorted coldly, turning a blind eye to Xia Dong's ridicule. By now, she had figured it out. It turned out that Xia Moyu and the others had arrested her for Chu Muyu. Although she is still young, she knows that they will not do anything to her for the time being, and they are still classmates. Xia Moyu also said that they would not do anything to her, they were just for Chu Muyu, so she didn't worry about herself, only Chu Muyu. Unexpectedly, when Xia Dong came suddenly and wanted to move her, Du Jingwen was very angry. Brother, what are you doing? Xia Moyu came in and asked with dissatisfaction when he saw Xia Dong's behavior. Xia Dong showed a look of dissatisfaction and glared at Xia Moyu, when will it be your turn to take care of your brother's affairs, and, if it weren't for me, could you catch someone? When Xia Moyu heard Xia Dong's words, his face suddenly blushed, that was maddening. However, she really didn't dare to resist Xia Dong, so she stomped her feet in dissatisfaction turned and left. Xia Dong snorted coldly, feeling that all his good thoughts just now had been lost by Xia Moyu. Standing behind Xia Moyu, Hong Yuxi looked at Xia Dong and Du Jingwen, who was being helped, with a look of resentment in his eyes. A bright smile appeared on Hong Yuxi's face and said to Xia Dong, Xia Shao, this woman, even if you play, anyway, don't dare to resist. When Du Jingwen heard what Hong Yuxi said, her face suddenly showed an angry look, and shouted, Hong Yuxi, you bitch. Hong Yuxi sneered sarcastically, swear, just swear. Who asked you to help Chum Wu, this is your fate. Du Jingwen's eyes were red, fearful, and angry. When Xia Dong heard Chum Wu in Hong Yuxi's mouth, he was slightly taken aback, as if he had been stepped on his tail, and then jumped a step back. Chum Wu. Xia Dong shouted out almost with all his strength. Last time Xia Moyu asked Xia Dong to find Chu Muyu's troubles. He suffered a loss and was embarrassed. He didn't dare to show up with his sister, so Xia Moyu didn't know about it. And today, Xia Moyu didn't fully talk to Xia Dong, only that he wanted to kidnap a person, and didn't say anything specifically, Xia Dong naturally agreed. If he knew that his sister had to deal with Chu Muyu, he would never agree. Seeing Xia Dong's horrified look, Hong Yuxi gave a thud in his heart, and suddenly there was an unknown premonition. If it's the old Hong Yu poems, maybe you can't see much, but after mixing in that place for a long time, I learned a lot of the ability to look at people's faces. Duo Duo can see Xia Dong's appearance a little bit, as if he is very afraid of Chum Wu. Is it what she thinks? However, whether it was true or false, she would never give Chum Wu and Du Jingwen any chance. Xiao Xiao, you got it wrong, her name is Du Jingwen, my classmate. Hong Yuxi showed a coquettish smile, walked in front of Xia Dong, blinked at her, and said without evasiveness, I am this classmates are virgins, absolutely delicious. Where did Du Jingwen have the ability to look at people's faces like Hong Yuxi? so he didn't pay much attention to the changes in Xia Dong's expression, and his attention was completely attracted by what Hong Yuxi said later. The more I listened to Du Jingwen, the more angry he became. Her chest continued to be bullied, and her face flushed, Hong Yuxi. She never expected that Hong Yuxi would do such a thing, anyhow they are also classmates. Xia Dong was originally a mind-wounding person. For Hong Yuxi, a girl who has been in the land of fireworks, it is okay to draw him away. Under the agitation of Hong Yuxi and Du Jingwen's situation, Xia Dong immediately forgot Chu Muyu. Seeing the lewd smile on Xia Dong's face, Hong Yuxi breathed a sigh of relief, and a charming smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. His little hand patted Xia Dong's chest lightly, Xia Dong, go quickly, this is rare chance. 
Xiaodong held Hong Yuxi's slender waist with one hand, and his eyes were full of lewd looks, wait for this young master to do a good job, you will come and serve this young master. A glint flashed in Hong Yuxi's eyes, and a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth, OK, then I'll wait for Xiao Xia. Before leaving, he cast a wink at Xia Dong, then twisted his hips and walked out. Du Jingwen stared at Hong Yuxi with red eyes and left, sitting in a chair and shouting, Hong Yuxi, don't go. Xia Dong turned directly, with a lewd smile on the corner of his mouth, as if flames were burning in his eyes, he walked slowly towards Du Jingwen. Seeing Xia Dong's behavior, Du Jingwen suddenly shook her head and shook her head, no. Don't come over, don't come over. Xia Dong sneered, and said triumphantly, don't go there. Now you are in my hands, it is best to obey your way, otherwise, you will end up badly. Faced with such a situation, Du Jingwen's eyes were flushed, tears rolled in her eyes, and she slowly fell down her cheeks, don't. On the other side, Chu Muyo was sitting in Ye Tianming's off-road vehicle, her eyes flashing cold, hurry up. The fastest speed has already been set. And it's coming soon, don't worry, your classmate will have nothing to do. Ye Tianming said helplessly, this is already 150-60 yards, it's too slow. Chu Muyo pursed her lips, her pretty face covered with frost. She vowed that if Du Jingwen had anything to do, she would never let Xia Dong and the others go. She doesn't care if they make trouble for her, but if it involves relatives and friends next to her, she will definitely not just let it go. With a squeak, Ye Tianming stopped outside the warehouse gate. Chu Muihu didn't wait for Ye Tianming to stop the car, she opened the door, jumped down, and leaped quickly into the warehouse. Little junior sister. Ye Tianming screamed when he saw Chu Muihu's behavior but it was too late. Chu Muyu rushed into the warehouse directly, and then rushed to the door of the warehouse to hear Du Jingwen's angry and frightened cry. Entering the warehouse, Chu Muyu followed her reputation and saw Du Jingwen still in the corner of the warehouse, while Xia Dong was putting her hands on her, trying to tear her clothes apart. When Chu Muyu saw such a scene, a cold air radiated from her body, and a thick murderous intent flashed in her eyes. This time, she really wanted to kill Xia Dong. He lowered his head, kicked out a kick, and kicked several stones on the ground that were half a fist of a baby towards Xia Dong. Boom! The three stones fell precisely on Xia Dong's lower back and legs, and the pain immediately caused him to scream in pain. The gangsters who had been on guard in the warehouse were stunned when they saw Chu Muihu's arrival. Before they could react, Chu Muyu had kicked out the stone and injured Xia Dong. Du Jingwen, who was originally bullied by Xia Dong, saw him fall to the ground because of Chu Muyu's action. His eyes widened, and he saw Chu Muyu standing in front of the warehouse. Miu Yu. When Du Jingwen saw Chu Muyu, she screamed, with joy on her face. Chu Muyu didn't respond to Du Jingwen, but with a gloomy face, she walked towards the gangsters. As soon as the little gangsters saw Chu Muyu walking towards them, they all swarmed up, preparing to surround her. The purpose of their coming here is to catch someone from Chu Muyu. Xia Muyu's order was for them to catch her, and then let them enjoy and insult her. When they heard Du Jingwen's cry, they knew who the person was, which was their main purpose this time. Seeing Chu Muyu's beautiful and pretty face, every one of the gangsters was maddening. Seeing the little rushing towards him, Chu Muyu raised the corners of her lips, her eyes flashed with a cold smile, and her petite body faintly exuded a thick murderous intent, this is what you asked for. Chu Muyu called out like a spirit snake, shuttled among these little punks, one in each hand. Grabbing a small bastard's wrist, the other hand directly made a fist, and fell on his arm fiercely, and the click fist fell, which broke the small bastard's bones. Suddenly, the little let out a screaming scream. Hearing the miserable cry, hearing the ears of the other little gangsters, they couldn't help their body shivering, and their stature took a halt. Chu Muyo kicked the gangster in front of him, and his body weighing 120 or 30 jin flew upside down 7 or 8 meters away, 
slamming heavily on the ground. The little bastard's face door slammed on the ground, and his face was instantly cut with a few scars. If he listened closely, he would definitely be able to hear the slight sound of broken bones on his body. After getting rid of a small bastard, Chum Wihu turned around again, and moved his hands at the other small bastards, almost one stroke at a time, either breaking their arms or breaking their legs, and the shot was very decisive and cruel. This is also what they did against her friend, not herself. Perhaps they were not so angry about what they did to Chum Wihu himself, but it was not Chum Wihu who could forgive them if they caused harm to relatives and friends. And there are other compartments in this warehouse. Xiaomoyu and Hong Yoshi have been waiting for Chum Wia one day, and they are bored and tired. I couldn't stay outside and wait for Chum Wia all the time, so I was eating in the restroom and watching TV. Suddenly heard outside sounds, as well as Du Jingwen's screams and the roars of other gangsters, his eyes lit up at the same time, and he quickly ran out from inside. However, when I ran outside, I saw that Chum Wia was killing the quartet. Of the little they called, none of them could hurt Chum Wiyu. Instead, they were kicked and flew out by Chum Wiyu one by one. With Chum Wiyu's vigorous body and agile means, both Hong Yoshi and Xiao Moyu's eyes were straightened, and the whole person was dumbfounded. At this time, Chum Wiyu seemed to have entered the enemy army. Brave female general! How can that be? Both Hong Yoshi and Xiao Moyu were unbelievable, their lips trembled, and they didn't want to believe that Chum Wiyu had such a good skill. Yet Yen Ming parked the car and walked in, only to see Chum Wiyu beating these punks all over the floor looking for teeth, and chuckled. He seems to have forgotten that Chum Wiyu's skill was taught by the boss, can these little gangsters be able to bully? Skills are getting better and better. After watching a few moves, Ye Tianming's mouth showed a smile, and he muttered admiringly. In three minutes, Chum Wiyu left a deep memory for every gangster, and it took a little longer to deal with them. Xia Dong had also recovered from the pain, sitting on the ground, staring at Chum Wiyu, his eyes were full of panic. He never expected that Chum Wiyu would actually appear here. This is also why Xia Dong didn't know that she was being scammed by his sister. The person she was going to deal with was Chum Wiyu. If she knew it, she probably had the heart to kill her sister. Now, seeing Chum Wiyu drop her fists and feet at those punks so neatly and mercilessly, her body was trembling, and she had no strength to move. Chum Wiyu lifted her foot and kicked the last away. I don't know if it was the last little who made Chum Wiyu vent all the anger in his heart, and kicked him out more than ten meters away, hitting the wall heavily, only to stop his body. The gangster bumped against the wall, a mouth full of red blood poured out from the corner of his mouth and his body fell to the ground again. He twitched slightly, and remained motionless. It is estimated that there was more air and less air. Miu Yu Du Jingwen sat on the chair and watched Chum Wiyu beat the punks so embarrassingly one by one, with shocked expressions on her face. She never knew that Chum Wiyu could be so good. If you are a savvy person, you would think that Xiao Moyu and Hong Yoshi would arrest her to threaten Chum Wiyu, instead of directly asking Chum Wiyu for revenge. At this time, Hong Yoshi and Xiaomoyu, the two people who were looking for Chum Wiyu's revenge, stood still on the spot after walking out of the restroom. They were completely shaken by Chum Wiyu's skill and their brains were blank, and they forgot to do other things. Chum Wiyu stood on the dirty ground, her petite body still faintly exuding a chill and killing intent. He seemed to be a brave general who hadn't beaten enough to kill. A drop of glittering sweat slid down her forehead and fell into Chum Wiyu's eye sockets along her eyelids. This drop of sweat was like a basin of cold water, splashing on the top of Chum Wiyu's head, causing her entire mind to be pulled back. Chum Wiyu took a few breaths, glanced at the screaming little who fell to the ground, holding her broken arms and legs, and snorted coldly. Turning his head, he confronted Xiaomoyu and Hong Yoshi who were standing at the entrance of the restroom. The corners of their mouths twitched, and a cold smile appeared on their pretty faces. Xiaomoyu, Hong Yoshi, I didn't expect you to be so mindless. Chum Wiyu slowly walked towards them, 
her voice was cold, like a magic sound from hell. It's chills. Whether it was Xiaomoyu, Hong Yushi, or Xia Dong, they felt that their whole body was frozen, unable to move, and looked at Chum Wiyu's figure in fear. Seeing Chum Wiyu walking towards him, Xiaomoyu and Hong Yushi, who had not recovered from the shock, both subconsciously took a step back. Chum Wiyu, what are you going to do, don't come over. Xiaomoyu trembled, her eyes looked at Chum Wiyu in horror, and her feet slowly moved back. Compared with Xiaomoyu, Hong Yushi is more bachelor, although there is horror, but a bit less afraid. Chum Wiyu Hong Yushi gritted his teeth, and as Chum Wiyu's name popped out word by word, the anger in his heart burned more vigorously. Chum Wiyu sneered and looked at Hong Yushi, her tone was full of ridicule, Hong Yushi, I give you a chance to live, but you don't cherish it, you must find your own way. Ha ha ha. Hearing Chum Wiyu's words, Hong Yushi felt amused for a while, and looked at her mockingly, Chum Wiyu, you made my family ruined and lost everything, and you said forgive me. Some people only see the result but not the cause. If it wasn't for Hong Yushi who pushed Chum Wiyu off the cliff because of jealousy, how could he be retaliated and punished? If there is a cause, there will be an effect, and karma is about Hong Yu poetry. Chum Wiyu, who was in the previous life, delayed his study career, and made foster father choose Haiming dying of illness. It can be said that he was the indirect murderer who killed choose Haiming. That's what you asked for yourself. If you didn't trouble me, how could you end up like this? Chum Wiyu laughed all his life and said mockingly. Fart. Hong Yushi yelled and cursed frantically, Why do you say these things to me? Who am I, who are you, a wild species that even parents don't want? Should live in this world. Chum Wiyu lowered her eyes, a cold light flashed under her eyes, and she jumped out and appeared in front of Hong Yushi. He raised his hand without hesitation, with a pop, the slap fell on Hong Yushi's face fiercely. Chum Wiyu staggered Hong Yushi's body after being beaten by Chum Wiyu, and took two steps back. A red slap print appeared on the beaten cheek in an instant. Du Jingwen sat on a chair and saw that Hong Yushi was slapped by Chum Wiyu, and instantly felt comfortable, good fight. Hong Yushi's eyes were red, turned his head and stared at Chum Wiyu fiercely, raised his hand and took out a fruit knife from his pocket, and stabbed it towards Chum Wiyu. Chum Wiyu sneered, turned around, and quickly avoided Hong Yushi's fruit knife. When she turned around, she saw Xiaomoyu standing opposite her, her mouth raised, revealing a sly smile. Hong Yushi saw that Chum Wiyu had escaped his own knife, and his heart became even more angry. He turned his wrist and slashed towards Chum Wiyu again. Chum Wiyu, who was agile in figure, avoided the attack of Hong Yushi, her feet slid on the ground, her feet slid away, her body turned back, and a fruit knife brushed her nose. Chum Wiyu raised a hand, twisted his fingers, and flicked towards Hong Yushi's wrist. Hong Yushi only felt a sharp pain in his wrist, and all his arms were a halt. Chum Wiyu twisted her waist, her figure appeared in Hong Yushi's look, raised her palm, and patted Hong Yushi's shoulder lightly. Hong Yushi's body staggered forward and almost fell to the ground. Ah! However, Hong Yushi was not reconciled, turned around angrily, and stabbed Chum Wiyu with a fruit knife again. Chum Wiyu backed away, and the tip of the fruit knife held by Hong Yushi pointed at the tip of her nose. Seeing this situation, Hong Yushi's eyes flashed a crazy look, and his body rushed faster. Before Hong Yushi was ecstatic in her heart and was about to hurt Chum Wiyu, suddenly, the figure in front of her flashed and disappeared from her sight. The moment Hong Yushi's expression stopped, Chum Wiyu had disappeared, and her body was holding a fruit knife because of her inertia, and she continued to deliver it forward. But Chum Wiyu's figure suddenly disappeared, and the person who appeared in front of her was Xiaomoyu with a look of horror. But at this time, Hong Yushi came back to his senses, and it was too late to take back his fruit knife. With a poof, the sound of the knife penetrating into the meat clearly passed into Hong Yushi's ears, and then Xiaomoyu's screams. 
Hong Yuxi stared at her own eyes and looked at her fruit knife in disbelief. The knife that originally pierced Chu Muyu's face actually pierced Xia Muyu's cheek. Yet Yen Ming grinned immediately, and he knew that Chu Muyu had been playing with Hong Yuxi like this and was absolutely unwilling to do so, as it was. This is to transfer Xia Muyu's hatred. Standing behind Hong Yuxi, Chu Muyu yelled softly, Hi, it must be painful. If there is still someone with their thoughts online, they will definitely be depressed if they call her out. Is this what she can say? Du Jingwen's eyes widened, and she only felt that something made her unable to turn around. How could this Hong Yu poem hurt Xia Moyu? Even Xia Moyu never expected that Hong Yuxi would attack her. She did not expect that Hong Yuxi would fail and hurt her. But whether it was a miss or not was not something Xia Moyu could think of. At this time, there were only two thoughts in her mind, one was suffering, and the other was disfigurement. Xia Moyu's hands were floating on the edge of the wound, and she did not dare to touch, and there was a scream in her mouth, and her tongue seemed to be injured, and she made a series of vague voices. Because of the huge wound, the entire face seemed to be stained red with blood, and the clothes on the neckline were also stained red with blood, which looked terrifying. Sister. Xia Dong was also stunned by the scene before him, his eyes widened. Xia Moyu is absolutely terrifying now. There is a hole in her face, and the hot blood is poking out. The fruit knife is still inlaid on her cheek and has not been pulled off. It is almost like a devil. The man's whole body is cold and straight. Why, how could this happen? Hong Yuxi was also stunned by the scene in front of him, subconsciously retreating his feet, his eyes were full of horror. The person she was going to kill was Chu Muyu, not Xia Moyu. Those little who fell on the ground raised their heads when they heard the screams, and looked at Xia Moyu, unconsciously rejoicing in their hearts. Fortunately, they were not so miserable. It is estimated that Xia Moyu's face will be ruined with this knife. For men, the stuff under the crotch is the most important thing for them, while for women, the face is the face. If the face is ruined, it means everything is ruined, and Xia Moyu, who has always paid attention to his appearance, is the same. Xia Moyu lowered his eyes, looking at the fruit knife stuck in his face, his eyes were also flushed. Pain is really very painful. At this moment, it seems that I regretted it, and I shouldn't have trouble with Chu Muyu. However, all this is too late. The expression in Hong Yuxi's eyes fluctuated, suddenly turned his head, looking for Chu Muyu. Seeing her figure, his eyes were full of angry expressions, and her slender fingers pointed at her, Chu Muyu, it's you, yes you. Chu Muyu blinked her eyes, her expression very innocent, what am I? You hurt Xia Moyu. Hong Yuxi pointed at Chu Muyu angrily, and put the charges on her head. Chu Muyu shrugged her shoulders very innocently, I don't have a fruit knife at all, and I didn't do anything. It's obviously Xia Moyu that you hurt yourself, okay? Don't spit people. At this time, everyone's heads were a little confused, but they all saw that it was Hong Yuxi who hurt his sister, not Chu Muyu. Du Jingwen directly cursed, Fart, Hong Yuxi, don't spit people, this fruit knife was obviously taken out of your pocket, and you stabbed it yourself. Don't treat so many of us as blind, so many look with both eyes, you are the real murderer. She must not allow Chum Wu to bear these charges, after all, she was the one who caused Chum Wu to be burdened. Hong Yuxi looked a little crazy, pointing at Chum Wu, and then at Xiang Wu. No. It's not me. It's Chum Wu, the person I want to kill is Chum Wu, not Xiao Moyu. Who said it? Yet Yen Ming sneered, walked over, took out his ID from his pocket, and said to Hong Yuxi, Hong Yuxi, we meet again. When Hong Yuxi saw Yet Yen Ming appear, his pupils suddenly shrank. As soon as I came out of the lounge, I saw Chum Wu show his skills, and her attention was drawn away. How could I still see Ye Tian Ming standing at the door? Now that Ye Tian Ming appeared, Hong Yuxi was shocked, and his heart was chilling. Who told Ye Tian Ming to arrest him when he was at the police station before? 
All the punks stared at them, looking at Ye Tianming who appeared in front of them, and even saw the ID he took out of his pocket, and instantly felt that the world in front of them was completely dark. Well, they didn't get things done. Not only were they injured, but they were also caught directly by the police. How can they not be frightened? Yes, yes, it's him. Xia Dong saw Ye Tianming's tongue trembling. Not for anything else, just because of being beaten up by Ye Tianming in the hotel where Ling Hong was located. That is definitely fresh in my memory. He did not expect that this time he not only met Chum Wu, but also Ye Tianming. Subconsciously, Xia Dong moved his body back, hoping that he hadn't been seen by him. The named Hong Yoshi wanted to escape but couldn't escape, and his body was trembling slightly. Hong Yoshi, I really didn't expect that you don't have any brains. You deliberately injure, kidnap, and deliberately cause trouble to be punished for multiple crimes. I don't know if you still have the ability to meet it. Ye Tianming's mouth evoked a wicked smile. Said. I, I don't, I don't, not me. Hong Yoshi shook his head and pointed at Chum Wu with his fingers, it's Chum Wu, it's Chum Wu's hand. Ye Tianming chuckled, pointing to the fruit knife still inserted in Xiam Wu's face, and said, this knife belongs to you, with your fingerprints on it, and so many people have seen that it was your hand. They are all witnesses. If you want to plant the blame, you have to find a good opportunity. At this time, the blood from the wound on Xiam Wu's face was still racing, and the loss of blood made her pale under her blood-stained cheeks, her eyes were also weakly hanging down, and the power in her body seemed to disappear. General. After Ye Tianming used his finger, Xiam Wu no longer had the strength to maintain his body, and slammed to the ground. Chum Wu glanced at Xiam Wu, did not go forward to treat her, such an injury could not die for the time being. Since she kidnapped Du Jingwen, she must pay for it. Hearing that he was pushed out by Xia Dong, Hong Yuxi's eyes widened suddenly, his expression unbelievable. Chum Wu twitched the corner of her mouth turned her head to look at Hong Yoshi, the cold light flashed in her eyes. To say Xia Dong's words, Chum Wu really believed 9 out of 10. After all, but Hong Yoshi arrested Du Jingwen, and then let Xia Dong destroy Du Jingwen, this thing was really done. Didn't Hong Yoshi make the KTV last time? If that happened before her rebirth, it might have been ruined by Hong Yoshi long ago. It's not enough to do that kind of thing by yourself and to pull others into the water, it seems that she really underestimated her before. Yet Yanming smiled and said, another charge has been added for instigating others to commit a crime. I, I don't. Hong Yuxi shook his head quickly, with Huang Zhang's expression in his eyes. Xia Dong's eyes flushed suddenly, and he pointed to Hong Yu's poem, Don't you dare to say no. At that time, I heard Chum Wu's name and I was planning to leave but you said I heard it wrong, and you said that she was a virgin. It tastes good, let me go. The more Chum Wu listened, the colder light in her eyes became thicker. This Hong Yu poem is really cheap. Even this kind of thing can be done. A cold light flashed in Ye Tianming's eyes. He had seen a lot of girls, but he had never seen someone like Hong Yuxi. Two people are half a caddy. Chum Wu glanced at Hong Yuxi, then at Xia Dong, if it weren't for your brains, would you ignore those things? Xia Dong's open mouth closed instantly, looking at Chum Wu fearfully, trying to refute the explanation, but found that he was so powerless. Chum Wu chuckled lightly, raised her hand, and pinched a small silver needle between her index finger and middle finger, since you like to do that kind of thing so much, then I will do something good. Xia Dong looked at Chum Wu's silver needle, and his body shuddered, trembling, and yelling, You, what are you going to do? Don't come over. Yet Yen Ming couldn't hold back, and he snorted. How did he think that Xia Dong was like a woman who was going to be fucked? The corners of Chum Wu's mouth were evil and evil, and there was an evil smile in her eyes, and her voice became very soft, Don't worry, I'm doing this for you, making you even more ecstatic. However, 
hearing this in Xia Dong's ears, it was so cold, as if it were a voice from hell. Yet Yan Ming tilted his head slightly and watched Chu Muiho pinch the silver needle and put a few needles on Xia Dong's body, with a curious look in his eyes, not knowing what the girl did. Du Jingwen in the lounge listened to the outside call, curiously walked to the door, held the door and looked at the situation outside, but did not see anything different. It is clear that Xia Dong is fine. This scream is so pitiful. Chu Muiho patted her hands. A smile appeared at the corner of her mouth, this is your own sin, no one can save you. Although Xia Dong said he was tempted by Hong Yushi, if it wasn't for his nature, would he do it? Before that, Xia Dong must have harmed a lot of girls. Such a person shouldn't have that thing at all. Yet Yan Ming came over and asked curiously, little junior sister, what have you done? Chu Muihu turned to look at Yet Yan Ming, and asked with a smile, would you like to try it too? Yet Yan Ming was taken aback, and quickly shook his head like a rattle, and quickly stepped back two steps, no, I don't want it. Joke. Yet Yan Ming knew about Chu Muihu's black belly and cunning, if she said, she would definitely dare to do it. Why did he forget that this little girl is a little fox? Ha <laughs> ha. Chu Muihu smiled softly, her rare mood a little better. Xia Dong stared at him, but he didn't feel anything. He lowered his head and looked at him, his face full of puzzlement. I... Am I okay? Xia Dong muttered to himself. Chu Muihu turned his head to look at Xia Dong's appearance, a smile appeared on the corner of her mouth, and she naturally didn't feel it now. Isn't it time for this? Three meals a day, plus a supper to you, look at her, how nice and considerate. Has anyone called? Chu Muihu asked Yet Yan Ming without going to worry about Xia Dong's excitement over there. Yet Yan Ming nodded hurriedly, I have already called, I should be on the way. The corner of Chu Muihu's mouth raised slightly, showing an evil smile, and she hooked her finger at Yet Yan Ming. What's the matter? Yet Yan Ming looked at Chu Muihu questioningly and asked. Although it was a question, he still lowered his head. Chu Muihu whispered in Ye Tian Ming's ear. Ye Tian Ming's eyes widened, and then there was an evil smile on her face. She gave her a thumbs up and said in praise, Not bad, what a great idea. I'll leave this to you, I'll go first to see Du Jingwen. Chu Muihu patted Ye Tian Ming on the shoulder and said. Ye Tian Ming smiled, patted his chest and said, Don't worry, leave it to me next. Chu Muihu turned and left and walked into the restroom. Hong Yushi watched Chu Muihu pass by in front of him safe and sound, the hatred in his heart grew stronger, and an angry roar was heard in his mouth. Chu Muihu! I'll kill you! Hong Yushi fluttered with her teeth and claws to think of Chu Muihu. Chu Muihu sneered, lifted her foot, and kicked Hong Yushi's belly directly, kicking her out. With a puff, Hong Yushi slammed his whole body heavily on the ground, rolling in pain with his hands covering his stomach. Chu Muihu didn't pay much attention to Hong Yushi, but when she turned her head, she saw something wrong, raised her eyebrows, walked slowly towards Hong Yushi, looked down, smiled. I'm really sorry, I didn't know that you were a pregnant woman. Chu Muihu raised her mouth, and said with a smile to the Hong Yushi on the ground. W.H. What? The Hong Yushi who hadn't read it in pain, was taken aback, and when she heard Chu Muihu's words, she subconsciously bowed her head. Sure enough, Hong Yushi saw red blood flowing between her legs and shorts. Gradually, the blood flowed more and the ground was stained red by her blood. I. Hong Yushi widened her eyes with a look of disbelief. She never thought that she was pregnant. Moreover, looking at the current situation, she still couldn't keep what was in her stomach. Chu Muihu touched her chin, raised her mouth, showing a bright smile, and said jokingly, I don't know who this doll belongs to, eh? Seeing that you have a good relationship with Xiao Xia, it shouldn't be her I'm so sorry, I really don't know, you are a pregnant woman. As soon as Xia Dong heard that Hong Yushi was pregnant and Chu Muihu said that the child in her belly was his, she suddenly exploded. 
No it's not mine, I'm not blind, I will let this kind of carry my child. Xiaodong cursed without giving Hong Yuxi any face. The Hong Yu poem that Xiaodong disliked, his face turned pale because of the miscarriage and the loss of blood, instantly turned red, which was maddening. Chu Muyo listened, and when she saw Hong Yuxi's expression that seemed to have eaten flies, the smile on the corners of her mouth became thicker. Ah, it turns out that it's not Xiao Xia's child. Sorry, I misunderstood. Chu Muyu said with a sigh of relief. Hong Yuxi's face turned from red to blue again, then to purple and black. Chu Muyu raised her eyebrows again, and asked meaningfully, But, who owns the child in your stomach? Is it Xi Liang and young master Xi? Hearing the name Xi Liang, Hong Yuxi's dark complexion turned pale again, his eyes widened, and only a thought flashed in his mind, how did she know? Yes, Hong Yuxi never expected that Chu Muyu knew that she and Xi Liang knew each other. Chu Muyu sneered, really thinking she didn't know anything? It seems so. Chu Muyu let out a chuckle, should I tell Xiao Xi the good news? Well, but I don't want it. After all, the good news has become bad news, because the child is probably gone. Oh, that's true. I said it earlier, otherwise I won't be so cruel. Chu Muyu said with a regretful and guilty expression. Hong Yuxi's lips were trembling, and he didn't know if he was angry or frightened. She and Xi Liang had only known each other for only two weeks, and they hadn't happened to that kind of thing. How could he have a child? The children in her belly must be those of disgusting old men. Thinking of those people, Hong Yuxi felt sick. The pain in the lower abdomen made her feel that her head couldn't turn around a bit, and the world in front of her was a bit dark. In addition to the anger attacking her heart, she glanced directly and fainted on the ground. Looking at the appearance of Hong Yuxi, Chu Muyu sneered, and turned to Ye Tianming and said, By the way, let the ambulance prepare an extra stretcher, and send it back together. By the way, inform the parents and go to the hospital. Yet Yenming heard it with a sly smile on his face. He felt that he was already cheating enough to do things, but he didn't expect that this girl was also cheating enough. Send Hong Yuxi and Xia Moyu to the hospital together, and let the Xia family go to the hospital, can Hong Yuxi survive? Chu Muyu turned around and entered the lounge to see if Du Jingwen's body was damaged. Yet Yenming called for someone to come. The speed was naturally fast. A large number of police officers arrived at the warehouse not long after. A group of police quickly controlled both the gangster and Xia Dong who fell on the ground. The hospital's ambulance also followed closely, seeing the situation on the ground, and hurriedly gave treatment. It seems to know that there will be some damage in the action against the punks, so there are many ambulances. I saw Xia Moyu and Hong Yuxi in the crowd, both of them rushed up and sent them to the hospital first. Chu Muyu and Du Jingwen also went to the hospital in an ambulance. Although they were not injured, they were still in such a place after all. They also took them to the hospital to see how they were doing. Although Du Jingwen did not suffer any injuries, because of the summer, the clothes were worn less, the arms were marked with red marks because of the binding, and some of the skin was rubbed. This was also because Du Jingwen had to resist when Xia Dong wanted to deal with her later, so he broke the skin. However, compared to Xia Dong and the others, Du Jingwen's injury was too small. At the same time, in the same hospital, the Xia family hurried over after learning that Xia Moyu had been sent to the hospital. They didn't know what happened. They only received a call from the police station saying that their daughter had been injured and her entire face was ruined. They are still being rescued. It's not bad, the daughter has an accident, of course they have to come to the hospital, and they don't even know where their son has gone. Not enough, Xia Dong is not Xia Moyu, he is already an adult, even if he is not at home, they are used to it, so they didn't ask. Comrade police, where is my daughter? Xia's father and Xia's mother asked Ye Tianming who was standing at the door with an anxious expression on her face. Ye Tianming narrowed his eyes, smiled and comforted Xia's father and Xia's mother, 
too, don't worry, there should be no life-threatening danger, the doctor is rescuing. Father Xia and Mother Xia breathed a sigh of relief when they heard that their daughter was not life-threatening, but when they heard that the doctor was still trying to rescue them, they grabbed their hearts again. Which one of the thousand knives dared to hurt my daughter? Xiaomu was worried about her daughter in her heart, and also resented, which hurt her daughter. Father Xia also turned his head and asked Ye Tian Ming, comrade, who hurt my daughter? This. Ye Tian Ming said hesitantly, it's a student named Hong Yushi, and your daughter seems to be classmates. I don't know if Hong Yushi will hurt your daughter. I guess. Maybe it's because your daughter is pretty. Hong Yushi? Which actually hurt my daughter. Xiaomu gritted her teeth angrily when she heard it. Compared to Xiaomu, Hong Yushi's situation is much better. Although the child is gone, his life is saved. By coincidence, after being rescued at this time, he was pushed out of the operating room. Ye Tianming's eyes lit up, and he said to Father Xia and Mother Xia, Hey, it's this girl who hurt your daughter. When I heard Ye Tianming's words, how could Xia's father and Xia's mother endure such a tone? Without saying anything, he rushed forward, regardless of whether Hong Yoshi was lying on the bed or not, and directly attacked her with a brutal attack. Although Hong Yoshi was awake, his eyes seemed very hollow. He didn't know if he had no hope for life, or was struck by Chum Wu so that he had no love. Father Xia and Mother Xia suddenly appeared in front of her, punched and kicked at her, and directly scratched her face, causing her to scream in pain. This, what happened to this? The doctors and nurses who just came out opened their eyes wide, with shocked and incomprehensible faces. Shouldn't the patient be cared for as soon as he is introduced? Why is this staged a full martial arts? When Ye Tianming saw this situation, the corners of his mouth rose slightly, revealing an evil smile. I don't know if Ye Tianming just said it intentionally or unintentionally. Hong Yushi's jealousy of their daughter's appearance just ruined their daughter's appearance. The place where Father Xia and Mother Xia attacked the most was the face, which directly scratched her face to blood. Xia's mother was even more unforgiving, and she yelled, You bitch, you dare to hurt my daughter and even ruin my daughter's face, I will ruin your face. Slacker, dare to hurt my daughter. Father Xia was also unambiguous, and he landed on Hong Yushi's body with one punch and one punch. The sound of the bang, bang, bang physical impact was very clear in the corridor outside the operating room. It reverberated, and there were waves of curses in it. This naturally aroused the curiosity of the surrounding people, not knowing what happened. What happened? What are you doing over there? Are you hitting someone? How come you just got up in the operating room? Hey, listening to this, it seems like parents are taking revenge. Hi, disfigured. What a pity. Everyone is curious, but dare not come forward. Didn't you see that there are policemen here? As a policeman, Ye Tianming naturally couldn't watch Xia's father and Xia's mother hurt Hong Yushi like this. Then, Ye Tianming put on a posture of regaining his senses, and was shocked, eh, eh, eh what are you doing? How do you beat people? When Xiaomu heard Ye Tianming's words, she didn't stop, her long nails kept greeting Hong Yushi's face, it was definitely a piece of flesh that was caught out. Seeing Ye Tianming grinned, he couldn't help but scream for Hong Yushi in his heart. Seeing this scene, the nurses and doctors nearby couldn't help baring their teeth and inhaling a breath of air. They secretly said in their hearts that this little girl's face is probably about to be ruined. As doctors and nurses, how can you not know how big the wound is and who caused the scar, it is impossible to recover in the future. Unless it is Hong Yoshi who undergoes plastic surgery, it should be impossible to restore his appearance. But plastic surgery? Is it possible? If their Hong family's company was still there before, and Hong Yoshi went to the whole wrong, it would definitely be easy. However, now Hong Yoshi not only has no money, but also owes a lot of money. Where is the money for her to undergo plastic surgery and restore her appearance? Yet Yen Ming spoke, 
and the doctors also recovered, and hurriedly pulled Xia father and Xia mother down. This is really... The doctors who just came out helplessly pushed Hong Yushi into the operating room again. Xia's mother focused on Hong Yushi's face, while Xia's father focused on other parts of Hong Yushi. It was absolutely unambiguous to punch down with one punch. Therefore, this also led to the fact that with the help of the police and doctors, Hong Yushi, who was attacked by Xia's father and Xia's mother, finally escaped the catastrophe, but it also caused physical weakness due to the original abortion. After such a beating, he directly fainted again. The doctors had just rescued her, and now they are so estimated that they are busy again. Yet Yen Ming stopped Xia's father and Xia's mother, and the treacherous smile on the corner of his mouth flashed away, comforting them, too, I know you are very angry now, but you can't do this. If you want revenge, you can wait later. We will investigate what she did and put her in jail. Go to jail. It's really cheap for her. There was a sinister light in Xia Mu's eyes, and she would never let her go. I don't know the situation of my daughter yet. I already have the heart to kill Hong Yushi. When I learn about Xia Moya's situation, it is estimated that I will really take the knife. Relax, our police station will deal with it impartially and will not be partial. Yet Yen Ming solemnly comforted Xia's father and Xia's mother. After watching the play here, Yet Yen Ming naturally went directly to Chu Wu and told her what happened here. Ha ha, junior sister, don't you know, that woman, how crazy, she simply used the legendary nine yin white bone claw. That's a cruel, she just tore off the flesh on the face of the Hong Yushi poem. Yet Yen Ming made exaggerated movements with both hands and laughed constantly. Du Jingwen stared, and the more I listened, the more refreshed he became, and he hummed and said, what should I do to her, I should let Xia Dong do something like that to me, it's really cheap for her. Thinking that if Chu Muyu hadn't come in time, she would have finished, she couldn't help but shivered. Chu Muyu patted Du Jingwen on the shoulder and said comfortingly, don't worry, I will remember this account for you. The ending of Hong Yushi is not just this. If it was just this punishment, Chu Muyu still felt that it was not enough, and Hong Yushi would dare to hit her family and friends with her idea. Du Jingwen nodded, clenched her fist and said, I must not let her go like this. I have to let her compensate me for my mental losses. Chu Muyu chuckled lightly, and said jokingly, Now, I'm afraid that if you sell her, you won't be able to compensate for your mental loss. I guess you have to post it. Um. Let's forget it. When Du Jingwen heard it, she shook her head like a rattle, I'm still a student, no money. And, what am I selling her for, I'm a student, and I don't abduct girls. Puff. Chu Muyo couldn't help laughing, and turned to look at Yet Yen Ming, how is the situation on Xia Moyu? Yet Yen Ming smiled and said in a somewhat gloating tone, the situation over there is not good, I asked the doctor and said that Xia Moyu's face is probably ruined unless there is a plastic surgery, and her tongue, a part of the sword with Hong Yoshi has been cut off, and it is estimated that I will be unable to speak in less than half a year. Retribution Du Jingwen heard it, humming and frowning and said viciously, it must be a good person to be able to do such a thing. Causal cycle, so people, can't do bad things, sooner or later, there will be retribution. Chu Muyu said meaningfully. Yet Yen Ming smiled and turned around and said, I still need to deal with Xia Moyu's affairs. I guess I won't be able to send you back. I will call the boss and let him pick you home. Chu Muyu heard it, and was taken aback, the corners of her mouth twitched fiercely, and she quickly refused and said, No need, we'll just go back by ourselves. Hearing Chu Muyu's refusal again, Yet Yen Ming felt even more suspicious. What are the boss and junior sister doing recently? The boss is still watching the little sister silently in the mountain all day long, and the little junior sister is still paying attention to the boss's eating problems. I really don't know what kind of mode these two get along now. Could it be that the legendary distance produces beauty? No, it should be fur feelings. 
How can this work? Your classmate was kidnapped once. For her safety, let the boss pick it up. Yet Yenming shook his head decisively, and directly pulled Du Jingwen out. In any case, for the happiness of the boss, as a little brother or his deputy, one must take good care of the boss. It's okay, isn't there me? Chu Muyu said confidently. Yet Yenming curled his lips, little junior sister, be careful, don't be afraid of ten thousand, just in case, don't you? I think the boss is the safest to come, um, I'll call. Du Jingwen naturally didn't know about Chu Muyu and Xiao Junyan. After all, the difference in age between the two is a bit big. But Chu Muyu wanted to call Yet Yenming but it was too late. Seeing that he had left directly, she was extremely depressed. What about the punishment? Why does it always seem to have problems? Yet Yenming called Xiao Junyan. At this time, Xiao Junyan had already returned to Jin Temple, and his face was gloomy and terrible when he received the call. Someone did something like that to threaten Chu Muyu. Where are they? Xiao Junyan asked Yet Yenming in an extremely cold voice as he walked. Yet Yenming touched his nose and said, Xiao Muyu was designed by a younger sister, and Hong Yuxi ruined her face. Hong Yuxi was beaten by her younger sister and had a miscarriage. He was disfigured by Xiao Muyu's parents just now. It is still being rescued. As for that Xia Dong, he was punished by the junior sister. I still don't know the specific situation. I need to go back and see. I'll leave this to you. Xiao Junyan's voice became even colder, and contained a great anger. Okay, don't worry, I'm in the hospital now, come here. Yet Yenming hung up the phone after speaking. Xiao Junyan also directly forgot the punishment Chum Wu had given him, just wondering if Chum Wu had anything to do. Although Yet Yenming told her that Chum Wu did not suffer any damage, no one would feel relieved to see it with his own eyes. At this time, Chum Wu wanted Xiao Junyan not to come, but Du Jingwen was by her side. This call was completely unavailable, and she could only feel depressed. This punishment seemed to be broken by her side again. She was filled in by the pit she had buried herself. Xia Dong. Hong Yuxi. Xia Moyu. It's all you. Chum Wu didn't mention how depressed or angry she was. Thinking, if it weren't for them, how could he encounter such entangled things? By the way, Jingwen, your uncles and aunts don't know about your kidnapping, right? Chum Wu suddenly thought of something and asked. Du Jingwen nodded. Well, I don't know. Don't tell uncles and aunts about this, lest they worry. I see. I don't want them to worry about me. When I went out, I just said that I was hanging out with my classmates. Du Jingwen nodded, naturally understanding the meaning of Chum Wu's words and said with a smile. Chum Wu nodded, and also let out a sigh of relief, hmm. But, Mu Yu, why are you so good? Can you teach me too? Du Jingwen looked at Chum Wu excitedly, her eyes shining with excitement. Chum Wu looked at Du Jingwen's appearance, shrugged, and said, This is to be practiced from a young age, and, getting up early and greedy for the dark, are you sure you can? When Du Jingwen heard that she wanted to get up early and greedy for darkness, her small face suddenly collapsed, Well, that's fine. I still have to sleep in my beauty sleep. You're still so young, just sleep for beauty. Chum Wu stared and said angrily. That's a must. Du Jingwen took it for granted, you have to know that a woman's appearance is the most important thing. Although I am no better than you, I have to take good care of my skin. A woman must be right. Be better. Okay. Chum Wu dropped three black lines on her forehead. She wanted to say, girl, you think too much, you are not a woman yet, at most you are just a girl. Punishment, I didn't comply. Xiao Junyan's low and guilty voice came into Chum Wu's ears. Chum Wu was stunned. Just now because Du Jingwen was around, she couldn't say the punishment. Then Du Jingwen left, feeling guilty in her heart again, and even directly forgot. 
Now that Xiao Junyan directly spoke out the punishment, Chu Muyo couldn't help but feel sorry for it. This man kept her words firmly in his heart, even the punishment. It's okay. Chu Muyu smiled, this is the end of the punishment. Although Xiao Junyan was punished this time, Chu Muyu also understood his heart even more after the punishment this time. She really fell in love with this big man who didn't like to talk coldly. Although Xiao Junyan didn't speak much, his care was meticulous, which made her gradually get used to his existence unconsciously. Unconsciously, Xiao Junyan had already walked into her heart, and even more completely occupied her whole heart, unable to tolerate the second person. Hearing Chu Muyu's words, Xiao Junyan was taken aback, then the corners of his mouth rose, revealing a rare bright smile. However, it seems that Xiao Junyan still asked in disbelief, really. Originally, he thought that Chu Muyu would delay the punishment again. But I didn't expect that the punishment would be lifted directly. How could Xiao Junyan not be happy? This silent guardian always meets with two people by his side. It is completely two concepts, two different experiences. If he could, he really didn't want to be separated from her for a minute, he just wanted to be by her side so quietly. Don't believe it. Chu Muyu suddenly turned her head proudly and grunted. In an instant, Chu Muyu felt that she was a little bit rebellious, a little embarrassed, and she didn't even believe it, so let's continue the punishment. Who made her unbearable, and also reluctant to separate? Believe. Xiao Junyan nodded without hesitation, for fear that Chu Muyu would regret it and would continue or extend the time of this punishment. If it wasn't that he was still driving, he would probably jump up and give him a hug or kiss. Chu Muyu suddenly became a little bit dumbfounded, turned her head and stared at Xiao Junyan unanimously. Why is this guy becoming more and more like a big boy? However, don't do that thing in the future. I don't like it. Chu Muyu still reminded him seriously. Although she also knew that Xiao Junyan was doing her good and caring for her, but such things were still a little uncomfortable, and it always felt like being watched. Xiao Junyan nodded. Okay. If you have something, call me. Knowing that Chu Muyu didn't want him to monitor her, then he would listen to her. Well, let's go home. However, before Chu Muyu finished speaking, she slapped her head, oh. What's wrong? Xiao Junyan turned his head to look at Chu Muyu in confusion. With a depressed and helpless expression on his face, Chu Muyu looked at Xiao Junyan, I left the vegetables I bought in Ye Tianming's car. I was thinking of buying vegetables and going home to cook dinner for Chu's Haiming. However, he did not expect that after encountering Du Jingwen's affairs, he was still in the hospital for so long. It was estimated that his father would be off work, and the arrangement was disrupted. It's okay, let's buy it again. Xiao Junyan smiled and comforted. Chu Muyu also sighed helplessly and nodded. Well, that can only be done. Hey, maybe you still don't know, this is designed by Hong Yushi, Tusk Tusk, this woman is too good at killing someone with a knife. This time I will pull you directly into the water. Yet Yen Ming shook his head and sighed, looking at Xiaomoyu sympathetically. Xiaomoyu's eyes widened, and the face under the bandage was full of shock and disbelief. She couldn't believe it was true. Xiliang went to school to find Chum Wu, just to let her deal with Chum Wu. It seems, it seems, this time that Hong Yushi also approached her and asked her to deal with Chum Wu together, but in the end, it was his Hong Yushi who ruined her appearance. But, why on earth is this? Yet Yen Ming seemed to know how to read minds, and he smiled again and said, Isn't you sure why? Because she heard that your Xiliang's parents plan to let you be with him and want you two to get married. You should know what this means. After Hong Yushi knew about it, he used this strategy to prevent you from marrying Xiliang. When Xiaomoyu heard what Ye Tianming said in the middle, a flash of excitement flashed in his eyes, but the more he heard from behind, his face became more and more ugly, and the anger in his eyes became more intense. Hong Yushi's biggest opponent is not Chum Wu, but you. Therefore, 
she used Chu Muihu's appearance to seduce Xi Liang, and asked Xi Liang to find Chu Muihu's troubles. She was fanning the flames and let you go to Chu Muihu, intending to ruin you with Chu Muihu's hand, but unexpectedly, Chu Muihu's skill is so good that she can't kill it. The more Ye Tian Ming said, the more he admired Chu Muihu in his heart. Up. Damn, this is really bad, this hatred transfer value is absolutely 100%. Take a look, look at Xiaomoyu's cannibalistic eyes, it is definitely aimed at Hong Yoshi. So, Hong Yoshi can only start with you when dealing with Chumuyu. This can also make people think that she was injured by mistake. The only difference is that she was injured by mistake. It can't be sentenced to many crimes. Yet Yen Ming laughed again. Also, don't forget, she is pregnant with Xi Liang's child in her belly. If it is a son, guess what, would the Xi family give up? Let you ruin her. Xiaomoyu only felt as if there was a raging anger in his chest burning constantly, suffocated so much, his eyes were flushed. Yet Yen Ming patted Xiaomoyu on the shoulder, and said with a heartfelt sympathy, you can ask your mother to investigate whether Hong Yoshi is pregnant or not, but you should be thankful that Chu Muyu helped you get rid of it. The child in Hong Yoshi's belly, if you want to retaliate against her now, the Xi family and Xi Liang will not say anything. At this moment, Mother Xia walked in from outside, took a bag of materials and handed them to Ye Tian Ming, this is information. My daughter's appearance cannot be ruined in vain. I hope you can give me a good answer. Don't worry, Mrs. Xia, we will deal with it impartially. Ye Tian Ming showed a wicked smile at the corner of his mouth turning around and leaving with things. Xiaomoyu stared at the ceiling, trembling hands, trying to lift it up, but there was a sound in his throat that was not like a human. Mother Xia heard the voice, turned around quickly, and asked concerned, Daughter, what are you going to say? Chumuyu didn't know what happened in the hospital, but he had already guessed at odds and ends. She only needs to have a quiet life next. Because of Yet Yen Ming, Xiaomoyu asked her mother to investigate whether Hong Yoshi was pregnant. Sure enough, Hong Yoshi was really pregnant, and when she came to the hospital, she had to be rescued because of a miscarriage. Her body was too weak. Later, because of Xia's father and Xia's beating, she couldn't get pregnant anymore. This news made Xiaomoyu 100% believe what Ye Tian Ming said. Who else can I believe if I don't believe? If this child isn't Xi Liang's, who is it? Ever since, the people of the Xia family used their own means to seek revenge on Hong Yoshi. Chu Muyu used the knife to kill people this time, and didn't do anything at all. On the other hand, Xi Liang didn't know if he had lost his face at school before, and he just didn't come to school. For them, the rich second generation, it doesn't matter whether they read or not, and naturally they didn't pay attention. This also allowed Chum Wu to live a month of campus life in Anchen. Seeing that September is coming to an end, it is naturally the mid-autumn festival holiday. During the mid-autumn festival, Chum Wu took advantage of the holiday, and went to the medicated restaurant in Xiao Junyan's car to see how the decoration was going. By the way, she also gave pointers on the furnishings. As a descendant of the mysterious doctor, Feng Shui is also a must. After all, the national day is about to arrive in a week or so, and the medicated restaurant will open. When Chum Wuo came to the medicated food restaurant, he saw bursts of shouts coming from inside, which seemed to be very lively. When you enter the store, you will see that the entire storefront is filled with a strong antique fragrance, red stone pillars, and beams, giving people an instant as if they have entered an ancient garden. When Ling Hong looked up, he saw Chu Muyu walking in at the door with a joy on his face. Chu Muyu hadn't been here since the last time he came with Ye Tian Ming. Miss Chu. Ling Hong walked quickly to Chu Muyu's face and said respectfully. This respect emanated from the bottom of his heart. Not only did she admire Chu Muyu's ability, but she was able to start from nothing at such a young age. Chu Muyu nodded, glanced around and said, The speed is still quite fast. It seems that it can still be opened on the national day. 
This is natural. In order to be able to catch up with the national day, I have to work day and night, and there is no waste at all. Ling Hong said proudly. Chu Muyu nodded appreciatively, thank you. It's nothing but hard work. I came here like this when I opened the store. It's like my own child. I grew up when I was young. Ling Hong said with a smile. If you can be so diligent, I will rest assured that everything here will be handed over to you, otherwise, I will be so relaxed. Chu Muyu said jokingly. Ling Hong was taken aback, and then he laughed, Yes, Ms. Chu, you just need to study hard in school, leave it to me here. Yet. Chu Muyu nodded and asked, The decoration here is almost finished, so what about the chef? The chef's skills are about to pass, and these workers say it's delicious. Ling Hong said proudly. Those chefs practiced cooking, and inevitably they produced more dishes. Not only could they be sold as lunch boxes in the restaurant that Ling Hong opened before, but they could also be brought here and let these workers use them as lunch. After the workers ate a meal, they not only felt delicious, but after eating a few more times, they felt that the whole person was refreshed and full of energy to work. Very good. Chu Mui raised the corners of her mouth when she heard Ling Hong's report, very satisfied. The chef's training can't stop. Let them step up their training recently. It's hard for them on such a hot day, and their wages can be increased. Chu Mui reminded him that it was still a little hot in the hot day. Since your boss has said so, of course I will increase it. Ling Hong said with a smile, these chefs are also drawn from my previous restaurant. They are all old acquaintances, and they all open the medicinal restaurant. They are looking forward to the effect. They also want to work harder. Moreover, they often eat their own medicated diet. They all say that their bodies feel better recently than before. Chu Muyu nodded, and said with concern, Well, let them eat more lung-clearing medicated food and work in the kitchen, so oily fumes are inevitable. In such a hot weather, those chefs are really tired to cook. Bought the air conditioner. Chu Muyu asked Ling Hong thinking of the air conditioner for later generations. I have already bought it, but it hasn't been decorated yet, and I didn't let them send it. Ling Hong shook his head and said painfully, Are you sure you want air conditioning? This is very expensive. Ha, it's okay, what I want is a kind of enjoyment. Chu Muyu smiled and said comfortingly, There is no less in the kitchen. At the end of the 20th century, Air conditioners were not so common, and an air conditioner was too high. Therefore, Ling Hong still felt a little painful. Moreover, the upper bread compartment has one room per room, and the air conditioning costs are spent a lot. If Chu Muyu didn't say anything, he would definitely not spend this kind of money. Unlike later generations, ordinary air conditioners can be purchased for two to three thousand dollars. If you buy more, you can get a discount. Chu Muyu remembered that a specially vacant wall outside was still blank, and asked, By the way, is the poster design ready? After the design is completed, they will send someone to install it in the next few days. Ling Hong nodded and explained, The flyers that were distributed will also be delivered together. I also selected some people who distributed the flyers in the past two days. Let them post. Yet. Yeah. After Chu Muyu checked, she was quite satisfied, while decorating and dissipating the air, it was quite fast, it's almost done, there is nothing else, I have things to do, so I will leave first. Leave so soon. Ling Hong heard it, and immediately couldn't help but three black lines fell on his forehead. He said that he had never seen such a boss who could ignore everything. Chu Muyu smiled lightly and said jokingly, didn't you say that you told me to study hard every day? Ling Hong immediately touched his nose in embarrassment, well, he dug a hole by himself and jumped. However, he was just surprised, it's okay, it's okay, Miss Chu, you go first, leave it to me here. Yet. Chu Muyu nodded gently, turned around and left the medicated restaurant with Xiao Junyan. After getting on the off-road vehicle, Chu Muyu stretched out, 
a smile appeared on the corner of her mouth, her eyes shone with brilliance, soon, the medicinal restaurant will open soon. You can do it. Xiao Junyan said calmly, as if he could already see the crowded scene of the National Day Medicinal Restaurant. Chum Wiyu nodded gently, showing a smile, sweet and gorgeous, I believe it too. This was the first restaurant she opened, and it gave her all the hope and hard work. As long as this medicinal restaurant is opened, she believes that at least she won't have to worry about money anymore, and choose Haiming can live a stable and easy life. Well, let's go shopping for groceries and go back to the mountain. Today, my dad will also have a reunion dinner on the mountain. In a blink of an eye, it was the National Day holiday. On the first day of the National Day, the gate of the medicinal food restaurant is drumming, dragon and lion dances, which adds to the atmosphere for the opening. The people who came out to go shopping, all looked at the lively scene curiously, and the store door was very lively in an instant. Chum Wiyu also brought Xiao Junyan and Ye Tian Ming to the medicated restaurant, standing at the window on the third floor, watching the lively scene outside. Ye Tian Ming held the window with both hands, and said with a smile, Is it half discount today, will it not make money? This is only the first day. What we want is to be famous. My plan is to have a discount on the National Day holiday, half discount on the first day, 40% off from the second day to the third day, and the remaining days are 75%. Fold. Chum Wiyu said with a smile and introduced. Yet. Yet Yen Ming nodded gently, and said with a smile, Hey, when my birthday is coming, I'll bring some people over, and let me make some money by the way. Chum Wiyu was taken aback for a moment. On her birthday, she subconsciously glanced at Xiao Junyan. It has always been his contribution but she has never given him anything, and she still doesn't know his birthday, right? The activity in the square downstairs ended, Ling Hong walked out of the gate with a bright smile on his face, today is the first day of the opening of our medicinal food shop. Everyone is welcome to come and join us. Today, all those who come to the store for consumption will be half. Discount. And there will be coupons for the next consumption. Half off. Isn't that only half the price? There are coupons for the next consumption, I don't know how many. So cheap? Can things be good? Everyone on the side of the road was talking about each other, very suspicious. However, Ling Hong didn't care about the conversations of the people around him, and said with a smile, It's delicious, everyone will know if you have eaten it, everyone can go to the dessert table inside and taste the desserts and cakes of our medicated food shop, free of charge. It's free. So what are you waiting for? Greedy is something that everyone has, even some wealthy people will do so, let alone these petty citizens. When I heard that something was free, of course I wanted to go in. A group of people rushed towards the medicated food shop. No matter what, eat something before talking. If it's good, try it today. If it doesn't taste good, then leave. Of course, there are still some very thoughtful people who are still standing outside and watching, wondering if this is free. If you have to pay for something to eat, they don't want to pay. Ling Hong stood at the door with a bright smile on his face, with emotion in his heart. Thinking of Chum Wiyu's two kinds of preferential treatment, I really admire her. Especially, the last coupon, the coupon that can only be used after the next national day after eating this time, is simply a preparation for diners in the future. After the passers-by entering the gate, Chum Wiyu and the others couldn't see it. However, there were screams from below. What is this thing? Why is it so delicious? It's so soft, this pastry is not very sweet, just so I can accept it. Desserts are so delicious, the dishes should be good too, right? Husband, come in quickly, we will have lunch here. This soup is delicious, it has a very refreshing feeling, and the sultry feeling just now is gone. A burst of shouts came from the restaurant and into the ears of Chum Wiyu and others watching the play on the third floor. Successful. Ye Tianming's eyes lit up, 
and an excited smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Approaching one or two o'clock in the afternoon, there was already a long line outside the medicated restaurant. They all heard that the newly opened medicated food restaurant cooks particularly delicious dishes, and the effect of this medicine is not so fast. Standing in the lively hall, Ling Hong looked at the busy figure of the waiter with a bright smile on his face. Today, the main ingredient of the soup is dragon horse spirit. This soup is made with beef kidney as the main ingredient, and some other medicinal materials that nourish yin and yang, such as wolfberry, cyanomorium, and remenia glutinosa. His effect is to nourish yin and strengthen yang and nourish the kidney. There is also seeing shen porridge. Although it is already summer, the weather is still sultry. Most people are still not able to eat. Kanji is the best choice. And this seeing shen porridge is made from hawthorn, cockles, and other ingredients. It is most suitable for people who are tired and refreshed after eating. The men who had been with their female companions and walked the street for a day, and were tired of working a few days before the holiday. After eating the porridge, they walked out the door of the medicinal restaurant and felt refreshed. I feel very comfortable. They couldn't tell this feeling. They didn't know whether it was the feeling of replenishing their physical strength after eating a meal, or the reason for this refreshing porridge. Anyway, they just felt very comfortable. Some people thought that they could try again in the future, and they would leave directly after taking the coupon. By the way, they also directly recommended people they know to try it. I still feel sorry to hold the coupon. Why can't I use it now? You have to wait until after the national day. Fortunately, there is no time limit. After eating on the first day, the price was so cheap that they all regretted that their stomachs were a little small. Seeing the lively scene that had almost never stopped, Ling Hong felt a burst of excitement and emotion. Although on the first day, I didn't earn so much because of the half discount, but the hearts of these diners have been captured and it is enough. Ling Hong ran up to the third floor excitedly and reported the following situation to Chum Wu. When I came to the box, I saw Chum Wu lying leisurely and reading a book. Xiao Junyan was sitting on a stool beside her, peeling melon seeds in his hand, putting them in a small tray one by one. But yet Yen Ming was sitting on the chair instead, with his arms folded on the back of the chair, his eyes fell on Chum Wu and Xiao Junyan, like a stone. As soon as I came in, I saw such a weird scene, and I was slightly taken aback, what's wrong? Yet Yen Ming waved at Ling Hong and asked lazily, why did you come up? Come up and talk to you about the following situation. Ling Hong casually found a stool, sat down, and said. Chum Wu put down the Chinese medicine books in her hand, looked at Ling Hong and said, How is the situation? It's better than I expected. Ling Hong said with a bright smile on his face, As long as the medicated meals are ordered, none of them are not good. Chum Wu sat up with a smile on her mouth, and said, That's the best. Xiao Junyan raised his head and handed the small tray of peeled melon seeds to Chum Wu for her to eat. Puff. When Yet Yen Ming saw this move, he sprayed and sighed, Tisk tisk tisk, little sister, the boss is really kind to you. Ling Hong, don't you think? I didn't see anything. Ling Hong shook his head. He could see the relationship between Xiao Junyan and Chum Wu, but it was inconvenient for him to say more. Chum Wu's cheeks flushed, she glanced at Xiao Junyan shyly, then cast a blank glance at the two of them, stood up and said, The time is almost here, I have to go back too. Let Ling leave the matter here. Brother. Good thing. But I can't see it. Chum Wu looked at Mother Xia with a sneer, A good dog is not in the way. Hearing what Chum Wu said, Xiao Mu immediately stretched out her pointed fingers, pointed at Chum Wu, and angrily asked, You. You actually said that I am a dog. Chum Wu laughed and looked at Xia Mother lightly, I didn't say that you are a dog. I didn't expect that you would know that you are a dog. Puff. Du Jingwen, who was standing behind Chum Wu, couldn't help but snorted, but when he found that something was wrong, he quickly covered his mouth and didn't dare to laugh. 
Xiaomu was so angry that the muscles on her face were shaking, and the thick foundation was shaken off several layers. Okay, very good. It's really sharp, no wonder my daughter and son will suffer so much in your hands. Xiaomu gritted her teeth, suppressing the anger in her heart. Chu Muihu did not blush at all and directly followed Xiaomu's praise, it's easy to talk about. Xiaomu was so angry that her face was constantly changing, and she tried to calm the anger in her heart with deep breaths. Chu Muihu, Du Jingwen, my son is now in jail because of you, you immediately cancel your lawsuit, I can give you money. Xiaomu knew that if she didn't tell her purpose, it is estimated that he will be furious. She came this time for her son's business, not for a fight. Ha, your son has broken the law himself, and he has his own law to punish him. What do you mean by coming to us now? We can't help your son alleviate his guilt. Chum Wihu chuckled lightly and said mockingly. Facing Chum Wihu's incompatibility, Xiaomu Yu felt even more angry and looked at them mockingly, Humph, don't you just want to get some money from us? Chum Wihu sneered at the corner of her mouth, and looked at Xiaomu Yu sarcastically, Do you really think that if you have some stinky money, you can show off here? Tell you, in my eyes, your money is nothing at all. If you are savvy, I can let you go. If you are not savvy, I will shake out your revenge on Hong Yushi. I don't know if you have the ability to bear it. What? You? When Xiaomu Yu heard Chum Wihu's words, her eyes widened, her face in disbelief. She didn't expect that Chum Wihu actually knew what they did, what they did to Hong Yushi in prison. Although Mother Xia found out after investigating that her two children had kidnapped Du Jingwen and arrested Chum Wihu in the past, she didn't know something about the follow-up. Although Xia Moihu knew, she couldn't speak now, and she didn't know how to describe the scene at that time by handwriting. Until now, Mother Xia only knew that Chum Wu and Du Jingwen had their son arrested because of kidnapping and deliberate rape. If you want people to know, unless you do nothing, just wait to accept the sanctions of the law. Chum Wu shrugged her shoulders, a wicked smile appeared at the corner of her mouth, and took Du Jingwen's hand coolly and left. This is Chum Wu's plan. From start to finish, she hasn't done anything, just let them kill each other. In the end, she could send the Xia family to as long as she took out the evidence that the Xia family killed Hong Yushi and never turned over. However, the Xia family at this moment did not know that they were completely calculated by Chum Wu. Just as Chum Wu said, the evidence that the Xia family killed Hong Yushi in prison was released by the media. Suddenly, this matter caused an uproar. This matter lasted for half a month. In the end, the people of the Xia family went to jail, homeless and homeless. Xia Moyu, who was disfigured and lying on the bed, had no idea what had happened. While she was asleep, suddenly the doctor came to her ward and said that he would send her out of the hospital and the hospital would no longer treat her. She wanted to ask, but her mouth was still unable to speak, and she was making trouble in the hospital for a long time. In the end, the nurse who didn't know if it was kind or was impatient by Xiaomoyu, she directly told her parents about her parents being arrested by the police and imprisoned in the prison. After hearing the nurse's words, Xiaomoyu was stunned. She didn't understand why her parents were arrested and put in jail. When she was confused, the police came and arrested her on charges of instigating others to murder. In the end, all four of the Xia family were imprisoned and the Xia family's company collapsed instantly. Naturally, the Xia family, who had always been in close contact with the Xi family, fell and caught them by surprise. The group company also lost a lot of money. Of course, this is also what happened in November, and I didn't care about the medicinal restaurant for a while. It will be summarized until the end of the year. When the summary is made at the end of the month, the performance of the opposite Wang Feng Hotel has plummeted. Who told Chum Wu to take Wei Lao and Wei Ching Ching to the medicated diet restaurant on the second day of the National Day? I don't know if it was a psychological effect or the real medicated diet worked. I feel that the whole person is different. Ever since, 
Wei Qingqing often took some sisters she knew to eat the food in the medicated restaurant, and got a membership card in it. As long as you are eating out, you always go to the medicated restaurant to eat, and wherever you go to the lookout hotel opposite. Naturally, the turnover of the lookout hotel has fallen in a straight line. Especially those men, after tasting the dragon horse spirit of the medicinal restaurant, after returning home, it can be said that they can fight for 300 rounds, and beat their wives to throw away their armor and armor. This made those big men very proud, and even more fond of going to the medicinal restaurant for dinner. This dish is the most remarkable, the others are not so remarkable, but it is enough to keep the hearts of those diners. Those men also went to the medicated restaurant under the leadership of the rich ladies, so they also lost the idea of going to other places to eat. This one brought one, the other one, and a group of people brought along. The whole Xingxi can be regarded as wealthy upper class people. 70 to 80 percent of them go to the medicinal restaurant to eat. Other hotels in Xingxi that have facades and status are naturally. It directly reduces income. With a sound of touch, a middle-aged man with a little fat body slapped the table fiercely, and shouted angrily, What the is going on? A group of finance staff standing at his desk, all of them have their heads underneath. General, general manager, this matter is entirely due to a medicinal restaurant opened opposite. Facing the boss's question, naturally he could only answer and explain obediently. This middle-aged man is Shi Yurong, the general manager of Wang Feng Hotel. Medicated food restaurant. Shi Yurong heard it, and his face suddenly became even more angry. What qualifications can a medicinal food restaurant have to compare with our hotel? Each of the group of men bowed their heads, not daring to see their boss. Trash. A bunch of useless trash. How can you get the performance of yours to the group side? Shi Yurong patted the table angrily, feeling that it was difficult to calm the anger in his heart. The Lookout Hotel is a catering hotel under the Kaishung Group, and it will report to the group at the end of the month. However, in this situation, can Shi Yurong not be angry? It's almost the end of the year, and there is a year-end return. If the headquarters sees his situation, he should not be a manager. Where can a group of subordinates dare to see Shi Yurong? Each of them lowered their heads, not daring to raise their heads, but there was a wave of complaints in their hearts, that is your own business, what is our business? Go, go to investigate, who actually opened the medicinal restaurant, dare to steal business with our Wang Feng Hotel. Shi Yurong angrily ordered his subordinates in front of him. The people who received the order, Ruman Amnesty left quickly, yes, yes. Shi Yurong got up with an angry face, turned around and walked to the floor-to-ceiling window, looking down at the situation opposite. Sure enough, he saw a parking lot next to the medicinal restaurant opposite, which was full of cars. If it wasn't for him to be some distance away from the parking lot now, and he would still look down from the top, otherwise, he would definitely see those familiar license plates, then he used to be regular customers who often came to his hotel to eat. Chum Wu naturally didn't know what was happening here, and she was still living her own life. Receive reports from Ling Hong from time to time. Now the silver card members are almost saturated and the issuance of membership cards has been temporarily stopped, but ordinary membership cards can still be sent. Ha ha ha, Miss Chu, don't you know that there are still so many people who are willing to pay for this silver card member, with an annual fee of 100,000 pieces? and they are all squeezing their heads. Ling Hong laughed at the meeting. It shows that he is in a good mood. The corners of Chum Wu's mouth rose, that's really good. Now, on the second and third floors, you can only give members with silver cards. Ordinary members can only eat in the lobby on the first floor. Our place is too small. Do you think we should start building a big hotel? Ling Hong asked with a smile. The construction of a large-scale medicated food restaurant was originally planned. I thought that it has reached this level. Shouldn't it start? After all, there is a long line outside here every day, and people call every day to inquire about reservations. 
the reputation of the medicinal restaurant is not enough, it is not yet time. Chum Wiyu said lightly with a golden light in her eyes. Hearing Chum Wiyu's words, Ling Hong was taken aback, and asked in a puzzled way, Not enough? How can it be enough? Wait for others to give us fame. Chum Wiyu raised her head, looked at the blue sky, and said with a chuckle. Ling Hong heard it for a while, and he didn't understand what Chum Wiyu meant. Well, you have to pay close attention to the situation of the medicinal restaurant. Everyone is very tired during this time. Don't be tired. You can give all the employees some bonuses. Chum Wiyu smiled and said. Okay. Ling Hong nodded, if there is nothing wrong, I'll go ahead. Only when Chum Wiyu hung up the phone, a glass of boiling water was handed to her, and when she turned her head, she met Xiao Junyan's dark eyes and smiled at each other. Don't be too tired. I'll help you. Xiao Junyan touched Chum Wiyu's furry head and spoke softly. Shi Yurong sent his own hands to investigate the medicinal food restaurant, but the result of the investigation was that this medicinal food restaurant was opened by a young man who did not transfer his name to the bricks. I heard that a small restaurant was opened in an old street before, and it is still open. This result made Shi Yurong very angry, seeing that he was going to report his results, but such a thing happened. Recently, the atmosphere in the Kishin group has been in a downturn. Because of the affairs of the Xia family, a large amount of money has been lost. Trash. This is your report? What happened in October and November, the income plummeted, I see if you, the general manager, don't want to do it. A middle-aged man with a face similar to Xi Liang's six or seven points. Throw the report on the table directly to Shi Yurong in front of him. Shi Yurong was a little dizzy when he was hit, but he didn't dare to talk nonsense. Xi, Xi, all this is because a new medicinal restaurant was opened on the opposite side. All of our customers were taken away by them. Shi Yurong explained to himself quickly, putting all the blame on Chum Wu. On the head of the opened medicinal restaurant. The middle-aged man is Xi Liang's father. Xi Ming, who is now the president and chairman of the entire Kishin group, and he manages the entire Kishin group. Xi Ming's face was very ugly, and he sneered, You put it nicely, do you think a small medicinal restaurant can compare with our hotel? Hearing Xi Liang's words, Shi Yurong felt very sad. Mr. Xi, I'm all true. Many small company owners would rather spend 100,000 yuan on a silver card for a medicated restaurant rather than wait a few days to get a seat and go to medicated. Museum, I can't do anything about it. Shi Yurong quickly handed over the data of his investigation to Xi Ming as an explanation, Mr. Xi, you can look at the data of my investigation. Xi Ming snorted coldly. Although he was very angry, he still grabbed the information from Shi Yurong's hands, scanned it around, and then slammed it on the table. I heard that there is a soup in their medicated food restaurant called Longma Spirit. After these men eat it, they will be full of vitality. Therefore, those people will choose to eat in the medicated food restaurant instead of our restaurant. Shi Yurong is weak and weak. Explained it again for myself. Shi Yurong, who is also a man, could not know how important and caring this kind of thing is to a man. Therefore, he also understands why the medicated food restaurant is so famous that it will make those people want to go to the medicated food restaurant to eat so much. A light flashed in Xi Ming's eyes, and a look of excitement appeared on his face. He said coldly, how can such a good thing stay in such a small place? That's right, Xi, this thing is something that can make a lot of money. Only under a big group like ours can he play a big role. Shi Yurong nodded and said quickly and flatteringly. Seeing that Xi Ming finally stopped getting angry, Shi Yurong was still very happy. This matter is left to you to handle, and you must get the medicine formula of the dragon horse spirit from their hands. Xi Ming raised his head, a ray of light flashed in his eyes, and commanded. President Xi, don't worry, I will not let you down, I will definitely get the formula of Longma spirit. Shi Yurong hurriedly bowed and issued a military order. 
with Xi Ming's orders and hints, Shi Yurong naturally had a high morale. As long as he gets the formula of the Dragon Horse Spirit, he can redeem his merits, and he can also have greater rewards. When Shi Yurong came to the door of the medicated food restaurant and saw this lively scene, he was not envious and jealous. It was absolutely false. Look at the men standing in line with the big sun outside, and you can't wait to see them in your shop. Although he was very angry and jealous, he walked up his chin and walked into the medicated restaurant. Standing in the lobby to entertain the guests, Ling Hong saw someone come in without registering, and he greeted him, This gentleman, please follow the order and enter with the number. Shi Yurong glanced at Ling Hong with a serving look, snorted proudly, raised his chin, and said, I am Shi Yurong, the general manager of the Wang Feng Hotel opposite. Today I am not here for dinner, but a business talks with boss Ling of. Ling Hong, who had a professional smile, heard a sneer in his heart, and he really came. As soon as their medicinal food shop opened, there was no business in the lookout hotel opposite. Can you come to trouble them? Ling Hong smiled and said sideways, in this case, let's talk about it from another place. Shi Yurong also knew that this was not a place to speak, but with both hands and back, leaving to the office with Ling Hong. When Ling Hong entered the office, he sat on the sofa and said faintly, I don't know what happened to manager Shi coming to my shop. Shi Yurong sat on the sofa, leaning his entire body on the back of the sofa, looking at Ling Hong arrogantly, do you know who is standing behind our Wang Feng Hotel? Of course I do. Ling Hong looked calm, Kishin Group, did I make a mistake? Since you know, then this matter will be easier to handle. Shi Yurong heard it, and immediately felt a sense of superiority. That posture is like an ancient nobleman facing the poor with a hundred faith. Ling Hong glanced at Shi Yurong, sneered in his heart, what is easy to do? Manager Shi, please tell me. Shi Yurong lifted Erlang's legs and said arrogantly, We always value the medicated diet formula of your medicated diet restaurant, and now we always plan to pay for your medicated diet formula and take it out quickly, so I can go back and return. When Ling Hong heard this, there was always a sneer in his heart with the arrogant posture of the little red next to the ancient emperor holding chicken feathers as an arrow. Really think that Kai Xing Group is a sweet pastry? Who should be shy to fawn? Pay? How much do you plan to pay? Ling Hong was silent for a moment. Although he planned to refuse without hesitation in his heart, he was still very curious about how much they paid, so he asked. Ten million. By the dragon horse spirit of your medicated food shop. Shi Yurong put up a finger and said arrogantly. That attitude, that arrogant appearance, as if given a price of ten million, that is also very worthy of you, take out the formula obediently, and see the formula in your store, it is completely worthy of you. Ling Hong smiled when he heard the price. Ten million? Ten million people want to buy the formula of their medicated diet shop, really want to be beautiful. With the spirit of the dragon horse, there is no need to worry about future business. It can be said that it is a chicken that lays golden eggs. You can buy it for only ten million. Sure enough, good things are so easy to be coveted. Ling Hong leaned back and leaned on the back of the sofa, with a smile on his face, and said, I'm sorry, not for sale. Shi Yurong, who didn't expect Ling Hong to refuse, was still arrogant and said to himself, but suddenly felt something was wrong, so he screamed, That's right. What about our Kishin group, what? Not for sale. Shi Yurong did not expect that Ling Hong would not give Kishin group any face, and would not sell formulas. Yes, don't sell it. Ling Hong nodded, sneered in his heart, he really regarded himself and Kishin group as sweet pastry, and thought he would be willing. Don't look at who owns this medicinal restaurant, even if it's not Chum Wu's, but his own shop he will not be so stupid that he will sell this recipe and let others make money. Shi Yurong sat up straight, staring at Ling Hong angrily, you are not selling. If you say you don't sell it, you don't sell it. Do you need to say more? Ling Hong snorted without giving face. 
you. Shi Yurong pointed at Ling Hong, eyes full of anger, Kishan Group bought your medicated diet formula. What's wrong with Kishan Group? Ling Hong said coldly, I'm not so stupid, my business is so hot, for me, it's only a matter of time that you buy 10 million of my medicated diet formula. Give you 10 million, that has already given you face, our Kishan Group has never failed to get what we want. Shi Yurong stood up directly from the sofa, staring at Ling Hong fiercely, arrogantly. The call is noisy. There have been such things in the past, but there has never been a person like Ling Hong who does not know the current affairs. To dare to ignore the threat of Kishan Group is simply seeking a dead end. Ling Hong sat on the sofa, looked up at Shi Yurong, chuckled lightly, and said, Give me face? I don't want you to give me face? Tell you, even if you give me 100 million, 1 billion, I am absolutely I won't sell medicated diet formulas. Ha ha, good. Very good. Shi Yurong heard it, only to feel angry, pointing to Ling Hong, his eyes filled with vicious light, Ling Hong, you wait for me, since you are not obedient to hand it over medicinal diet formula, don't even think about opening your medicated restaurant. I don't need manager Shi to worry about whether my medicated food shop can continue. Ling Hong sneered and said mockingly. Shi Yurong's eyes were gleaming with coldness, and he gritted his teeth, you wait for me. At that time, don't say ten million, not even a dollar. Since Ling Hong didn't give him face, let alone Kishan Group, he would report to Ziming and let Ziming handle it. Then this kid would cry. He wanted to see how this kid would kneel in front of him and cry. Then I am waiting for you. Ling Hong shot back without any weakness. Hey! Shi Yurong snorted coldly, waved and left the office angrily. Ling Hong frowned unconsciously looking at Shi Yurong who was leaving. Kishan Group wants their medicated diet formula, this matter is a bit troublesome. Although he was very strong just now, he was still very worried. After all, Kishan Group can be said to be the leader of Xingxi's catering group. Offending them, the medicinal restaurant is absolutely no good. Chu Mui received a call from Ling Hong on the way home after school. I told her about the Kishan Group and Shi Yurong's threat. However, Chu Mui didn't care about their threats, let Ling Hong open the shop with peace of mind, just leave it alone and wait for their next move. Shi Yurong also told Xi Ming about Ling Hong. Of course, Shi Yurong, who had been deflated and irritated by Ling Hong's side, of course added fuel and jealousy in front of Xi Ming, saying that Ling Hong had said that Kishan Group was worthless. Xi Ming didn't expect that Ling Hong would not give him face so much, and even belittle Kishan Group. Ling Hong naturally didn't know that Shi Yurong was saying bad things about him in front of Xi Ming not to mention that Xi Ming was very angry because of this incident, and even hated him and the medicated restaurant, and must get the medicated diet formula. Sure enough, Xi Ming's trouble soon came up. After school, Chu Muito came to the medicated food restaurant and saw that the medicated food restaurant was in a mess, and a cold light flashed in his eyes for an instant. What's going on? Chu Muito asked coldly when she looked at Ling Hong who came over. Ling Hong sighed helplessly, and said, It's a scent by Kishan Group, and now they have been taken away with Ye Tian Ming. At noon, a group of gangsters broke into the medicated restaurant, drove away the customers who were eating, and even beat them up. Ling Hong also called the police, but the nearby police station did not respond at all. This made him very angry, so he called Ye Tian Ming and asked him to come directly to the store. Yet Yen Ming also said that he is a policeman, if anyone is asking for trouble, he can call him. These punks are within the scope of police control. The bastard, who originally thought the police would not come, was shocked to see Yet Yen Ming bringing the police, and was immediately arrested. Chu Mui nodded gently, an angry look appeared on her pretty face, it's really arrogant. Yes. Fortunately, those customers weren't hurt. Otherwise, it would be really hard to handle. Ling Hong sighed helplessly. Chu Muito glanced around and asked, How much did we lose? Fortunately, 
those gangsters only did their work on the first floor, and did not go to the second and third floors, so the loss is not too great, but some places still need to be renovated, and the air conditioners have also been damaged by two or three. They probably have to buy new ones, no matter how much you need 70 to 80,000. Ling Hong couldn't help but feel a pain in his heart when it came to this amount. This little money is enough for him to open a small restaurant before. Chu Muo glanced at the injury on Ling Hong's face and reminded him, Big Brother Ling, go find some security guards and let them protect the safety here in the future. Ling Hong nodded, I will find some security guards here. Chu Muo glanced around, and heard that Ye Tian Ming led someone to take the gangster away, so she asked, Where is Ye Tian Ming? At the police station, they should still be interrogated. Ling Hong explained. Chu Muihu took out his mobile phone and called Ye Tian Ming. Little junior sister, I knew that you would call me. I have tried the little bastard. Shi Yurong from the lookout hotel called them, but there is no evidence. Ye Tian Ming's voice came over as soon as the phone was connected. Well, I see, you can close those first. Chu Muihu nodded and said. Ye Tian Ming asked Chu Muihu curiously, what are you going to do? There is no evidence for the time being. We are fighting a snake and hitting seven inches. Our opponent is not Shi Yurong of the lookout hotel, but the Kishin group behind. Therefore, we must find the Kishin group's criminal evidence, and it must be enough to cause them to attack. Death. Chu Muihu said with a cold light in her eyes, remember this first. Well, that's the only way. Yet Yen Ming nodded and sighed, however, it is easy to find evidence of the Kishin group's crimes, leave it to me. Thanks a lot. Chu Muihu smiled and said gratefully. After thinking about it, it seems that his strength is still too weak, but under this situation, he can't do anything, and he can only rely on Yet Yen Ming and the others. Needless to say, I still have my shares in this medicated restaurant. Yet Yen Ming chuckled and said of course, if you need anything in the future, you can find me. Chu Muihu thought for a while and asked, by the way, do you know any veterans? Veterans. Yet Yen Ming was taken aback when he heard the words, and then said clearly, do you want those veterans to protect the medicinal restaurant? Well, I have this plan. Chu Muihu nodded and explained, if it is just an ordinary bodyguard, I am afraid that it will not be able to deal with so many punks. With two fists, it is difficult to fight around. Soldiers have been trained in the army. So much better. Okay, don't worry, I will find some veterans to come over, and their skills will never let you down. Yet Yen Ming smiled and said comfortingly, I'll call someone right now. Chu Muihu thought for a while, and said remindingly, for now. Don't let senior brother Xiao know about this matter. Yet Yen Ming smiled, and naturally remembered the instructions to Chu Muyu, Well, I listened to the younger sister. You can let the veterans you find come over as soon as possible. Chu Mu reminded. Yet Yen Ming smiled and said, Okay, I'll call them right away. Chu Muyu hung up the phone and turned to Ling Hong and said, Let's temporarily close the business and redecorate first. Okay, I will ask someone to come to renovate immediately, but I am afraid that after this incident, there will be a lot of fewer customers. Ling Hong said worriedly. Chu Muihu pressed her temple and said, It's okay, anyway, it's not in a hurry now, take your time. Now we are mainly to be famous. I believe that after this incident, we can also get us some diners. Ling Hong nodded thoughtfully, and for a while, he still didn't understand what Chu Muihu's words meant. Okay, let me treat your injury first. Chu Muihu looked at Ling Hong's injury and said with concern, Is anyone else injured? They are injured, but I have sent them to the hospital, and they have been reimbursed for this treatment. Ling Hong nodded and said, The people here are all uninjured. Well, after the things are sorted out, give them a little more money to comfort them. I will make some calming soup for them to drink later, and then I will go home and sleep for a while. 
Chu Muyo glanced at it although he was sorting out said the waiter with a somewhat undecided look on the desk and chair. The boss is the boss, and he knows how to care about our bodies. Ling Hong joked with a smile. Chu Muyo joked with a smile, I didn't let you use your life to work for me. The medicinal restaurant was closed for renovation, and Chi Yurong was naturally proud and arrogant when he saw this situation. I have been watching the situation of the medicinal restaurant on the other side, and seeing those decorators entering, Shi Yurong was very proud of him, and even dared to confront them with Kishin Group, asking for trouble. In the middle, he went to the medicated restaurant to find Ling Hong and threatened him to hand over the formula. Otherwise, his medicated restaurant would not want to continue doing it. Of course, Ling Hong didn't care about Shi Yurong's words at all. After the refurbishment of the medicinal food restaurant, it has regained its new look, and Ling Hong was also relieved. Yet Yen Ming will bring people over today, let them protect the safety of this medicated restaurant in the future. Chu Muihu sat on the sofa in the office, making Kung Fu tea on the coffee table. Ling Hong nodded, that's good, with them, the medicinal restaurant shouldn't be in trouble for the time being. Of course. At this moment, Yet Yen Ming opened the door with a confident smile on his face, My people, it's easy to deal with them. Chu Muyo looked up and looked at Yet Yen Ming who walked in, as well as the three young men behind him, all of whom were wearing old camouflage uniforms. Perhaps, for soldiers like them, there are only two colors in their lives, red and green. There is nothing more comfortable than camouflage clothes. Just like Yet Yen Ming, Sometimes he still likes to wear camouflage uniforms, even if they are a little old and washed a little white, they still wear them. Sitting on the sofa, Yet Yen Ming directly picked up a cup of tea on the coffee table, took a sip, smashed it, smashed it, pointed to the three people and said, This is my former brothers Zhang Kong, Li Tao and Han Gang. They were discharged from the army, but they couldn't find a good job, so let them come over. Chu Muyo was taken aback, and asked in surprise, with Brother Xiao. No. Yet Yen Ming shook his head, the unit before me was also a special force. Oh. Chu Muyo nodded, glanced at the three of Zhang Kong, staring at them, and suddenly discovered that they had some old illnesses on their bodies. Are they discharged from the military due to injuries? Hey. Yet Yen Ming was taken aback and all the actions of drinking tea were a meal. How did you know? I didn't tell you about them. The three Zhang Kong who stood upright heard Ye Tian Ming's words, and their faces showed surprise. Chu Muihu smiled slightly and said, Have you forgotten my job? I'm a doctor, don't you even see their physical condition? Ye Tian Ming gave Chu Muihu a thumbs up and said complimentingly, That's not bad. Tell me. Where is their body injured? Chu Muyo looked at the three of them and said, This eldest brother Zhang Kong should have injured his right arm. The middle brother Li Tao injured his waist and injured his nerves. This eldest brother Han Gang, he should have injured his leg, come in. My feet are a little unsteady when I go. Upon hearing Chu Muyo's words, Ye Tian Ming and Zhang Kong all gave her a thumbs up and praised her. Awesome, you are really blue than blue. Yet Yen Ming said admiringly, thinking that he really found the right person, and said slightly embarrassed, it is precisely because of their injuries that they can't do too much physical work, so I brought them here. I wonder if you can cure it. Thinking of coming over with the three wounded, I unconsciously beat the drums in my heart. Chu Muihu smiled and said indifferently, it's nothing, I can heal their injuries. Hey. Yet Yen Ming let out a sigh of relief when she heard Chu Muihu's words, for fear that she would say no, it would be miserable. Not only was he unable to explain to these three brothers, but also unable to explain to Xiao Junyan. Hey, I know that junior sister, you are the best. Yet Yen Ming said with a smile and flattered Chu Muihu. Chu Muihu glanced at Yet Yen Ming coldly and said, although I can heal their injuries, it won't happen overnight. It takes time. Yet Yen Ming snapped his fingers and said, It doesn't matter, anyway, they will be your subordinates in the future, and you can treat them at any time. 
thinking about his brothers who have injuries, they can ask them to come to Chumwea for treatment. After all, everyone has lived and died together, so he could help them. Zhang Kong stood tall, standing like a benchmark, and said, As long as Ms. Chu can heal our injuries, how much time will it take, we are willing. I heard it. Yet Yen Ming smiled and looked at Chum Wu. Chum Wu nodded lightly, and said with satisfaction, Well, let's go ahead and find out about it with Brother Ling. It must be too late for today, and I don't have any treatment tools in my hands. Wait for tomorrow. Thank you, Miss Chu. Zhang Kong raised their hands to salute Chum Wu, but found that the occasion and identity were wrong, they hurriedly bowed, turned, and left in unison. Seeing the appearance of these three military elder brothers, Chum Wu couldn't help laughing. Ling Hong stood up and said, Then I'll go down and make arrangements first, you guys talk slowly. Chum Wu watched Ling Hong leave, first poured himself a cup of tea, glanced at Yet Yen Ming and said, Ask you one thing. Yet Yen Ming sat on the sofa, grabbed a walnut, pinched the walnut with his thumb and index finger, and crushed the walnut with a click and asked without raising his head, what's the matter? Chum Wu thought for a while and asked, what I want to ask you is, do you know when Brother Xiao's birthday is? Yet Yen Ming, who was eating walnuts, moved for a while, beheaded to look at Chum Wu, and smiled, what? Do you want to give the boss a birthday present? Chum Wu lowered her head, her cheeks couldn't help but flushed. Indeed. She wanted to make a talisman for Xiao Junyan by herself, but she didn't know when his birthday was. Well, the birthday of the boss is New Year's Day, which is easy to remember, but it's still a bit early now. Yet Yen Ming said with a smile. It's still early. After listening, Chum Wu nodded, turned around and solemnly instructed Yet Yen Ming, however, don't tell senior brother Xiao about this matter. Yet Yen Ming had a big smile on his face, but this smile felt treacherous and ill-intentioned. Don't worry, I won't tell him. I still want to know that he will see you give her a gift at that time. What kind of performance will it be? Chum Wu lowered his head and took a sip of tea, ignoring what Yet Yen Ming said, and silently threatened senior brother Xiao with regrets, why did he make such an unreliable friend? However, think about it. Although there is still a period of time before New Year's Day, what she wants is to make it by herself, and I don't know if she can have time. Got to see it. Chum Wu didn't want Xiao Junyan to know about things like finding gifts. If he had to go up the mountain during weekends, he could only find them after school. To make an amulet, naturally something with aura is the best. And this must be something spiritual, preferably jade. Although jade can be bought from a ready-made jade shop, it doesn't make any sense, so I plan to personally select the wool and carve it myself. After living in Zingxi for so long, Chum Wu also knew where to buy this kind of jade raw material. After school, Chum Wu took you to the busiest antique street in Zingxi with your school bag on your back. There are not only shops, but also some vendors. There are all kinds of old bottles and cans in front of them which looks a little messy, but it also looks a little lively. Perhaps now there will be more genuine products, but in the future there will be more fake products. Of course, this is also entirely dependent on the eyesight of each company. If you can't see it, it's your own business. If you see it right, you'll get rich. Chum Wu walked into the antique street. Whether it was her age or her appearance, it attracted the curiosity of the merchants on the antique street. After all, the people walking in this antique street are almost all elderly people, and even the younger ones are middle-aged people. Young girls like Chum Wu are definitely rare. Chum Wu came this time, not to Dobeo, but to look for good jade, especially jade full of spiritual energy. Although she is rich now, she is not the kind of person who likes extravagance and waste so she plans to come here to shop for Dobeo to see if she can buy cheap and spiritual jade. Before she came, she asked for it. Quite a few books about jade. When Chum Wu saw jade pieces placed on the small vendors, 
she would squat down to take a look. When Chumwyo picked up a piece of jade, she felt that the jade in her hand gave her a very comfortable feeling. Hey! This is... Chumwyo was taken aback, a flash of surprise flashed in her eyes. This piece of white jade, which was somewhat incomplete, gave her a feeling that other jade stones did not have. Whether it was before or after rebirth, Chumwyo had never touched jade, which made her not clear why she felt different about this jade. However, she remembered the teacher's teachings in her heart. This comfortable feeling is the aura in the jade, the same as the aura of heaven and earth that she has absorbed in her practice. It's just that the feeling of jade is not so obvious. Since ancient times, there has been a legend of jade raising people, which is not without a target. There is aura in the real jade. As long as the jade is placed on the body, the aura in the jade will nourish the body. Of course, this must also be true for the jade, otherwise it will not be so good. Usefulness When the vendor owner saw Chumwiu staring at the broken jade, his eyes lit up, and he only felt that there was a fat sheep to be slaughtered. Little girl, you are really discerning. You valued this piece of jade at a glance. This is a good piece of jade. I collected it from a village. They said it has been passed on for two to three hundred years. The boss smiled thumbs up to Chumwyu, and directly spit to talk about his collection of this jade, if it weren't for their family's status and urgent need for money, they wouldn't sell this good jade to me. Of. If it hadn't been for Chumwyu to give him a very noble temperament, the boss would really not be so positive at all, let alone say so much. Chumwyu, who was meditating, smiled in her heart when she heard what the boss said. Really? But why is this thing broken? A corner is missing. Chumwyu asked the boss, pointing to a broken corner of you. Chumwyu also knew how these bosses got the jade, and it was estimated that he got it from the farmers who were ignorant of the treasure. Now, listening to the things the boss talks about, it must be to increase the price of this broken jade. How can Chumwyo make him do what he wants? Uh, this, I accidentally broke it. The boss said embarrassingly. Oh. Chumwyo nodded, with a stunned look, look at this fracture, it's all mud. It should be a while, right? The boss smashed his mouth, he wanted to say that he accidentally broke it himself, but listening to Chumwyo's words, he could see that the jade was broken a long time ago so he could only explain with a smile, yes, when I received this piece of jade, I also asked, saying that it was accidentally broken, and that the incomplete piece was too broken to be picked up. Chumwyu nodded, still lowering his head, playing with this jade. However, at this moment, Chumwyu suddenly felt a sting in her eyes, and after closing her eyes, she opened her eyes again. However, I found that the jade in my hand was surrounded by water, like an ethereal air. Seeing such a scene, Chumwyo was stunned, her eyes widened in an instant. She. Is she able to see the aura on the jade? Chumwyo touched her eyes, and she was surprised. Can her eyes still have this function? Thinking of this, I couldn't help but feel excited. However, after learning the health training exercises with Dong Feng Sheng, the excitement in his heart was not revealed at all, the expression on his face was still very calm, his brows were frowned, and he looked very tangled. Boss, how much do you sell for this jade? Chumwyu raised her head and asked the boss curiously. The boss smiled and stretched out a hand to Chumwyu and said, 500. As soon as she heard the boss call this number, Chumwyu screamed, and quickly put the jade on the stall, what? 500? So expensive? A piece of broken jade costs so much money, and it's probably worth going back. Scolded by my dad. When the boss heard what Chumwyu said, he was immediately anxious, and quickly grabbed Chumwyu, little girl, don't go. Chumwyu looked at the wrist that was grabbed by the boss, quickly pulled it out, and said dissatisfied, what are you doing with me? It's so expensive. I can't afford it. Chumwyu naturally knew the boss's mind, didn't he just want to slaughter the fat sheep? 
she is not so stupid. The boss gritted his teeth fiercely, and said with a smile, Little girl, look at what you said, I am a businessman, of course I hope to make money with peace. Since you like this piece of jade, we will become friends. How about me, give you a cheaper price? Chum Wiyu thought about it for a while, she looked very tangled and hesitant, and finally nodded and said, Also, this jade is quite beautiful, and I also like it, but, boss, I can tell you, I'm still a student, and my parents don't usually give me much money. You should know that it's cheaper. When Chum Wiyu said that he planned to buy, the boss was naturally also happy. At the beginning, he saw that the jade was in good condition, so he accepted it, but he didn't expect it, because the jade had been sold for one or two years, and he couldn't sell it. This made him very regretful. Now that Chum Wiyu is taking a fool, of course he wants to sell it. The boss thought for a while and said, Oh, since the girl is young and doesn't have much money, I'll give you 100 yuan. 100 yuan. Chum Wiyu heard it, and suddenly showed a frightened appearance, and immediately shook his head like a rattle, a broken jade is so expensive? Then I might as well let my dad on my birthday. Go to the jade shop to buy a beautiful and complete jade. After speaking, Chum Wiyu wanted to leave again. The store looked at it and was anxious again, and quickly stopped her again. Little girl, don't go. This jade is indeed broken with a small corner, but the color is good. If you like it, you can buy it. You can say a price, how about it? The boss just wanted to sell this jade. As long as you don't lose money. Chum Wiyu thought for a while, and touched her pocket, well, let me see, hey? Only forty, one, two, three, forty-three yuan. Boss, it's not as good as forty yuan, the remaining three how about I still have to go back in the car. When the boss saw it, the old face called a bitter. It was sad enough to sell something for five hundred yuan to only forty yuan. But think about it when he received this jade, it was only fifteen yuan. Little girl, you really know how to play with me. The boss said with a bitter face. Chum Wiyu shrugged helplessly and said, I can't help it, this is all my belongings now. With that said, he also took out his other pockets, as if I was really out of money. The boss gritted his teeth and said, Well, then 40 yuan, it's a friend. Hee <laughs> hee, thank you boss. Chum Wiyu smiled, and a flash of light flashed in his eyes, and handed 40 yuan to the boss. The boss reluctantly handed 40 yuan to Chum Wiyu, turned around and returned to his booth. Chum Wiyu looked at the jade in her hand with a smile on her lips. Although this piece of jade is not complete, what she wants is not necessarily a complete thing. After she returns, she can carve it again and polish it into a magic weapon. After buying a piece of jade, Chum Wiyu didn't plan to leave so soon, she wanted to find wool for Xiao Junyan. Having already bought things, Chum Wiyu felt that it was no longer suitable for him to buy things at the street vendors, otherwise the money would be impossible to say. Chum Wiyu turned around and walked forward for a while, and when she saw a shop specializing in jade, her eyes lit up and she quickly walked in. There are various jade carvings on the shelves in the shop, but they look very beautiful. Chum Wiyu glanced and his eyes could see that only one-third of the jade was exuding spiritual energy, and there was nothing else. It must be fake. From the comparison between the broken piece of white jade she held just now and the other jade on the vendor's vendor, she could already see that the jade was real and the jade was fake. There were only two people in this shop. A middle-aged man was sitting at the counter and was playing with jade, and the other was a young man who was wiping a wooden shelf. Chum Wiyu's arrival did not attract the attention of the middle-aged man and the guy. After all, a young girl like Chum Wiyu really didn't make much money. Ignoring them, Chum Wiyu didn't care about them, still looking at the contents inside. Sure enough, in the corner on one side, I saw some large and small stones, and the sign was written with the words wool. Mu Hong Yang looked at the money on the table and then at Chum Wiyu, with a look of surprise on his face. 
This little girl actually came out with $200. At the end of the 20th century, a little girl who was still dressed in such an ordinary dress, spending $200 is like spending $20,000 in the future, which is really horrifying. Before Mu Hong Yang could say anything, the young man Qian Feng seemed to have picked his own stone, walked over with him, put it on the table, and said with a smile, Little girl, I can tell you these you can't play it casually. Just take the money home. If you lose the gambling, the money is gone. Chu Muyu was grateful for Qian Feng's kind reminding Chu Muyu, and smiled, It's okay, it's my first time to play, try your luck. Qian Feng looked at Chu Muyu in surprise. He didn't expect that she would refuse so directly. Doesn't this little girl know that she has no money in her family? Thinking of this, Qian Feng could only helplessly shook his head, and said to Mu Hong Yang, Boss Mu, let me do the math. Mu Hong Yang nodded, looked at Chu Muyu, and reminded him, Little girl, wool is not refundable when sold, even if it is solved without emeralds, it cannot be refunded. Of course I know this, it's gambling. Chu Muyu nodded, glanced at Qian Feng and said, I'm very restrained. Hearing this, Qian Feng was taken aback, and touched his nose in embarrassment. Mu Hong Yang was also afraid that this little girl would wait a moment to see that the stone he chose did not solve the problem, and was making trouble here. Now that she has said so, he would not refuse, and directly collected the money. The stone Qian Feng chose was different from Chu Muyu. It was weighed according to weight, and it was about four to five hundred yuan, which was similar to what Mu Hong Yang just said. After Mu Hong Yang helped Qian Feng complete the calculations, he asked Chu Muyu, Little girl, do you want to solve the stone? Chu Muyu looked down, put the stone the size of an adult's fist into his school bag, and pushed the other two pieces in front of Mu Hong Yang, resolve these two pieces. Is there still a small piece of puzzle? Qian Feng asked curiously when he saw Chu Muyu's behavior. Chu Muyu shook her head, I don't understand, take it back and play with my grandpa. Upon hearing Chu Muyu's words, Qian Feng and Mu Hong Yang both shook their heads, not knowing what to say for a while. Then I will solve it for you first. Mu Hong Yang picked up the two stones that Chu Muyu wanted to solve, both of which were about the size of a brick. I don't know if Mu Hong Yang's hands are bad. The first stone he picked up was not Aura. Little girl, do you need any solutions? Mu Hong Yang asked weighing the stones in his hands. Chu Muyu pretended to touch her chin, raised her head and smiled and said, let's make a stab in the middle. Little girl is really a layman. Qian Feng laughed when he heard it. Chu Muyu touched her nose, I was just playing around. With that said, standing in front of the stone eliminator with Qian Feng, watching Mu Hong Yang give her the stone. As Chu Muyu saw just now, after a single cut, nothing appeared, there was no shadow at all, and all were stones. Seeing this situation, Qian Feng patted Chu Muyu on the shoulder, little girl, don't care, this bet on stone is like this, you can make a poor one and a rich one. But he didn't see Chu Muyu's face without waves, as if the stone was not hers. Chu Muyu sighed and said calmly, solve the second one. Hearing Chu Muyu's words, Mu Hong Yang glanced at her, her eyes were a little different. Although this girl looked disappointed, she was not sad. In an instant, he began to doubt his own vision, did she really misunderstood, the kind of wealthy girl at home? Chu Muyu took another piece of stone, handed it to Mu Hong Yang, and said, let's solve this too. One size fits all in the middle. Okay. Mu Hong Yang put away his gaze put the stone on the understanding stone tool again, the knife fell, and the light of business burst out from it in an instant. Hey! Seeing this situation, Mu Hong Yang couldn't help but yelled softly. Hearing Mu Hong Jiang's voice, Qian Feng couldn't help but stepped forward and asked, What's the matter? Qian Feng, who came forward, saw his eyes widened, Hi! It's green! He suddenly turned his head and glared at Chu Muyu, her eyes filled with unbelievable expressions. 
Chu Muyu saw Qian Feng and Mu Hong Yang both looking at her with shocked eyes, making her a little embarrassed, touched her nose, and shrugged her shoulders, I don't know, it's pure luck. When Mu Hong Yang and Qian Feng heard it, they were speechless, and this luck was really amazing. They can see that the quality of this jade is not bad, at least they can make two to three thousand yuan. Oh, what a pity. After being surprised, he felt sorry again. Not for anything else, just for such a good piece of jade, so it was divided into two halves. It's divided into two halves, what should I do? Chum Wiyu scratched her head and said with a dazed and bewildered expression. Well, if you don't want the little girl, you can sell it to me, if you want, this is still for you. Mu Hong Yang said with a smile. Chum Wiyu touched her chin and said, sell half of it to you, and leave the other half to me to go back and play. The attitude of speaking was really a family affair of the rich second generation, which made Mu Hong Yang squint at her again, his eyes shining with a strange light. Now when I look at Chum Wiyu, the more I look at it, the more I feel that she has a naturally noble temperament in her body. The indifferent and leisurely gesture of gestures is very different from ordinary girls. He he, since this young lady arranged like this, I bought the other half, but do you want to solve it all? Or just sell it like this? Mu Hong Yang asked Chum Wiyu with a smile. Chum Wiyu also read some information, and the price of wool is different. As for money, she doesn't care, but she cares whether it is troublesome or not, so let's just stay here, full solution. Okay. Mu Hong Yang nodded and started to lay the stone again. The two untied stones add up to half the size of the brick just now, and the color is translucent. Qian Feng looked at it for a while and shook his head, and said with emotion, it's really a poor one and a rich one. I've seen this stone before, and it only costs 50 yuan. How can I sell it for half a thousand dollars? Up. Mu Hong Yang ignored Qian Feng's exclamation and asked Chum Wu, little girl, which one do you want? Chum Wu chose one randomly and said, That's it, thank you. This time, she didn't spend any money, but made a small profit instead. Sure enough, her guess was correct. Whether there is aura or not depends on whether there is material in the wool. Boss Mu, show me how much this stone can sell for. Chum Wu put away his half and asked, looking up. Mu Hong Yang glanced at Qian Feng next to him. He also said just now that this half can cost 2,000 yuan. Moreover, looking at Chum Wu's temperament, if it is really what he guessed, he can't offend him. After thinking about it, he said, I'll give you a thousand and five, how about it? Chum Wu touched her chin and said, Well, it's okay, at least it's a small profit. Hearing this, Mu Hong Yang laughed and said, Yes, miss, your luck is really good. I'm not bargaining anymore. I also believe the boss, you won't lie to me, 1005 is 1005. Chum Wu waved his hand and said. Mu Hong Yang heard it and was very satisfied. He also sold this piece of jade, at least 4 or 5000. Now that Chum Wu said so, he also paid the money neatly for fear that she would regret it. While taking the money, she asked Chum Wu enthusiastically, I don't know what your surname is miss. If you have any needs in the future, you can come often. Chum Wu tapped her fingers on the desk lightly, and the corners of her mouth rose, my name is Chu. For Mu Han Jiang's enthusiasm, Chum Wu knew very well that he must have seen something and thought he was a rich lady. However, since others guessed so, she would not pierce it. Haha, <laughs> Miss Chu, this is 1005, you count. Mu Hong Yang smiled and handed the money in his hand to Chum Wu. Chum Wu took the count and turned it over, nodded gently and put it in her school bag, planning to leave directly, boss, then I'll leave. Miss Chu will come often after welcome. Mu Hong Yang said with a warm smile. Chum Wu nodded turned around and touched the bag of the school bag, a warm and sweet smile appeared on the corner of her mouth. Although Xiao Junyan said that he had retired, 
but the last time she met him for the first time, he was seriously injured. This still made her unable to help worrying about his safety, thinking, sending out a jade pendant to protect her safety in the future. Just as Chumwiu turned around and was about to leave, she saw the buddy carrying a wooden box and placing it in front of the electric fan, and then sat down. Looking at the wooden box and the carved patterns on it, Chumwiu frowned. This wooden box looks a lot like the medical box used to practice medicine in ancient times. Chumwiu murmured in her heart. As a Chinese medicine doctor, Chumwiu, of course, must be aware of this practice box. The master also gave her a practice box, which is similar to this one, but slightly larger. However, she didn't expect that now she was sitting on a stool by a young man, and she couldn't help but rise in anger. Brother, can you show me the wooden box you are sitting on? Chum Wu asked curiously, looking directly at the wooden box. When Mu Hong Yang, who was waiting for Qian Feng to give the route to the calcite, heard Chum Wu's words, he suddenly turned his head curiously and looked at his buddy. What's the matter? Mu Hong Yang walked over, frowning and asked his buddy. The man quickly got up from the wooden box, scratched his head, and said innocently, I wanted to take a break and fan, but I didn't expect this lady to look at the wooden box I was sitting on. Chum Wu knelt down, touched the wooden box, and looked at the pattern on it. Miss Chu, do you like this thing? Mu Hong Yang asked with a smile when he saw that Chum Wu seemed to like this box very much. Chum Wu shook her head, and said in a very flat tone, I just think this pattern is very beautiful. Hearing the tone of Chum Wu's words, Mu Hong Yang sighed helplessly in his heart. Is this a box? Or something? Chum Wu asked curiously, How do I open this? After careful investigation, Chum Wu found that there was no trace of connection in this box. It can only be said that those carpenters in ancient times are so skillful that they can't be seen. Hearing Chum Wu's question, Mu Hong Yang smiled awkwardly and said, This, I don't know how to open it. He was a little embarrassed to say this. Originally, he could use a tool to break and open it, but if it breaks, the money that was collected from the thing will be wasted. Therefore, up to now, Mu Hong Yang and the others have only used this thing as a stool to sit on, and it has no other effect. Although there are patterns on the wooden box, the patterns seem to be very ordinary, and I don't want to be as expensive as blue and white porcelain, and the price cannot be sold. Chum Wu thought for a while, and said, holding back the anger in her heart, then this thing, made of stool, is really good, and it's similar to my old house style. Chum Wu was also heartbroken when he used the medicine box of Chinese medicine as a stool. The medical skills handed down by her ancestors are not only forgotten and disliked by others, but even tools are treated as stools. How can Chum Wu not be angry? Hearing this, Mu Hanjiang's eyes suddenly lit up, why, this little girl still has such an old mansion? People who can live in this kind of old house should be rich or expensive. Then Miss Chu, do you want to buy it? Mu Hong Yang asked Chum Wu with a smile. Chum Wu patted the wooden box, then grabbed the strap and carried it, frowning slightly, a little heavy, is there anything in it? Hearing what Mu Hong Yang said, he didn't know how to open this medical practice box, it was possible that there was still the original owner of this medical practice box inside. It's so heavy, it's a bit of a hassle to take it back. Chum Wu carried it in a posture that she couldn't move. Mu Hong Yang watched Chum Wu's behavior, and the muscles at the corners of his mouth couldn't help but twitch. I always feel that Chum Wu doesn't want to buy the rhythm of this thing. Miss Chu, since you think this thing matches the decoration of your old house, you might as well buy it back. After all, it is not so easy to find anything that can be matched in the old house. Mu Hong Yang smiled. Said. Chum Wu glanced at Mu Hong Yang with disbelief, since boss Mu, you all use this thing as a stool, I think it's also a stool when I take it back. It looks pretty good. Give me a price. Right. Mu Hong Yang looked down at the practice box and commented, 
this thing is also an antique anyway, and the carved patterns are also. Listening to these words, Chumwe raised her hand and interrupted directly, needless to say, Boss Mew, make a direct quote. What you said is useless. If it is useful, you will sell it on the shelf instead of putting it on the ground. Stool, I also opened the stone here for you, and it is estimated that I will come often in the future. If you still want me to come later, then I will give you a good word. Chumwe returned home carrying the practice box and put the box on his desk. In the end, Boss Mu was very helpless and gave Chumwe a price of 500 yuan. This outpatient box is mainly made of good material. Boss Mu paid much attention to the material at the beginning, but he didn't expect that after receiving it, it would not be sold. It has been stored for five or six years, otherwise it would not be used as a stool. This time Chumwea was far more anxious than in the store to check the outing box carefully, touched it, and slightly narrowed her eyes, this should be the red sandalwood that the master said, right. The consultation box used in ancient Chinese medicine was made of wood, and the red sandalwood was made by a secret technique, and it was very tough. No matter how it hits it, it won't break, otherwise Boss Mu won't be allowed to sit on it as a stool. The slender white jade hand gently pressed a small pattern on the edge of the box, and with a click, the box opened. Hey, the master is right. It seems that this should be the outpatient box used by the ancient court doctors. Only theirs can be of such a high standard. Chumwea showed a smile. When you opened the box, you saw the medicines necessary for Chinese medicine, as well as the commonly used gold and silver needles. The gold and silver needles inside were completely different from those given to Chumwea by Dong Fang Sheng, but they were exactly the same as the specifications of acupuncture used by Dong Fang Sheng described some ancient Chinese medicine practitioners. These silver needles have detailed differences in length and size, and the craftsmanship is even better. In addition to needles, there are also some precious Chinese medicinal materials, such as Shaowu and Ganodermalocytum. Not only have they been hundreds of years old, they are also very well preserved. I don't know if it is because of this medicine box. Not only did the Chinese medicinal materials in it not deteriorate, but the medicinal properties became more pure and thick. Chum Wu exclaimed for a while, this medicine box really deserves to be the outpatient box used by ancient imperial doctors. Sorted out all the Chinese medicinal materials inside, put it on the table, and checked the secret compartment of the outpatient box. Dong Fang Sheng once told her that many medical boxes in ancient times would have hidden compartments in them to put some secret things, especially medical boxes like this kind of imperial medical practitioner. Chum Wheel looked for it, and sure enough, she found a secret grid. The secret compartment opened, but a simple yellow cloth appeared inside, what is this? He took out some old yellow cloth and took a look, but he found something similar to ancient maps, or rather, more like the legendary treasure map. Maybe it's not the ancients, or maybe it's because I'm used to modern maps and I can't understand what this ancient map is. After thinking about it, Chum Wea put it away, and went to show this thing to the master, maybe his old man can understand it. Chum Wea lowered her head again, and checked the secret grid, to see if there was anything else inside. Sure enough, another jade the size of a thumb was found in the secret grid. Chum Wea was amazed again, took the jade out of it, and carefully looked at the jade that looked redder than blood. X-rays appeared in his eyes, and a look of surprise appeared on his face. Especially when she was holding the jade, an abundance of spiritual energy surged into her body. This. Chum Wea's subconscious body moved backwards and quickly controlled the power surging in her body. While Chum Wea was fully focused on controlling the strength in her body, she didn't see the jade pinched by her fingers as if there was flowing golden water in the jade, flowing with faint golden light. Chum Wea fell on the bed. If there was a second person here, and someone with the same ability as Chum Wea, she would definitely be able to see a cloud of water mist around her. The jade that Chum Wea was holding just now was actually surrounded by a golden light, and then penetrated into the palm of her hand, 
and a golden light flowed all over her body along the veins of her whole body. Chum Wu's brows were frowning, and a layer of sweat appeared on her cheeks, and her body was no exception, as if she had been fished out of the water. At this moment, Chum Wu frowned, feeling that his soul was moving, as if he was about to be stripped from his body. Chum Wu clenched his hands into fists, his fist and face were bruised, as if he was suffering from some great pain. The golden light seemed to be washing Chum Wu's whole body veins and veins, it seemed to swim around the whole body veins, when the eyes opened, golden light burst out. Chum Wu only felt that her head was groggy, and her whole body was constantly sinking. This feeling was the same as the feeling that she could not swim ashore in order to jump into the water just before she was born again. The boundary line of death made her feel even more heavy. However, this feeling was only an event of one or two seconds. Soon, she felt her body light, as if she was being gently held on the ground, her eyelids fell with a ray of light, which made her wrinkle. Frowned. Chum Wu slowly opened his eyes, but was stunned by the scene in front of him. He blinked and saw that the scene that caught his eye was not the ceiling of his room, but a blue sky. With a swish, Chum Wu immediately sat up and turned to look around. Suddenly, he was stunned again. The thick fog in front of him seemed to be moving, gradually spreading towards the surroundings, and when the fog dissipated, the scene that appeared was shocked. Chum Wu stood up and stood on a green lawn. On three sides of the lawn, one side was a medicine field, the other was a water pool, and the other was a courtyard house. At the end of the medicinal field and the water pool, there are a number of majestic, towering peaks. The large areas of thick fog seemed to gradually stop spreading after encountering this mountain peak, surrounding the surrounding mountains, dividing the area where Chum Wu stood, into a small space in a basin. The entire small space has a radius of one mile, and the area is still very large. Chum Wu rubbed her eyes, and muttered to herself for a while, Is this fantasy? Is this the space in the legend in the novel? If it weren't for the memories of previous lives, when she was in college, she would often listen to the plots in fantasy novels from classmates in her dormitory and talk about the heroine's ability to have space or something, she would never have thought of this level. But, what is going on? Chum Wu suddenly wondered why she suddenly entered this space. When I was patrolling the surroundings, I saw that spot of light in the sky when I looked up, shining with nine color light just like the sun in this space. It's just that when Chum Wu squinted her eyes, she found that the spot of light was a bit similar to the little jade she had just held. Could it be because of the jade? Chum Wu exclaimed, how could she not believe it was true? Just as Chum Wu was shocked, a nine-color light flashed through the jade stone, and the beam rushed to the center of her eyebrows. Chum Wu stood there, her eyes closed slightly. The light beam that burst from the jade stone fell on the center of her eyebrows, and a message was passed into Chum Wu's mind. I am Lu Ji, the word is Bowen, and I have obtained the heavenly book and the Jukai stone of the Suan Mutian Sun. The Jukai stone can only be opened by those who have the yin and yang of life and death. A calm and full of vicissitudes of life sounded into Chum Wu's mind, and her heart trembled slightly. Lu, Lu Bowen. Chum Wu showed a shocked look on her face, yin and yang live and die. The joy and shock in her mind made her look constantly change. Unconsciously, Chum Wu raised her hand to cover her eyes. Could it be that the power of my eyes is the yin and yang life and death I Lu Bowen said. Chum Wu, who had never known the ability of his eyes, only then realized that the ability of his eyes was called yin and yang. It's no wonder that when she examines a person's body with her eyes, she can display the information about treatment, life, and death, that is, she can bring back the dead. The ability of the eyes cannot be talked about with others, so until now, Chum Wu didn't know what his eyes were, but thought it was a supernatural ability. But now it has finally been explained, and it is still known through this nine-color stone. But I didn't expect that the former owner of the Jukai stone turned out to be Lu Bowen. A stream of information flashed in Chum Wu's mind. 
It turned out that Lu Boan had obtained this nine color stone from Fuchuan Mountain. At the same time, he also obtained four volumes of the Book of Heaven, which later helped Zhu Yu and Zhang win the world. The torture is too heavy, but in old age it is impossible to die well. The nine colored stone will fly out of the owner's body following the death of the owner. Bowen Lu also left a message to let his children and grandchildren bury the nine colored stone in the tomb with him. This should also be because there were tomb robbers who stole Lu Bowen's tomb and obtained nine colored stones. Chum Wu saw a record in some of the inheritance books of the Mystic Medicine School. Once, there were rumors in the world that those who inherited Lu Bowen could get the world, perhaps the nine color stones. Unexpectedly, this inheritance would have been waiting for more than 600 years. Chum Wu touched her chin, and muttered to herself for a while, could it be that that map is the location of the Jukai stone? How could it be in the hands of an imperial doctor? It's not like letting her children and grandchildren hold this as Jukai she buried with him? Isn't it a tomb robbing? Various questions revolved in Chum Wu's mind, but she couldn't figure out her thoughts. Forget it. Let's go back and ask the master. Chum Wu could only sigh helplessly, not understanding the inheritance of Lu Boan, so she focused all of her attention on the courtyard. Inside the nine color stones, it is a self-contained space, except for the owner, no one can enter. This courtyard is built by Lu Boan's life's painstaking efforts. Seeing this ancient courtyard house made of wood, and wiped the sweat from his forehead, Chum Wu was amazed in her heart. It is indeed the legendary Lu Boan that one person can build such a two-entry courtyard house. Bedrooms, kitchens, study rooms, halls, etc. are all available, as well as a row of two-story pavilions with bookshelves written on them. Chum Wu's eyes lit up when she saw this row of pavilions. Inside the entire pavilion are rows of shelves, on which are placed various books, and some boxes, bottles, and jars. The things in it are all kinds of treasures collected by Lu Boan. Chum Wu opened her eyes, looked at the ceiling of the room she was familiar with, and exhaled a suffocating breath in her mouth. The pain on the body disappeared instantly, and it turned into a relief. When she was in the space, Chum Wu still didn't feel that kind of feeling, but now that she came out, she felt very strong in her body. Although she is very comfortable now, Chum Wu still gasps for breath, completely because the whole body pain just now made her consume the energy she was looking at. Just now, I just felt so tired to breathe, and it was so comfortable to breathe in fresh air at this time. Chum Wu took a rest, then sat up from the bed and wiped the sweat from his forehead. What happened just now, she really felt that it was a bit mysterious. However, Thinking of her own rebirth, and the yin and yang of life and death she got because of her rebirth, this space didn't seem so strange. Think about what Lu Boan said, because he was too heavy to kill and tortured, and he didn't go back to his house afterwards, so he couldn't end well in the end. Reminiscent of the former head of Suanmen, he was also a capable man of the Ming dynasty and the early Yuan dynasty. He was Yao Xiaoguang who assisted Zhu Di to win the throne. After success, he chose to retreat and become a monk. Zhu Di won the throne and prayed for the dead soldiers and people. This caused Chum Wu's heart to sigh, and as expected, the theory of karma exists. It seems that there will be more good deeds in the future. Chum Wu murmured for a while. After being silent for a long time, Chum Wu turned his gaze back on the desk, looking at the practice box, the corners of her mouth slightly raised. Anyway, I really made a lot of money this time. Even 10 million yuan can't buy such a good thing. Chum Wu rearranged the contents of the medicine box and put them inside. When preparing for the weekend, he went up the mountain and gave the contents to the master Dong Fangshen. I believe the master will like these things very much. After handling these things, Chum Wu took out the wool and various carving materials from the school bag and prepared to carve gifts for Xiao Junyan. From the words of Master and Uncle Han, Xiao Junyan's life was very rough, so she wanted to carve an amulet to protect him and love him. While Chum Wu was carving the amulet, 
the medicinal restaurant on the other side was still in constant trouble. However, with Zhang Kong, Li Tao, and Han Tao, the punks who were found by Shi Yurong were no longer effective. They were beaten out directly to ensure the personal safety of the guests who came to eat, and they were not allowed to be allowed. The decoration inside the medicated restaurant is broken. Finally, it also calmed the medicated food restaurant for a while. Shi Yurong was very angry at this situation. He didn't expect that Ling Hong directly recruited such a good bodyguard to come to protect him, and he sent out so many punks without taking advantage. He didn't know that with Chu Muyu's treatment, Zhang Kong's injuries were gradually recovering, and their skills were naturally back. Dealing with those little gangsters is absolutely easy, even if it is a dozen or twenty people, all three of them can handle it. Otherwise, Yet Yen Ming would not strongly recommend them to come here as bodyguards. Seeing such a situation, Ling Hong was also relieved, and finally solved a small trouble. On Saturday morning, Chu Muihu took Xiao Junyan's car and came to the mountain. Xiao Junyan carried the outpatient box that Chu Muihu bought in Antique Street and came to Dong Fang Sheng and the others. Master, I have something that I want you to have a look at. Chu Muihu walked up to Dong Fang Sheng with a smile and said. Han Tao was immediately happy when he heard it, and looked at Chu Muihu and said, Did you get any good things? Come, let me have a look my knowledge is no worse than your reclusive master. Dong Fang Sheng was accustomed to Han Tao's behavior of always boasting and boasting in front of his apprentices. He turned around and asked, What's the matter? Let's talk. Chu Muihu smiled, turned around and took the consultation box from Xiao Junyan's hand, put it on the table, and said, Master, look at this. Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao both fell on the diagnosis box. At first glance, both of them took a breath of air conditioning, this is a diagnosis box made of red sandalwood, and, it's from the Ming dynasty. Hearing Dong Feng Sheng's exclamation, Chu Muihu smiled, and she guessed right. Girl, how did you get it? Han Tao asked Chu Muihu curiously and surprised. Chu Muihu touched her nose and said, Well, I want to buy some jade, but I saw this clinic box in Antique Street. I saw that they used him as a stool, so I bought it directly. When Han Tao heard this, the corners of his mouth twitched fiercely, this group of unsightly guys. At this moment, with a card sound, after taking a look at the appearance, Dong Fang Sheng directly opened the outpatient box, took a look at the contents, and took another breath of air conditioning. This, so many treasures of heaven and earth. Dong Fang Sheng's eyes widened in shock his expression unbelievable. A smile appeared on the corner of Chu Muihu's mouth, this was just the tip of the iceberg in her own space. Lu Bowen stuffed a lot of natural materials and earth treasures in the space, and even the medicinal fields were planted. Common medicinal materials have been around for more than 600 years, and their effects are even more effective. Han Tao stared at what was inside, this. Then, she turned her head to look at Chu Muihu and asked, Girl, how much did you use to buy this thing? Chu Muihu touched her nose, smiled, and stretched out five fingers, five hundred yuan. Wipe. This time the old man who hugged Feng Shuang couldn't help but burst out a swear word, Would you like to be so lucky? Why don't I have such a good luck? The Ganodermalocytum in it was enough to sell for sky-high prices, not to mention the other things but Chu Muihu actually told him that he bought it for only 500 yuan. This is like Chu Muihu buying a piece of top quality jade for a dime, which is really frightening. Even Dong Fang Sheng, whose sight was originally on the medicinal materials in the medicine box, couldn't help turning his head, staring at Chu Muihu in surprise. This girl, do you want to be so fate? You girl. In the end, Dong Fang Sheng could only shook his head helplessly, a little dumbfounded, and he didn't know what words to use to describe Chu Muihu's good fortune. Xiao Junyan lowered his head and looked down, looking at the girl with a smile at the corner of her mouth, soft light flashing in her eyes. Chu Muihu touched her nose again, feeling a little embarrassed and blushing. Master, these things are not the main thing, 
you open the hidden compartment inside, there is a map inside, you show it. Chu Muyu hurriedly diverted the attention of Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao, and said as a reminder. Hearing what Chu Muyu said, Dong Fang Sheng first took out all the medicinal materials in the box and opened the secret compartment in the outpatient box. From the secret compartment, he took out the yellow cloth with the map and spread it on the table. Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao bowed their heads and frowned slightly as they looked at the contents of the yellow cloth. Looking at the four words written on the base map, Wenchinj treasure. Wenchinj. Both Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao were reciting these two words together, seeming to think of someone in ancient times who had Wenchinj in their names or titles, or legendary treasures related to Wenchinj. Chu Muyu glanced at the contemplative appearance of Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao, and reminded, I checked some information. It is said that Lu Bowen's posthumous name is Wenchinj. Snapped. When the voice fell, Han Tao slapped the table with a slap, and concluded, this must be the treasure of Lu Bowen in the legend. Unexpectedly, Lu Bowen's treasure turned out to be real. Dong Fang Sheng also nodded, agreeing with Han Tao's words. Master, do you understand? Chu Muyu asked Dong Fang Sheng curiously. Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao looked at each other, smiled bitterly, and said, This is a map more than 600 years ago. Even if you can understand it, you don't know where the map is drawn. Yet. The changes in 600 years are really too great, and the territory of the entire China nation is so large that there is no way to detect it. Han Tao shook his head and said with a sigh. Okay. Chu Muyu sighed when she heard it. Just as Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao said, over 600 years, the changes are really great. Moreover, because of wars and modern development, the map has changed tremendously. Xiao Junyan turned his head, looked at Chu Muyu, pursed his lips, and comforted, I'll help you. Hearing Xiao Junyan's words, Chu Muyu turned her head, a smile appeared on the corner of her mouth and asked curiously, this is a map more than 600 years ago, how can you help? You can investigate. Xiao Junyan nodded, but answered very concisely and vaguely. Chu Muyu held her forehead helplessly and waved her hand, it's okay, it's okay if you can't find it. Just treat it as a legend. Han Tao said, although it is a legend, you can still find it, brat, you can check it out when you have time. Yes. Master. Xiao Junyan nodded and looked at the map on the table. Chu Muyu smiled helplessly, as if she had taken some trouble for Xiao Junyan. Master, just keep these things. They are useless to me anyway. Chu Muyu smiled and said to Dong Fang Sheng. Dong Fang Sheng glanced at Chu Muyu, then looked at the medicinal materials placed on the table, and nodded after thinking about it. Give me the medicinal materials. I will give you these two sets of gold and silver needles. Also, this consultation box, you take it too, and you will use this outing box for future visits. Okay. Chum Wee readily agreed. The two sets of gold needles and silver are quite useful to her. Although the master gave her silver needles, there was no gold needles. Two sets of needles were available which would be convenient in the future. If you need these things in the future, you can also ask for it as a teacher, and the teacher will keep it for you. Dong Fang Sheng sorted out the materials on the table and walked towards the back room. Chu Muyu took out the jade materials she bought, sat next to Dong Fang Sheng, and asked, Master, you teach me how to make jade-like artifacts. The Chinese New Year is about to come, and I want to get my dad a safe talisman. This was just an excuse. Although I only wanted to make an amulet for Xiao Junyan's birthday, but later I also thought that it was about to celebrate the new year, and I could get an amulet belt for my father. Dong Fang Sheng listened, nodded with satisfaction at the corner of his mouth, and said with a smile, Well, it's time to get a talisman for your father. You read too fast, and you learn fast. Originally, I planned to let you come closer. Read this kind of book, go get a book in my room. Good master. Chum Wu's eyes lit up when she heard it, 
and she went to the master's room with joy. Tisk! Seeing Chu Muyu turning around, Han Tao frowned and complained dissatisfiedly, I only think of my father, and I won't get one for this old man. Chu Muyu turned around for a while, with a dumbfounded look on her face, turned her head to look at Han Tao, and said, Uncle Han, do you still need the amulet I made for you? She really didn't expect that this is just a simple amulet, and there are so many things that can be involved. Han Tao said with a stubborn neck, without blushing at all, even if you don't need it, you have to give me a no, but also a little heart, really, not filial. When Dong Fang Sheng heard this, he was immediately happy, and said with a big laugh, it's okay to be unfilial, you won't covet a girl in the future. This old guy has always put Chum Wu's filial piety on his lips, and he still wants him to be his apprentice's wife. Now it's fine, and I don't need to say it anymore. Han Tao suddenly choked, only to feel like eating dead flies at this moment. Die old man, did you specifically get me right? In the end, Han Tao could only scream angrily. Dong Fang Sheng stroked his beard and said with a smile on his mouth, Why did you do it right? Hey! What did you do right with me? Han Tao coldly snorted, suddenly his eyes rolled, and a smile appeared on his face, Hey, you still laugh at me, your apprentice didn't even want to make a talisman for you. Don't you want to expel this unfilial disciple out of the house? Dong Fang Sheng squinted a pair of shrewd eyes and sneered, Amulet? What is that? In my eyes, every medicine that the girl gave me is better than that amulet. Indeed. As far as Dong Fang Sheng is concerned, the amulet made by Chum Wu is in the way and useless, so it is better to give him those old Chinese medicinal materials. Han Tao was immediately flushed with anger at Dong Fang Sheng's words. Seeing this posture, Chum Wu hurriedly stood up and smiled and persuaded, Master, Master Han, stop quarreling. When I finish my studies, I will give each of you an amulet. What do you think about me? Isn't this just learning? Isn't there something so fast? And, even if you two elders take the amulet I made now, it is useless. It's better to wait for me to have the ability and give you a useful amulet. When Han Tao heard this, he grunted his nose in satisfaction, glared at Dong Fang Sheng, turned his head and smiled and said to Chum Wu, the girl is really the most considerate old man to me. Okay, wait for you to make it later. If the amulet is strong enough, give it again. If you want to give it, give the best one, even more than your master's. The low air pressure affected Chum Wu, causing her to frown slightly. How could this man feel like being abandoned? After thinking about it, Chum Wu stretched out her hand, grabbed his big hand, raised her head and looked at Xiao Junyan with her pretty face, wait for a while, how about making one for you? The thought of her returning the stone the size of a fist turned out to be a piece of mutton fat and white jade, which made her happy for a while. Hearing Chum Wu's words, the low breath of Xiao Junyan's body was gradually taken away by him, and a star-like bright light flashed through his pitch black eyes, his voice was low, but he was a little bit happy, really? Just don't believe it. Chum Wu was directly proud of her, turned her head, and said displeasedly. Fearing that Chum Wu was really going to be angry, Xiao Junyan quickly lowered his head, bent over to take Chum Wu into his arms, and uttered a word, Believe. Okay, let me go quickly, you are not hot, I am still too hot. Chum Wu felt a little embarrassed, and was afraid that the master and the others would come in and be seen, and hurriedly pushed Xiao Junyan. Although Xiao Junyan was reluctant to give up, he also knew that the weather was hot and was afraid that it would reach her, so he let go of his hands, his eyes were gentle and the corners of his mouth looked at her with a smile. Chum Wu raised her head and saw Xiao Junyan's lips with a slight smile, and she felt sorry for him. How could this man be so easily satisfied? I don't know if someone knows that she is studying hard now, just to refine her peace talisman, I don't know what kind of mood it will be. Well, you go to accompany the master first. I'm going back to read the book. Chum Wu held the book and ordered to Xiao Junyan. 
Xiao Junyan shook his head, be with you. It's up to you. Chu Muihu didn't matter, she had long been accustomed to the life of someone reading a book by the side. Xiao Junyan looked at the back of Chu Muihu gladly leaving, lowered his eyes, a touch of tenderness flashed under his eyes, and followed her into her room. When she reached the table, she helped her pour a glass of water and put it on the desk. Then she moved a stool and sat at the table looking down at Chum Weedle looking at the book. Here is the warmth and affection, but in the office of the chairman of the business building of the Kishin Group, there was a burst of angry cursing, idiot. Useless thing. As a subordinate, Shi Yurong lowered his head, not daring to look up at the angry Ziming, and his heart trembled. He also didn't expect that Ling Hong would find a security guard with such a good skill and a large group of small gangsters together besieges not the opponent of the three of them. Ziming flushed with anger, panting heavily, staring at Shi Yurong, and questioned angrily, You can't be a small bastard, don't you go to the government department, as long as they go out, can the medicinal restaurant be open? Hearing Ziming's words, Shi Yurong seemed to have been reminded. There was a flash in his mind, and he comforted Ziming, Mr. Zai. I'll go down and make arrangements right away. As Xi Ming said, as long as people in those departments are asking for trouble, even if there are three powerful bodyguards, they can't stop them. They are not allowed to open a medicated diet restaurant, and what little gangsters are needed, this medicated diet formula must not be delivered to his hand obediently. Boom! Xi Ming waved directly to let Shi Yurong leave. Shi Yurong wiped the cold sweat coming out of his forehead, and quickly turned around and left the office, as if he was about to burn his butt, for fear that he would be severely criticized by Xi Ming for staying here. After studying in the mountains for two days, Chu Muiu left home in Xiao Junyan's car on Sunday afternoon. However, before going home, he still needs to go to the medicinal restaurant to listen to Ling Hong's report. Xiao Junyan followed Chu Muiu to the door. When he saw the three security guards Zhang Kong standing at the door, his eyes narrowed slightly. Seeing Chu Muihu's figure, Zhang Kong quickly greeted respectfully, Miss Chu. Chu Muihu nodded and said, Let Brother Ling let him find me in the office. Okay. Zhang Kong nodded, but when he raised his head, he met Xiao Junyan's dark and indifferent eyes, and immediately shivered, subconsciously all over his body. Li Tao and Han Gang saw Zhang Kong's actions and also looked at Xiao Junyan, and they all immediately adopted a defensive posture. Seeing the actions of the three of Zhang Kong, she turned her head and looked at Xiao Junyan again. Chu Muihu smiled and said, No, he is my brother. Naturally, Chu Muihu did not forget to introduce Xiao Junyan, this is the security guard introduced by Ye Tian Ming. As soon as Xiao Junyan heard Chu Muihu's words, the murderous aura and cold aura on his body converged. Feeling the disappearance of the momentum, the three Zhang Kong couldn't help exhaling a breath of air and glanced at Xiao Junyan with awe. They felt the breath of death from his body just now, making them completely frozen and unable to move. Chum Wu took Xiao Junyan to the office. Xiao Junyan sat down and looked at Chum Wu with a questioning look in his eyes. Before there was a little thing, so I asked Ye Tian Ming to find a few security guards. Now it has been resolved. Chu Muihu naturally understood Xiao Junyan's eyes and explained and comforted him with a smile. Xiao Junyan frowned and his voice was a little cold, Why don't you look for me? In the tone, it seemed to be full of jealousy and unhappiness. Chu Muihu suddenly chuckled, and slapped a flattery, Using you, some are overkill. However, Xiao Junyan didn't care, and said, I can help you. The implication of this sentence is that there is no big or small, as long as it is her business, he will do his best to help her. Chu Muihu smiled helplessly, sat next to Xiao Junyan, and naturally hugged his arm, I told you about this. Didn't you look for Ye Tian Ming, I don't want to trouble you anymore, too. I don't want you to worry about my business. Xiao Junyan lowered his head and looked down, and said in silence for a moment, It's not the same. If you have something in the future, find me. You are not in trouble. 
Chu Muya was suddenly dumbfounded by Xiao Junyan's words. What could be different? Wouldn't you make Ye Tianming jealous for not looking for him first? Well, well, I will look for you in the future. Chu Muyu smiled, only comforting a certain big jealousy. Xiao Junyan nodded lightly, grasping Chu Muyu's little hand around her arm, I protect you. Chu Muyu smiled at Xiao Junyan and nodded, I will let you protect for a lifetime. When the voice fell, Chu Muyu clearly felt Xiao Junyan's body tremble slightly, his breath was stagnant, and his eyes fixedly stared at Chu Muyu's reddish face. Crack! The sound of the doorknob being twisted came into the ears of Chu Muyu and Xiao Junyan. In an instant, the heavy aura on Xiao Junyan's body disappeared. The door of the office was opened, Ling Hong walked in from outside and saw that Chu Muyu and Xiao Junyan were both in the office, with a smile on his face, Miss Chu, you are here. Chu Muyu nodded. At this moment, she had already pulled out her arm around Xiao Junyan, pointed to the side of the sofa and said, Sit down first. Ling Hong sat on the sofa, handed a report in his hand to Chu Muyu, and said, This is the income of the past few days, because the gangsters are not as popular as before. Xiao Junyan's breath became a little cold when he heard Ling Hong's three words, Xiao Fu Hun. Chu Muyu nodded gently but the expression on her face was not worried at all. He turned to the data above and said, This is what I expected. When the gangsters come to make trouble, they will definitely scare many customers. They worry that they will be targeted by the gangsters next time, so they dare not come. However, this is only temporary. After waiting for the situation to calm down, it will definitely recover. Chu Muyo put the notebook on the coffee table leaned against the sofa, and said, Although Zhang Kong and the others are here now, we can't take it lightly. This matter is not over yet. I also know that Kishin Group covets our formula. If you don't get it, you will never stop. Ling Hong nodded and said with a serious expression on his face. He still knows something about this kind of thing. Although everyone knows what Kais Hung Group has done, there is no conclusive evidence. Moreover, the group is too big and the government has some people. That's why. It will turn big things into small things. The current medicinal restaurant is not qualified to work directly with Kishin Group. Therefore, Ling Hong knows that he must be fully on guard against Kishin Group's various small methods and small troubles. It's the Kishin Group that is causing trouble. Xiao Junyan said suddenly, his voice was cold, letting people hear it and his body was air-cooled unconsciously. Ling Hong immediately looked at Xiao Junyan with horror, his body was shaking, and he felt that the temperature in the room had dropped dozens of degrees. When Chu Muyu heard Xiao Junyan's words, she smiled bitterly, sat up straight, pulled Xiao Junyan's sleeves, and said comfortingly, It's okay, I can handle this matter. They're making trouble for you. Xiao Junyan turned his head and looked at Chu Muyu, with hidden anger and killing intent in his voice. Chu Muyu smiled softly and asked curiously, then what are you going to do? Kill them. A cold light flashed in Xiao Junyan's eyes. Perhaps, for Xiao Junyan, a national weapon, a soldier who crawled out of a sea of blood from the dead mountain, killing is the best way to solve the problem. When people die, they won't come to trouble Chu Muyu anymore. Chu Muyu listened but was anxious, gave Xiao Junyan a fierce look, and threatened, You can't kill people because of me in the future, do you understand it? Xiao Junyan lowered his eyes, staring directly at Chu Muyu's angry black eyes, They bullied you. I know, but I don't want you to be burdened with murder because of me. Chu Muyu nodded, holding Xiao Junyan's big hand with her small hand. Xiao Junyan said decisively and even more firmly, I don't care. You don't care that I care, don't you be afraid, the retribution is coming, and the retribution will be on the person you love the most. Chu Muyu bluffed him, threatened him, and let him know the consequences. Chu Muyu turned her head and smiled and said to Xiao Junyan, Brother Xiao, let's go down and take a look. Rather than doing it herself, or letting Xiao Junyan do it, she prefers to be on the side, 
watching a play with a cup of tea. Xiao Junyan had never violated Chu Muihu's request. This time he nodded out of proportion and walked downstairs with Chu Muihu. When I walked to the stairs, I heard the noises from below. The theater was not allowed to be seen by others. Xiao Junyan and Chu Muihu stood in the corner, watching the lively scene below. A woman with yellow wavy curly hair, in her twenties and thirties, dressed in an expensive dress, Zhang stared angrily at the group of men in front of her, pointing at them with her fingers, What are you doing here? This lady, we are here for office work. The fire and sanitation of this medicated restaurant is not good enough. We just want them to close the door for rectification. The headed middle-aged man said arrogantly to the woman. The woman sneered, as if she had seen through their purpose, and said mockingly, Don't think I don't know the purpose of your coming here. What kind of sanitation and firefighting is not enough? How long has this medicated restaurant been open? The second check. This lady, this is our business, you don't need to be nosy, right? If you are a customer here, please leave first, and come back when the medicinal restaurant reopens. The middle-aged man did not. Give a good look. Okay, very good. The woman looked at the middle-aged man in front of her with a sneer, I didn't expect that the industrial and commercial bureau will have a bunch of wastes like you, a bunch of wastes who only do bad things but not do good things. Hearing the woman's insults, the middle-aged man's face suddenly became very ugly, staring at the woman, what are you talking about? What did I say? That's what you heard. Yang Qingning raised her chin arrogantly and said mockingly. You. The middle-aged man pointed at the woman with trembling fingers. Ling Hong saw the posture of the two parties arguing and quarreling, and quickly stood up and persuaded, two of you, don't quarrel, everyone is more expensive. Then he said to the woman with a very sorry look, this lady, I'm really sorry, I think you should leave first, next time, our medicated restaurant will definitely compensate you next time. The woman didn't listen to Ling Hong's persuasion and waved her hand. Tell you, you interrupted my old lady's party, and today I am in charge of Yang Ching Ning. Yang Ching Ning pointed to the medicinal restaurant arrogantly, and said. Who do you think you are? Pull out first, and if you don't leave, you will be arrested for obstructing official duties. The middle-aged man in the lead did not speak, and the small staff he brought with him began to threaten with dissatisfaction. After hearing Yang King Ning's name, the middle-aged man frowned tightly. He always felt that he had heard it somewhere, and he didn't speak for a while. Ha! Huh. Yang Ching Ning laughed, glanced at the arrogant little staff, lowered her head, took out the small bag she was carrying, took out a mobile phone from it, and pressed a few numbers on it. A cold glance at the people in front of them, hey! Director Yang Fan Yang. Hearing this name, Chu Muyu, who was standing in the dark, couldn't help falling black lines on her forehead. Chu Muyu felt suspicious and murmured to herself, didn't this woman say that she is the daughter of the director of the Industrial and Commercial Bureau? Why do you call her father that way? And the middle-aged man and the staff members were taken aback when they heard Yang King Ning's words one by one, and then there were expressions of horror on their faces. Especially the middle-aged man who led the team, the look on his face was even more horrified. He looked at Yang King Ning's face, and you were absolutely ugly to see the extreme. I didn't remember just now, who was the woman in front of him, but now he finally remembered. Isn't this woman the precious daughter of her immediate boss, Director Yang Fan? Although I have never seen Yang Ching Ning, I have heard of her rumors. He has heard that Director Yang not only loves his own daughter, but is also very afraid of her. As for why he is afraid, no one knows, but this is the rumor he heard. Now listening to Yang Qing Ning's speaking attitude, a layer of cold sweat appeared on the middle-aged man's face. Director Yang did you ask me to trouble you? Yang Ching Ning questioned her father for the sake of face. Yang Fan on the other side of the phone was taken aback, with a puzzled and depressed expression on his old face, waved to his secretary, and quickly asked, My eldest lady, what happened? 
You make it clear, I'm looking for you. Trouble, how dare I trouble you? Yang Qingning snorted coldly, and glanced at the staff in front of him dissatisfiedly, the people below you have all come to the place where I was having a party, and they have to kick me out. I finally booked this box. You unexpectedly. Isn't this causing me trouble? Where will you put my face in the future? What? There is such a thing? I don't know. Yang Fan immediately became angry when he heard it. Grandma's, who is the who troubled his eldest lady, now he has all the charges on his head. Yang Fan gritted his teeth and asked Yang Ching Ning, which is it, you tell me his name. Yang Ching Ning turned to look at the middle-aged man coldly, and asked, what's your name? Hearing Yang Ching Ning's question, the middle-aged man immediately felt that he was about to face a catastrophe. He quickly showed a sad smile and apologized, Yang, Ms. Yang, I really don't know that you are eating here, misunderstanding, misunderstanding. This is absolutely a misunderstanding, we absolutely have no intention of driving you away. A group of staff members who followed behind saw that the middle-aged man leading the team showed such an attitude, and all of them showed shock and horror on their faces. Unconsciously, they felt a thud in their hearts, and an unknown premonition rose from the bottom of their hearts. What kind of status can a woman who has to treat her own boss like this and who has to make apocalypse like this? What kind of person can it be? They are pretty sure that when they go back this time, their iron rice bowl will definitely be lost. Yang Qingning didn't listen to the middle-aged man's apology and explanation. She was also furious and cold at the moment, and asked coldly, I'm asking you, what is your name? Miss Yang, I was wrong, I was wrong, I apologize, please raise your hand. I have an old man and a young man, so I can't lose this job. The middle-aged man didn't dare to say his name after being beaten to death. He was about to kneel down, a big man, his tears burst into tears, where was the arrogant one just now? Chu Muyu touched her nose, watching this scene, it was really the same as watching the plot in TV, she didn't even know how to change her lines. And Yang Qingning's performance was just like the plot shown on the TV, without any mercy at all and directly ignored the middle-aged man's request. Director Yang Dei, your subordinates didn't give you face and didn't say their names. It seems that your orders are useless at all. This was so good that Ling Hong's mouth twitched at the side of the ears, and he muttered in his heart. It wasn't that it was not good for him to save face, but he didn't want to say his name because he was afraid that he would be finished when he said his name. After Yang Fan heard Yang King Ning's words, the muscles on his face trembled and gritted his teeth and said, Forget it, let them wait over there. I will send someone over and ask for trouble at the shop. It must be a bribe. How could Yang Fan, the secretary of the Bureau for Industry and Commerce, fail to understand this kind of thing? This shop has only been open for two or three months, and it has already been clamoring for various fire and sanitation failures. How did the group of people check it? Then you immediately, I don't want my party to be messed up by you. Yang Qingning reminded her without giving any face. Immediately. After speaking, Yang Fan hung up the phone. Ling Hong was amazed, whether he raised a daughter or raised a Lafayette. Arrogant enough. However, Ling Hong would not care about the situation of other people's homes, nor would he deliberately inquire about it. After all, it was someone else's business, and now he only needs to rely on Yang Ching Ning to send these people away. There was a smile on Chu Muyu's mouth. I believe that Director Yang has already hated those who came to ask for trouble. It is estimated that even the Kishin group will have a hard time. Yang Ching Ning turned her head and said to Ling Hong, Boss Ling, your store is still open, as long as I'm here, you don't have to worry about those coming to you. Ling Hong showed a gentle smile on his face, and said gratefully, Thank you, Miss Yang, but this time caused you trouble. I'm really sorry. After a while, our medicated restaurant will launch a new menu for members. We will notify you as soon as possible. Let you enjoy yourself first, 
and look more beautiful. Women, what do you care about most? It's not just her appearance, this Yang Qingning is no exception. When Yang Qingning heard this, her eyes lit up, and a smile appeared at the corner of her mouth, okay, then I am waiting for the new product from your medicinal restaurant. Such things are very good, I like it very much, and I will definitely not let it in the future. I am disappointed. Miss Yang, don't worry, absolutely not. Ling Hong smiled and comforted. Yang Qingning turned her head, the smile on her face disappeared, and she turned into anger, and said, Boss Ling, you can let these people control them. Wait for Director Yang to send someone to bring them back. Okay. Ling Hong hurriedly bowed and said to Yang Qingning, Miss Yang, you can go back to the box now. I'll take care of it here. Yang Qingning nodded in satisfaction, turned around, and walked towards her room with high heels. A satisfied smile appeared at the corner of Ling Hong's mouth. He turned to look at Chum Wu and Xiao Junyan in the dark, and made an okay gesture to them, indicating that everything was resolved. Sometimes, this connection can also be used in this way. Seeing that the matter had been resolved, Chum Wu also took Xiao Junyan away comfortably. Shi Yurong is very sad, and really feels very sad. The person I was looking for unexpectedly ran into the daughter of the immediate boss who was eating in the medicinal restaurant, and everything about him was in vain. Under such circumstances, Chum Wu didn't let Ye Tian Ming or Xiao Junyan use their power, so that Xi Ming didn't know who was standing behind the medicated restaurant. After provoking director Yang De, he naturally didn't show Kishan Group a good face for a while, and caused some trouble to the lookout hotel opposite. However, he was also concerned about Kishan Group's status and financial resources in Xingxi. Yang Fan still knew how to score. He only troubled the lookout hotel instead of other restaurants under the Kishan Group. For the time being, Chum Wu's medicinal restaurant had a peaceful life for a while, and the business of the store became more and more popular. This fire is not without reason. Since Chum Wu had the space in the Jukai Stone, he planted some Chinese medicinal materials in the medicinal field. These Chinese medicinal materials are ground into powder and made into desserts according to the records in some books in the library. Many secret recipes were passed down from the palace, and Lu Bowen was still a member of the Ming dynasty at the time. It was easy to obtain such secret recipes. The special event for members held at Christmas has made everyone a real treat, and even the female diners are praised. After returning, they can feel that their faces are much softer and smoother, and even dark circles on the next day. It's also gone directly. In an instant, the beauty desserts of the medicated food restaurant were popular among the upper-class ladies, and there was an endless stream of women coming to the medicated food restaurant. The special beauty products that only Silver Card members can own make everyone want to buy them. However, at this time, they can't buy them no matter how much money they spend. Ling Hong's joyful cry came from the phone, it's so crazy, so crazy, those women just don't be too crazy, don't treat money as money, this is about to bid. Chum Wu's mouth showed a calculated smile, and said, that's it, you don't need to pay too much attention to them. Continue to sell only 50 bowls per meal per day and tell them that the processing of this raw material is very cumbersome can only supply so much on a regular basis every day. Hey, even if they don't believe it, there's no way. Ling Hong smiled triumphantly and said, However, this consumption is also quite large, Miss Chu, the package of materials you sent is almost used. Send some more. Tomorrow noon. Chu Muiho cast her eyes down on the white jade on the table, and said, If there is nothing else to do, I will hang up first. Good night, Miss Chu. It was the end of the year in a blink of an eye, and New Year's Day was approaching, which meant that Xiao Junyan's birthday was approaching. Chu Muiho was sitting at the table, pinching the carving knife with her fingers, and carefully carving on the white jade, planning to carve the thing overnight and give it to Xiao Junyan tomorrow. The first piece of jade that was drawn out had already been used as a test product by Chu Muiho, and it was discarded after training. 
This mutton white jade carving was made by Chumwea very carefully. After several days of carving, the white jade has shown his lifelike appearance, a burning flame. There is fire in Xiao Junyan's name, and Chumwea also feels that his character is very lonely and does not talk to others, so he wants to use this flame jade pendant to soften his edges and corners. Early in the morning on New Year's Day, Chu's Haiming went to work first, saying that it was a good night to spend New Year's Day in the mountains. Chumwea was busy at home, preparing to make a cake for Chu's Haiming. There was no oven at home, so Chumwea bought one, put it in the space, waited to use it, and then took it out. At this moment, Xiao Junyan, who was cultivating cross-legged in the villa room, naturally didn't know, and the only thing he knew was Ye Tian Ming. Although Chum Wehu didn't talk to Ye Tian Ming, Ye Tian Ming was aware of the last time she asked about her birthday. Ye Tian Ming didn't go to work early this morning. He opened the door and entered Xiao Junyan's room with a treacherous smile, Hey, boss, why didn't you pick up the younger sister up the mountain? Xiao Junyan sat cross-legged on the bed without opening his eyes or answering Ye Tian Ming's question. Already accustomed to someone's indifference, Ye Tian Ming sat on the sofa and stood up on one foot, his body trembling, Boss, today seems to be your birthday, right? I don't plan to take the younger sister to the street. Do you want to celebrate? Sure enough, when he heard these words, Xiao Junyan opened his eyes, a bright light flashed in his dark and shining eyes like black gems, turned his head, and swept towards Ye Tian Ming coldly. Ye Tian Ming was stopped by Xiao Junyan's eyes full of killing and trembling, and coughed, Boss, don't look at me like this. You should go to see Junior sister, this birthday is a rare opportunity. A dim look flashed in Xiao Junyan's eyes, and his voice was a little cold, Mu Yu asked me to pick her up the mountain at 10 o'clock. Ye Tian Ming's eyes lit up when he heard it. Sure enough, this girl was thinking about something, but he would never say, is it? I'm fine today, so let's go together. I'll go with you. Xiao Junyan remained silent and closed his eyes. But, boss, have you told the younger sister about your birthday, don't tell me, you haven't told her yet. Yet Yan Ming asked Xiao Junyan in a somewhat ridiculous tone. Xiao Junyan closed his eyes and did not speak. This attitude seemed to indicate that he had indeed never said to Chum Wu. Boss, you can't chase women like this. Yet Yan Ming scratched his head frantically, women are romantic, and they need men to chase them. You do nothing. Be careful, the younger sister thinks it's you. A man without romantic cells, don't want you. He really doubted how Xiao Junyan's cold personality could catch up with Chum Wu's cunning little fox girl. What Yet Yan Ming didn't know was that since she lived a lifetime, Chum Wea was no longer the kind of ignorant girl about love, and wanted to have a vigorous love. Chum Wea now only thinks of her other half, who can take her to heart, know how to love her and protect her, and turn everything into practical actions. It is not the kind of man who can only speak witty words. Xiao Junyan opened his eyes suddenly, and a shivering sharp light flashed, his voice was firm and full of trust, she won't. Uh. Yet Yan Ming suddenly felt that someone had pinched his neck and couldn't say anything. Well, what you say? Yet Yan Ming shrugged his shoulders, looking indifferent, but he admired him, the boss is the boss. Chum Wu, who was busy at home, wiped the sweat from his forehead, and a bright smile appeared on his face. Looking at the cake on the table, he was also very happy. Thinking that I have been a little bit cold towards Xiao Junyan in the past few days, Let's use this cake to compensate someone. Chum Wea put the candle on the table, and the doorbell suddenly rang. Come. Chum Wea wiped the sweat from his forehead and hurried to open the door of the room. Outside the door, Xiao Junyan and Ye Tian Ming stood together at the door. Brother Xiao, you are here. Chum Wea only saw Xiao Junyan, with a smile on his face. Ye Tian Ming looked at Xiao Junyan and Chum Wea again the corners of his mouth twitched, and he raised his hand to express his sense of existence, little junior sister, I am here too. 
Chu Muyu turned her head and saw that Ye Tian Ming was here as well, and the smile on her face suddenly disappeared. This guy really didn't know how to avoid suspicion. Knowing that today is Xiao Junyan's birthday, I came here to be a third party, as a light bulb. Seeing the sweat on Chu Muyu's face and neck, Xiao Junyan took out the handkerchief from his pocket, and stood at the door to help her wipe the sweat. His tone was a bit distressed and gentle, sweating so much, tired. Let me help you. With this move, Ye Tianming's mouth twitched at the side, should you be so spoiled? Chu Muyu smiled, I haven't done anything. Don't worry. I'll help you. Xiao Junyan said, holding Chu Muyu's hand. You really can't help with this matter. Chu Muyu blinked at Xiao Junyan, then turned his head, handed a piece of cloth to Ye Tian Ming, and directly ordered, Blind senior brother Xiao's eyes. Ye Tian Ming was taken aback, blinked his eyes, pointed his finger at himself, Let me come. Chu Muyu's face sank, and said dissatisfied, Since you are here, you have to listen to me. Don't you want to? No, no. Of course not. Yet Yen Ming immediately shook his head like a rattle, and immediately turned out that the cloth strip Chum Wu handed over, smiled and said to Xiao Junyan, Boss, I'm sorry, it was the younger sister who asked me coming. Xiao Junyan was still a little confused, did not understand what Chum Wu meant by doing this, lowered his head and looked directly at Chum Wu with his eyes. Chum Wu glared at Xiao Junyan and bluffed, Be good, don't move. Xiao Junyan nodded and turned to look at Ye Tian Ming, which meant to say, come on. Ye Tian Ming was very excited and said, boss, come, I will blindfold you. Chu Muyo quickly turned around, and now put the candle on the cake, lit the candle, and said to Ye Tian Ming outside, you can come in. Ye Tian Ming walked in with Xiao Junyan. As soon as he walked in, he saw the food on the table and the cake in the middle. He narrowed his eyes and smiled at the corner of his mouth. He knew that the boss never celebrated his birthday since he entered the barracks since he was a child, and he probably would have forgotten it himself. Chu Muyo looked at Xiao Junyan with her arms on her back and smiled, Brother Xiao, you can take it down. Xiao Junyan pulled down the cloth strips on his face, and the moment he opened his eyes, he saw the cake on the table and his pupil shrank. In an instant, the upright body trembled slightly, and suddenly turned to look at the girl beside her. The girl raised a small face with fine sweat, and looked at him with a smile, her clear and dark eyes filled with expectation and joy. For the first time, Xiao Junyan's cold face showed a complex expression, moved, unbelievable, joyful, and gentle, and his chest was constantly rising and falling. He raised his hand, the hand that had not shaken the gun trembling slightly at this moment. The internet speed is a bit slow. I only post this point until now. The author went to lunch first, grumbled with hunger, and continued to post in the afternoon. How about? Do you like it? Chu Muyu asked Xiao Junyan with a smile, I am also making a cake for the first time. I don't know if you like it. However, before Chu Muyu could finish her words, Xiao Junyan's solid and powerful arms took her into her arms and hugged her tightly. Chu Muyo was slammed into a hot and strong chest, his head was a little dizzy, but also a little stunned, and her eyes blinked. Yet Yen Ming directly sat down on the sofa, took out a small video recorder, and shot a video at the embracing two, a treacherous smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Bang 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 Xiao Junyan's sonorous heartbeat was transmitted to Chu Muyo's ears making her red face that was originally red from the heat even more red. Subconsciously, Chu Muyo wanted to reach out and push away the man in front of him. However, Xiao Junyan hugged her even tighter. Chu Muyo, who was being held, was a little startled, her lotus arm wrapped around Xiao Junyan's back unconsciously, and her little hand patted him on the back, Brother Xiao. Xiao Junyan lowered his head and buried his head in Chu Muyo's neck. The sweaty hair stuck to the slender neck. It didn't have the softness of the past, but it still made him nostalgic and unwilling to leave. Chu Muyu didn't know how long she had been held by Xiao Junyan, 
and even forgot that there was another Yet Yanming watching a good show. Although it is New Year's Day and winter has entered, it is still a bit hot when two people hug each other. Chu Muyo patted Xiao Junyan on the back and reminded, Brother Xiao, the food is going to be cold. Xiao Junyan's hands tightened subconsciously again, unwilling to let her go. Coincidentally, an untimely laugh came, puff. No need to think about it, Chu Muyo knew who laughed at this voice. Yet Yen Ming covered his mouth, blinked his eyes, his face was full of innocence, he didn't mean it, he was the boss of the family, it was so fun and interesting. When Xiao Junyan heard this laughter, he gradually let go of Chu Muyu reluctantly, and looked down at her. Chu Muyu didn't look at Xiao Junyan first, but turned her head and stared at Yet Yan Ming fiercely, with threatening expressions in her eyes. Hee hee, when I'm not here, treat me as heir. Yet Yan Ming hurriedly shrank his neck and hid behind the sofa. Go, I still have a gift for you. Chu Muyu didn't want to be laughed at by Yet Yan Ming anymore, turned around, took Xiao Junyan's arm and walked towards her room. Xiao Junyan let Chu Muyu pull herself to her room, and when she entered the room, Chu Muyu slammed the door shut. Chu Muyu first walked to the head of his bed, took out the gift box that had been packed, only the palm of the hand, and handed it to Xiao Junyan with a smile, Happy birthday, a gift for you. Xiao Junyan looked at Chu Muyu, then lowered her head, looking at the small gift box in her hand with a cute pink bow tied on it. Take a look, do you like it? Chu Muyu reminded Xiao Junyan with a smile, but she was a little worried, wondering if he liked the gift she gave. Outside the room, Yet Yan Ming, who was sitting on the sofa in the lobby, turned over lightly, jumped off the sofa, and walked carefully toward Chu Muyu's room. However, at this time, Yet Yan Ming looked like a thief, standing on tiptoes, holding his breath and watching the surroundings. Chu Muyu raised her head and looked at Xiao Junyan with pity in her eyes. Xiao Junyan grabbed her arm and hugged her tightly in his arms. His voice was also a little low, as if suppressing the power that was about to burst out of his body. Sorry, I didn't control it. He didn't expect that his gaff would scare her and make her fear herself so much. After receiving Xiao Junyan's comfort, Chu Muyu let go of his guard, leaning against his chest, gasping for breath. Xiao Junyan stroked her tenderly with his big hands, stroking her soft hair, his eyes petting. Regaining his strength, Chu Muyu stood up straight and pushed Xiao Junyan away with both hands, Xiao, senior brother Xiao, let me go. Xiao Junyan let go of Chu Muyu slightly, and looked down at her, with a little worry in his eyes, I'm sorry, don't hate me. The words passed into Chu Muyu's ears, and the hand pushing Xiao Junyan's chest trembled slightly, raised his eyes, and met his dark star eyes, which were somewhat worried and aggrieved, and the fingers slapped. Chu Muyu lowered her head, not daring to look at Xiao Junyan, her voice was a little weak, I don't hate you, I just want to ask you, amulet, do you like it? Xiao Junyan nodded without hesitation, his thin red lips rose slightly, I like it. Fortunately, she didn't dislike him or hate him. He originally thought that it would take a long time for Chu Muyu to send him off. Have you been surprised? Chu Muyu raised her eyes, looked at Xiao Junyan, smiled and asked. Yet. Yeah. Xiao Junyan nodded slightly, and was indeed pleasantly surprised, and his arms around Chu Muyu tightened unconsciously. Chu Muyu lowered his head, drew circles on Xiao Junyan's chest, and muttered in his mouth, the first time we met, you were seriously injured. I don't know if you will do those dangerous things in the future, so, I hope to give you this amulet now to protect your safety. Every time you see this, it means that I will be by your side. Understand? Yet. Yeah. Xiao Junyan raised his hand, spread it out in front of Chu Muyu, looked at the jade pendant lying on his palm, and clenched it tightly, I will protect him. Puff. Chu Muyu laughed and looked up at Xiao Junyan, I asked him to protect you, not you to protect him. Bring me to see. Xiao Junyan looked around, then looked at Chu Muyu, and handed it to her, you help me. Chu Muyu raised the corner of her lips, 
pinched the red rope, stood on her toes, and placed the talisman jade pendant on Xiao Junyan's neck. There are the charms I recently learned, but the current level of cultivation is still too shallow, I am afraid that the effect is not great. Although the master can do it, there is no way to prove that the spells from the stone to the final making are all my own hands. Doing it doesn't represent my intentions. You can't dislike my ugly carving the first time. Chu Muyu's eyes were a little red, she looked up at Xiao Junyan, and finally her tone was a little heavy. It's not ugly, it looks good. I like it. Xiao Junyan shook his head, Lang Jun's face was filled with a gentle smile. The two of the two in the room hugged Ye Tianming's eyes and chin outside the room. Who said that the boss is cold and affectionate, he didn't meet someone he really liked. Take a look, see that nowadays most of the old people can talk about love, every sentence. Sure enough, people cannot be underestimated. The boss who used to treat women as troubles and hated women will be so nauseous one day. A sly smile appeared at the corner of Ye Tianming's mouth and he touched his chin. However, it seems that the boss still doesn't know when Junior Sister will start preparing gifts for him. He also heard that Chum Wiyu seemed to have carved this jade pendant for the first time, and it was a long time to prepare for the event. When Chum Wiyu took out this jade pendant, Xiao Junyan was so crazy, he didn't know what it would look like when he knew that someone had prepared for him for a long time. Xiao Junyan lowered his head, held Chum Wiyu's slender hand, and frowned slightly as he watched the slight scar on the back of her hand. A few days ago, Chum Wiyu still had a band-aid on the back of her hand. She said that she accidentally injured it, but now she thinks it is clear. Don't do this kind of thing in the future. Xiao Junyan softly said distressedly, gently stroking some shallow scars with his fingers. Chum Wiyu raised her head, smiled, and said indifferently, I will learn it in the future. This is the content that must be learned, it's okay. Xiao Junyan squeezed Chum Wiyu's slender hand tightly, and said, I will help you. But so, you won't have the jade pendant that I personally made for you in the future, don't you want it? Chum Wiyu raised her eyebrows, with a nasty smile on her mouth, teasing Xiao Junyan. Xiao Junyan's brows were slightly frowned like a knife, and he looked down at the jade pendant, as if he was very entangled, want it or not. Seeing Xiao Junyan frowning, Chu Muyu burst into laughter, this man. No, there is this, enough. Xiao Junyan grabbed the jade pendant on his chest and said firmly. Although he really wanted something that Chu Muyu made by himself, he would rather not let her trade it for the price of injury. Chu Muyu smiled at the corners of her lips, knowing that he didn't want her to be injured again, and gave his chest a light hammer, the food is probably going to be cold, let's eat it first. Xiao Junyan pursed his lips in silence, still holding her slender waist tightly with his hands. Chu Muyu lowered his head and smiled helplessly, looked up at someone, and said dissatisfiedly, do you want to see that the results of my busy morning are wasted? Sure enough, hearing Chu Muyu's words, even if Xiao Junyan was reluctant to give up, he could only let her go. Good. Xiao Junyan nodded. But yet Yanming outside discovered that something was not going well, knowing that Xiao Junyan and Chu Muyu were about to come out, they drove off, swish, directly opened the door of the house, and rushed out. Chu Muyu and Xiao Junyan walked out of the room, and they saw that yet Yanming was no longer there, and the door of the room was also touched at this time and closed. This bastard, it's really fast to escape. Chum Wiyu just stood blankly for a moment, then stomped her feet in dissatisfaction. Don't think she hadn't noticed the thing that Yet Yan Ming was holding, she must have recorded their two getting along. Although Chum Wiyu didn't know yet, Yet Yan Ming had videotaped the incident of them entering the room, but Yet Yan Ming couldn't just let Yet Yan Ming take a photo. Xiao Junyan looked at Chum Wiyu in anger and anger, with a smile at the corners of her mouth patted her back gently, and comforted her, it's okay, I'll take care of it. Chum Wiyu cast a blank look at Xiao Junyan, it's all you. Yes, my fault. Xiao Junyan nodded and led Chum Wiyu to the table, don't be angry, I'll avenge you. 
Chum Wu nodded, Yes, you must take revenge, you can't just let that go. Chum Wu and Xiao Junyan came to the mountain together and saw Han Tao and Dong Fang Shang playing chess. However, this time, when Han Tao saw Chum Wu's first glance, his eyes lit up, and he stood up from the stone bench differently from usual, and walked to Chum Wu's face with a smile on his face. A kindness. Facing Han Tao's sudden behavior, Chum Wu was a little shocked, and subconsciously hid behind Xiao Junyan. Xiao Junyan also stood in front of Chum Wu, blocking her petite body behind her. Han Tao raised his head and stared at Xiao Junyan, Smelly boy, what are you doing? Get out of here. Mine. Don't see it. Xiao Junyan said to Han Tao, guarding Chum Wu behind him firmly. Han Tao choked, the expression on his old face kept changing, his fingers tremblingly pointed at Xiao Junyan, You, you, you stinky boy, if you have a wife, you don't need your own master, don't you? Chum Wu suddenly blushed on her cheeks, and walked out from behind Xiao Junyan dissatisfied, Uncle Han, what are you talking about? What daughter-in-law? Sooner or later, what are you doing so shy? Han Tao hummed his nose, raised his head, pointed to the jade pendant hanging on Xiao Junyan's neck, and said, Look, this thing is so beautifully carved. The girl's hands are really beautiful. What a coincidence. Well, it's great as a token of love. Gah. Chum Wu was a little confused and shocked by the words a token of love said by Han Tao. How did this old man know that this jade pendant was made by him? Hey, Master Han, that's of course, don't look at it, our boss and your old eyes are so high, and only the younger sister is worthy of my boss. Yet Yen Ming smiled and held the teapot. Walked out of the house. When Chum Wu saw Yet Yen Ming, she instantly understood that this must have told Uncle Han. What a token of love, Uncle Han, don't talk nonsense, today is Brother Xiao's birthday, this is just a birthday present. Chum Wu quickly explained to herself. Indeed, she never thought of using this thing as a token of love, and she just gave him an amulet. Han Tao has his hands on his stomach and back, his body and head are tilted back his stomach is full, I don't believe it. What I said is true. Chum Wu only felt a little flustered. The more he explained, the more confused he became. The first time I met with senior brother Xiao, I saw that he was seriously injured. I just wanted to give a talisman to him. Give it to him and protect him. Hey, listen, listen, it's all so related to that stinky boy in my family, it's not what the token of love is. This daughter-in-law apprentice, it's settled. Han Tao pointed at Chum Wu with a sigh of relief, and faced Dong Fang Sheng exclaimed proudly. Dong Fang Sheng snorted coldly, you old guy always likes daydreaming, and even birthday presents can be regarded as a token of love. Tisk, I think you are an old guy who has had a passion. Dong Fang Sheng, what are you talking about? Who is in spring, you make it clear. Han Tao suddenly became angry, and he dared to say that he was in spring, staring at Dong Fang Sheng. Who should be, who is it? Dong Fang Sheng said, looking at the sky and the earth without looking at Han Tao. Han Tao pointed at Dong Fang Sheng angrily, Old guy, don't think that you can fool the past by saying that, except for the two of us who are old guys, who else is? Your apprentice. Dong Fang Sheng glanced at Xiao Junyan, with a very disgusting look, I'm 23 years old, so old, how can I be worthy of my apprentice who is tender and tender? Today is an update of 50,000 characters. Chapter 50 There are 8 chapters left. I will post it a little bit later. The author will go back to retreat. Han Tao was so angry that Dong Fang Sheng said, How can I be worthy of my apprentice? Who is so old? Dong Fang Sheng, you who are not dead, you said that my apprentice is old, my apprentice is obviously the prosperous and the cardamom. Bah, bah, that's wrong, you are young and fang gang. How can you say that you are old? I think you are old. I'm blind, too. 
Han Tao pointed at Dong Fang Sheng angrily, screaming loudly. Puff! Hearing Han Tao's words, Chu Muyu and Yet Yen Ming couldn't help but burst into laughter. They even said that Xiao Junyan was the cardamom years. This is really, funny. Dong Fang Sheng pouted, and said coldly, isn't it an old man? How do my apprentices want to get married at around twenty? Your apprentices are already in their thirties, who is not an old man? Who knows that at that time, he couldn't bear to be lonely, so he went outside to find another woman. Before Han Tao could speak, Xiao Junyan spoke, I won't. Don't interrupt Han Tao's furious anger, turn his head to look at the apprentice who spoke, with a big smile on his face, and raised his eyebrows triumphantly towards Dong Fang Sheng, did you see it? My apprentice said no. Chu Muyu turned her head and glanced at Xiao Junyan, helplessly supporting her forehead. The content of the two naive old people was enough for her to be depressed and headache, and someone had to add it. Cut. Who knows? Dong Fang Sheng said mockingly with a cold snort. Yet Yen Ming raised his hand and said with a smile, I can testify that the boss has always kept his body clean for twenty-three years. He has never let a woman touch his hand, let alone kiss him. Only the younger sister has it. This special treatment. Hearing the words kiss that Yet Yen Ming said, Chu Muyu's face instantly blushed, turned her head and gave Yet Yen Ming a ferocious stare, gritted her teeth, if you don't speak, no one will treat you as dumb. Yet Yen Ming cracked his mouth, blinked at Chu Muyu, and said with a smile, little junior sister, what I said is true, haven't you already kissed? And more than once. Chu Muyu suddenly became angry and stomped, Yet Yen Ming you are looking for death. If you don't beat you to death today, I won't be surnamed Chu. If you don't teach Yet Yen Ming a profound lesson now, she won't be surnamed Chu. Yet Yen Ming was shocked, jumped his feet, turned around and ran. Seeing someone about to run, Chu Muyu directly ordered, Brother Xiao, stop him. Obtaining Chu Muyu's order, Xiao Junyan stepped away and appeared on the route where Yet Yen Ming was about to escape. Yet Yen Ming barely stopped, bumped into Xiao Junyan, smiled, spreading his hands, ha ha ha, boss, don't be like this anyway, everyone is also brothers, don't you think you can't have a wife now? Just forgot about me, a brother who used to live and die together, don't look down on friends. However, Xiao Junyan didn't speak, standing silently in front of Yet Yen Ming, seeing him go somewhere else but his figure flashed and blocked his way. Yet Yen Ming suddenly groaned and turned around to run back, but he saw Chu Muyu standing in front of him with his hands on his hips, with a triumphant and cunning smile on his pretty and immature face. Ha ha ha, Yet Yen Ming. Deputy Captain Yet. Officer Yet. Where are you going? Chu Muyu raised her eyebrows and asked Yet Yen Ming playfully. Yet Yen Ming folded his hands together. Miss Chu. Little junior sister. Sister-in-law. Please forgive the little one, the little one will never dare any more. Chu Muyu stretched out her hand to Yet Yen Ming, raised her chin, and said, hand over things. Yet Yen Ming was taken aback, smiled, and looked at Han Tao, hey, I have already given it to Uncle Han. The things are not with me anymore. Chu Muyu turned black when she heard the words. Now she finally understood why Han Tao showed that strange look when she saw her for the first time today. That's what it meant. That's right. That thing is here. I will keep it well, and I will take it out in the future. I can still miss and miss it. Tisk tisk tisk. That clip is not bad. Stinky boy, it's rare to be domineering. Thing. Han Tao hummed his nose proud of his hands on his stomach and back, looking at Dong Fang Sheng, his eyes were full of provocation. He he, he watched those two videos, and the exchange with Yet Yen Ming was worth the price. Old guy, I want to stop my apprentice and your baby apprentice from developing, I want to be beautiful. I won't let you know. I won't let you see it. Wait for the disciple-in-law to go home and see how you cry. When the time comes, 
I will take out the video and show it to the old guy. When he sees his dark face, the smile on Han Tao's face is very sad. On the other hand, Dong Fang Shang frowned, with a look of doubt on his face. Obviously, he didn't know about this matter, and only Han Tao knew about it. Xiao Junyan glanced at Han Tao, then turned to look at Yet Yen Ming, his eyes narrowed slightly. Yet Yen Ming instantly felt a cold wind blowing from his back, causing him to shiver. Chu Muyo was so ashamed that he couldn't see people now, stomped her feet, and directly attacked Yet Yen Ming. Yet Yen Ming's eyes suddenly stared, and he hurriedly dodged away. But how could Chu Muyo let him go like this? Lifted the other foot and kicked it towards Yet Yen Ming's waist. Yet Yen Ming quickly raised his hand and resisted with his arm. With a touch, a physical collision sounded. Suddenly, Yet Yen Ming took two steps backwards by this kick, stared at Chu Muyu, and pointed at her with trembling hands, You, 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 your internal martial arts has actually reached the dark. Jin, when did you break through? A smile appeared at the corner of Chu Muyu's mouth. She raised her head and looked at Yet Yen Ming, You don't need to know, all you need to know is that you will be beaten miserably. Although this Wan Yi school focuses on the cultivation of qi, but it does not relax at all in the skill of the internal cultivation. The cultivation of the internal cultivation and the cultivation of the mind and the cultivation of the qi cooperate together. The foreign kung fu pays attention to speed and strength, while the inner kung fu does not want to pay attention to the training of qi and effort. As for the previous Hong Yu poems, what they thought Chu Muyo believed to have learned from his father Chu's Haiming's modern fighting skills, they all belonged only to foreign kung fu. In today's martial arts world, there is no one who can reach Anjin in cultivation and skill, and all are the masters of Taishan Baidu, the master who opened the museum to teach students. A 14 or 5 year old inner family's cultivation base has already reached Anjin, no wonder yet Yan Ming was so shocked. And Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao both opened their eyes in surprise, especially Dong Fang Sheng. He was particularly aware that Chu Muyu had no foundation for learning before, and it took less than a year for her inner martial arts to reach in Jin, which really shocked him. Yet Yan Ming wailed. Even if he could beat Chu Muyu, he didn't dare to hurt her. Otherwise, let alone the two masters of Dong Fang Sheng, even his boss would never let him go. So the wise Yet Yen Ming chose to turn around and flee. However, it was stopped by Xiao Junyan. Boss, don't deceive people too much, protecting your own woman is not like protecting yourself. Yet Yen Ming stared anxiously, and complained to Xiao Junyan dissatisfied. Xiao Junyan stood still, motionless, as if he was about to be beaten and kicked by Chu Muyu. Chu Muyu smiled triumphantly, raised her fist and attacked Yet Yen Ming. Yet Yen Ming could only defend, but did not dare to attack. In an instant, he was beaten and retreated, miserable. Little junior sister, if you fight again, don't blame me for fighting back. Yet Yen Ming gritted his teeth and stared at Chu Muyu dissatisfied. Chu Muyu sneered, come on, then. I'm about to ask you to verify my skill. Okay, you asked for this. Yet Yen Ming suddenly became angry. To be honest, he also felt aggrieved by such a small woman as Chu Muyu, and quickly attacked with a backhand. Sure enough, as soon as Yet Yen Ming made his move, Chu Muyu couldn't stand it anymore, her eyes narrowed slightly. She really did not expect that Yet Yen Ming had reached the peak of the dark energy at such a young age. While Chu Muyu was horrified, Yet Yen Ming backhanded, grabbed Chu Muyu's wrist, turned directly, and pressed her arm to his back. Hey, junior sister, I said enough, you won't be my right. Yet Yen Ming smiled triumphantly, but before the laughter fell, a row of phantoms of hands appeared in front of him. Seeing a big hand appearing, Yet Yen Ming was shocked. He hurriedly backed up and cursed, Boss, you guy who looks down on friends. Dare to beat brother. Ah. Uh, when the voice fell, a big palm of Xiao Junyan landed on Ye Tian Ming's chest, one hand grabbed his arm, shook him, his body rose in the air, and then fell to the ground again. 
Yet Yen Ming clutched his chest for a while and howled. I have heart, liver, spleen, lungs, and kidneys. It's broken to pieces. Yet Yen Ming howled for a while. Both Dong Fang Sheng and Han Tao, who watched the fight, were stunned, transformation. In the inner family Kung Fu, there is a clear division of realm, first is Ming Jin, then Dark Jin, and then Hua Jing. Now Xiao Junyan's internal martial arts has reached the realm of Hua Jin. This brat, when did he break through? So fast. Han Tao muttered to himself for a while, all revealing his shock at this time. Dong Fang Sheng shook his head for a while, admiring and looking at Xiao Junyan with regret, the 23-year-old Hua Jing, even when he was young, he hadn't lived there. It's just that the child's fate is really dangerous, otherwise he is really worthy of his apprentice, but I'm afraid that he won't be able to pass the death mark of his life, and let his apprentice end up with a loss of love. Bear with me. Don't fight, don't fight, boss, even if you don't care about brotherhood, you still have to know your gratitude. If it weren't for me a month ago, I told the younger sister of your birthday time, the younger sister would not have a chance surprise you, and you won't hug the beauty back. Yet Yen Ming was covering his chest, lying on the ground, yelling in his mouth, and hurriedly said good things for himself. Xiao Junyan heard what Yet Yen Ming said, especially the word one month ago in the words. Xiao Junyan let go of Yet Yen Ming, raised his head, and showed Chu Muyu's pretty face with a stiff smile. About a month ago, at that time, wasn't it when Chu Muyu was about to discuss with Dong Fang Sheng about making amulets? Could it be that she actually asked for the purpose of learning to make amulets, not for her father, but for him? Although sometimes, Xiao Junyan was a little bit cold, and he didn't understand the romance of the relationship between men and women, but he was not stupid, and some things could still be understood. He looked down at the jade pendant on his chest, and then at Chum Wu. Chum Wu stomped her feet, feeling as if she had taken off all her clothes and in front of Xiao Junyan, her plan had been seen through. I want to read a book, I'll go back first, and you can play here slowly. In the end, Chu Muyo casually found an excuse, then turned around and ran towards the house. Yet Yen Ming was lying on the ground, and seeing Xiao Junyan's actions and Chu Muyo's shy escape from the back, a triumphant smile appeared on his face, he he, he didn't expect to save his life. However, before Yet Yen Ming was happy for long, someone stepped on his chest and screamed with pain. Yet Yen Ming raised his fisted hand in protest and shouted at Xiao Junyan's back, Boss, can you step on a person's body? My internal organs have to be given by you to come out. Just now, Xiao Junyan stepped on Ye Tian Ming's body and walked over. Ye Tian Ming looked down at the footprint on his chest, grinning in pain. Although Chu Muyu didn't do anything to him, the boss's kick was not light. It's really bad for the boss to get rid of it, but he is the boss fighting side by side, a brother who lives and die together. However, at this moment Xiao Junyan couldn't hear someone's complaint, and walked straight into the house. Seeing Chu Muyu sitting at the table, holding her flushed face, staring at the book on the desk in front of him, the expression in her eyes became even more fiery. Chu Muyu felt a strong gaze, turned her head abruptly, met Xiao Junyan's hot gaze, and quickly shrank her neck as if she was afraid of what would happen when he came home again. Xiao Junyan walked to Chu Muyu's face, lowered his head and looked at her. Chu Muyu covered her mouth with her hands and stared at him with a pair of dark eyes, What are you going to do? Master and them are still here, don't mess around. Xiao Junyan looked at the mouth covered by Chu Muyu's hands, and looked at her panicked look. His eyes darkened, but he reached out and grabbed her slender hands, I won't kiss you. Chu Muyu's face suddenly blushed again, and she turned her head away from Xiao Junyan. Xiao Junyan bent down, took Chu Muyu into his arms, and stepped his head into her neck, You, thank you. Chu Muyu, who originally wanted to push Xiao Junyan away, heard his words with both hands, and finally turned his hands to his chest, threatening, You are not allowed to say thank you to me in the future. Okay. 
Xiao Junyan buried his head deeper, sniffing the smell of her body deeply, only feeling relieved, and his heart warmer. Chum Wei was helpless, but thinking that this was not at home, she hurriedly pushed him, complaining a little bit in her tone, Let go of me, I still have to read and study. For the jade pendant on your body, I can't spend it. I haven't read a lot of books in a short amount of time. Xiao Junyan let go of Chum Wei, pulled a stool and sat at the table, staring at her, I'll be with you. The business of the medicinal restaurant has not been reduced because of the small gangsters. On the contrary, with the release of beauty desserts, the business has gradually become more and more prosperous, especially among the upper class. There are also many corporate bosses who have come over to taste the treasures of Longma spirit. After a taste, I couldn't calm down any more, and I couldn't walk away any more, wanting to eat the spirit of the dragon horse. What a man cares about most is his ability in bed, especially for men with money like them. Ever since, everyone is vying to eat this dragon horse spirit. With such a scene, Shi Yurong, the general manager of the Wang Feng Hotel opposite, was full of anger and envy. You wait for me, right now, you won't be able to go on. Shi Yurong gritted his teeth, his eyes flushed. He really couldn't figure out why all his calculations were useless at the medicinal restaurant. What's special, I finally found the people from the industrial and commercial bureau to find trouble in the medicated restaurant, but I didn't expect that when I met the Miss Yang, not only did not find the trouble of the other party, but caused trouble for herself. Because of this incident, he was not only found by the Bureau of Industry and Commerce, but also by the Kishin Group as a small spark. He was also found by Ziming and scolded him. Ziming dealt with the group company's affairs and waited for the matter to calm down before returning his attention to the medicinal restaurant. The company's recent affairs are all because of the medicinal restaurant. Of course, it is also because of medicinal restaurants and other hotels that their income has dropped sharply. After thinking about it, Ziming felt that he should meet Ling Hong by himself and let him know who the catering industry should listen to in this Xingxi. President Xi. After receiving Ziming's order, Shi Yurong had been waiting at the door of his hotel. Seeing Ziming's car arrived, he quickly greeted him. When Ziming got out of the car, he looked at the medicated food restaurant on the opposite side, his eyes were slightly squinted, his eyes flashed with cold light. This is the medicated restaurant. Yes, President Xi is this medicinal restaurant. Shi Yurong quickly introduced, there are still many people waiting outside. Hey. Ziming snorted coldly, and said mockingly, I really thought that opening this medicinal restaurant would be able to fight our Kishin group. That's right. Mr. Xi, I believe that as long as you go out, you will be able to succeed and get the formula. Shi Yurong quickly flattered. Ziming glanced at Shi Yurong arrogantly and proudly, Go, go and meet that boring Ling Hong. Thinking that the income of my hotel boxes had dropped by half because of the medicinal restaurant, it was raging. This is entirely because the bosses of Xingxi who have sold the silver membership card of the medicated restaurant all bring their own partners to the box of the medicinal restaurant to talk. After all, in Huaxia civilization, many of them are at the wine table. It's agreed on. Then the male managers ate the spirit of Longma, and the female managers all fell in love with the beauty desserts. In order to be able to eat these two things, I gave a lot of orders, all wanting to exchange for the silver card from their collection. Especially the beauty products that women eat, only members with silver cards can eat them, and ordinary members can't eat them. Some wealthy people are willing to sit in the hall to eat even if they don't have boxes. Almost half of the wealthy people go to medicinal restaurants and always go to those hotels to order delicacies and delicacies. As a result, their income has dropped by at least half. At the same time, as the new year was approaching, Chum Wu had to take the final exam, but she was not so worried about the exam. What she cares most about is the situation in the medicated food restaurant and she sends the ingredients for desserts to the medicated restaurant. After school on Friday, Chum Wei also asked Xiao Junyan to take herself to the medicated restaurant, 
and by the way, she also took a look at her income. When Ling Hong saw Chum Wu, the smile on his face was particularly brilliant, and it was all joy to pass the report to her. Ms. Chu, the business is getting better and better. Should we open a new store? Ling Hong looked at Chum Wu excitedly and looking forward to asking, at the beginning I thought this store was enough, but now I, I realized that this store is still too small. Chum Wu smiled and looked at Ling Hong and said, it's so lofty, the time has not yet arrived, and there are not enough people who know it. Not enough. When Ling Hong heard this, he was shocked, frowned, and asked, then how much do you want? I do the math, I don't know how many people will ask me when I can do the silver card again. Chum Wu smiled, her eyes flashed with diligence and said, the big rich men I want to set are not enough, so it's not suitable. Big rich man. Ling Hong was even more puzzled when he heard it. What kind of rich man is there? Now almost all the wealthy people in Xingxi want to apply for membership cards. Chum Wu picked up the tea cup, took a sip, and said, Didn't I tell you before, is there a gold card above the silver card level? A big rich man who can afford the annual gold card fee. When Ling Hong heard the words, he immediately felt as if someone had pinched his neck halfway, with a depressed look on his face, Miss Chu, you are too ruthless. The golden card year is ten million. Who wants to? So wait. Wait. Chum Wu smiled lightly and said confidently, it suffices the appetites of those people, especially those of the rich family who specialize in arguing outside. Moreover, it has just entered the 21st century. The rich will continue to pop up. Although this is true, but... Ling Hong still didn't believe it. After all, the people he had contacted before, really couldn't think about it, they could come up with an annual membership fee of 10 million. Chum Wu said calmly, now, China has entered a period of rapid development. With the country's policies, enterprise groups have sprung up like mushrooms, and there will be more and more wealthy people. They care more about spiritual and physical enjoyment and relaxation, and pay more attention to their own body. The future is not what you can imagine now. When Ling Hong listened, he only felt stunned. He seemed to be able to feel what Chum Wu said, as if he could predict or see the future development. Since it is Miss Chu's decision, I will naturally follow the arrangement. Ling Hong smiled and said to Chum Wu. Chum Wu blinked mischievously at Ling Hong and asked, You just believe what I say? Are you afraid that I will frame you? Frame me? The loss is your money. Ling Hong shrugged indifferently and said, So, the boss is not in a hurry, let alone the employees below us. With confidence in Ling Hong, Chum Wu's mouth showed a satisfied smile, I. Just as he was about to say something, there was a knock on the door, and then Zhang Kong walked in from outside, Mr. Ling, the chairman of Kishin Group, Xi Ming, wants to see you. Sitting in front of the computer at the desk, Chum Wu looked at the surveillance video inside, with a smile on her mouth. Xiao Junyan brought a cup of tea and handed it to Chum Wu, warm. Chum Wu raised her head, met Xiao Junyan's gentle eyebrows, smiled sweetly, and pointed to the stool opposite the desk, move one over and watch it with me. Xiao Junyan silently turned around and moved a stool, sat next to Chum Wu, swept her in his arms with a big hand. Peaceful. Chum Wu glared at Xiao Junyan a little shyly. Xiao Junyan lowered his head to look at Chum Wu, his fingers gently wrapped the broken hair between her forehead behind his ears, and he lowered his head and sniffed the direction of her body. Chum Wu ignored the small movements someone was doing over there, staring directly at the surveillance video in the computer. Since Shi Yurong's incident last time, Chum Wu asked Ling Hong to make a living room with a monitor installed in it. Now, Xi Ming took Shi Yurong and the others sitting in the living room, while Ling Hong sat steadily opposite. Xi Ming put down the teacup in his hand and glanced proudly at Ling Hong who was holding the teacup opposite, Boss Ling, how are you thinking about that matter? Ling Hong shook the teacup lightly, and looked up at Xi Ming with a smile, Mr. Xi, let's meet for the first time, 
I really don't know what you said about it. Humph. Ziming snorted coldly, his tone a little more angry, naturally it is the medicated diet formula of your medicated diet restaurant. Our kitchen group is interested in your medicated diet formula. Now I want to buy it. I don't know if you would like to buy it. Not willing. Unwilling. Ling Hong refused while waiting for Ziming to finish saying the last word. Unexpectedly, Ziming, who would have been rejected so quickly, suddenly slapped the armrest of the sofa with anger, his body straightened, you. Mr. Zai, I have already said about this. Our medicated restaurant's recipes will not be sold. Didn't your subordinates tell you? Ling Hong asked with a smile while looking at Ziming. Ziming had a sullen face, staring at Ling Hong, his voice low, as if suppressing some power that was about to explode, Boss Ling, aren't you afraid that your store will be destroyed again? Ling Hong smiled, squinted at Ziming, and said meaningfully, Ha, I am not afraid of this. I don't know how many times I have resisted it before. Ziming gritted his teeth, clutching the armrest of the sofa with both hands, and sneered, Boss Ling, it seems that he believes in his subordinates very much. That's natural. Since I have them, I don't have to worry anymore. There will be gangsters to make trouble. Ling Hong looked very relaxed, leaning against the back of the sofa chair. Seeing Ling Hong's sullen appearance, Ziming's anger continued to surge, Ling Hong, don't toast or eat fine wine. Today, I will give you face and I will come to you to discuss this medicated diet. If you don't sell the recipe, you have to sell it. Ling Hong sneered and looked at Xi Ming mockingly, Chief Xi of Kishan Group is really powerful enough, this is a strong buy and sell. It's just buying and selling. Ten million formulas are worthy of you. Xi Ming's tone was no longer the gentleness at the beginning, full of thick threats and ridicule. In Xi Ming's view, they are a big group company like Kishan Group, and they look at the medicated diet formula of such a small shop, that is worthy of him. Only a huge catering company like them can bring this medicated diet formula into full play. Ling Hong was not afraid of Xi Ming's ridicule and threats. A sly smile appeared on the corner of his mouth and said, Mr. Xi, I have already told your subordinates that I will not sell medicated diet recipes because this medicinal diet the formula is not mine, but given to me by a master of Chinese medicine. He gave you the medicated diet formula for this time, and I can find a second medicated diet formula. If Mr. Xi doesn't mind, I can sell it to you. Ga. After hearing Ling Hong's words, Xi Ming, who was originally angry, suddenly thought that it was a duck whose neck was strangled, and his voice stopped abruptly, as did Shi Yurong behind him. Unexpectedly, this formula is not Ling Hong's own. Subconsciously, Xi Ming suddenly turned his head and glared at Shi Yurong angrily, his eyes full of anger. That look is to blame Shi Yurong, this matter is not well investigated, what's the use of leaving you? As Ling Hong said, if Ling Hong wants a formula, maybe the master of Chinese medicine can still give him a copy. At that time, he looked at the food in the medicinal restaurant and wanted to buy it. This would cost money. Isn't this purely okay? Xi Ming's face was very gloomy, as if the tranquility before the storm, staring coldly at Ling Hong in front of him, tell me, who is the master of Chinese medicine? What's his name? Ling Hong raised his eyes and raised the corners of his mouth, revealing a playful smile, do you think I will tell you? As long as you tell me, I can give you money. Xi Ming gritted his teeth and said seductively, How much do you want, as long as you say, I can give you? Ling Hong chuckled. He leaned back on the sofa lazily, putting his hands on the armrests, Okay, give me ten billion, and I'll tell you. You. Xi Ming felt instantly that he was being played by Ling Hong, ten billion, ten billion in a piece of news. How could this be possible? Now, Xi Ming really wanted to kill Ling Hong. Since he became the chairman of the Kishan Group, even before, he has never been teased like this before, and he has been treated by a nasty brat. 
Ziming stood up from the sofa, staring at Ling Hong fiercely, gritted his teeth, Ling Hong, are you sure you don't give me face, and don't give me the identity information and contact information of that old Chinese doctor? Ling Hong nodded and said, Xi is so capable, then go and investigate. I believe you will be able to investigate. Xi Ming flushed with anger and secretly vowed in his heart that he would find the old master of Chinese medicine that Ling Hong said. As long as he gets the help of the master of traditional Chinese medicine, he will be able to get those formulas. Isn't the money coming? Humph, Ling Hong, this matter is endless. Xi Ming pointed at Ling Hong and threatened coldly, You wait, when I find the master of Chinese medicine, it will be your death date. Ling Hong shrugged and said indifferently, I'm waiting. In the end, Xi Ming left the medicated restaurant with anger. Chu Muiu looked at Xi Ming in the surveillance video with a mocking smile on her mouth, I really think of myself as an old man. Ignore him. Xiao Junyan stretched out his hand, holding Chu Muiu's small white hand, and said. Chu Muiu showed a sly smile at the corner of her mouth, and said in a wicked way, well, let's ignore him. Let him turn the whole Xingxi upside down and find someone who doesn't exist at all, old, master of Chinese medicine. Although Ye Tianming and Xiao Junyan could help him, Chu Muiu still wanted to use his own strength to bring down Xi Ming. I believe that when the funds are sufficient at that time, it will be fine. Go back and continue the code word. Today's 50, 000 word update has been provided. Chapter 50 the author feels that his finger is about to be broken. 40 update tomorrow. However, it will be updated in three time periods, and now it is completely naked. Chu Muiu gave Ling Hong the full authority to deal with the matter of the medicated food restaurant. Ling Hong also knew that Chu Muiu was about to take the final exam, so he didn't bother him. It's just that I feel a little depressed to think that someone is still in school while he is working for her. As the exam approached, the whole class became a little boring. Even some of the classmates who are usually troublesome, at this time are holding books and chewing, hoping that the temporary holding of the Buddha's feet can be useful. There are no troublemakers in the school, and Chu Muiu is also very relieved to review his homework. I don't know if it was because of the tragic ending of Xia Muiu's family that Xi Liang also temporarily stopped retaliation against Chu Muiu and now he sat in his seat obediently every day www.mtlnovel.com review. The bell rang, and all the students raised their heads in a posture of relief. After her school, Du Jingwen turned her head and looked at Chu Muiu excitedly, Miu Yu, what do you think of this exam? Are you sure of getting the first place? Chu Muiu sorted out his book, did not say anything to death, and said lightly, I don't know but I should be able to give it a try. With the memory of her previous life, Chu Muiu can now understand what the teacher taught as long as she reads the book carefully, and now she has to review it again. Therefore, after Chu Muiu went home to complete his homework, he went to read the inheritance books of the mysterious doctor, and Chu Muiu did not miss the books in his own space. Having a restaurant like the medicinal restaurant has made Chu Muiu feel the pressure has increased greatly, and she has to read some books to study new dishes. Chu Muiu is very busy now, too busy to review at home, so she is not sure if she can get the first place, after all, there is also Wu Hung Jun who has always been the first. I believe you will definitely be able to take the first test again, surpassing Wu Hung Jun. Du Jingwen said angrily, clenching his fist. Chu Muiu was a little bit dumbfounded, and said, I didn't take the Wu Hung Jun exam at the end of last month. This final exam is really difficult. I have entered the third stage of junior high school, and I am about to take the middle school entrance examination. It is inevitable that I will have a monthly examination every month. However, last month Chu Muiu was able to give Xiao Junyan a surprise and carved a good amulet for him, so she didn't have time to read a book, and then Wu Hung Jun's grades were caught up by her. However, Chu Muiu didn't feel sad at all, as long as it was for Xiao Junyan, everything was worth it. What's the matter if you haven't taken the test? 
but you are only one or two points away. This point is a small point. Du Jingwen waved his hand very confidently. Okay, I'm leaving now. Chu Muiho picked up her school bag and stood up and said. Du Jingwen still clenched his fists and raised his chin to demonstrate. Hearing what Chu Muiho said, he quickly sorted out his book, so soon, wait for me. When Chu Muiho and Du Jingwen walked out of the classroom, they ran into Wu Hengjun who was also out. Hi. Wu Hengjun waved at Chu Muiho, raised his eyebrows, this time the final exam, who do you think will win? Chu Muiho raised the corner of her mouth, but she lost the words that Du Jingwen had just said, and said provocatively, of course it's me. Really? I don't think that the first place is mine. Wu Hengjun smiled and flung his school bag confidently, and said, let's look at each other. Who can get the first place? Okay. In a blink of an eye, the final exams that the students were waiting for came, and all the students were ready for battle. The successive examinations made the students exhausted. When the final homework exam was over, the bell rang, and there was a burst of excitement in the examination room. On vacation, Chu Muihu sorted out her stationery, thinking in her heart that she hadn't spoken to Xiao Junyan for more than a week. It's just that this time is really too busy, not only to learn the inheritance of the mysterious medicine school, but also to prepare to review the content of the final exam. Xiao Junyan probably also knew that Chu Muihu was busy, and followed her silently, showing up to help her when she needed it. Today is the last day of the final exam, I can finally relax. Chu Muihu walked out of the examination room, and a cold wind blew across her slender neck, and she couldn't help but shiver. Hey! It's so cold! Du Jingwen breathed in her hands, and ran with her feet raised up high. Sitting so cold, I can't move, my hands and feet will freeze. Don't you move your feet during the exam. Chu Muihu smiled and asked jokingly. Cut, our invigilator is an old guy. I can't move my feet and freeze me to death. Du Jingwen listened and said with an angry look on her face. When Chu Muihu heard the words, she smiled and shook her head, okay. I'm gone, I can finally have winter vacation, I'm exhausted. Du Jingwen put her arms around Chu Muihu, leaning on her, in a posture of Chu Muihu as a warm baby. Chu Muihu didn't stop Du Jingwen, and left the examination room with her. The students who left the examination room this time were full of excitement. They were not happy because of a good result in the examination, but because they could finally have the winter vacation. Chu Muihu, here. Only when I walked down the stairs, I saw Zhang Yi and Wu Hengjun who were waiting. Seeing these two people, Chu Muihu raised her eyebrows and walked towards Wu Hengjun and the others, Why haven't you left? Waiting for you. Zhang Yi said with a smile, It's a holiday, everyone go out to play. When Chu Muihu heard this, she shrugged helplessly, and said apologetically, I have something. There is something, what can there be? It's a holiday. Zhang Yi immediately complained. I have to go to the master of Chinese medicine. Chu Muihu still explained the same. Now, she doesn't shy away from her recent study of Chinese medicine, so Zhang Yi and the others understood it as soon as they heard it. Zhang Yi gave Chu Muihu a thumbs up and said, You are studying Chinese medicine while studying for exams. This way you can get the first place. I admire you. If you don't study Chinese medicine, you will be the first. Of. Hearing Zhang Yi's words, Wu Hengjun felt a little blush, and felt that although he passed Chu Muihu in the last monthly exam, he felt that he was a little proud of his qualifications. I'll just follow and learn in normal times, and I don't always follow along. Chu Muihu touched her nose awkwardly, and walked forward alone, always feeling like she had done something wrong. After all, she was relying on it. It was only because of his ability to be reborn. Wu Hengjun smiled and said, Although this is the case, you are also very good. Just so-so, I. Chu Muihu smiled awkwardly, but when she looked up, she was taken aback, and her footsteps suddenly stopped. 
Wu Hengjun and others were all startled by Chu Muya's sudden stop. They also stopped quickly, followed her line of sight and looked up and saw a domineering off-road vehicle parked outside the school gate. When Chu Muya saw the person coming, there was a sweet smile on her face. Why did this guy come? Unconsciously, Chu Muya speeded up her pace and walked towards the off-road vehicle. The off-road vehicle opened the door, a straight and slender leg stretched out, and the tall and straight body walked out of the vehicle. The moment he saw Chu Muyu, the expression in the man's eyes softened a bit. Senior brother Xiao, why are you here? Chu Muyu walked up to Xiao Junyan and asked with some curiosity. Xiao Junyan's answer was very succinct, his eyes fell on Chu Muyu's somewhat red nose, pick you up. Chu Muyu said helplessly, didn't I say that I can go back by myself? Cold. Xiao Junyan only uttered one word, then turned around, took out a bag from the car, took out a scarf from the inside, and wrapped it around Chu Muyu's neck. Incidentally, even her small face was covered. Covered most of it. Chu Muyu was startled, staring at Xiao Junyan's actions, grabbing the scarf covering his face, I'm not cold. Xiao Junyan pressed his hand with a big hand, with a somewhat overbearing tone in his tone, in close, warm. Domineering. Chu Muyu rolled her eyes helplessly. Although she said that, she was still warm in her heart. This man was always very careful. Wu Hung Jun looked at Xiao Junyan and Chu Muyu, his eyes narrowed slightly, he always felt that the atmosphere of these two people was a bit wrong. Who made Xiao Junyan too old? Let Wu Hung Jun feel that no matter how much Chu Muyu likes others, he can't like people with such a big age difference, right? Therefore, Wu Hung Jun feels that he still has an advantage. But now it seems that Wu Hung Jun felt an invisible pressure on his body to crush his shoulders. Brother Xiao, are you here to pick up Mu Yu? Du Jingwen asked Xiao Junyan curiously. Everyone already knew Xiao Junyan, so knowing that he had come, it must be for Chu Muyu. Chu Muyu turned around and waved to Du Jingwen and the others, Senior brother Xiao has come to pick me up to study. Let's play slowly. Du Jingwen was a little bit reluctant to part with Chu Muyu, but still didn't want to disturb her. Chu Muyu nodded gently, and said to everyone, she got in the car, Xiao Junyan fastened her seat belt very carefully, closed the car door, turned the front of the car, and glanced at standing with Du Jingwen and the others. Of Wu Hung Jun. Wu Hung Jun was taken aback and looked at Xiao Junyan. He could feel the self confidence and domineering possessiveness in this man's eyes. Xiao Junyan sat in the driver's seat, turned his head and glanced at Chu Muyu tenderly, let's go shopping first. Good. Chu Muyu nodded, letting Xiao Junyan's arrangements be. Outside, Du Jingwen watched Xiao Junyan hit the steering wheel, drove the car, and left with Chu Muyu. Envy. This senior from Mu Yu is so handsome, so considerate and gentle. Du Jingwen said with emotion. Zhang Yi laughed and joked, then you go after it. Du Jingwen rolled her eyes, touched her face, and said, I still know myself, and people who are worthy of this handsome guy are not in my turn. If there is, only Chu Mu Yu is worthy of it. Listening to Du Jingwen's words, Wu Hung Jun frowned unconsciously he is too big. That's right. Du Jingwen nodded in agreement, also feeling that the age difference was a bit big. At the end of the final exam, Chu Muyu's grades can be said to be very good. He took the first place again, which was nine points away from Wu Hung Jun. Chu Muyu caught up with his grades again, making Wu Hung Jun very unwilling, and only felt that an invisible pressure was pressing on him. As a boy, how can he make a girl perform better than him? How can he chase her? Even if the girls didn't care, he felt that he didn't have the ability and didn't feel good enough for him. However, Chu Muyu didn't know Wu Hung Jun's careful thoughts at all, just thinking, is it going to be separated from Xiao Junyan? The arrival of winter vacation means the arrival of the spring festival. A few days after the exam was over, it was a new year and the house was full of excitement. The house was cleaned early in the morning, and the house was cleaned. 
In the first year of the year, according to the usual practice, Chu Muya would follow Chu's Haiming to go to the countryside to go to Mr. Chu and the others for the festival, and by the way, help the two elderly people clean the house. However, after what happened last time, Chu's Haiming didn't plan to go to the countryside with Chu Muya. He planned to go to the mountains and celebrate the festival in the east. Thinking that Dong Fang Sheng used to have only one person for the New Year holidays, it was quite lonely. Chu's Haiming and Chu Muya planned to spend the holidays together. Now clean the house first, and then go to the mountain to help the master clean the house. Dad, I've cleaned it up. Is your room tidy up? Chu Muya said to Chu's Haiming in the room after finishing her package. I'll be fine soon, I. Chu's Haiming responded in the room. But before he finished speaking, the doorbell rang. Chu Muya was taken aback, and muttered to herself in confusion, could it be that senior brother Xiao came so soon? Although I was wondering if it was Xiao Junyan when I opened the door, I saw four people at the door. They were taken aback, and then a little smile appeared on their faces, Auntie. Auntie. Cousin. The people here are not others, but Chu's Haiming's younger sister Chu Jiakai, her husband, and son. In the Chu family, the person who impressed Chu Muya the best was Chu Jiakai's family. In the previous life, Chu's Haiming was seriously ill, and only Chu Jiakai had spent a lot of money, but it was still a drop in the bucket. Because of the generosity of Chu Jiakai in her previous life and the fact that she had never disliked her since she was a child, she was still very concerned. Therefore, Chu Muyu treated her not as cold as Chu's Hickson and the others. It was also because of the aunt's presence that Chu Muyu could only let the two old people go first. After all, they were the aunt's biological parents. Although my father verbally said that he would sever ties with Mr. Chu and the others, the blood ties are not that he can be broken. Chu Muyu would not really act mercilessly on the monks because his father said that he would sever the relationship. At the very least, the Chu family had to hit the gunpoint by themselves, so that she would deal with it in a fair way and would not fall into the truth. Miu Yu, it's been a long time since I haven't seen you, it's really getting more and more beautiful. Chu Jiakai saw Chu Muyu, her eyes lit up, and she said with a smile. Well, thank you aunt for the praise. Chu Muyu smiled modestly, and quickly stepped aside, Auntie, come in first. Miu Yu, who is here? When Chu's Haiming heard the doorbell, he ran out of the room and saw Chu Jiakai and the others, a look of surprise suddenly appeared on his face, Sanji. Chu's Haiming had no idea that Chu Jiakai and his family would come to him early in the morning. Miu Yu, hurry up and boil the water. Chu's Haiming quickly exhorted Chu Muyu. Thinking about it, they probably wouldn't be able to stay at home for a few days so they didn't boil the water, but they didn't expect Chu Jiakai to come suddenly. No, no. We will only come to see you. After the last incident, I also knew that you would definitely not return to the country, so I came here first. Chu Jiakai quickly got up and waved his hands, pulling Chu Muyu sat on the sofa. It was true that Chu Jiakai was right, and they really didn't plan to go back. Sister. It's not that we don't want to go back, but, alas, things are already like this anyway, let's live like this from now on. Chu's Haiming sighed helplessly while sitting on the sofa. Hey, what mom did not do right about this matter, how could it be done like this? Chu Jiakai sighed helplessly, however, this kind of thing can't be too long, after all, you are mom's son. Anyway, let's talk about it later. I guess it will take a few years. Chu's Haiming said flatly. Lin Anguo said something fair, indeed, both Ding Chunhong and Chu Zhou are still in prison now. As long as these two things are not handled properly, brother, you better not go back. Hey, Chu Zhou knows that he has been mixed up. He didn't teach Chu Muyu successfully, but instead killed himself. He blamed Muyu. It deserves it. Chu Jiakai's son Lin Rui leaned against the sofa and said mockingly. Turned his head to Chu Muyu and gave a thumbs up, Miu Yu, I really admire you, 
I really don't know how you avoided it, and you let that guy's stuff be useless. Upon hearing this, Chu Muyu suddenly dropped three black lines on her forehead, indicating that she had never thought that things would turn out to be this way, okay. Cough cough cough. This has nothing to do with me. The pants he wore that day were wrong. Chu Muyu blushed and said. Lin Rui smiled and moved to Chu Muyu's side, the smile on her face was gloating, Mu Yu, you don't have to worry about that coveting you in the future, and that guy won't have that ability anymore. Smelly boy, what are you talking about? Lin Anguo immediately slapped Lin Rui on the back of the head with dissatisfaction. Lin Rui howled, his face was depressed and innocent, but he was telling the truth, how could he be beaten? Chu Muyu smiled, she didn't feel that what Lin Rui said was harsh, but was comforting her. Lin Rui and his aunt and his family are very good to her and treat her completely as relatives, so they don't care about the jokes they made to him. Cousin, don't worry. I haven't taken him to heart yet. Chu Muyu smiled and said comfortingly. Lin Rui touched his head and nodded, it's best not to take it seriously. If that dares to trouble you in the future, you can tell me. Perhaps it was because he was alone in the family, and he was an only child, and wanted to have a well-behaved sister, that's why he was so kind to Chu Muyu. As for why Chu Muyu, it's completely that he doesn't like Chu Shishu and Chu Suiang. Chu Shishu and Chu Suiang's arrogant personalities were destined to dislike him, even his sister-in-laws. Chu Muyu was a little weak, so the consciousness of being an older brother came. The desire to protect his younger sister made him like Chu Muyu, even if he didn't have any blood relationship. Chu Ming glanced at Lin Rui and Chu Muyu who were chatting with each other, then turned to Chu Jiakai and said, Sister, are you going to go to the countryside later? Yes, wait until you sit here for a while before you go. Chu Jiakai nodded, glanced at Chu Muyu, and said with a smile on the corner of her mouth, I just want to see Mu Yu's situation. I heard that she fell off the cliff, and she was a little busy at the time, so she didn't come over. Now that she is okay, she is better than before. Chu Muyu listened to Chu Jiakai's words beside her, and a touch of warmth flashed in her eyes. In her previous life, she lay in bed for a year, and Chu Jiakai would take care of her every holiday and bring her a lot of nutrients. I hope she can get better soon. Even if she is not a true blood relative, it also gives her the warmth of her relatives. In the Chu family, the only to repay was Chu's Haiming, and Chu Jiakai's family. At this moment, there was another knock on the door. Chu Muyo quickly got up and said, I'll open the door. Calculating the time, Chu Muyu thought it might be Xiao Junyan. Up the mountain was to let Xiao Junyan drive and let him come over at half past nine, but Chu Muyu knew very well that he would definitely come early because of his character. However, Chu Muyu did not expect that when he opened the door with a smiling face, he saw a group of people standing outside the door, and the smiles on his faces also disappeared. Seeing that the person opening the door was Chu Muyu, the people standing outside all snorted, the look on their faces was very ugly, and most of them were angry. Sitting in the living room, Chu's Haiming got up, wondering who was outside, and asked, Mu Yu, did Xiao Xiao come? If he does, let him in first. Chu's Haiming also knew that Xiao Junyan came to pick them up, so he thought it might be Xiao Junyan. But now that Chu Jiakai and his family are here, they can't just abandon them, so they plan to let Xiao Junyan come in and sit down first. However, when I walked to the door, I saw the person standing outside, and the smile on his face disappeared, parents. The people who came were no one else. It was Mrs. Chu and Mrs. Chu, followed by Chu's Hishan, Chu's Hixon, and Chu Jiamen, except for Chu Zhou and Ding Chunhong who were in jail. Chu's Haiming never expected that they would come to himself. The old lady Chu snorted coldly, and stared at Chu Muyu dissatisfiedly, get out of the way, let us in. For Chu Muyu, she didn't have any smiling face at all, and she had the attitude of Lafayette ordering her maidservant. A cold light flashed in Chu Muyu's eyes, but she let them in first, 
but she didn't know what they were going to do. Since you don't know yet, let's take a look first. Lin Anguo's family sitting on the sofa in the hall also heard the parents called by Chu's Haiming. Who else can make Chu's Haiming call his parents besides those two from the Chu family? So he also quickly stood up. Parents. Chu Jiakai also looked at Mrs. Chu and the others in surprise. They didn't expect, why would they come here? How can there be a posture of prospering teachers? Lin Rui frowned when he saw Mrs. Chu and the group of people, walked to Chu Muya's side, lowered his head to comfort, don't worry, even if your grandpa and grandma are here, it won't be so good. Chu Muya nodded, there was no expression on her face, and there was an indifferent look on her pretty face. The old lady Chu looked at Chu's hyming dissatisfiedly, and sternly questioned, you are really my good son. If Jiamen hadn't told me, I didn't know that you even had a family home for a wild species of unknown origin. Not going back. Chu's Haiming's expression is also unsightly. He is a soldier, and he is a bit hostile. Moreover, the old lady Chu and her sister-in-law wanted to abduct Chu Muyu, which made him very angry. Mom, I call you mom, that's because I still care about our mother-child relationship and blood relationship but you can't rely on this relationship and sell Mu Yu. You do this, it's getting me wronged. Chu's Haiming said in a low voice, angrily. What did I do wrong? If it weren't for this dead girl, would you still be alone now? Can I still not hold my grandchildren? The old lady Chu angrily pointed at Chu's Haiming and cursed. Chu's Haiming sneered and looked at Mrs. Chu, I'm alone now, isn't it you? If you didn't insist that Gilan was pregnant while taking care of your two elderly people, would she have a dead body and two lives? You. When the old lady Chu heard Chu's Haiming's words, her face flushed with anger, her eyes stared, and she still screamed, It's not you who brought this broom star back, if it wasn't her, Gui Lan will you die? You put all the responsibility on us. Regarding that incident, Mrs. Chu did not feel that she had harmed her daughter-in-law, but that she was fateful, and most importantly Chu Muyu, the daughter-in-law who died of broom's ink. Old Father Chu also had an angry look on his old face, that's what her daughter-in-law should do, it's her own fate. Hehe, <laughs> my sister-in-law and my second sister-in-law have nothing to do at home every day, and are not pregnant, but they want Gilan to take care of these two elderly people while pregnant. In the end, you still blame Mu Yu for your unfortunate death. This is really the first time for me. Hearing such a high-sounding reason. Chu's Haiming only felt cold, his eyes were red, Mu Yu's parents died for me, but you want me to throw away the Savior's daughter. Since you want me to be unrighteous, then I'm not filial, anyway you asked me to do this. Originally, Chu's Haiming didn't intend to tell Chu Mu Yu that her biological parents were dead, but he would only tell him that he was her biological father. However, these people who couldn't stand the family were looking for trouble, and always said in front of Chu Muyu that she had picked it up, making her always feel that she was a burden. Chu Muyu's personality has changed a lot since he became an apprentice to Dong Feng Sheng, which made him very pleased. Chu Muyu raised her head and looked at Chu's Haiming with a touch of emotion in her eyes. The father was still the same as the father in the previous life. He was willing to work hard for her and became sick, and he didn't have any complaints in the end. Now, my father is more willing to rebel against his parents for her. He would rather be an unfilial son than a righteous man who will repay his kindness, and a gentleman who promises to repay him. With such a father, even if she suffers, it is worth it. You, you. Both the old man Chu and the old lady Chu were trembling with anger by Chu's hyming, and their bodies seemed to be crumbling. Ma Yonglin and Chu Jiamen hurriedly stepped forward and supported Mr. Chu and Mrs. Chu. Parents, don't get excited, don't be angry, you can't blame this little brother, if you want to blame, blame the wild species. Ma Yonglin stared fiercely at Chu Muyu, her eyes completely as if they had blood and deep hatred. Yes. They really have blood feuds. Although Chu Zhou was not dead, he was already an in a waste person, 
which is equivalent to Chu Muyu having killed her grandchildren. Chu Zhou lost the ability to inherit the family, and couldn't give her grandchildren. What is this not enmity? Chu Muyu, you bitch, you still have the face to stay here, the face to live in this world, why don't you die? Ma Yonglin cursed sharply. Chu Muyu sneered and looked at Ma Yonglin mockingly, do I have a face, do I have the right to live in this world and stand here? It's not you who have the final say. Why can't I say it? If it weren't for you, would our Chu family wean off children and grandchildren? Ma Yonglin immediately cursed angrily. Chu Muyu chuckled, and glanced at Chu Nan subconsciously, and a smile appeared on the corner of her mouth. It's impossible to cut off children and grandchildren. Isn't there a Chu Nan in the Chu family? Are you saying that he can't inherit the clan? Hey! Chu Nan looked very ugly, turned his head and stared at Ma Yonglin ferociously with dissatisfaction, as if to see her stubbornly alive. Lin Rui's eyes lit up next to Chu Muyu, and she glanced curiously at Chu Muyu's body, and then looked at Chu Nan and Ma Yonglin who were fighting each other. He didn't expect that the old sister who had been so loyal and in need of protection had become so sharp and sharp now? Is this the cousin he knew before? How does it feel like a different person? This is also why Lin Rui only sees Chu Muyu after being reborn, otherwise, he wouldn't be so surprised and curious. Ma Yonglin flushed and stared at Chu Muyu angrily, You, you bastard! Don't talk nonsense here! Did I talk nonsense? Chu Muyu blinked her eyes, with a very innocent look, you said that the Chu family was going to wean off children and grandchildren. When Mr. Chu and Mrs. Chu heard this, Lian Shan's expression became even more ugly, and he turned his head and glanced at Ma Yonglin dissatisfied. Lin Rui and the others couldn't help but laugh softly one by one, but when they looked at Ma Yonglin and the two old people, they closed their mouths quickly. Ma Yonglin's anger was called a violent surge. She didn't find Chu Muyu in trouble, but instead caused herself to be a commotion. Chu's Hickson's family snorted coldly in their hearts, their eyes were full of mockery and gloat. They haven't forgotten what the old woman designed to frame Ding Chunhong. Although it is not the entire Chu family that has cut off children and grandchildren, you also ruined our old Chu heritage. You must be responsible for discounting things. Ma Yonglin rolled her eyes and threatened Chu Muyu angrily. Chu Muyu raised her eyebrows and looked at Ma Yonglin, a curious look flashed in her eyes, asking her to be responsible. Responsible? I don't know how to be responsible. I came to her to be responsible at this time, I really don't know what this woman thinks. Responsible? Ma Yonglin flashed a sullen look on her face, gritted her teeth, and said gloomily, of course it is to marry our Chus Hu, to be our Chus Hu's daughter-in-law. Now there are no girls willing to marry Chu. Cho, you are the only one who caused him to become like that. You have to use your whole life to pay for it. As long as Chu Muyo married Chu Zhou, in the future, she would not let them squeeze her arms, dare to make her arrogant in front of her, and she would not urinate to show her qualifications. Make a good chapter before going home. Go home in the afternoon and wait for the moving company to deliver the bed, and also install the bed. There are two chapters left, which will be updated at night. The expression on Chu Muyu's face became stiff, but there was a cold smile on her face. She really didn't expect Ma Younglin to say such a thing. I don't know how Xiao Junyan would react when he heard her. It's a pity that he hasn't come yet. If Yet Yenming was here at this time, he must have looked at Ma Yonglin with a deadly eye. This woman is just looking for death. She dares to a woman with his boss. Isn't she tired of life? Wipe. Shameless. Lin Rui almost didn't stare at Ma Yonglin's words. Although Chu Muyu has no blood connection with their Chu family, she can't let Chu Muyu marry Chu Zhou. Moreover, this matter really has nothing to do with Chu Muyu. It was clearly that Chu Zhou was looking for abuse by himself. However, Ma Yonglin didn't feel that there was anything wrong with what she had said. Anyway, her son was just like that. There must be no woman willing to marry him. 
then let Chumwea marry her son. Anyway, the two of them have no blood relationship. Children, what are you talking about here? Ma Yonglin glared at Lin Rui who was calling out. Lin Rui snorted coldly, her eyes full of sarcasm and contempt, anyway, Miu Yu is also Chu Zhou's cousin, eldest aunt, aren't you afraid of being pierced in the backbone? Ma Yonglin looked ridiculed and despised, cousin? We don't have wild species in the Chu family. This is a good idea. The old lady Chu also said, staring at Chu Mwia with disgust, I have never admitted that there is such a granddaughter in the Chu family. Since Chu Zhou is like this, I will marry him. Mom. What are you talking about? Chu Jiamen immediately looked at Mrs. Chu with dissatisfaction. She had never thought that her mother would dislike Chu Mwia so much. Last time she conspired with Ding Chunhong to sell Chu Mwiu. Now she is ruining Chu Mwiu's life. How can she tolerate it? What did I say? What I said is the truth. Our Chu family raised her and gave her delicious food, drink and clothes, but what did she do? If it weren't for her, would Chu Zhou lose the ability to inherit her family? If it weren't for her, would Chunhong be arrested and locked up in jail? The old lady Chu pointed to Chu Mwiu dissatisfied, and screamed. Enough! The more Chu's hyming listened, his anger became greater, and he shouted. The old lady Chu body trembled suddenly, she was completely frightened by Chu's hyming's reprimand. I just said that Miu Yu is my daughter, you don't recognize her, I recognize her, you don't want her, I want her. If you are here because of this, then I'm sorry, please leave. Chu's Hyming's face looked very cold, even for his parents. When old father Chu heard this, he became even more angry. He is Chu's Hyming's father. Now he was said to him, his eyes widened, Okay, well, you are really grown up. Do you think that you don't need to listen to me? I am still the head of the family. You have to agree to this matter, and you have to agree if you don't. Brother, you still listen to what Dad said, since you have done it, you must be responsible for what she did. Chu's Heishan said to Chu's Hyming with a smug smile on his face. That's my Chu's Hyming's daughter. If you want to marry, marry yourself and get out. Chu's Hyming angrily pushed Chu's Heishan out of the door. What happened? What happened? I don't know if it was because of Ma Yonglin's yelling that aroused the curiosity of the neighbors around him, and they walked over. Moreover, this community is an old community, the noise inside the house can be heard by people passing by next door and outside. It was the winter holiday and the Chinese New Year holidays, and everyone inevitably had a holiday at home, and almost all heard the quarrels. Everyone has a good-looking and lively disposition and everyone is surrounded by curiosity. Seeing Chu's Hyming pushing Chu's Heishan out of the room, they all showed puzzled expressions. Chu's Hyming, you are so good, you dare to treat your eldest brother like this. You don't even want your parents. Chu's Heishan was pushed out of the house, and his old face suddenly became hot and he couldn't hold back, but when he saw people outside, his eyes were awkward. It was a flash of light, Yelling at Chu's Hyming, my parents took hard work to bring you up. If you are so unfilial, you shouldn't live in this world. Wow! The neighbors who walked over heard Chu's Heishan's screams, and they all showed shocked expressions. Chu Mwia frowned, looking at the situation outside, a cold expression gradually appeared on her pretty face. Others didn't know, but she saw that Chu's Heishan wanted to put his father Chu's Hyming on the fire. And Mrs. Chu was also sitting on the ground directly at this time, patted her thigh, and cried for a while, Oh, how come I have such a hard life, and gave birth to such an unfilial son, even for a wild species? I don't want my mother. We have to cut off our entire Chu family. I'm not alive anymore. Chu Mwiu, you caused my son to lose even the inheritance of the ancestry, and let our Chu family wean off children and grandchildren. By doing this, we are already generous to you, and you don't appreciate it. Ma Yonglin also saw Chu's Heishan's actions. 
The eyeballs also turned, directly pulling Chum Wu onto the fire. Chum Wu stood faintly on the side, watching Ma Yonglin and the others fired at him and his father, the cold light flashed in his eyes. It seems that she has been deliberately deliberately thinking about their relationship with their father's relatives, and she hasn't made a heavy hand. She is really kind to them. Now they are getting trouble with their father directly, so she must show them the color this time. Do you really think they are so easy to bully? What? No? I look at Mu Yu, this girl is very cute. Real or fake? Is this rich or something? How did you make such a thing? People who are puzzled are discussing with each other, but everyone still doesn't believe it. After all, the people who heard the voice were from neighbors and neighbors, and they communicated a lot at ordinary times. Therefore, they all did not believe Chu Zhishan's scolding. Seeing this situation, Chu Zhishan's face showed a triumphant smile. Big brother, sister-in-law, don't talk nonsense here, little brother is not like that at all. Chu Jiakai frowned and said in dissatisfaction. Why am I talking nonsense? Chu Zhishan glared at Chu Jiakai angrily, and pointed at Chu Zhixin and Chu Jiamen. I agree. Chu Jiamen also brought her husband and children here. He only wanted to watch the show in his heart, but he didn't expect that he would be pulled out by Chu Zhishan. This of course also includes Chu Zhixin's family. Some people are arrogant enough, someone should play, he he. Ask for a monthly pass. Ask for a monthly pass. Chu Zhishan sneered and turned to look at Chu Suiang. Chu Muyu is jealous that Chu Suiang's grades are better than hers, and even more jealous for a boy in their class, who directly forced her to change school. Is this still fake? Listening to Chu Zhishan's words, the anger in Chu Muyu's heart disappeared, and a smile appeared on the corner of her mouth. It was ridiculous to say that she was jealous of Chu Suiang's grades and kicked her out of school. Lin Rui smiled after hearing this, and sneered, I think it's because of the second aunt. Ding Chunyang's affairs have been on TV, and everyone who has a TV at home has seen it. How can they not know about Chu Suiang's parents? Therefore, after going to school, it is inevitable that Chu Suiang will be forced to transfer because of this incident. This is a matter of course. Chu Hixon, Chu Nan, and Chu Suiang's family all looked very ugly. Especially Chu Suiang, her eyes filled with unwillingness and hatred, staring at Chu Muyu. The look in his eyes seemed to be true in what Chu Zhishan said. Oh, my grandson, my dear daughter-in-law. You can't get back home because of your little bitch, so I can't spend the mid-autumn festival, and this prevents my old lady from living. Ah! Old Lady Chu yelled again on the shameless ground. Chu's Haiming was very angry but he pushed Chu Zhishan just now, because he was his elder brother, and he could do that. But facing her old mother, even if she doesn't, she can't do that. Elder Chu stared at Chu's Haiming angrily, now there are two options, one is to do what we say, and the other is to expel Chu Muya from the Chu family, send her to the Public Security Bureau, and release Chu Zhou and the others. It seems that I also knew that the matter of Chu Muyo marrying Chu Zhou was a bit unspeakable, so Mr. Chu didn't even directly mention the matter of marrying. Maybe the neighbors here know that Chu Muyo is not Chu's Haiming's son, but that doesn't mean she can marry her cousin Chu Zhou as a wife. Yes. Ma Yonglin also nodded, glaring at Chu Muyo fiercely, threatening fiercely, Chu Muyo was so sinful and sent her to the Public Security Bureau to replace my son. Not only did she hurt my son, but also the wronged elders go to jail and let her surrender. Our Chu family shouldn't take you in at all. Why did you raise a white-eyed wolf like you? Old Lady Chu stared at Chu Muyu resentfully, why don't you die? Mom, you are enough. Chu's Haiming sternly scolded with anger in his eyes. I haven't read much since I was a child, but before facing the complaints of my relatives, I didn't know how to refute them. Tisk, I really know people, my face, and my heart. I didn't expect Chu Muyu and the others to be such people. This is really the first time I have seen it, we really haven't seen it before. Director, 
you heard it too, listen, who are they? The noise was too loud, and the director and secretary of the neighborhood committee of the housing community were directly brought in. It was also because the director of the neighborhood committee was next door to Chum Wiyu's house, in a different unit, and came over as soon as he heard the voice. Fan Kin Lai looked a little ugly. He looked at Chu's Haiming and Chum Wiyu, and then at Mrs. Chu and the others. He wanted to speak but was interrupted by a low-pitched voice full of magnetism and forced pressure. What's going on? Do you need to be arrested? Since Chum Wu introduced her identity in this way, Xiao Junyan naturally wanted to perform his profession. When Chum Wu heard Xiao Junyan's words, the muscles in the corners of her eyes shook slightly, and the corners of her mouth rose slightly, looking at Chu's Heishan and the others. Why catch us? Chu's Heishan immediately questioned Xiao Junyan angrily. When Ma Yonglin heard this, she became hardened, that's right, Chum Wu. Don't think that you know people from the police, you can arrest people at will. Chum Wu chuckled lightly, looked at Chu's Heishan mockingly, then glanced at the people of the Chu family, and said, Oh, you are making trouble here, arresting you, need evidence. That's because you didn't do it right. We are just here to beg for justice. Ma Yonglin stared at Chum Wu viciously. Chum Wu laughed again looked at the neighbor standing at the door of Chu's house, and said faintly, I did not do it right, so well, let everyone judge who is at fault. Hearing these words, Ma Yonglin and the others only felt a throb in their hearts, and their eyelids also twitched, with an unknown premonition. Then let me talk about the first thing first. Chu Wu narrowed her eyes and turned to look at her neighbor, everyone should remember that during the summer vacation, a big case of child trafficking was broadcast on news TV. When everyone heard Chum Wu's words, they were taken aback. A teenager standing in front of Fan Kin Lai nodded and said, Of course I remember, this news has been on the news for a long time. After this young man's words, everyone seemed to think of something, nodding their heads. A cold light flashed in Chum Wu's eyes, and she turned her head and smiled and looked at the three of Chu's Hickson's family. The female criminal who appeared in the news is my second aunt, and I was the victim of the second aunt. A kidnapper girl. Wow. When the voice fell, Chum Wu's words seemed to be like an atomic bomb, falling in the crowd, and everyone was wide-eyed and mouth opened. Damn. It's true. The teenager who was talking just now yelled, with an unbelievable expression on his face. The women in the crowd also covered their mouths with their hands and looked at Chu's Hickson and others. The three of Chu's Hickson, who were being watched by everyone, felt their faces aching and sore, they turned their heads, not daring to face the people in the community with their faces. Chu Mwiu chuckled lightly and asked the boy, Fan Yi, so do you think, as the daughter of that female criminal, who would go to school with her, would anyone be willing to go to school with her? This boy is Fan Yi, the son of Fan Kinlai, the owner of the neighborhood committee. Hearing Chu Mwiu's words, Fan Yi slapped her thigh and said loudly, Chow, of course not. If it were me, I would definitely kick her out. So it wasn't because of jealousy, cut. Hee <laughs> hee, a mother must have a daughter. It is obviously that his own problem has been blamed on Chu Mwiu's body. I also said that Chum Wu forced her to leave school for the sake of a man, so I he he he, I think I'm ashamed. The neighbors suddenly felt a little guilty for misunderstanding Chum Wu and them just now, and then they sneered at Chu's Hickson and the others, without any mercy at all. Chu Swaying, a girl who heard what they said, only felt that it was pitch black again, and her body was a little unsteady, and she regretted why she had to come over. Chu Mwiu took a look at the Chu's Hickson family, then took another look at Chu's Heishan and Ma Yonglin, and then turned around and asked, There is one more thing, I think everyone should be aware of it. At the beginning of the summer vacation, our house was patronized by gangsters, and then the police came over, right? Everyone was stunned again, and they all nodded together. It's a must, those punks are so arrogant. What? Do these little gangsters have anything to do with them? Everyone looked at Chum Wu with puzzled faces, 
waiting for explanation. Chu Muihu smiled and said, Those punks were sent by my cousin Chu Zhou, and also the sons of these two uncles and aunts. The purpose of these punks is to me. Damn! Fan Yi yelled again when he heard it, but before he jumped up, he was slapped down by his old man and hit him on the head. Fan Qin Lai glared at his son very dissatisfiedly, then scolded, Speak civilized. Fan Yi rolled his eyes at Fan Qin Lai, and then asked Chu Muiu, Is this true? Why did he do this? Not only Fan Yi was puzzled, everyone else was puzzled. After all, the two families are related by blood. Although Chu Muiu picked it up, there is no need to do such a thing, right? Because. Chum Wihu chuckled lightly, trying to explain, but suddenly he drank, shut up. When Chum Wihu heard the sound, she turned her head to see both Chu's Heshan and Ma Yonglin staring at her angrily. Just now, it was hard to make the people in the community feel that they were weak. Now if Chum Wihu explained, he would definitely choose to stand on the side of Chum Wihu. How could Chu's Heshan tolerate the development of things like this? Especially Ma Yonglin rushed over, screaming in her mouth, Chu Muiu, you little bitch, you. But before Ma Yonglin rushed to Chu Muiu's front, Xiao Junyin's figure flashed, and he stopped her directly, and then grabbed her with a big hand and threw it away. With a touch, Ma Yonglin's 13040 Jin body hit the ground heavily. Everyone looked at Ma Yonglin who fell on the ground in surprise, wailing in pain. Chum Wihu smiled slightly and looked at Ma Yonglin and the others mockingly, We didn't stop you when you said bad things about me just now. Now I'm just defending and explaining for myself. Why are you blocking me? Don't you want me to tell you? A crime. Hearing this, everyone in the community glared at them with disgust and mockery. Damn, I dared to lie to Lao Tzu, I almost believed what you said and misunderstood Mu Yu girl. Fell well, deserve it. Why didn't you fall to death? How could there be such a vicious person, I thought I could only see it on TV. Fortunately, fortunately, our relatives are all good people. Chum Wee raised her mouth slightly as she listened to the yelling and cursing of the crowd. Do you really think that she didn't speak just now, so letting them yell at her is aggrieved? She just wanted to make these people in the community feel guilty, the more guilt, and after knowing the truth, the anger can be imagined. Look, the anger of the people in the community now means that Chum Wihu's plan of forbearance has succeeded. It is estimated that after she has said everything, everyone will throw them away with rotten eggs and rotten vegetables. Fan Yi laughed and asked Chum Wihu, Chum Wihu, you continue to say, we want to listen, why did that act on you? Hearing Fan Yi's question, Chum Wihu did not conceal anything and said the matter again. Everyone exclaimed, the men exploded one by one, even with them, and they subconsciously tightened their legs. At this point, they didn't know whether they should sympathize or gloat. This really deserves it. God has eyes long and avenged Chum Wu. Deserve it. Hey, God is really long-eyed, it's not bad to use this method to punish that bastard. It deserves to be weaned off children and grandchildren. If I have a son like this, I don't need anyone else to do it, I will abolish him. You can't live by yourself. Everyone was mocking and sarcasm, and their eyes looked at Chu's Heshan with mockery and disgust. The corners of Chu Muihu's mouth rose slightly, her pretty face a little more angry. Standing aside, Xiao Junyan, who kept focusing his attention on Chu Muihu, his dark eyes sank again. Chu's Heshan, Ma Yonglin, and Chu Shishu all had their faces constantly changing colors. Subconsciously, Chu Shishu went to see the changes in Xiao Junyan's expression, and when he saw his indifferent and handsome face, he always felt a thud in his heart. I always felt that the indifference on Xiao Junyan's face and the murderous look on his body made Chu Shishu feel that Xiao Junyan was angry. However, Chu Shishu thought he was angry because he discovered that their family was like this. How could Chu Shishu, who was dying Xiao Junyan, let Chu Muihu slander herself in front of her sweetheart, and drank angrily, Chu Muihu, what are you talking nonsense? 
it's obviously that you have harmed my brother yourself and are still pretending to be here. Pathetic. Chu Muyu chuckled lightly, surprised at Chu Shisha's sudden opening, and it was also a mockery. She thought that Chu's Heshan's family also had a Chu Shisha that was kind of brainy. However, she doesn't feel that way anymore. Under this situation, she still wants to refute and pull her into the water. Hehe, he, I pretend to be pitiful? Then I want to listen, where am I to pretend to be pitiful? Chu Muyu smiled mockingly, and stared at Chu Shisha fiercely. However, it was also at this time that something was wrong with Chu Shishu. Yes, she saw that Chu Shisha turned her gaze to Xiao Junyan from time to time, her panicked look, she really wanted to change her image in Xiao Junyan's heart. Thinking of this, a cold light flashed in Chu Muyu's eyes. It turned out that this guy did not have a problem with his brain, but fell in love with Xiao Junyan. You are a wild species that doesn't even know who your parents are. You have been eating and drinking in our Chu family for so many years. My brother just asked you to define your position in the Chu family. You are just a wild species picked up by our Chu family. That's it, there are some people, how can you think about it? Chu Shisha raised her chin proudly and looked down at Chu Muyu. Ha, unconsciously, Chu Muyu sneered in her heart, turned her head, and stared fiercely at Xiao Junyan. The stared Xiao Junyan stared at her with dark eyes, wondering why she suddenly stared at him. Someone feels wronged and feels depressed. Why is his family angry with him? What happened? Originally, Xiao Junyan, who had only Chu Muyu in his eyes, naturally did not see the admiring and anxious eyes that Chu Shishu left from time to time. Chu Muyu looked at Chu Shishu coldly, and the corners of her mouth raised slightly, I miss you? I don't know, who are you thinking of? I... Chu Shishu shut up immediately, but didn't know what to say. Subconsciously, he looked at Xiao Junyan for fear that he would be angry because of what he said. And Xiao Junyan seemed to have seen Chu Muyu look at him meaningfully, and then looked at Chu Shishu again. Then, following Chu Muyu's gaze, Xiao Junyan turned his head and looked at Chu Shishu, facing her worried but shy and hurriedly bowed look after seeing him turning his head, with pitch black eyes. Even more cold. No matter how elusive Xiao Junyan's head is, he understands Chu Shishu's attitude towards him, and he is already very smart and soon understood who he was talking about. Thinking of Chu Muyu's inexplicable stare, Xiao Junyan's eyes became even colder, staring at Chu Shishu firmly. Idiot! Lin Rui curled his lips, his eyes were full of sarcasm and disdain, there was really a problem with his mind. At this time, he was still thinking about men. How could he have such relatives? What a shame! Standing behind Chu's Hickson, Chu Suiang looked at Chu Shisha's appearance with disgust and mockery in her eyes. Why didn't you speak? Chu Muyu never thought of letting Chu Shisha go, and even dared to covet her Chu Muyu's man. When Chu Shisha listened, the anger in her heart surged, which was called an anger. This little bitch, she didn't speak anymore, and was still asking her for trouble. If you let others know what Chu Shisha is thinking, you probably have to hee hee. Who is the troublemaker? You can only make trouble. Can't others take revenge? That's right, why don't you talk? Fan Yi chuckled and looked at Chu Shishu mockingly, if you don't give a reason to come out, it is that you have nothing to look for yourself, you are looking for abuse, and you are here to find Chu Shihi Chu Muyu's trouble, who do you think you are? That is, if you think that the clothes you wear are a little expensive, you think you are rich and you can look down on us. Bah, some stinky money is so terrible, it deserves to be cut off. The neighbors were all mocking and sarcasm, making Chu Shisha so angry that her lips kept trembling, her pretty face kept changing color, tears falling down her cheeks, and she cried. Having been wronged, Chu Shisha subconsciously turned to look at Xiao Junyan, wanting to ask for his help. However, when she turned her head to look at Xiao Junyan again, she met his dark star-like eyes, which suddenly seemed to be a powerful suction, sucking her whole heart in. 
Her voice trembled, Xiao, big brother Xiao, they bullied me. Puff. Chumwia was taken aback, couldn't help but snorted and looked at Xiao Junyan humorously, big brother Xiao, someone called you. Hearing Chumwia's ridicule, Xiao Junyan turned his head and looked at the mischievous smile on her face. The expression in his eyes was far more gentle than when he faced Chu Shishu. Everyone watched Xiao Junyan's actions, and watched him step on his long legs and walk towards Chu Shishu. For him, it was only two or three steps away, but Chu Shishu's whole heart missed a beat, and pink bubbles appeared in her eyes, watching him obsessively walking towards him. It seemed that Xiao Junyan was going to stretch out that powerful arm towards him to give her a sense of security. To be honest, there are some card plots, and I don't know what lessons and revenge to teach them. Chum Wu also looked at Xiao Junyan curiously, not knowing what he was going to do. Everyone saw Xiao Junyan raise his hand, but this hand was holding his fist, and he directly returned to Chu Shishu's mouth without mercy. Bump! A dull physical impact sounded into everyone's ears, followed by a woman's miserable and painful cry. Lin Rui stretched out his head, looked at Xiao Junyan's words, and immediately grinned. He couldn't help but breathe in a cold breath, it's cruel. It's miserable. Papa. One by one, white things fell to the ground, and Chu Shishu fell to the ground with her hands covering her mouth. Fan Yi was covering his mouth, especially touching his teeth, after this punch, a few teeth are missing. Yes, Xiao Junyan's punch just knocked out Chu Shishu's teeth. Looking at the white teeth on the ground, there are eight or nine, less to say. Whether it was the neighbors watching the theater or the Chu family, they all had a toothache, as if the person being beaten was themselves. Chu Muihu's eyes widened too, and she couldn't get back to her senses. She really didn't expect Xiao Junyan to start so decisively, and she still directly greeted Chu Shishu's mouth. I'm afraid that Chu Shishu's words will be leaking and drooling now. Ma Yonglin and Chu's Heishan had no idea that Xiao Junyan would come so suddenly, they were surprised on the spot, and they forgot to react for a while. After a while, Ma Yonglin came back to her senses by waving her claws and heading back towards Xiao Junyan, yelling, God you, I'll kill you. Xiao Junyan suddenly turned his head, his jet black eyes were like sharp blades, and he shot at Ma Yonglin, raising his slender arms, without mercy at all and then slapped Ma Yonglin's face. With a pop, the clear applause echoed in everyone's ears. Ma Yonglin's 130 or 40 kilograms of body was slapped by Xiao Junyan and slapped away, but it happened that she directly hit the old lady Chu who was sitting on the ground. Old Madam Chu was staggered, and her body was smashed to the ground. Ma Yonglin pressed her two legs that could be broken at any time, and let out a miserable cry. Lin Rui stared at his own eyes, looked at Xiao Junyan in disbelief, exclaimed in his heart, This guy, what a strong arm! Chu's Haiming also widened his eyes in surprise, looking at Ma Yonglin, and then at Xiao Junyan, there was a wave of admiration in his heart, he deserved to be the captain of the Blue Sword Brigade. Only Chu Muihu touched her nose, shook her head and sighed, Really poor fellow! Mom! Old woman! When Elder Chu and others saw this, they screamed and hurriedly stepped forward to help. My legs! The old lady Chu shouted sternly, clutching her legs. Subconsciously, everyone looked at Mrs. Chu's legs, but they saw her legs twisted in an irregular posture, and it made the scalp numb. Chu Muiul looked at Mrs. Chu in surprise, and couldn't help sighing, it really was karma. In the past, she was often beaten with crutches by this old lady, but now, the retribution is directly on her lap. With the old lady Chu's age, it would be impossible to recover and walk again. Sure enough, people cannot do bad things, otherwise, who knows when the retribution will arrive. Call an ambulance, call an ambulance. Chu Jiamen wanted to restore old lady Chu's legs, but old lady Chu screamed. She couldn't bear the pain. She rolled her eyes and fainted. Mom! At this time, everyone was in a hurry, but they didn't dare to move when they wanted to move, for fear that if they moved, 
old lady Chu's legs would be ruined. The neighbors looked up at the scene in front of them curiously, and couldn't help but curl their lips. Fan Yi chuckled and said to Chu Muyu, God has long eyes, I'm taking revenge for you. Chu Muyu looked at the old lady Chu who was lying on the ground, she could only helplessly shook her head slightly, hoping that she could see everything through this time. But is this really possible? Seeing the old lady Chu fainted, Chu's hyming sighed deeply, not knowing whether to go up, after all, that was his old mother. While hesitating, Chu's Hickson stood up, pointed angrily at Xiao Junyan, and yelled, You, you broke my mother's leg. Xiao Junyan looked at Chu's Hishan indifferently, cold light flashed in his eyes, and he wanted to teach him. As soon as Chu Muyu saw this move, she hurriedly stepped forward, Don't spit people, it's obviously Ma Younglin who did it, what does it have to do with him? That's not because he threw Ma Younglin out. If it weren't for him, how could mom become like this and lose money? Chu's Hickson angrily accused. When Chu Muyu heard this, she laughed immediately and looked at Chu's Hickson mockingly, Are you going to call the police? You still want money, you are really brave enough to bump into the policeman. The bumper porcelain on the street in the future actually happened here. Chu's Hickson was caught in the mind by Chu Muyu, and he was immediately furious, and raised his hand to slap Chu Muyu. However, before Chu Muyu made a move, Xiao Junyan's figure flashed, grabbing Chu's hicks and slapped arm, and his wrist moved. Everyone only heard a clear click sound of broken bones, followed by Chu's hicks and miserable and painful screams. Dad! Chu Nan called out when he saw Chu's hicks and situation, and rushed forward, asshole, dare to beat my dad. I'm tired of my life. I... Before Chu Nan's arrogant words were finished, her body was like a cooked shrimp, hugging her belly and knelt on the ground with a thud. Chu Muyu. Chu Nan gritted his teeth and looked up, staring at Chu Muyu with protruding eyes. This time it was not Xiao Junyan, but Chu Muyu. Chu Muyu coldly looked at Chu Nan, who was kneeling on the ground holding his belly, with a cold voice, Chu Nan, I didn't move you before. That was because you were my dad's nephew. Since you are now yourself come for trouble, if you don't give us an birthday, then I won't be merciful. This is just a little interest. Chu Nan was so painful that the blue veins on his forehead jumped suddenly, but she couldn't get up to trouble Chu Muyu. Seeing Chu Nan's embarrassed appearance, Lin Rui clenched his fists and yelled hello. He didn't expect that Chu Muyu's skills were so good. He kicked Chu Nan so much that he couldn't get up. Deserve it. Fan Yi waved his fist in excitement, and shouted with a smile, looking at Chu Muyu with excitement in his eyes. That kick was really ecstasy. When did Chu Muyu's skills become so good? It's hit. It's hit. Call the police. Call the police. Ma Younglin got up from the ground, shouting in her mouth, with a look of horror on her face. Last night due to a system error, there was a problem of repeated confusion of chapters. Now it has been resolved, dear ones, clear the cache, and then see if the chapters are back to normal. Chu Muyu turned his head, glanced at Xiao Junyan, and said, if you want to call the police, then report it. Upon receiving a hint, Xiao Junyan nodded, took out his mobile phone from his pocket, and dialed Ye Tianming's number. Yet Yen Ming, who was asleep on the bed, received a call from his boss, his body was agitated, and he sat up awkwardly, Hey, bastard, give me a big phone call, disturb me to sleep. Fifteen minutes, take your people to Mu Yu's community. Xiao Junyan only said a word and hung up the phone. Everyone was looking at Xiao Junyan, looking at the phone in his hand, and muttered in their hearts, Rich people. Although Chu's Heishan also has a mobile phone, that mobile phone can be said to be the big brother. Compared with Xiao Junyan's mobile phone, it is completely different in the level of future elderly mobile phones and high-end smartphones. You can't call the police, you are the official protector. Chu's Heishan called out immediately. Ma Younglin also exclaimed angrily, Yes, you are the official protector. 
it doesn't matter if my son is arrested, should we arrest us too? Chum Wu immediately laughed, and looked at Ma Yonglin mockingly, the officials are taking care of each other? Take your son up, that is what your son deserves. Just now he threatened me to let me marry your son. I'm going to sue you for robbing him. What about the good women? Damn. Really. It's really a to let Mu Yu marry that eunuch. Asshole thing, this kind of thing can be done, why don't you go to jail? It's time to be arrested. When the police arrive, we must arrest them. When the neighbors in the community heard this, they immediately scolded. Xiao Junyan's eyes were locked tightly on Ma Yonglin's body, and there was a cold light flashing in the pitch black eyes that were as sharp as a cheetah in the dark night. What he heard just now, this woman actually wanted to marry his man to the eunuch. At this moment, Xiao Junyan was full of strong murderous aura, walking slowly towards Ma Yonglin. As soon as Chum Wu saw Xiao Junyan's behavior, she quickly stepped forward and grabbed his arm, What are you going to do? Kill her. Xiao Junyan's voice was cold and heavy, which made people listen, as if he had fallen into an ice cave all over. Don't move. When Chum Wu heard it, her heart trembled, and she quickly stood in front of him, and warned softly in his ear, I can handle it by myself. I don't want you to bear the karma for me. It will be distressed. Karma retribution, even if it doesn't repay this life or the next life, Chum Wu can't bear it. She just wants him to be good enough. She can't let him do those things for himself. Hearing the last three words that Chum Wu said, I will feel distressed, Xiao Junyan trembled, turned his head to look at the small face with the palm of his back in front of him, his eyes drooping, and he wanted to report her. It seems that knowing what Xiao Junyan will do next, Chum Wu turned around and stood beside him, Life is easy, life is easy, life is not easy, wicked people have their own retributions, and when they die, they will be free from everything. Yet. Yeah. Xiao Junyan nodded lightly, as if he had heard what Chum Wu said. In Xiao Junyan's heart, as long as it is the people who hurt him, he will not let them live. However, Chum Wu was also right. Sometimes, it would be more painful to live than to die, so he didn't do anything. Hearing Xiao Junyan's reply, Chum Wu also breathed a sigh of relief, finally coaxing this guy, she was really worried that he would kill directly in front of so many people. The first to arrive is naturally the ambulance. A rush of ambulances hit everyone's ears. The ambulance is here. Let's let it first. No matter what, the elderly's body is the most important thing. Go to the hospital first. Let the doctors come up first. Although these neighbors were very angry at the behavior of those in the Chu family, the situation of the old man was also sympathetic. The doctor ran up carrying the stretcher, yelling, Let! Where is the patient? Doctor, here and here. Chu Jiakai hugged Mrs. Chu, and when she heard the doctor's yelling, she waved quickly. The doctor ran forward and looked at Mrs. Chu's legs. He couldn't help but breathe in a cold breath, what happened? How could this happen? Doctor, how is my mother's leg? Can it be cured? Chu Jiamen looked at the doctor worriedly on the side. The doctor frowned and shook his head, and said with a sigh, This is hard to say, after all, the old man is too old, if he is a young man, it is fine. In fact, Ma Yonglin didn't have much gravity at all in the collision, but the old lady Nai Chu was getting older, and the bones of both legs were relatively fragile. <laughs>